the definition of insanity is making the same mistake over and over again and expecting a different result. So don't be afraid to mess up, but when you mess up, you sure as heck better learn from it. Anything that comes out of their mouth is law. So what your job is, is to get them to say what you want them to say. You should be closing one out of every three people you talk to, no matter what you say. You put it under the umbrella of life insurance, so that way it's tax-free. The right. funds get paid directly to your wife. I've got some good news and i got some bad news for you. Which one do you want to hear first? Either one. Either one? It is what it is. <laughs> so the good news is that you are approved. The bad news is you're stuck with me for life. <laughs> <laughs> When they have multiple policies, they usually tend to be whole life policies. You can help them figure out what they have, how much they're paying, add it up. And then a lot of the times I'm going to be like, look, so you've got, you know, 70,000 of whole life policies. It's with five different carriers. You don't have living benefits. You can very easily consolidate them into one or two, make it cheaper, add in a few benefits that they didn't have before. And that's how you're going to have these large two, three, four hundred dollar a month policies. All right, guys, I think it's finally time for a little recap, I just finished my first month and just finished a sale five minutes ago. So I figured right fresh off a sale, pumped up, film this part of the video. <laughs> so um, first of all, uh, first week, that my first full week was amazing. I did 16 freaking thousand dollars my first week. It sounds surreal like having that come out of my mouth saying that. My best month in solar was 25, 30K. So, I mean, to have that, to make 16 in a week is just, it's insane. Um, second week I did, uh, what did I do? I did 11K my second week, and then my third week I did 6K. So I, I started off really strong and I started slacking more and more and more. And now I'm picking up the pace again. Um, Cause this week I've been, doing at least one, one sale a day. And um, I really just had like a big breakthrough just now because one of my mentors that's in our agency, um, it was Mindy. So Mindy had a group call. So all the mentors in our company, we all help each other out. You don't have to be directly under someone for them to help you. And um, so Mindy said something that really resonated with me. A lot of people that come from solar door to door and they get into insurance sales where you're supposed to be very cool, calm, and collected, and slow, because you're talking to these old people. You're on the phone, and you don't need to get your words out super quickly, and they're not gonna slam the door in your face. It's not the same. And when she said that, I was like, you know what, you're so right. I am talking way too fast. Uh, you're not, I have a lot of car salesmen on my team. There's a lot of guys that are from solar, right? They're not, you're not getting something out quickly for them to slam the door in their face. Bro, they're listening to you. They're on the phone. Like, you're good. Slow down. Chill. And literally, the first call I made after I got off that training call with her, I made, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like to say made a sale because I, I would say I helped this lady. I really, it, it doesn't feel like I'm making a sale. It feels like I'm really helping them. Um, so I feel like making a sale is like a dirty word to say. So... Yeah, 20 minutes later, I helped this lady, um, all because of just the way I was talking to her. Um, I talked slower than a turtle, literally so slow. I would pause randomly in between sentences, because uh, what Mindy was saying is that pausing pulls emotion. Pausing equals processing, and pausing pulls emotion. I was like, okay, all right, I'm gonna take that to heart and apply that. If they give you any objection where they're saying, that they already spoke to another agent, you have to frame it in a way where it's like, oh, you spoke to one of our agents. So every agent in this industry is all on your team. You have to say it that way so it doesn't sound combative, it doesn't sound salesy. Oh, so it sounds like you spoke to one of our agents. I'm sorry they, they didn't give you some more affordable options, but it was, and then another word they talked about in the training is using the word escalated. It's like, oh, so it wasn't, I'm sorry they weren't able to find you something affordable. That's exactly why it was escalated to me. I have access to more carriers here that will be more affordable for you. And that's what I said here on this last call. And I explained her equity protection, which none of the other two agents she had spoke to uh, before me had explained equity protection. And um, if you don't already know what equity protection is, it's essentially um, 
instead of covering the full mortgage, it, it uh, covers a few months to a year of mortgage payments for them. So that way it protects the equity they have in their home. Say they have 200K of equity in their home. If they were to pass away and their family members can't make the payments on the mortgage, they would lose all that equity on the home. So I, I explain it to them. This is a buffer of time that you can pass to your family members uh, that will make it uh, give them some time to mourn uh, grief and figure out how they want to move forward in a healthy manner and not being rushed to sell the home. And when I explained it to her very slowly, calmly, and not rushing through it, she really understood it. And uh, so I'm so sore on my back. Uh, so uh, I didn't rush to explain it. And she was able to pick an option. She ended up picking six months of coverage, which was a hundred bucks a month. And um, I told her first, I, I started off with a more expensive option. I said, okay, 12 months, it's 200 bucks. Um, that's the most expensive option here. Um, and then I worked my way down to three months. So I started with the most expensive. And then she ended up picking the middle, which was the $100 option. And um, that was it. The second she picked an option, the first thing I do is I ask them what their beneficiary's uh, information is. So no, like, okay, great. No, I don't like rush. I just very calmly, I say, okay. Um, she picks the option. I say, okay, what is your beneficiary's middle initial? I have here, his name is so-and-so. She's like, okay, it's this. Okay, what's his date of birth? So-and-so. Okay, so I got the beneficiary information. Then I start to go into um, the banking. I slip in the banking and the social. So this part is super smooth. So I'm like, okay, now I'm going to look up and see if we partner with your financial institution here. Um, what, uh, which financial institution are you going to be using to pay for the policy? At that point, she said, okay, I'm using so-and-so bank. I'm like, okay, let me see if they, we partner with them. Did you open that account in the state of Missouri? She said, yes. And I, I go on Google, I typed in so-and-so bank, Missouri routing number. Boom, it popped up. I said, oh, good news. A little pause there. Very calm, very slow. Good news. It looks like we do partner with your bank. And the routing number I have here is da 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 da. Can you confirm that with me on either a blank check or a mobile app? So she went ahead and grabbed a check. She said, yeah, that's correct. And immediately after that, I just said, okay, and go ahead with your account number. It's the only thing I can't see here on my end. She tells me your account number. And then um, usually I don't get any pushback, but this lady, immediately after she gave me a account number, I said, okay, and your social? And then she kind of paused a little bit. Uh, usually I don't, that's been working for me every time. They just give me a social right there after giving me their account number. Cause already, it's kind of like a ladder. You have their routing number, and then they're comfortable with giving you their account number. And now they already gave you their account number, so now they just give you your social. But her, she's like, why do you need that? And I said, well, uh, your social is tied to your medical information bureau, the MIB. And that's how they're going to check your medical record uh, to see if you'll be able to get approved for this coverage. And I just was quiet, let her think about it for a second. I didn't keep talking. And then after I paused for like five seconds, I said, if it would make you feel more comfortable, I can share my screen with you. I can turn my camera on so you can see me. Would that make you feel more comfortable? And then she said, mom, my computer is down. Uh, it's not working right now. And then she's like, ah, I'll just trust you. And I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Like the knowledge I've built up over the past month, I've, I've learned the answer for like every possible scenario. And at this point it's gotten like all the skills and all the rebuttals have stacked, which it's just so cool to see it all coming together. So she went ahead with the social and that was it. You know, once you have the social banking info, that's all you really need. I just go went ahead and filled in her application. I told her, I didn't tell her right away if she got approved or not. Um, that was a huge mistake I've been making all this week. I lost all these applications by telling them they were either denied or if I had an issue, I would tell them. If you have any issues with your application, don't tell them. You want them to be 
it'll, you'll, it'll ruin the whole sale. If you have an issue, um, just tell them, hey, it's gonna take a couple business days here to let you know if you're approved. Because uh, I, I was having an issue on this and I didn't lose the sale because I didn't panic this time. I told her, hey, all right, um, I'll give you a call back in a few days, let you know if you're approved. Meanwhile, internally I'm panicking because her routing number wasn't working on, on the application. But I was like, I'm gonna figure it out. Internally I'm telling I'm gonna figure it out, this isn't a big deal. I said, all right, it's been a pleasure helping you today. Um, I'll let you know in a couple of business days if we help you. And she was like, oh, thank you so much. Um, she had no idea I was like panicking on the inside. So immediately after uh, she hung up, I called up her bank, <laughs> putting out fires over here. I called up her bank. I'm like, hey, can you guys help me figure out what's wrong with this routing number? It's not working here. It turned out I needed to add a zero to the routing number that I saw online. Put the application through and we were all set. So she's all set. I'm gonna call her back tomorrow, let her know everything's fine. She's approved, uh, gave her all her policy info. She'll be all set. So yeah, just a lot of mistakes have been made up to this point, but I feel like all the ducks have lined up. I've figured out all the areas where I've been making mistakes. Um, it could have been an easily an 80K month. I just finished this month with, an, with 30K, but oh my God, I, I, had, I had probably over 100 presentations this month. So, I mean, if I had closed 80% of those, I would have been an 80K month. So it's really just getting better at, from this point to increasing my revenue. Because if I did 100 presentations and only closed 30 of them, made 30K, that's a lot of, there's a lot of improving to be done here. So um, I'm just excited to, you know, keep it going in this industry. Um, stay tuned here. I got many, many hours of footage here from you know, my first week all the way up till um, halfway through the video, I switched to only audio only. I stopped like filming myself because I got some software that just records the calls automatically. Um, so enjoy the video recordings in the beginning half of this video, but I'm just not the best on the phones. And then towards the end, you're gonna hear like me doing way better with the sales, but it's just no video. So that just explains that. Um, if you guys want to reach out, if you want to get mentor uh, training uh, from me, um, reach out on Instagram. I can get help you get your license. We can get you rocking and rolling. Now just reach out to me on Instagram. I'll, I'll put it right here. It's uh, B-S-Z-E-N-T. Uh, you can also check out the website, sigagents.com. Enjoy the video. Actually, I was thinking of how I'm gonna put this video together. I'm gonna to put that call I just spoke about here first at the beginning of the video, and then it'll cut back to week one and work its way up to week four. So we're gonna go right now into that last sale I just did, and then skip back to week one. Enjoy. Hello. I'm calling for uh, Ms. Yes. It's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Nation Star. Uh, we, it looks like your file here that's associated with your property on um, just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. Uh, oh, the only my. reason for that, yes, yeah, so the only reason for that, sometime around when you close with Nation Star, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Um, that's where it pays off the home if you get sick or yeah. pass away. Um, so you, you actually did the right thing. You filled out the card. You mailed it back into us. But for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. Uh, so I'm the manager in the area here. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that we took care of you. Um, well, now, I did it, talk to the person about mm, it, and they mm, said that the only part of the insurance, that the thing that we could get would be just a small amount. It wouldn't be the full amount of the payoff for the house yeah, because of so our the, age. Yeah, so it sounds like you talked to one of our other agents here in the office. Yeah. So that's why I was escalated to me. Uh, to get you something that's more affordable for you and that gets you what you need. Um, now, are you able to grab a pen and paper for me real quick? It should take about five minutes. 
and then okay. uh, let me know when you're ready. Okay, let me get one here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have you write down my full name. That's okay. Benjamin. Benjamin. Let me know when you, yeah, let me know when you get to the last name. It's hard to spell. Okay. It's S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, T as in Tom, E as in Pam, A as in Apple, L as in Lucy, and Y as in Yellow. Okay. Got it? Okay. And how do you say that? Since it's the, yeah, it's sent poly, so the Z is silent. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to give you my national producer number. So this okay. is like my social security number as an insurance agent. So uh, that number is 210. Okay. 191. Okay. 79. Okay. Now, how uh, how young are you, Miss Hart? 73. 73. Okay. And the date of birth I have here is that correct? No. That's my no? husband. Okay. Mine and is yours? 11. Mine is oh, okay. Okay. Um, now, you told me you spoke to one of my other agents. Um, I talked. To, what, I don't know if it was your agent. I had two different yeah. people call me, and I talked to two different people. Mhm. Yeah, we're all we all work for the same oh, okay. uh, carriers here. So it was just escalated to me here to make sure uh, we get you something more affordable. Um, it looks like uh, your file here wasn't updated though. Uh, so what was the uh, do you have any major surgeries or medications? Yes, I do. A lot of medications. A lot of medications. Okay. If you uh, take more than you take more than three medications. Oh my yes. Okay. So in that I take case, about twelve pills a day. Okay. For the just to so I don't take up too much of your time here. What it usually sends us over to if you take more than three medications is a company called AIG. Have you heard of AIG before? AIG, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do here is go see what options AIG has. And um, as far as your mortgage goes, how much do you owe on the mortgage? 131 or something like that. 231. Okay. Yeah. And then what is your monthly payment on that mortgage? 1649. Sixteen forty nine. Okay. So, did the other did my other agents when they reached out to you, did they explain to you what an equity protection plan is? No. No. Okay. Perfect. So, all right. So that's why you're speaking with me now. So we're going to get you the right type of of uh, protection here. So as I'm sure you're already aware. Uh, Mrs. Hart, if you wanted to cover the entire mortgage, that would be close to another mortgage payment with insurance costs. That's so don't worry. It. Right. So don't worry. Uh, none of my clients do that in your situation. What my clients do in your situation is put together an equity protection plan. So basically, it's just more practical and more affordable uh, way of protecting the mortgage. And we can get that way. We can get you the most amount of coverage for the least uh, cost possible. Okay. okay. Um, so, really, for your situation, uh, the most amount of insurance you'll need is around a year to two years of mortgage payments uh, to to allow um, your beneficiary, either your spouse or your children, um, time to mourn. Uh, grief, uh, recover, and figure out what they want to do uh, to move forward in a healthy manner. That way there's not panicking 
uh, to sell the house quickly if something happens. Make right. sense? Right. Yes, it makes okay. sense. Okay. So what I'll do here is I'll give you um, three options here, like uh, a nine months of mortgage payments, 12 months of mortgage payments, and 18 months. And then you just tell me uh, what's most comfortable and affordable for you. And I'll let you know in a few business days if you get approved. But you'll just tell me which one uh, makes sense for you. Uh, so I'm going to give you those options on for your piece of paper here. 12 months. You're going to, okay. Yeah, we're going to get you a 12-month option here. So let me, so one year of mortgage payments, that would be 1649 times 12. So that would be about 20000 So that would come out to, if you wanted to do um, one year of coverage, uh, that would be the most I would recommend. So we'll go down from there. So the most, uh, the 12 year, uh, 12 months is 226 bucks a month. So it's it's very expensive. Yeah, so what we'll do here, hard. yeah. So what we'll do is we'll also look at a uh, six month option and a three month option. So okay. the six month option, that would be. A hundred bucks a month for six months. So write that down. Okay. And then a three month option would be fifty two bucks a month. The thing of it is it would take me more than three months to do anything. To uh, to sell the house? Yeah. Right. Well, to just um, decide. To even decide. Mhm. Mm yeah. This just and gives you guys out, a little you know, bit of a budget. Yeah, because if anything would happen to him, I would really have to sit down and redo a budget and figure out how I'm going to do things. Mm -hmm. I would rather do yeah. six months. You'd rather do the six months. Is the hundred going to be affordable for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can handle uh, the hundred. Okay. Perfect. Now, for your husband. Um, what would be his middle initials so I can put him here as your beneficiary? M. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's his date of birth? It's 42. Okay. And was he born in Missouri? No, he was born in uh, Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Born in Pennsylvania. And how about yourself? Were you born in Pennsylvania as well? I was born in Danville, Illinois. Oh, in Illinois. Okay. And... Let's see here. I'm going to see if we partner with AIG here. If they partner with your financial institution that you'll be paying for the policy with, um, which financial institution are you with? Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Is that uh, your bank or your mortgage? Oh, you mean my bank? Yes. It's uh, First Bay Community Bank. And that? Well, did you open that bank account in Missouri? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it well, used to be one bank, and then they got bought out. Okay. So it's, it's been I'm gonna look that for up. a while. It used have to a, be have Central Bank. Okay. Let me see if we have them here on file. Okay. So the good news is they do partner with that bank, and the routing number I have on file for them is 819 one eight four two five. Can you confirm if that is correct, either on a blank check what did or it? now let me get my uh -huh. my checkbook and make sure I got that right. Okay. Now what did you say? I said it was eight one nine one eight four two five. That's it. Okay. And then the account number? It's mm -hmm. Five two. Okay. And then what was your social? You should have all this information if you're calling me. I uh, know. I only have the routing number here in file. Uh, they need the social to check your medical record. My medical? How could you check my medical with my social? It's um, tied to the medical bureau. That's how they. That's how they tie your medical record. I 
idea of that because I just got hacked by that doing this. Um, I just got you have a from the collection place that says that there's hackers hacking into the. Uh, let me send you a link. I'll I'll share my screen with you so you can see it. You know, turn on my camera. You can see me. Would that make you feel better? Oh, I'm going to trust you. Okay. Because I, my computer is downloading new drivers, so I can't get on it yet. All right. And I'm, I'm not on a cell then. phone. I'm on my own phone. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go through the application here with AIG. And um, just stay on the line here. I'll let you know if I have if it comes with, up with any other questions here. Okay. So yours is submitted here. Um, I'm going to know in a, in a few days here what they decide here. Now, for your husband, did you want to do the same coverage for him as well? Do a, It's called a him and hers policy. And it's two and it's hundred dollars for him too. Um, I can check. I'll let you know. Give me one second. I'll see what his is. He could do a hundred a uh, hundred bucks a month would be uh, four months of coverage for him. He probably won't do it. I know he won't do it, so there ain't no sense to worry about him. Because mm. he's because okay. he, he's stubborn. He don't like to spend money. Ah. Uh, well, the thing is with these types of policies is it's a it, it's like a savings account. So if they want if he wants to take the money out, you can. And it also has that death benefit as well. So it's it's life it's essentially like a life insurance policy with a savings account built into it. Yeah, but I know how he is. He won't do it. He won't do it. Okay. No, he won't. Okay. That's no problem. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll give you a call back for your policy, let you know uh what the status is. I'll keep you updated on that one. Okay. And um it will uh Check touch base again with you and let you know all your details and your policy. If you if everything's approved, uh, you'll you'll also get that first draft. That's good news uh, for your first payment. Uh, it means okay. you're approved. And then your actual physical paper copy of the policy should be in the mail in about a week. So if, okay. uh, if you don't get that, I'll reach out to you or you re reach out to me and I'll have it resent out. Okay. Um, now as as far as your emergency contacts here. Um, other than Daryl, do you have any kids you want me to put on file here to just let them know about your policy here that you have in place? I really don't have nobody but him. Oh, okay. You don't have any kids? No. No? Okay. No worries. All right. Then I guess for now, we're all set. I'm glad I was able to help you today. Okay. And, um, it was a pleasure speaking you. with you. Okay, yeah. I'll wait to hear from you. Yeah, all right. Yeah, save my contacts so you know it's me. You know how to do that? Okay. Yeah, it's on my phone, so I'm going to write everything down. Okay. Perfect, okay. Kathy. Okay, all right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Kept it super short and simple. Now we're going to rewind back to uh, three weeks ago. So I have three weeks of sales recordings uh, filmed here for you guys. Uh, we're going to rewind. Uh, you're going to see how much worse I was three weeks ago. And full transparency here, I'm not just going to post you guys my best stuff. I have tons of rejections in this video, um, tons of mistakes, lessons learned, and hopefully it helps you guys not make the mistakes I did and you guys can learn. Uh, but, you know, there's only so much you can learn secondhand. You have to make a lot of these mistakes yourself, but, you know, I wish there was content like this out on YouTube, but there just really isn't uh, a channel where you can go and watch five plus hours of un mostly uncut um, sales footage. You know, I'm, I'm going to cut out like I cut out like wherever there's long pauses. I'm like filling applications. I cut that stuff out. But mostly, I mean, this is the full thing. So you're not going to find this anywhere else on YouTube until it probably catches on. There's going to be a lot of people trying to copy this type of um, format because, you know, this is what people actually want. They don't want the, the, the highlight reel. They want what's raw. They want to see 
what's real. So, so these first few videos are just a bunch of rejections here. Let me know what you guys think. Hey, Pam. Uh, is this Pam? Hey, it's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for first citizens. Uh, your file, yeah, your file is associated with your property over on Haystack Road. It just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you close with first citizens, we sent you. Oh, really? Is this the. Oh, I was reading the, the uh, our file right below yours. My bad. That This call, you're Pamela. So you were on Birch Circle Road with State Employees Credit Union? Oh, my bad. Um, so anyway, um, you're also, your file is also the same thing. So, uh, the ma We handle the mortgage protection for your uh, credit union as well, State Employees Credit Union. And your file is associated with your property on Birch Circle Drive. It's, it's showing here is incomplete. So the only reason for that is sometime when you closed with probably the state employees credit union, uh, our company, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, you know, where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. So you actually did the right thing, Pamela. You, you filled out the card here and you mailed it back into us. But um, for some reason on our end, uh, we haven't gotten that completed. So I'm the manager in the area here. So I just wanted to make sure we took care of you guys. Uh, oh, so this is actually separate from what you have at the credit union. This is for if you were to get sick or pass away, it would pay off the home. Are you aware of that type of coverage? Gotcha. Yeah, of course. Understandable. Most people, they aren't interested until they get cancer or they're disabled or God forbid, you know, pass away. I see. Um, but anyway, if you were to get if you were to pass away, how would your husband be able to afford the uh, payments? Do you know, or vice versa? Okay, gotcha. Has anyone explained the? Oh, congratulations! Um, has anyone explained the difference between the mortgage and life insurance to you before? All right, no problem. All right, I'll let you go. Have a good day. Hi, is this Miss Cadell? Uh, this is Ben. Um, the only. Oh, okay. That's probably why it's flagged here. Perfect. Um, what's the new updated mortgage address? I'll update the, your file for you. Okay, that's good. Uh, did you already have contact him? Okay. And did you already have any mortgage protection in place for the current property? Okay. So that's just to be clear, that's where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Okay, perfect. I'll update your file here for that as well. Um, did you get the, uh, pal uh, the policy packet in the mail okay? Perfect, okay. Uh, did you go with the complete plan or the partial plan? Um, I'm not sure. Everything was bundled. Uh, mm hmm. Um, section in um, the insurance of the house itself. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Gotcha. And how much coverage did you guys get? Was it for the full mortgage? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And how much are you guys paying per month? <laughs> For the mortgage protection or the mortgage? Oh, ah, interesting. You're one of the rare people I, I hear that do it that way. Is there is there a reason you guys ended up doing it bundled together? Is there any? Mm, okay. okay. You got any, just any health issues at all? Maybe it's that why? Okay, gotcha. Um, I see. All right, so you guys seem like you're pretty set that if it's all bundled together, uh, just making sure everything's all, you know, A1 in here, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, sounds good. I will uh, get your file marked off here. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, um, is this Mr. Nunnery? 
Okay, perfect. Uh, this is Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle. Now, um, is it just you in the home or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, um, most people, they usually, they aren't interested until, you know, they get cancer or they get disabled or God forbid, you know, pass away, you know? Any, anyway, uh, it looks like the address I have on file here is that, that Bridgeport way. Is that still correct? Okay. Um, well, I just had a few minutes before my next call. Uh, if you grab a pen and paper for me real quick, it should take about 10 minutes to show you those options. And if none of them you're, are looking good for you, it's, it's no problem at all. Okay. Yeah, so just go ahead and grab that pen and paper for me real quick. It should be pretty quick. <clears throat> okay, so at the top of the paper, I'm just going to have you write down my full name so that way you uh, know just who you're, exactly you're talking with. I'm a licensed uh, mortgage protection professional. I'm licensed here in the state of, of North Carolina. Uh, my, my full name is Benjamin. Uh, my last name is St. Pauli. Uh, the sp spelling for that last name is S Z, Z and zebra, E N T P A L Y. And then my national producer number, basically, that's like my social security number as an insurance agent. That's how you identify us. Uh, that's 210 uh, and uh, I have Sydney here on file. What should I call you? Or do you just want prefer Mr. Nunnery? Okay. All right, Mr. Nunnery. Um, I have, uh, do you get, do you receive text messages? Okay. Hey, Walter. <clears throat> hey, it's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. Uh, I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Mountain America Federal Credit Union. You're file here that's associated with your property over on Engelman Drive just came across my desk and it's showing me here is incomplete. The only reason for that is probably sometime around when you closed with uh, Mountain America, uh, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Uh, where it pays off the home. Okay. Was the reason you filled that out? You just didn't know what it was? Okay, and what was the reason you decided you didn't want it? Was it too expensive or or you just didn't qualify? Um, it can be, depending on uh, what your needs are. It can be a whole life or it can be a term, but yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, we, okay, so has anyone explained the difference between mortgage and life insurance to you before? Um, so mortgage protection and life insurance actually both pay out, um, but it's just a little bit better than life insurance because mortgage protection offers you on the, it covers you on the living side as well, so not just the death side. So what that means, like in any situation where you get sick, disabled, cancer, heart attack, stroke, or disability, any sort of critical, chronic, okay, well, this would, this would cover your loss of income or pay for any medical bills. Okay. Hi, how was your morning going? Or how did your morning go? Yeah, a little crazy. I've been in back to backs all morning, so oh. um, <laughs> too much talking. <laughs> oh, a lot of talking? Okay, I see. <laughs> how I see are that. you? How's your morning going? It's going good. Just had a nice little cup of tea here and um, got nice. a couple calls back to back as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm a couple minutes behind here, but. Uh, uh, oh my the gosh. airport, the airport, it's like grass. <laughs> I know it is grass, and yeah. I've taken off from that airport before, really? and it's terrifying because there's a 
barbed wire fence and you're like are we going to clear the barbed wire fence and you just don't know and it's like oh my goodness it is literally a cow building wow. so it's just uh, it's yeah it's interesting wow. for sure yeah i was like if i'm gonna go visit i have to fly into washington <laughs> Uh, to Lewiston is the biggest, closest airport, but I usually go out of Spokane, which yes. is GEG. -E yeah. Yes, Spokane, yes. That's what I it's saw. It's crazy. But, you know, if you look at Google Maps, mm -hmm. you can see our ranch because um, we have, like, the next biggest water source next to the river. It's, mm -hmm. it's only a six and a half acre pond. It's not a river. Mm -hmm. But you can see it on the satellite maps. It's kind of fun. Okay. That's I'll all check we have. That out. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's our claim to fame. Cool. Because they... They, uh, when they have fires, they, they launch out of the, and they, they dip out of the pond, but that's it. Okay. That's all we have. That's our big, so. big deal going on. <laughs> so, so here's, here's what we got going on. I've been talking to everybody in the office here, trying to smush our heads together to figure out what we can do, uh, for your specific situation. And one of the, like, you know, veterans here in the office told me a great idea um, so what we've been doing is trying to get you approved for these term policies and of course they all declined you um, mm -hmm. but what he came up with this brilliant idea is to do is have you do you know the difference between term and whole life mm -hmm. okay so the only the biggest difference with uh, term and whole life is the whole life policies are just smaller and they're usually for like final expenses um, mm -hmm. uh, so they're usually like around forty to fifty thousand dollar policies um, mm -hmm. But what he recommended is like, yeah, just stack a couple of them to the amount of a uh, mortgage and then you're going to basically have the same type of coverage, but better because whole life at the end of the day is actually a better policy than term because it's guaranteed. You get it. Uh, it lasts your whole life. There's no expiration date. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a better policy. Um, it still acts as a, it acts as a savings account and still has the full living benefits. So. Uh, that's the coverage for if you get sick or disabled um also a, it's a guaranteed payout so because whenever you pass away whether it's 100 years old you're still getting that full mortgage cost or whatever extra is i can't remember can you can't use a whole life while you're still alive so if you have your own um emergency like cancer or something like that you can't use those monies right only if uh, you die actually no it's so whole life actually has the full living benefits um, gotcha t not all terms do but all whole lives do the okay the terms i was showing you had the living benefits and the return on premium but a standard term doesn't have living benefits doesn't have return on premium it's basically just all profit to the insurance companies whole life is uh, has acts as a savings account comes out for cancer and anything like that it's got all the bells and whistles that's the best um, cool. Yeah, so did you have did you happen to look on um, why they keep denying me? Yes. Um it was for the pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. Um and you said that was very recent, right? In December? N November of twenty twenty one. Oh, that was in November twenty twenty one. I thought that was the knee mm -hmm. surgery. Okay. That was. I had the knee surgery and I got a uh, PE about four uh, days later from a lower limb surgery. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But it was all November of 2021. Okay, so that was, um, the knee was in November and the, oh, so it was all that was in November 2021. Okay. Correct. And I was cleared, I was actually cleared within four months, but they legally wanted to keep me to, I was six months and then they cleared me. Okay. Okay. Um, another yeah. thing I, I was missing here was the name of the inhaler and how long you've been taking that. Um, I've been on inhalers on and off all my entire life, actually, because okay. I have exercise-induced asthma, which is considered uh, okay. not asthma. It's considered an inflammatory response. Okay. So mild. Asthma. And it's, yeah, it's called Simbacor. Simbacor. Is that with a C or an S? S Y M. B is in boy, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. C O R T. That is a, mm -hmm. um, a steroid inhaler. And then I have albuterol. Okay. Albuterol. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. steroid inhaler. Okay. Right. But I've been on those forever. I mean, on and off. I just take them when needed. Okay. Um, and then also, I, w I didn't write down your mother's name and her date of birth for beneficiary information. Okay, she's right. Okay, good. Right. Uh huh. And then her date of birth. Okay. So, what I'll do here, 
Um, this is basically the exact same pricing as it was for the term, but we didn't go over it yet because I wasn't sure if you were going to approve. Uh, but now I can basically just go over all the options you have here and then you can tell me what would make the most sense for you. Okay. Um, so just to um, let me grab my papers right here together. So basically just to reiterate the, the terms, most terms they're short for terminate because you know most of them they only have a 2% nationwide payout because most people outlive them. Uh, so mm -hmm. these ones, they're 100% guaranteed payout. Uh, so you're going to be building cash value. In a few years, you can take the, the money out. So um, the numbers on the monthly payment here are a little bit higher, but not to worry. They, they're just going into a savings account here. Um, the coverage doesn't expire. And then now also, um, yeah, that's everything on, on whole life, just to reiterate there. All right, so okay. if you grab your paper, um, I'm going to have you write down three different options here. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so for the full mortgage, the monthly cost uh, would be 957 bucks a month. 957 Yep. Okay. And then the second option would be half of the mortgage. And that would be four seventy eight a month. Okay. And then I uh, threw in a third option there, quarter mortgage uh, would be two oh two bucks a month. Okay. That's for a quarter. Yeah, okay. for a quarter. Yeah. Um. And yeah, just that's that's all the options I have here for you. What What do you think? You think sounds the most comfortable and affordable for you? Um, I'm going to talk to my parents and see mm -hmm. what they'd like. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I want to see what we're going to pay the mortgage down to because mm -hmm. so, um, and that's another question I have. So if it's full and I pay the mortgage down to 200, mm -hmm. I still pay a thousand a month, even though the mortgage now is only 200. Um, so we can always do, I'm going to call you every year cause that's what I do with all my clients. I do an annual review. Um, mm -hmm. and we can always make adjustments. Um, so that would technically, if you want to keep that amount, so that way, um, you'll always have that 310,000 in coverage. You can, but if you want to adjust it every year, we totally can do that. So it's just up to oh. and yeah, you're, but I can keep the 310 yeah. by paying the thousand a month, right. even if I pay down my mortgage, it still will get a payout of 310 if something happens to me or yep. if I need to access yeah, it that's correct okay yeah. and then if you ever need to take out any you totally can after a few years um or after a few years also you can set it up so that way the the cost of insurance is just taken out of your cash value and then you can just take or you don't have to make payments for, for a certain period of time if you can't make payments does that make sense yeah that does yeah um i'm thinking of the um the 957, but I need to talk to my parents and see. Mm -hmm. um, we probably won't put anything into effect until April, mm -hmm. just because um, I'm really close to leaving on holiday and I have a ton of things to do, and so did my parents. Yeah. Because um, they're leaving on holiday right after me. Okay. So um, things calm down about mid mid April. Okay. Let's see, they'll be back. Let's see, we'll all be back. Everybody will be back okay. by. The week of, I think we're, my parents will be back on the 12th. So like mid-April, literally, um, we'd be able to uh, do something and make a, and make a plan for sure. Okay. Um, gotcha. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I'm thinking the full, okay. I, I really still like that option. Mm -hmm. And you said it would be like probably their 80 each would probably be four because eight, well, yep. four, three and a half because. So, yeah. It's actually seven different companies there are seven different carriers um and i told you i'm still relatively new so i'm still waiting to get actually registered for some of these carriers so the most i could do today would be uh, 235 in coverage until i get those other carriers registered so probably by around april but um uh, what i usually do for most of my clients is we we submit a request for the lowest option and then you always have okay. the option to add more if you want and that okay. way you have you know some minimum coverage today that you know mm -hmm. 
anything were to happen to you between now and April, you're covered with something. You know what I mean? Well, I, mm -hmm. I have um, I have life insurance and stuff I'm covered oh, with. Okay, well, yeah, that's good. Absolutely. I just was looking <clears throat> for. I wanted a policy to pay off the mortgage and have life insurance. So, mm -hmm. because if I die, my parents have to take it or my nephew has to take it. I don't want to put a financial burden on any of them. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So you already have some coverage. This is just for the house. Got totally understand. Okay. Sounds good. I have so. right now, I think 300 total. So it would barely come up, pay, pay off the house. It wouldn't give anything extra. Mm -hmm. And that's what my concern is. Okay. But um, yeah, so. So you would have. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you would, wouldn't you have the, the, the coverage you currently have plus the this mortgage coverage? Oh, you mean if I took it out today? Um, oh, you were saying if you were to pass away, you would only, you would barely just have, they would only have enough for the mortgage. They wouldn't have anything extra. Is that what you said? If I passed away mm. today before mm. we did this mm. new uh, mortgage coverage, mm. I think they would have, I think I calculated they would have 50,000 extra. Oh. It would pay off the mortgage and you'd have about 50,000 extra. I wanted to pay off the mortgage and still give them a couple hundred extra. So uh, I like that. Okay. Yes. So you already have another policy that covers the full mortgage. You're just adding It's more. just, it's just the death benefit. That's all it is. Uh, so it has no living benefits. No. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And I would prefer something that has living benefits to, to support myself because yeah. Knowing, of course. knowing me, I, I won't die. I'll just um, continue to live forever. So <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I want to make sure yeah. I can support myself. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're totally spot on because a lot of people, they don't realize that when they're still younger, it's a much higher chance of, you know, being disabled or sick than passing away. So yeah, totally. Okay. So, Sounds okay. Cool. I know I'm really excited about this. Um, yeah. I really appreciate you helping me. I'm so excited too. let's, I'm glad we found let's this. Can, Mm -hmm. You always what? As I'm glad we found something for you. But what were you saying? Yeah, me mm -hmm. too. Um, can we continue to work on um, getting things um, approved? Mm -hmm. And should we set up a call for April? Yeah. Now? What, um, I can. Like April. What were you thinking? April what? Like 15th? It's April a Monday? Yeah. Like at noon? Yeah, that's fine. Do you want okay. me to submit the applications to come to start on April 15th or do you want to do a call on April 15th still? Um, you can, can submit the applications no. to see if we can, so if we can handle things in parallel, if you can see if you can get approvals Yes. and, and then on the 15th we can pull the plug or okay. do the next step if right. on what I can't get approved on. Okay. That works. Uh, okay. I think I have everything I need here. If I do need any other extra info, because each of these carriers might have some random questions, I'll text you for that. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. And even when I'm in Iceland, I'll have the exact same cell service. So mm -hmm. uh, you can call or text or email, and I'll be able to get it still. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, All right. Let me know if you have any other questions. Okay. I really appreciate this. Thank yeah. you so much for thinking out of the box. <laughs> I figured it was my stupid PE. And it uh, makes me so mad, because it mm -hmm. was like... I've never had blood clotting. I sw I got it from the COVID shots because they changed your oh. RNA. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, yeah, and it actually has changed RNA in a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people who never had blood clotting issues get them now when they fly yeah. or when they take long road trips. Um, I read usually, about that in the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't read about that yet, mm -hmm. but it. Um, I was dating a doctor for like six years, and uh -huh. he's like, you know, there's a lot of proven oh. proven facts out there about the RNA, about your RNA changing. Because I've okay. always like given blood, and I I give blood so fast that it made me pass out. Now suddenly oh. I'm blood clotting, which is just odd. So yeah. well, that um, that makes sense. How you have the health? I was like, how do you know this RNA? RNA and like all this because you dated a doctor. Makes sense. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I, I read too, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not your DNA, but it's mm -hmm. still, you know, part of your DNA ish. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's anyway. why it, yeah. when I cut myself now, I, I bleed profusely like I did before. So, I don't <laughs> think there's any issues anymore, but, um, but I was wondering if that was it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, let's finish up that 
that words with friends and i think we're pretty far into it I, but you sent me a new game i Would know you... i can't find the old game my, oh. my phone won't let me have the old game back and oh. i'm like the app won't show you and i'm like why won't it show your name that we're playing a game Ooh. because i've used it in the past i haven't used it for a few years but it always showed your current game and i i won't it won't pull it up and i'm like God, huh. that's odd maybe maybe it closed out maybe i need to start over i see it uh, on the you have to scroll all the way down on the first page that's where it is, oh, the current games yeah it's okay just hidden. I'll, okay yeah. i'll go down there and look at that <laughs> yeah because i really like playing that and yeah we I'm were getting sorry, some I good words on that one <laughs> <laughs> i know well on my new one i had i almost had enough words for the word yahtzee i was missing oh, one wow. I'm like, oh my god, that would be like a, I think a 62 point word. I love that word. <laughs> yeah, I was laughing <laughs> anyway. when you did pew. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was funny. So I, I, there, I, um, in the game we're playing now, I don't have any vowels, just uh, consonants. Uh, <laughs> so works. you know, you're kind of stuck until you yeah. can play enough letters to get some vowels again. Yeah, but, I, I realized yeah. you're supposed to hide your letters, and I sent you a screenshot on the first game. I was like, here's all my letters. <laughs> Oh, I don't care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, we, we play gentleman's game in, in our house where, like, I help my parents all the time. And oh. We just, we purposely <laughs> don't pay attention. We purposely, because we play gentleman rules, wow. that we're competitive, but we don't, you know, slice each other's throat. We just play competitive. Holy. So, yeah. Oh, my God. You guys are, you guys sound so fun, uh, like a fun family. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We try. You're welcome. <laughs> Right. We're also annoying. Well, <laughs> but no, I got my. Uh, I guess I got. I got a lot of work to get started on here, so I'll. I'll let okay. you go, and I'll get cracking over here. Sounds great. Thank you so right. much, and I'll look for that game. Yes, sounds good. All right. All right. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Hello, Thaddeus. It's Ben. I'm giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage, and we handle the mortgage protection for Rocket Mortgage. Your file here, yeah, your file here that's associated with your property on uh, 7th Avenue uh, just came across my desk here and it's showing me as incomplete. Uh, the only reason for that is sometime around when you closed with Rocket Mortgage, uh, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right, where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Um, you actually did the right thing. You filled out the card and you mailed it back into us. But uh, for some reason here on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. Uh, I'm the manager in the area here. So I just want to make sure that we took care of you. Uh, now, is it just you in the home or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just had a few minutes here before my next call. Uh, if you just grab a pen and paper for me real quick. Uh, this should take about 10 minutes or so to get those options out to you. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll just schedule something for uh, next week because I'm going to be leaving the office soon. Uh, are you better in the mornings, in the afternoons, or the evenings? Okay, no problem. Uh, are you currently working right now? Are you retired? So I'm retired. Okay. So you're pretty available usually in afternoons. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and um, save my number. My name's Ben. I'm the medical underwriter that was assigned to your case here. Um, so that way you know it's me calling you on Monday afternoon. And then I'll, I'll talk to you then. All right. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Before we go cancel anything, okay. you want to make sure that you're approved with this new policy. Ah. God willing, we're able to get you approved with this new policy. Then I'll help make sure this gets converted over. I would say switch or converted, so you don't want to say cancel mm. too many times. <clears throat> gets converted over. That way, you know, you're not getting billed for two policies in the same month. Okay. That's huge. I wish I had said that. Yeah, like, and that's always a takeaway. Like, listen, Jerry, like, we don't want to go canceling anything mm. until you're approved with this new product. Mm. You know, and so, but God willing, you know, we can get you approved with this because the underwriting is a lot, a lot more strict. They are a lot more strict in the underwriting than just your regular life insurance policy. Mm. It's got protecting the living side as well. Um, but then, yeah, boom, boom, boom. 
Okay. One thing he also said was that he's going to be getting a lot of calls, uh, which I'm assuming he meant about his other agent. Um, I, how would you answer that? I would just, I would simply just be like, yeah, I would just let him know. Like, always let them know. Be yeah. like, hey, like, yo, your your other agent, obviously, will probably give you a call. Um, you know, up. trying to get you to keep your existing coverage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if he's if he's, I would just disregard his number. But if he's harassed, you give me his number. You know, I'll uh, I'll give him a call and I'll talk to him. <laughs> okay. That's right. what I always say. Okay. All right. I, I, what I told him, is this bad? I told him, yeah, there, a lot of agents are just stuck with one product, so they end up selling you something that's not really the best. Or I didn't say selling, but putting you with something that's not really the best for you, but it's the only option they have for you. Was that okay? Yeah, like they're a captive agent. You, you don't want to be careful because you don't want to speak down on them. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's, oh, right. that's good. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hey, it's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Movement Mortgage. Yeah, I think that's probably why it's flagged here on my screen because uh, when that all happened with COVID. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, that's why it was flagged here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and so I just ignored it because I was unsingle. Hmm. He, he said he, he would come over to my house. Yes. And, uh, and I was not comfortable exactly. with that situation. I'll fucking come to you. Excuse my mouth. <laughs> You're totally good. So well, that's exactly sorry. why it's flagged. That's what you. happened. Yeah. So what do I got to do? So, yeah, what so do I got to do? Absolutely. Let's so, fix this. Be my savior. <laughs> <laughs> since, since COVID, we switched to all, all on the phone now. So... Um, The way it works now, I'm going to give you, just have you write down on a piece of paper, I'm going to give you my producer number. I'm going to get with you. I'm going to get my glasses too, otherwise I'll really... Oh, yay, I'm so glad that you called. Yeah, you're welcome. Because I ignored the call because I get a lot of spam calls. Yeah, I, I know, I know this is important to you, so... I'm just here to help you and serve you the best I can. All right. So, get the pen, get the paper, go. Okay. So, uh, the way we do it over the phone now is I give you my full name and my national producer number. This is basically like my social security number as a insurance agent. As an employee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So, my full name is Benjamin St. Pauli. So... Uh, I'll help you spell the the last name once you get there. Let me know when you when you're there. You know, spell Benjamin, mm-hmm. right? I think so. Yeah. It doesn't look right, but uh, anyway. B E N J A M I N. And then my last name is S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, T as in Tom, P as in Pam, A as in Apple. L is in Lucy and Y is in yellow. Okay. What? What? Y what is in. Uh, y is in yellow. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. And do you get text messages to this phone number? I do. Okay. I do. All right. Perfect. So, so could you? So I just. Send me your yeah. name and all that. Yeah, I can, I can also do that. Yeah. Um. So what I just sent you is the link to the Department of Insurance website. Um, this okay. is how you can verify me as an insurance agent. You just click on that link there, and I'll walk you through how to find my uh, license. Right. Okay. Let, let me let me uh, put you on speaker. Yeah, no problem. And then you sent me a link. Yes. And you can copy and paste that uh, number I sent you there. That's going to be the MPN. Oh, oh hang on. Yep, no problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And then you said click the link? Yep. Uh Okay. Um, And then when you get there, you can have jurisdiction. So just go there and click on Idaho. Yes, so I'm in suite right now. I'm at my parents' house. Oh, okay. No problem. Mm, Okay, jurisdiction. Click on that. Yep, Idaho. 
And then put Idaho. And then, yep, and then for search type, let me know when you get there. Uh -huh. uh, search type, you oh. put licensee. License? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Individually, just keep that the same there. And then okay. where you see NPN, you'll paste that number in that I sent you. Um, no, I'm not good at pasting. Oh, okay. I'll just tell you what to type in there for NPN. <laughs> and for NPN, you just type it. Okay. Yeah, it's two, it's two one zero one nine one seven nine. Two one zero one nine one seven nine. Yep, and then I click search. And then my name should come up there. If you scroll down a little bit, the results should be down there. Make sure you hit the I agree or else it doesn't work. Oh, uh, praise Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I do this all day, so. Uh, okay. Well, let's spend some time together. Let's <laughs> get it done. It's still not coming up, though. Um, do you type the number in correctly? Is it 210-191-79? 2101979. Correct. Right? Yep. Okay. And all the other fields are blank? Yeah. Okay, it should I be that way. So. Yep, that's how it should be. So if I bring two of those. Is it not loading? It's not. It's not searching. Okay. Like I said, I'm sweet, so. That's fine. Uh, what I can do instead is just share my screen with you. Uh, and I'll send you a link to that. Super easy. Here's another link. You just click on that. Oh wait, that is not the right link. That is the same link. My bad. Um, there you go. How much is this going to cost? That I don't know yet. So that's my job is as the medical underwriter is to check with all the different 36 carriers here. Yeah, and we're gonna figure that out. Yeah. All right. So if, right before we get into that, uh, those medical questions, I just get this out of the way. So this is here's my license here. You can see producer active. Um, click on this. You can see my full license here. All right. Here. All right. Perfect. Florida. Yep. Over here in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. You ever been? No. No. Okay. Well, like, if you're ever here in town, let me know. <laughs> Stop by the office. All right. Um, so, what do I do? Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do here, I'm just going to ask you uh, about two minutes of medical health questions. And then I'll put you on a brief hold here while I check with all of our 36 carriers, see what fits your health and your age. And I'll give you some options here for you to write down. All right. Okay. Um, are you are you there with the? Is it just you in the home? That or is it spouse or significant at other? Home, at my house. Mm -hmm. Um, it is just me and my dog. And your dog. Okay, so your beneficiaries would they be your parents? Um, I don't know that I wrote down beneficiary. Okay, so you're looking. I, I didn't know how I didn't know how all this was gonna work, work I see. out, and I didn't want to leave every, everybody my bills. Of so, course. So yeah. by everybody, you mean um, just like your parents or who? My parents, my kids. Oh, you yeah. have kids. Okay, you have kids. They just don't live with mm -hmm. you. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Okay. And then also, um, even if you don't have beneficiaries, there's also living benefits as well. So if you were to get sick or disabled and you can't work, this also pays out your full amount. So your mortgage is covered if you get you know terminally ill and you can't work. Uh, you get that paid out early. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So let's see what you qualify for. Uh, the name I have here for you was uh, is that is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. all right. And then the last name I have. Uh -huh. Okay. And how young are you? Um, you're fifty-three. Oh, I'm fifty-three. Okay. Almost fifty-four. Okay. Yeah, I see here. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's 53, right, okay. Okay, and what do you do for? I work at Albertsons. Albertsons, nice. Okay. And um, what, uh, what age are you planning on retiring? I don't think I'll ever be able to retire with this really? fucking bullshit. You're funny. That's okay. I'm I'm here for it. You're what you're making my day so far. <laughs> some personalities, some people I talk to. You know, they're very dry. You know, I like I like some personality. All right. Um, and then what would you say? Um, I'm sure it probably fluctuates. What would you say your monthly income is on average? Two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. And then, are you a smoker? No. No. Excellent. And then, how light are you? <laughs> I'm two hundred maybe. Two hundred and something. You said ninety. Two nine zero. No. 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 How much? I'm two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. Okay. And uh, your height? Five seven and a half. Five seven and a half. All right, let's put five eight. <laughs> um, okay. And then the medical questions here. Are you? Uh, have you had any medical uh, procedures, any surgeries done in the past ten years? Not in the past ten years, no. Um, no, perfect. Um, are you prescribed any medications? Yes. Yes. Sorry, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a list of the medications? Um, okay. Tell Sartin, Amilpine. Okay, so um, I'm going to need you to spell those out. It's kind of hard to hear you. It's, it's blood pressure medication. Blood pressure? Okay. That helps. Yeah. Okay, blood pressure. And what else? Is that it? You take two pills for blood pressure? Uh, yeah, I okay. do. Two pills, okay. Good. All right, and then, um, was that the only thing? Uh, an anxiety pills. Anxiety. Only when you need it. Only when you need it. So, okay. you know, ever, twice a day. No, I'm okay. just <laughs> it was that. Uh, you're so funny. <laughs> Is that um, is that lorazepam? No, it's Xanax. Xanax, okay. It's literally for panic attacks. I take it. Oh yeah, I know how those are. You know, I go into an anxiety attack and forget oh. what I need to take to help sister out. But oh. anyway, yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> panic attacks are the scariest thing ever. I've had them before as well. I just had one the other day, and I, I've taken three Xanax in three days, and... Oh, wow. Did it help? I'm, I'm glad you called. Let's talk. My name's... I'm back. Yeah, um, we kind of talked in, in the DMs a little bit, but I've been door knocking for uh, probably all together, like, ten months to a year now. Um, uh, yeah, making... On average, of like four to six grand a month. Uh, I just feel like I haven't uh, been in the best position with, with my current solar company, and I, I heard about the insurance opportunity, and I'm definitely ready to take make the switch on it and, and give it my all. So, sure. nice, cool, bro. Well, yeah, and you guys, I forgot you guys already spoke. That's great. So, mm -hmm. um. Dude, I mean, Ben's, Ben hasn't been here long, of course, but I mean, he's a savage, and he's been working hard and grinding, and he's been doing well so far, so. Yeah. But obviously, since you guys are both in Tampa, um, you're with, uh, I mean, you have a good mentor in regards to this, and, you know, along with the rest of the, the rest, the rest of the Prosper team. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, since the, the three of us are on this call, um, any uh, other questions or anything else that we didn't go over yesterday, Jace? Um, I did write down a couple questions uh, last night. Let me pull up my list. Uh, I guess some of these are more specific questions, I guess, that I might um, learn, like, once I start training. So if it's something that isn't appropriate for this call, just let me know, I guess. But um, one, my first
first question was, uh, what are the best resources to learn about the different types of insurances you guys sell and their upsides and downsides? Uh, to tell for the specific client. So yeah, that's probably one with the training. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, another one that's probably about the training here. So uh, I'll ask that one later. Um, question about uh, buying leads, uh, just sort of how does that whole process work? Um, what's what's the average cost of leads, I guess, and uh, the best places to buy them from? Yeah, I can answer that one. So um, we generate, we've outsourced a lot of them, but we generate a good chunk in house. Um, so we have a few in house, and then the majority of them are outsourced. So basically, I mean, you go direct to the various lead vendors, um, and you buy them directly from them. So we don't make a profit off of any of the leads you buy. Um, but we work with a few, like about four um, credible lead vendors that we've been working for for years. And that's what they do is their business is they simply generate leads. But yeah, cool. we uh, you know we'll direct you to that because yeah. it's also important. I mean. I don't know if you, whether they're solar leads or insurance leads, it's like it's very important to make sure you have proper mentorship and guidance when getting leads. Because let's be honest, I mean, 85% of leads out there are garbage or sold leads. So making sure you're getting good quality, high intent leads is, of course, important. But yes, we will we'll help you with all that and et cetera. But I mean, first things first, it's really simply about, I mean, getting your license. Right here. It's the number one thing. Just, you know, yeah. Keep, can't do anything without your license and then the onboarding process from start to finish i broke this down to you briefly yesterday but just a little bit more in depth this we got this call ben he'll get you in touch with evan so she's our agent success coach so she's awesome so here she helps you from a to z in terms of getting your test logged in your study guide test pass contract etc um and then after that um once you once you pass your exam, then you get, um, you need to wait a few days to get fingerprints, um, get your official state license, writing number. Once you do that, boom, you're plugged in, you're going to get contracts and go through the new agent training course. So you'll go through a full week-long training program where you know all the products, the rebuttals, the scripts, verbal pacing, tonality, uh, pretty much every, every single thing you need to know to, in order to hit the ground running. Um, and then once you can check off all the boxes, like go through your presentation and know the rebuttals, know everything you need we help you get leads get your batch leads get you on the phones um you'll call us you know your first 10 Perfect. 20 appointments we'll tell you what to write um show you how to write it um and then once you're good to get rolling you um i mean we'll obviously always be available i mean i still have some agents that come they've been doing this a year and they have a question building i mean once you're once you're good you're good and other than that we're pretty much plugged in on on zoom all day and everybody's grinding together I don't, um, one question I have, I guess, is what, what am I looking at for the total, I guess, upfront cost, um, for the train, for, for the training and, and to get my license and, and all of that? For sure. That's a great question. Um, I was just going to get into that. So what do you ask? So the upfront expenses are, we actually pay for the study guide. So that's free to you. Uh, you do not have to pay for that. So the only thing you have to pay upfront is to go in and take your exam. Um, which I think it's been in Florida, what is it, 50, 60 bucks? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, it's on the, the Pearson View testing website, yeah, 50 bucks. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 50 bucks. Um, and then go in and you're going to need your E&O insurance. So it's errors of emissions, basically if a client ever tries to sue you, we've never had it happen, but something the state requires. Um, so that's, I think for six months, it's 130, or for the year, it's 130, okay. something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, so cool. 100 some bucks, and then... Really, your batch of leads is the biggest thing. So I always recommend having 800 to 1,000 bucks. That way we can get you a good, solid, quality batch of leads where you're able to have enough reps, have enough phone conversations, and still you know, have a profitable ROI in your investment. Um, so if, we, if you spend 1,000 bucks, you're typically able to get anywhere from you know, 150 to 200 leads, I'd say on average. I mean, you close one of them, you made your money back. Anything after that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and I'll help uh, you. Um, all right, sounds good. I'll help you get fingerprints and everything if you like need help where to go and stuff. Like, got you all that stuff here in Tampa. I know where where I where I did it all. It's pretty easy. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, inquire with you about where to yeah. go for that. Yep. Um, I guess. Um, one other question I have is, um, 
one thing I wrote down is, I guess, what would you guys say are the biggest cons of, of doing insurance? <clears throat> That's a great question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, because, I mean, if we just sat on this call and, I mean, same as any other industry, like, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, so. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I mean, um, I would love to hear Ben's answer, but I think it just applies for sales in general. It's just the roller coaster, you know? You're yeah. going to have, like, you're just going to get a lot of no's. You're going to have a lot of people that tell you to fuck off, and you're going to have days where you don't make any sales and you make no money. Right. Yeah. That's I don't know any sales job where that doesn't happen, though, so. Yeah. It's, it's, best, it's basically sales for you. Yeah, I think it's the same thing for me. Yeah, it really comes down to your belief in yourself. And when when you go and buy that batch of leads, you're really betting on yourself and your ability to turn that batch of leads into profit for yourself. You're the one that's in a direct control of your ROI. That definitely seems like it would motivate me to, to work even harder than I normally work just because I have to put yeah. such an investment in and I want to make that back, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all right, very cool. I guess, um, what's next? <laughs> yeah, um, so Ben, so he'll send you a couple links. He's gonna get you plugged into our Slack channel. Um, so our group chat, so definitely stay active in there as so we post all our sales, announcements, um, training, all that good stuff, so that's great. Um, and then secondly is the onboarding form. So fill that out, direct upline, uh, make sure you put Ben, and then that'll get sent to Ellen. After you submit that, you'll get a text message to book on her calendar. Um, and then uh, Ben, will, he'll walk you through everything. So if you have any questions, I mean, just let him know. I mean, it's pretty, cool. pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Right on. Um, I, guess, uh, I, don't, I don't even have um, your contact, Ben. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll send you my uh, number on that. Instagram. Yep. Okay, sounds good. And then, um, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll follow up with Ben. Uh, I'm going to get my license as soon as possible and I'm, re I'm really excited to get started with this so yeah man yeah bro um the biggest one, thing um the biggest biggest thing is exactly what you just said grind out that study guide and get your get your exam or get your test passed and your license asap and i mean typically it shouldn't take you any longer than a week um study cool. past your exam so do that, and then obviously once you have that, you can get started the next steps, and the quicker you get the, the quicker you're able to get started and making money. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, that sounds awesome. Um, one one of the one other question that I wrote down was, um, what what should I expect as far as a daily routine being a life insurance agent? <clears throat> Good question. I'll let Ben answer this one. I'm still I'm still figuring out my personal routine, but what I personally like so far is I, I usually work from like 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. and I dial West Coast. Um, I hear a lot of people okay. in the industry, they just dial from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and that's like their golden time and then they do appointments in the afternoon. You can watch tons of YouTube videos online. There's tons of different guys that do different things and they have different schedules. Some people- I've been watching yeah. your 10-hour uh, video you put out. <laughs> yeah, some people live by the 8 a.m., got to dial by 8 a.m., so. It's definitely, you know, what do you think, Jonah? Um, yeah, I mean, there's different schedules, like different things, but long story short, especially as a first new, as a new agent, um, I would count for 8 to 8. Between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you're simply grinding, hammering the phones, and putting in the work. Cool. That's simple. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. And, so. um, um, I guess the last question I have was, um, Well, the last question I have is, what is the benefit of recruiting, and is it required to make um, sort of the money I dream of making? No, absolutely not. Great question. Yeah. So I'm glad you asked this one as well. You're asking some great questions. So yeah. no, so this is not an MLM. So an MLM would be you're required to recruit to make money. That was how my last insurance company was, and that was why I quit. Um, so you can make a, there's two ways to make money. I mean, it's very similar to the structure of a solar where you can make a money personally producing, which I did for the first year I was in this business and you can make a lot of money building a team. But what we encourage, again, it's not required, but like what we encourage is to simply figure out how to write on a consecutive clip and a, high, and a decent, and a decent level and then hire other people and simply teach others to do the same. 
and lead from the yeah. front. It's really I mean, fun. Like, I feel like if I if I start making I decent money selling insurance, I'm gonna just want to naturally exactly. get my friends on it. Like, why are you guys still doing so little? Yeah. You know I mean? 100%, <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. But yeah. it's exactly what we talked about yesterday. Where this, I mean, so it was, it's more of a summer job. Where this is. It's actually a career and something you can do long term and sustainably. You do it, do it sustainably and have longevity in it, or something that it's you know no matter yeah. where where the market's at or what happens or what regulations come out or where the economy is, like it's a product that every single person needs. And what I've loved so yeah. far is every client I've closed, I've put in my calendar them a year from now to touch back base with them. In solar, goodbye, Charlie. You're never talking to that client ever again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> except for with referrals, <laughs> you know. That's what he told me uh, yesterday that sounded really cool is yeah. uh, you have the chance to renew the policy every single year and yeah. like earn residual and come out with Exactly, it. yeah. I love that part. Uh, that sounded really cool. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, well, super. Oh, one last question would be um, as far as like getting my license in which state, like Ben said he does West Coast. Did you have to get your license in California to do that? Nope. You only got to pass the test one time. So it's just your non-resident license. So super simple. Yeah. Okay, so it's for, you can basically dial in any state. Um, yeah, I'm going to be trying. a license in Florida, it doesn't matter. So, um, yo, but hey, um, I'm just, I got another meeting coming up here, so I got to go. But Ben, yeah. he'll just you a call, um, and he'll yeah. walk me through what you need to, to get set up. Yeah, let me switch over. Right, right on. Yeah, I'll hop on a so, call with you instead, okay? All right. Cool. Yeah, All right, boys. All right, thank have you. Have a good one. All right. Hey, yeah, so, yeah, you only have to pass that test once, and then if you want to buy other states, like, each state's, like, 80, 100 bucks, so I bought, okay. I bought Idaho so far, I bought North Carolina, and Florida so far, so I have, like, I bought North Carolina, because I, they're a little more southern over there, and they're nicer than Florida, and then, and then I it started getting late at night, and I'm like, okay, I need a west coast, and then I bought Idaho, <laughs> but I think I'm going to buy, like, a Hawaii soon, because I heard people buy it. Yeah. People die in Hawaii at like two in the morning here. <laughs> you can still talk. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm gonna buy Hawaii. Well, that's next. super close enough. I can just yeah. I can buy any state I'm thinking about as far as the time zone. So, yep. so that's yeah, it's just a hundred cool. bucks, and that's it. Yeah. And I just feel like um, compared to door knocking, uh, dialing the phones is gonna be way more effective as far as just talking to more people and and yeah. get gassed out less easily as well. You totally. Know what I mean? and, totally. You've done the hardest form of sales possible. This is like warm sales. They're calling leads. It's you're gonna. I think I honestly think I'm gonna really like this yeah. a lot. So <laughs> that that's definitely something I want to consider purchasing. So yeah, because that's that's, nice. that's one of the reasons I got into door door because to get the steps in, you know. And so I was like, okay, yeah. I gotta keep doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm getting like twenty thousand steps a day right now, or something yeah. like that. So it's awesome. Yeah. But uh. Hello. Hey, Harry. Yeah. How's it going? Um, this is, this is Ben. I'm the medical underwriter that was assigned to you to go over this year's options for the, uh, the mortgage protection. Um, you said you already had something taken care of last time we spoke. I never applied for mortgage protection, so thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is just to update your policy here. I just got to update what you have on file. All right, that's good. No, I've been Hello? Hey, Felicita. Yes. Hey, it's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. Uh, I work with, uh, this is Ben. I, I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Fairwinds Credit Union. Uh, okay. Your file that's associated with your property over on Sumatra Avenue just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. Uh, so the only reason for that is sometime around when you closed with Fairwinds Credit Union, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Um, so you actually, you did the right thing. You fill out the card, you mailed it back into us. But for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. So I'm the manager in the area here. So I'm the manager in the area here. Hello, hi ladies. Um, I'm sorry, can, can yeah, so I'll call what you do back. I, what do I, no, 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 listen, what mm -hmm. do I need to do? Um, so I'm the medical underwriter that was assigned to you. So I'm supposed to give you the options here that are available here for you for 2024. 
uh, when yeah, when uh, I'll call you back though when unless this is a good time now. I have about ten minutes before yeah, my next call. Yeah, it's because I'm I'm in a yeah. I'm in a retreat, a women's retreat. Right. Can you? But I I kind of I, I need to speak here, and I'm kind of like my yeah. mind is like all over the place. Can yeah. you give me a call Monday? Yeah, I'll put you yeah. in for Monday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Hey, it's Ben. Um, I'm just giving you. Quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Premier Mortgage. Uh, your file, you. uh -huh. yeah, your file that's associated with your property over on Rockaway Ridge uh, just came across uh -huh. my desk. Yep, and it's just showing me here is incomplete. Uh, so the only reason for that, sometime around when you close with Premier Mortgage, we sent you uh -huh. several things. Yep. We sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Um, so you actually, I, 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 I already have all that. Oh, so you already got it taken care of? Yeah, through I, 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 um, I don't know if it's through your organization, but I'm sure it is because mm -hmm. uh, another gentleman called me and stuff like that, and yeah, I, I got all that set up already. Oh, okay. I just didn't get it updated in my file here what was what one of our carriers did you end up going with um i'm not sure what the gentleman what the gentleman said or whatever so i'd have to look up the email and stuff okay. to be honest with you i was just kind of like okay yeah whatever okay yeah my job just to make sure because it sounds like you spoke to one of my junior underwriters uh so my job just to make sure you got placed with the right carrier that's uh, one of our a-rated carriers um so if you're able to pull up that policy real quick I can just confirm that. Um, well, actually, I'm just getting off work and stuff right now. What I can do is when I get to the home phone and stuff like that, what I'll do is look up the email or whatever, and then I'll just shoot it, shoot it back to you as far as uh, okay. whatever carrier it is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, just send over the carrier, um, the face amount, and uh, your monthly payment, and I'll uh, confirm that here. Make sure you're getting sure. something good, okay? Okay, sounds good. All I'll right. talk to you here in a bit. Okay, All right. talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. These leads are hit different. These leads hit in different, bro. Holy shit. Hello. Christina? Yes. It's Ben. I'm giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Synergy One. Uh, your file that's associated with your property over on um, Coulter Road just came across my desk and it's just showing me as incomplete. So the only reason yeah, for that? Yeah, nobody seems to want to update me. No. Oh, okay. Did you already get it taken care of, Christina? Yeah, there's okay. nothing to take care of. Um, just as far as if the home to get paid off if you get sick or pass away, you got that taken care it's of? It's not an issue. Okay. Yep. I'll delete your file. Have a good day. Hello. Ben? Yeah. Hi, Ben. This is Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for figure lending. Uh, your file that's associated with your property over on 4th Avenue just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. So the only reason for that is sometime around when you close with figure lending, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Right, and I've heard you guys about ten <clears throat> times. I'm not interested. Thank you. Oh right, but my name's Ben, so this is a little bit different. So. <laughs> Hi Ben, this is Ben. Hi, uh, is this Miss Dennis? This Hello. is she. Uh, this is Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Freedom Mortgage. So your file, what the fuck? Hello? Hi, this is Bestie, can't come to the Oh. Hey, Yeah, it's, who's this? Uh, this is Ben, I'm giving you a quick call here. Or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? Uh, there's my girlfriend and her kids. Okay. Um, so I just had a few minutes here before my next call. Uh, just grab a pen and paper for me real quick. It should take about 10 minutes or so to get this knocked out. Um, you're, you're grabbing a pen and paper or I need to? Yeah, you need to. Uh, okay, hang on, I gotta get my house. Okay. Let's put you on hold one second.
And it looks like I have here on the file the mortgage is for 13000 Is that correct? Uh, so they did two of them. Oh, they did two of them. Okay. One for, I guess, the thirteen, and then another one for the rest. Okay, that makes sense. All right, did you grab that pen and paper? Yep, I got it. Okay. So on the top, I'll just have you write down my full name. Uh, this is required by the state of Idaho. I have to give you um, my information here as an insurance agent. Um, so my uh, full name is Benjamin, and my last name is St. Pauli. So that's S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, T as in Tom, P as in Pam, A as in Apple, L as in Lucy, and Y as in Yellow. You got that? Uh, yeah, okay. A P A L Y. L is in Lucy and Y is in yellow. Okay. Okay. And then my national producer number is 210-191-79. And the website to look that up is nipr.org. N-I-P-R? Yep. Dot org? That org, yep. So that was two zero one? Yep, that was two one zero. Oh two one zero. Correct. One awesome. nine one four nine? Yes. Yeah. Alright. Um so is this your first time going through the mortgage protection process or have you done this before? Uh this is my first time. Okay. Um, so it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, I'm just going to spend two minutes asking you some health and financial questions. And based on that, it's my job as the medical underwriter to run it through all the carriers in the state of Idaho that offer the mortgage protection. Uh, the reason for that is to figure out some various options we'll qualify for. And then God willing, we are able to figure out something that would make sense financially for you and your family. I'll present those various options to you. And then from there, you just let me know what comfor uh, what's comfortable and affordable. Uh, and then we'll simply submit a request for coverage. Make sense? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, perfect. Uh, so as far as the um, medical questions go, are you have you had any surgeries in the past 10 years? No. Okay, perfect. Um, and then for... Um, Age, I have here 32, is that correct? Uh, 33. 33. Okay, what was your date of birth? Okay, and then uh, what do you, uh, what do you um, weigh and what's your height? Uh, roughly 250. Okay. And 5'10". 5'10", okay. All right, and then... uh. Occupation? Uh, maintenance welder. Maintenance welder, okay. Is that dangerous? Uh, dangerous job? No, I don't think so. Not really? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, they, they, um, if you're obviously, if you're a professional skydiver, it's, you know, they, they grade it differently on what you qualify for, you know what I mean? Right. Um, okay. What was the monthly? Well, uh, done that. Yeah. <laughs> what was the monthly income? Uh, uh, I can't. I'm not sure. I don't the top ball, of my head. You can ballpark it, like on average. Uh, I make twenty five an hour. Okay. Uh, forty hours a week. Okay. Math. I'm not the best at math here. Let me pull out a calculator. I'm not either. That's <laughs> why I told you. <laughs> I got a calculator here. All right, calculator is our friend today. All right, so that's a thousand a week times four. That's forty. Four thousand a month. Does that sound about right? Okay. And so, did that sound about right? Four thousand a month. Uh, probably. Okay. And are you taking any medications, prescriptions? No. Nope. Perfect. Uh, do you smoke? No. I do that. You chew? Okay. Thank you for being honest with me. <laughs> yep. Alright. 
And then um, we'll just have some questions about the mortgage here. So the full balance here, what would that be? Because I only show the 13,000 over here. Oh, well, it's 100, 191,000, I think, is the total. Okay. Roughly. Perfect. And that's, that's a, a 30 year term? Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. Any, um, uh, let's see, DUIs or felonies? No. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, what was the monthly payment on your mortgage? 1500 Okay. And do you have any other assets that could replace income like 401ks, IRAs, stocks, or bonds? Uh, I got 401ks. Okay. And do you have any other life insurance outside of work? Uh, just the one through work. Okay. Perfect. Now, um, Basically, like what I said earlier, I'm the, I'm the medical underwriter that was assigned to you here. So I'm the one that's going to be helping you uh, with the mortgage protection today. Now, um, to tell me, what is there? what do you think is the main reason that you're interested in getting the mortgage protection today? Usually, most people, it's to protect their, their loved ones, their family, spouse. Uh, say there's a girlfriend. Yeah. Do you, you, you have any kids? Any, any, uh, other, any other reasons you'd want to? Get this type of protection just to make sure they're good i guess mm -hmm. so your parents are they um do they have any responsibility over it if you were to pass away or just your girlfriend just my girlfriend just your girlfriend okay so that's it okay all right so just your girlfriend so right now you're telling me if something were to happen to you today or tomorrow your girlfriend doesn't have anything covered right now Uh, what do you mean? So, if something were to happen to you today or mo tomorrow, you don't have any coverage in place right now for her, for the for the mortgage. Um, we had some lady called and then set something up. Okay. So some you have talked to someone before. Yes. Oh, you just remember now, or are you already? Because I asked you before if you uh, if you went through the mortgage protection process before you said it was the first time. Oh, I thought you meant just the mortgage process. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So, did you get end up getting that coverage yet? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Let me update your file here then. Uh, what was the which one of our carriers did you end up going with? Uh, I'm trying to look it up right now. Okay. Mutual of Omaha. Okay, perfect. Did you get the policy packet in the mail? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, was it a complete plan or was it a partial plan? Uh, I think it was a complete plan. Okay. Full coverage. Okay. And how much did you, are you paying per month? Uh. Monthly premium was fifty-eight dollars and ten cents. Fifty-eight dollars and ten cents a month. Okay. Um. Okay. Gotcha. So, it looks like um, yeah, one of our junior underwriters helped you here with coverage, but he didn't update your file here. Um. Is there? Let's see. So fifty-eight dollars a month, and it's full coverage. I'm just gonna check here, make sure he got you the best possible plan. I'll put you on a hold for one second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gavin, do you, do you know what the length of the term is on that one? Uh. So thirty. Yeah. I think so. I I can't remember exactly. That was back in December. Yeah. We set it up. Okay. And when you guys picked out that policy, was that was that just what fit in your budget the best, or did they give you options like um, other uh, options that were more or less expensive, or was it just they gave you one option that was it? Uh, 
Oh, they gave us a bunch of options. That okay. was the best one that fit us. Okay. So they gave you options that with like living benefits as well, but you just wanted the cheaper option? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Got it here. Just checking here. Yeah, she had a, she set up like a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. for me and my girlfriend. Okay. And we, she went through a bunch of stuff. Do you, so. know, do you remember which one of her agents it was, what, the, what her name was? Yeah, I think she was in not in one not in my office, but I I think I know what what office she's in. Um, let's see here. So the that was at full coverage. That was one ninety one thousand. Okay, because what's shown here in my end is that uh, one of our other carriers, Prosperity, it would be uh, forty eight bucks a month. I don't think she she probably didn't have access to Prosperity. She probably only had access to Mutual of Omaha. Now. Um, what I can do here is I can see if we can get you approved with with uh, Prosperity, but uh, they're a little bit more strict. But it should it'll take about uh, ten minutes here uh, to go through and submit that application. Is that something you want to see if you get approved for? Uh, no. No, this one's all right. I think. Okay. I don't um, this does have living benefits though. So if anything were to happen to you or you get, you know, sick, you know, have cancer, um, or, you know, that, that's usually the, you know, being as young as you are, that's the biggest cause of foreclosures is actually, you know, it's not from, you know, passing away. It's, it's from, uh, getting sick or cancer. And, um, you most likely, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to qualify for, for the other coverage that, um that doesn't have that you know what i mean okay um, so that that other one's a better yes this one's better and and has it's gonna cost you less every month it doesn't it doesn't take that long to switch you over here uh all right okay um now what was your middle initial here okay J, okay. Yep. And your beneficiary's name? And the last name was, how do you spell it? All right, and uh, what was her date of birth? Did you end up, uh, does she work as well? Does she have coverage or is it just you? Uh, she works, but she doesn't have like insurance, I guess. Oh, okay. All right, we should take care of her too. What Do you know when she'll be home? I'm not sure. To be around tomorrow. Okay. On the call back tomorrow. Yeah, I can call you back tomorrow. Okay. Is that mo? All right. And then um, I'm gonna see here if Prosperity partners with your bank here. Is it um? Did you open your bank over in Idaho or was it a different state? Idaho. Idaho. Okay. What bank? Who do you bank with? Uh, U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank. In okay. Yeah, I have the routing number here. Looks like it's one two three one zero three seven two nine. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. All right. One two three one zero three seven two nine. And uh, either pull up like a banking app or a blank check and confirm that account number. Okay, I'm gonna read that back to you. Yep. Okay. And then uh, your social. And then um, the last one is driver's license number. All right, perfect. Uh, just a couple more minutes here. And what's a good email address to send the documents over to? Uh, I'll just put you on a hold here while it's processing. I'll let you know when it's ready and you can write down the new details the new policy and then uh, we'll make sure uh we uh set it up for the same date as the mutual of omaha do you know um what day that your payment is set up for mutual of omaha so we can set it up to be the same day uh i think it's the fifth the fifth okay right, i'm gonna put you on full here uh, hey was were you born in idaho is that your state of birth 
I was born in. Gonna get back on hold. We'll be right back. All right. All right. Sent you a six-digit code to your texts. Can you confirm that code for me, please? Uh, one four one. Okay. Two five four. Be right back. Okay, we're all set. It just sent you one more code. Can you please read me the six digit code you just got? 328228. Two, okay, um, so I'll know within one to five business days if you're approved here. Um, I'll have you write down the details uh, of your coverage here. Okay. Okay, so the name of the company is Prosperity. That's P. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then pull up your document here. All right. Um, so the premium per month is forty-eight sixty-three, and that will be on the yeah. sixty-three. Yep, and that'll be on April fifth. That'll be your starting date and your recurring date. Okay. Okay. And then you're gonna write down your benefits that are associated with this. So this comes with living benefits. So. That means um, any situation where you're disabled, cancer, heart attack. I'll go slow so you can write this all down. Okay. Uh, stroke, disability, or any other sort of critical, chronic, or terminal illness. Okay. And this is a 30-year policy, so that means in 2054, you'll be due for switching... Uh, to a new policy, but I'll, I'll be your agent here for life here. So um, I'll make sure you get taken care of. Just make sure you save my name and number here. So my name is Benjamin St. Pauli. Yeah. Uh, my last, uh, my phone number here, just write that down as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm essentially going to be your liaison for anything regarding your insurance here. Um, so if you ever need to make any adjustments to the policy, just give me a call. That way you're not you're not gonna have to wait on hold with Prosperity. I'll be able to handle everything for you at any time. Okay. Um, and then the last thing here is gonna be the security code. Um, the security code for you is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so those are the details of your coverage. Uh, make sure when you see that. Um, a hundred and ninety-one thousand. That don't be alarmed. That's your mortgage protection policy. So that's going to be in your policy pack in the mail uh, within the next seven to ten business days. Um, if you don't get it within that time, just make sure to give me a call. And we'll get another one mailed out to you. Um, okay. Make sure has my contact because God forbid uh, when something happens to you, I'm the guy that's going to be you know calling these insurance companies and making sure she's taken care of and paid out fast. Okay. okay. Um, lastly, that security code I gave you, just make sure to keep that safe. Cause if anyone calls you, uh, claiming to be me and they don't have that code, uh, just make sure you hang up and block their number cause they're probably trying to scam you or get some information. Um, so that's all on my part today. Um, are there any other questions or anything we went over? Um, yeah, what was the last four of your phone number again? Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> or not. Yeah. Correct. All right. All right. Perfect. Okay. Um, sounds good. I'll be uh, calling you about in a year or so to check in on your benefits because every year, uh, when the year, uh, when we get to the new year, we get new uh, policies that come out, new rates. Um, so every year I check in, uh, make sure everything's up to date. Uh, but for today, okay. it was a pleasure helping you and serving you. Um, give me a call or shoot me a text if you need anything else, okay? All right. All right. Have a, have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you in a year. Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, it's Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage, and we handle the mortgage protection for North America Savings Bank and your file. Yeah, your file here that's associated with your property over on 531 Lewis Avenue just came across my desk and it's showing me it's incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you close with North America Savings Bank, 
we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. So you actually you did the right thing. You filled out the card, you mailed it back into us. But yeah, but for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. So I'm the manager in the area here. Yep. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? Just you. Um, so would you be just be insuring yourself or would it be your kids or parents or what family members? Okay, perfect. Um, so I just had a few minutes before my next call. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I just had a few minutes before my next call. Uh, just grab a pen and paper for me real quick and it should take about 10 minutes or so to get this knocked out. How's your day going? That's good. Uh, show up uh, to get, get it looked at. <laughs> oh, really? What's wrong with it? I don't know. I, I went out to uh, start this morning and uh, it wouldn't start. And I had it plugged in because it's a diesel. Hmm. I don't know if I got a if I got a short somewhere, but does it sound like it's trying I, to start, like with the battery, or is it not just no, making no? No, it, it, it was dead. Oh, it's dead battery. Okay. And, and my batteries are not even a year old. Huh. So I don't know if I have a, a short somewhere. You know what I mean? Uh, so I hope it's not too serious. Uh, you know. Yeah, I hope not either. Hopefully it's just the yeah. battery. Yeah. All right, did you grab a pen and paper? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm the medical underwriter that was assigned to you. So I'm the one that's going to be helping you with the life insurance today. Uh, my name is Ben, like Ben Franklin. Uh, so my NPN that you'll write down here as well, that's 210-191-79. So tell me what why are you interested in getting the uh, insurance today? Uh, well, see this this is where I'm uh, this is where I'm uh, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, I I I didn't I, you know I I didn't call anybody for insurance. Oh well, if you're anything like me, I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So it's possible you filled out <laughs> <laughs> it's possible you filled out that form in the mail and sent it back into us. Back when you close with the with the loan for your home. Uh, so. Uh, so you don't have any family members that you would want to, you know, you know, protect them from the burden of the mortgage payments. Uh yeah, uh, you you could put my son. I, I, I guess we could do this. Mm -hmm. You know that that that'd be great. Okay. You know, uh, What's your son's name? Uh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Um, so, so you're telling me now if something were to happen to you today or, or tomorrow, your son doesn't have anything, you don't have anything in place for your son right now? Uh, no. Okay. Wow. Uh, other than, uh, you know, where, uh, where I work and, and you know, he can get, uh, okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have the work coverage, which covers you just for accidents. Uh, yeah. Okay. Or, or death. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So this coverage here, it, it's protection against death, illness, or financial catastrophe. So if anything happens to you other than an accident, this would cover you as well. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. So, um, uh, looks like here. So I have your, your name is. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know which program you'll qualify for here today but I'm gonna do my best to help you um, Brooks we have a lot of companies we work with unlike okay. some other people you might I don't know if you've spoken to any other agents before but we don't work with one carrier we work with everybody um, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. so what that means is we're gonna find you the best program that you qualify for today uh, for your right. health and your age okay um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm getting old are you <laughs> how young yeah. are you <laughs> I, I, I turned 60 in September. So. Oh, wow. The big six. Oh, look at that. All right. Um, that's, all right. that's not too bad. Not, not bad at all. You sound pretty young on the phone. Yeah. Um, yeah so. so that leads me to my next question here. Have you talked to any other agents before, or am I the first person you've talked to? No, I mean, you, you're the first person. Okay. Yeah. So. Perfect. Um, so what did you say uh, you did for work here? 
I'm just gonna start going through the inventory here. Of, I have a couple of different questions I have to ask you to see what fits for you. Um, so what did you say you did for work? I work at uh, 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 Foster's uh, plant here in Soda Springs. Okay. Foster's, is that like the uh, the drink? Uh, no, no, no. It's like a bot. This okay. Is the, this is Elemental Faucet, and it goes into oh, fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. Faucets, okay. Let's hear that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And um, what would you say ballpark is like your monthly income? Uh, gross or uh, net? Oh, um, by gross, are, do you have like expenses involved in your job? Uh, no, no, I don't. Oh, okay. What do you mean? Oh, are you talking about ta after after tax? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, after tax. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, after, after tax. Mm hmm. Uh, it, it's uh. Uh, I gross about, uh, well, after tax, I, I, I take home a month, probably, uh, anywhere between, depending on overtime, mm -hmm. uh, 41 to 4,500. Okay. Month. All right. I'll just put 4,250 here. All right. And do you smoke? Uh, no. All right. God bless. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, and what was your height and weight? Uh, I'm six foot. Six foot. Uh, 172. 172. Okay. And, um, not bad for a 60 year old. No. Yeah. That's really good. Actually. 172. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. So medical questions here. Do you have any surgeries that you've had in the past 10 years? Uh, no, I, well, yeah, uh, sorry, mm. I, I had a, uh, Hard to remember. <laughs> uh, a, sur a surgery on my, uh, on my elbow, mm. I had some, uh, uh, some, uh, bone spurs that's pushing on my, uh, on my, sounds painful, <laughs> but anyway, I had my elbow operated on, so, wow. no, I... and that's it, that, that's it. How'd so, that, how that affect you when that happened? Did you have to stop working for a while? Oh yeah. It, it, it put me out for, uh, uh, two weeks, but you know, just, just cause of the surgery. Yeah. And then, and, uh, now it's, uh, now it's all, it's all good. Right. What yeah. I was trying to say is my, the bone spurs were uh, pushing on my nerves. Oh gosh. Yeah. And, and, and it was, uh, making it, you know, numb. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I couldn't feel so wow yeah so you can see how like if something happens where you need surgery uh it's good to have something in place where you can have like a supplemental income well, well and, and and I do oh you do after work I do okay so they they did you have income coming in while you had that surgery oh yeah because I went on uh yeah I do that's yeah. good that's all I'm making sure here uh, the only thing is, and there's some cases where, you know, if you were to get something which was much worse than that, where you, you wouldn't be able to return to work, like if you had a terminal illness, that's where some coverage like this would, you know, you can probably see uh, uh, you would lose your, your work coverage if you ha had to stop working entirely. Um, right. And that's what you, people usually, this coverage comes in handy. Uh, what other surgeries did you have? Was that it? That's just in the last 10 years, yeah. Okay. And then are you taking any medications? Uh, high blood pressure medication. Okay. All right. High blood pressure, and that's it? That's it. Very good. Very good. All right. And then let's see here. Um, no uh, heart attack, stroke, cancer, any of that? Diabetes? Uh, okay. Not yet. Okay. Thank God. Yeah. All right. And now for your mortgage, do you know what your current balance is? Uh, it's, it, it's about 165. Okay. Perfect. And um, is that a 30 year term? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I refinanced and uh, had, had some financial difficulties in my, mm. in my time. And, and well, you, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Really? Yeah. What happened? Oh, 
Oh, you got the board. That was just recently. So. Oh really? Uh, anyway. Uh, Everything. Yeah. Uh, so, was that? Um, I'm not the only one in the world that gets divorced. Of course. You know. So. How is? Uh, how are you handling that? Oh, sorry, I was on mute on accident. How are you handling that divorce? Uh, pretty good. That's good. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Uh, damn near thirty years. Wow. Wow, you yeah. guys were married a long time. Um, yeah. So what was your, you think the value is for the house now if you were to sell it today? It, it, uh, and matter of fact, mm -hmm. matter of fact, I, I, I'm having a, a appraiser come in. Oh, okay. There you go. And and, uh, and uh, I could give you the exact amount. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's like between 320 and 340. Okay. So you're having, uh, mm -hmm. so you're having the yeah, appraiser. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having a appraiser come in. Yeah. Or is that because you're trying to have it sold or? Uh, yeah, and, and you know I'm trying to give my uh, ex-wife, uh, you know, uh, half of it. it it's just a, mm. it, it's a goddamn mess. Yeah, yeah, you're still going through the divorce process, right? Right. Okay, right. understood. Um, and then what yeah. would you say is the uh, monthly payment for the mortgage? Yeah, the uh, thousand eighty-seven. Oh, perfect. You know exactly what yep. it is. All right. Yep. Excellent. All right, and so you're definitely selling this house. Is that what it's looking like, or is well, it there's a chance uh, you might keep I, it? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to or mm -hmm. not. Uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, all depends on what I, you know, what uh, ah. I'm raised for and what I can get out. You okay. Know? So. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. All right. And so now just moving on to figuring out what your financial situation is. How many bills do you think you have saved up? If, for how many months of bills do you have saved if you have, all of a sudden you have zero income? Like what would you have to live off of today? Uh, <laughs> so this is, you know, in a situation where you had a critical illness or any kind of financial catastrophe like a market. So. So what you're mm -hmm. asking is how, how many what's the amount of bills I have? Right. Just I, worst case scenario, yeah. something in the world were to happen, or if you were to get a critical illness, what do you have saved? Uh, I say, uh, you know, I say around thirty two hundred dollars. You know. Okay. I do. I wow. Do. So it would be a pretty tough spot if like the world. Was oh shit. Going to you know we gone to world war tomorrow, or if you got cancer <laughs> or something. Oh okay. uh, yeah. All okay. Right, right. All right. Cool. Well, not cool, but all right. So. No, no, <laughs> maybe, maybe not that, maybe not that much, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And, and it's just off my, I don't have the, you know, I don't have the figures here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. That's, that's so. fine. If it's a ballpark, if, if it's a couple thousand, um, yeah, it's definitely, we need to get you some protection here. If something in the world were to happen or if you were to get sick, um, and you don't have any 401ks, IRAs, stocks, bonds, anything like that? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Okay, you have a 401k? Yep. And do you know how much you have saved in your 401k? I have, uh, I don't know. I've been on vacation trying to get this, uh, everything worked out here. So, okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, a pretty decent amount, would you say, or not really? Uh, not really. Okay. No. Okay. All right. So... Let's see here. So it looks like your mortgage is one sixty five. I'm gonna go check here with all of our um, carriers here and see what options I can find. Um, okay. as, as far as with your agent health that I have here, and I'll I'll be back with you in about uh, five minutes. Okay. All right, man. All right, cool. Oh no problem. I was just working on your uh, options here. Um, I'm almost done here. I'm about halfway done. I just needed your date of birth. All right. I'll be right back with you. No, you're good. I, if you'd rather not be on the phone while you wait, it's totally fine. I can put you back on hold here. And I just went dead. Oh, okay. Just like your car, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just finish up here. I'm almost done. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, yeah, I work with AmeriLife. Uh, we're a hundred year old company. We're basically a brokerage that's connected to all the major carriers like Mitchell of Omaha, Foresters, Prosperity, John Hancock. I'm sure you've heard of some of those companies before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. 
Okay, just, yeah, I'm going through all the carriers right now and just getting you options on uh, all different varied options with different benefits. And then I'm, once I'm done getting these all here to you, I'm going to explain them all to you. Okay. I got, uh, I got my friend just pulled up here uh, oh, okay. to get my truck uh, and can yeah. he call me back later? Yeah. Um, would like in 20 minutes be good or do you need more time than that? Uh, probably an hour. An hour. That'd okay. be great. Okay. All right. I got, you know, I got my, this truck problem. And, yeah, of course. So take care of that. Can you give me a call back? Yeah, that's even better. Cause I, that gives me more time to get the best options here for you. All right. All okay. right. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, man. Hey, did you get your, uh, did you get your truck fixed up? Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I, I, uh, I was headed down to, uh, yeah, this morning, and uh, it, it was acting real weird, so I turned turned around to come back home. I didn't want to get stranded. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and so uh, I got a guy coming over here uh, in uh, uh, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, this should be quick. I have all the options here for you. Did you end up? Okay, did cool, end up, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry, sorry if I if I miss your call. i have just been so. Uh, 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 this i get it car yeah. car issues are not fun did it end up being the battery uh no uh, uh, well i don't know i i it might be the connections and i've looked at them mm -hmm. and and they're all secure but i don't know i can't i can't see back down in you know where they're hooked up okay so i don't know if it's just a if it's just a cable or 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 what huh. well we'll there, figure it out some, there's some there's some there's something that <laughs> We will figure it out then. All right. So, uh, do you have a pen and paper here? I can write these options down for you here. All right. Yeah. Hold on just okay. a second, dude. All right. So, okay. you're telling me your son would be your beneficiary, right? So, if anything were to happen yeah. to you, he would be the one that would be. Um, okay. So, yes. you know, God forbid if something were to happen to you, this is this is how it would work. So, there's I, I got you. Th all different ranges of different things that do, you know, different policies that do different things. So uh, the first type would be just a death benefit. This is the cheapest type of, uh, of insurance we have here for your mortgage. Yeah. Um, right. So uh, if anything, when you get, when you get sick, this isn't for that. This is just death. Um, so okay. this would be, so if you wanted to do uh, just three, it, the lowest I could do is three quarters of the mortgage. And this is the lowest option here. That'd be sixty nine bucks a month, and so if anything were to happen to you, you were to pass away, um, you get uh, your son would get a hundred k to put towards the mortgage. So it's about three quarters of your mortgage. Now, yeah. um, if you wanted to cover the full mortgage, it'd be a hundred and twelve bucks a month. Got it. Yeah, one twelve. Yep, yeah, one twelve. All right, and now that's for the 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 uh, only death benefit option. Uh, and that's with GTL, that's the name of the company, Guaranteed Trust Life. Uh, now, yeah. the middle option here is called Prosperity. So um, they actually have the living benefits. So if you were to get sick, disabled, uh, you know, heart attack, stroke, any of those things where you're not able to work and you have like, uh, this could supplement a loss of income and pay for any medical bills. Um, so the half a mortgage, so this has, just to be clear, if you were to get sick or pass away, it's both. Um, so if you were, uh, that would be a half, so a half, half of your mortgage would be 148 bucks a month. So this is with prosperity, the living benefits. Let me know if I'm like confusing you at all. Am I, are you following me? Yeah, I'm following okay. you. Yeah. Um, so that'd be half mortgage would be 148 bucks a month. Um, and then the full mortgage would be 289 a month. Okay. All right. Now I did have what? some. And I did have some other options here, but if is that already kind of looking too expensive? Because I have bigger another option here. Uh, yeah, kind of. You know, okay. I, 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 I'm just gonna have to. I'll go over that with yeah. with what I got going on, right? Yeah, of course. That my goal here for you is to figure out what will be the most comfortable and affordable for you. And all I do today here is submit an application to see if you get approved. So you have about one to five business days to think it all over. But um, oh, you know, cool. yeah, so. Of course. So ballpark here, tell me like what's kind of popping out to you here. Uh, you know, I, I like to, you know, I like to, uh, the full death deal. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, uh, and 
Well, you know, and, and, and uh, even if, you know, even if I, like, like my neighbor across the street, his, uh, his uh, daughter, I mean, I, I think she's 20, mm-hmm. uh, got a brain tumor, right? Oh, gosh. And, 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 and I've, you know, I've been talking to him, and, and me and him has been friends for years. But the thing of it is, uh, you never know what's going to happen. You don't. Mm-hmm. That's that's my point, mm-hmm. and uh, so not just the death. I, I mean, even if I get sick, I, I mean, I'm almost sixty years old, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, I I I don't know what to, which one to go with. I don't. <laughs> yeah. So the the good thing here is we can always raise it or lower the coverage. You're not stuck to anything. I'll be your agent here for life. You save my number. I'm available. Pretty much. Every day, but Sunday. Sunday, I'm I'm with the family, you know. But oh, yeah. you know, call me anytime. We can always adjust it if it starts. You have like extra bills kicking in. You know, we can always change it. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. But for today, uh, I can just submit and see if we get you approved. Uh, which yeah, one do you want to yeah. start off with? Uh, let's do the uh, uh, let's do the the second one you said. Okay. Would that be the half or the full mortgage? Uh. The full, yeah, the full, because, you know, I don't, mm. I, I don't want no uh, burden on anybody, right. you know, I don't. So that was the one for the 289 a month? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll try that. Okay, sounds good. So what was your middle initial? Uh, L. L, okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. And yeah. what would be your uh, beneficiaries? Uh, does he have the... Does- does he have a, a middle initial? Uh, yeah, he, uh, D, D. Okay, okay. and um, has he, would he be get, taking 100% of the beneficiary? As a beneficiary? Yeah, okay. yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start filling this out here. Um, what I'll need here is your driver's license and um, let me see if we partner with your bank here. Who do you bank with? Uh, it's uh, Advantage Plus Credit Union. Advantage Plus. And was that opened over in Idaho, or did you open that bank account somewhere else? No, it's in Idaho. Oh, okay. Yeah. How did you spell it? Was Advantage what? Advantage, uh, uh, Advantage Credit Union. Advantage Plus. Advantage Plus. Yeah, credit, credit union. union. Okay, let me see here yeah. if we do. Uh, Advantage plus credit union. Okay, yeah. All right, so I have the routing number here. It's 324-173-587. If you grab either a blank check or the banking app, we can confirm if that's correct. Uh. What did, what did you say it was? Uh, three two four one seven three five eight seven. Hold on just a second. Okay. Uh, three two four one seven three five eight seven. Yep, that's what I have here. Yep. And then what would be the account? Yeah, okay. And then uh, what would be the account number? Uh, the account number is uh, one. Okay, and then social. Yeah. Uh, social security number. Uh. All right, and then uh, driver's license number. Do you have your driver's license? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on, let me get, grab it right now. Okay. Here. Is this address I have here on file out? Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Uh, driver's license uh, number. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. And then what's yep. a good email address for you? Uh, at gmail.com. Easy. All right, at gmail. Okay, and phone number's... Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. All right. So, no, no, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 yeah. I don't mean to uh, be uh, rude. Oh, sorry. Or anything. Uh, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to. Yeah. It is is uh is this legit or I'm getting or, or no. am I getting scammed? Absolutely legit. I can show you my uh, license here on uh on the Department of Insurance website if you'd like. Okay. Uh, no, no. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you know, there, there's just so many people, mm-hmm. uh, out there get scammed and, of and well, in your goddamn, uh, 
uh, line of work. You, you, sh- you should know that. I know. Yeah, it's 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 very apparent, and that's why I share everybody my license number, um, and you know, show you guys my license here because it's we're a highly regulated industry. I had to take tests, fingerprints, cool. everything to get you know this license. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So. But uh, uh, I'll text you over that. Do you? I'll, I want uh, you to. Don't want, uh, don't take that as. Hey, no, I uh, I appreciate the yeah. the the you know not to be rude. I was very I appreciate that, and I don't take any offense at all. Um, so I'm gonna send you this over because I I want you to have the peace of mind here, of the uh, okay. the link the link to the um, or the agent lookup, so you can look up my um my license here. I'll I'll walk you through. Okay. Here. All right. Cool. So well, you get, uh, yeah, go ahead. Put that put that in and and, and see if uh, you know yeah. where we're at. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know in one to five business days what comes through here, uh, and I'll okay. give you a call back uh, if it's approved. But um, I'll just need you to stay on the phone here because I'm going to send you like a six digit authorization code from uh, Prosperity as I go through the application here, and then oh, you okay. just, just read that out to me. Um, but as far as the um, the license lookup. I'll send you that through uh, through text, and you can check that out while I'm filling this out. Uh, here you go. Do you get text messages? Uh, yes. Okay. I haven't got it yet, but I do. Oh, hold on. It didn't send properly. Oh, there you go. One second. Uh, that wasn't a good link. There you go. That one should be it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Cool. All right. So if you click on that and then you go to uh, type in um, jurisdiction. Yeah. And you click on uh, your your state. Let's see. Here we go. Mm-hmm. I know. And then. Uh, then you do licensee. Okay. Oh. And then I'll okay. use type in my NPN. So my NPN is two one zero. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, it's easier to do uh, NPN than spell out my name for you. Uh, well, you know, I clicked on it and it says individual and... Mm-hmm. And you scroll down where it says enter one or more additional fields. Well, it says uh, uh, business uh, entity. Oh, yeah, you're going to click on individual, not business entity. Okay. And then, okay. yeah, now you can scroll down and type in NPN. It's, it's a lot easier than my last name. Uh, type in what? What uh, was that? The NPN. It's my N- NPN? Yeah, you see where it says NPN down there? No, I don't. Um, you, you put no, a... It, 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 won't, it won't let me fucking do anything. Oh, man. interesting. You, you, you have licensee and individual selected? Mm. And, and it goes right back to individual and business entity. Okay, let's try this then. I'll just share you a link of my screen and you can see my screen. <laughs> I'll just show you. Here you go. How about, uh, you get this link? Uh, not yet, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, I just go. got it. There you go. And then boom, now you're on my screen. So, yeah, Idaho, licensee. And I'll put in my MPN number here. That's 2101979. God, it's so small, I can't even see it. Oh, really? No. What? You can pinch and zoom in there. Oh, you lost it. Oh, yeah. sorry. So, yeah, here's my full name Benjamin Jacob Carmelson Polly. Yeah. You can see insurance producer active. And then you can see my active license. Oh, uh, yeah. Here's my business address, so if you're ever here in, uh, oh, actually it's in a different link here. Here you go. So you can see my business address here. If you want to come visit me in Tampa, come visit me at the office. <laughs> Tampa, Florida? Yep. Yeah, I love Florida. Oh, really? Have you been? Uh, yeah, I have. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, where, uh, where? I've been, well, I've been to, uh, I, I, I haven't been to Tampa. Uh-huh. I, I, I've, uh, uh, I've been there and got on a cruise ship one time. Oh, okay. We're out of Miami? Yeah, Miami. Yep. 
Oh yeah, they have tons of cruise ships over there. What was it, Royal Caribbean? What did you uh, what did you do? Yeah, Royal. Yeah, Royal. Yeah. yeah, those are nice. Those are nice cruises. There's, there's a, a well, and I have never sailed with. I went on three cruises, uh, and it's always been uh, Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. and, and, but uh, I can't say that they're better than any, uh, anybody else. I been on oh, true. I think they're the best. Uh, just from what my, I haven't been on any cruises, but um, I just from my seeing the advertisements, they just look like the best. Oh yeah, you know, and the uh, the food and and yeah, it's 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 cool, man. And they have lots of good food, and yeah, you, you oh, probably yeah, you, better, you, you better go. You probably gained a lot of weight on that crit on that cruise, huh? Actually, I didn't. No. <laughs> no, That's good. And, and they have, they have. Uh, the the last one I been was on. They had uh, chocolate covered strawberries. Yeah. Oh God, I love those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on the chocolate covered strawberries. Oh Jesus! Oh, and, Jesus. And, and, and and that that. And you can you can eat all goddamn night if you want. <laughs> but you controlled yourself. Is that what happened? <laughs> oh yeah. That's oh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah. That is good. Yeah. Well, that's why yeah. you're healthy here, because you. Uh, well, take... yeah. I, I think, uh, like I said, other than my blood pressure. But yeah. Anyway. Can't really control blood pressure. That's just kind of born with that. Oh, I know. I know. I know. All right. I'm just almost. I'm just getting through here. I'm not the best multitasker, so I'm getting through here. Give me a second. Yep. I can wait six foot. You're not very old. Yeah, no, I'm uh I'm twenty six. Just turned twenty six. Oh jeez. <laughs> I, I, you know I can. Well, you know it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I, I I'm not saying anything about your voice, but you know <laughs> you, uh, you you can tell by a person's voice uh how old they are, and, and, oh, really? and it's weird. Yeah. What, does my date of birth on here? Or where did you see I'm not very uh, old? I didn't, I didn't see it. Oh, you're just guessing? Uh, <laughs> I'm just guessing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you could tell I was younger from my voice? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yep. Yep, yep. Well, that's good. And I, 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 I probably sound like a, uh, an old bastard. Not really. You have a pretty youthful voice. But, anyway... So you're, uh, you said, I'm putting an occupation here. You said you're faucet manufacturers? Is that what it was? No. No, what's, what's, that, what's that? What was your occupation again? I, I didn't, you said faucet manufacturer? No, no, no. Uh, 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 and, and I thought I heard you wrong, but I thought, well, maybe not. No, I'm uh, phosphorus. Oh, phosphorus, like phosphorus. the, ah, like the compound. <laughs> Phosphorus. Oh, okay. That's P H O S P, right? Phosphorus. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Phosphorus. Yeah. You know, we, and, and we, you know, we use it in uh, fertilizer. Uh, yes. And, and, yeah. That's right. Okay. I was just, so, yes. Okay. I just learned about phosphorus the other day and how it's, uh, you know, such a valuable. Well, it's, it's, Commodity. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. And it's deadly. Is it? Oh, wow. So you have a pretty dangerous job? Oh, shit, man. If, 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 it's, if it hits uh, air, I mean, if it, if it hits air, it's uh, ignited. Oh. Oh, wow. Is oh, there man. Is there any, are there any like, works workplace-related deaths at your company recently? Uh, no, not, not with that, no. No, okay, good. They, they're pretty safe there. Okay, that's good. I'm just typing in your email. All right, when I talked to you earlier, uh, and I thought, God, he must say, and I thought, did he say faucet? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and when, right after I, I talked that, he said, oh, that's interesting. And uh, you know what? I, did? I thought, well, he must have. He must have heard know, me. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I thought right. faucets was interesting too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I just sent you that text over there. Let me know if you got that. And what is this about? Here, uh, just my. Uh, this is the six-digit code. Ten, 
What's that? This should be a six-digit code that Prosperity just sent you. The last thing that I did, uh, I got. Is it to you know two zero eight six zero four two six seven one? Yeah, it should have. Yeah. Went to your text. Hmm. Hold on. I mean, okay. you want to resend it? it? Didn't come through. All right. No. The, the, the... All right. I just sent it again. Let me know if that came through. Okay. All right. All right. If it doesn't work, I can do email. Nothing. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I okay. Got it. So I'll, I'll type it in right now. Uh, you just tell me here over the phone. I'm. I have the. I have it over oh. here. Oh. Uh, six five one. Six five one. Nine eight three. Nine eight three. Let me see. Perfect. Got it. Cool. Okay. Almost done. I, I might do it one more time. Sometimes it asks for it twice. Okay. All right. I just have to answer. All right. Yep. Just hang That's in there. All, it's all good. Just have to answer a few more questions here. Um, you haven't been hospitalized for high blood pressure, right? What's that, man? It's just asking me here, have you been hospitalized for high blood pressure? I know you said you have high blood pressure, but you haven't been hospitalized, right? Uh, no, no. Okay, good. Not yet. All right, thank God. <laughs> and then I'm almost done here. But, you know, none of this is final until I say yay or nay, right? Right. So when in one to two business days, or one to five business days, I'll let you know if we get approved. If you see the first draft for that come out of your yeah. bank, that means that's good news. That means you got approved. Uh, but I'll I'll right. call you to let you know, uh, most likely beforehand. Um, so it looks like. Well, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah. To throw out the you know yeah. the funds in there. I got I got funds, but okay. Yeah. Just to make sure I got enough in there to cover. Okay. Yeah, we want to make sure we don't you know, submit an application for something that's going to be, you know, hard for you to afford on a monthly basis. Is is this going to be right. kind of hard to stretch or did you want to do something lower? No, I, 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 well, I'll give you time I, to think I, about I, it. I'll give you time to think about I it. I don't know, dude. Okay. That's no problem. Let's, um, let's take it one step at a time. I want, you'll let me know next time we speak. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Trying to read what's on my screen at the same time while I talk. Uh, no, no, no. But it's, you know, it, 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 it's kind of nice knowing, mm -hmm. and, and I'll just have to see, but it's kind of nice knowing if, if, if uh, I tip over. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to have any birth, right? Of course. My son. Nothing. Right. And, um, yeah, and I'll be your agent for life here. So what's really cool about that is having your own agent here instead of just going directly to an insurance company is uh, you don't have to wait on any 1-800 numbers, no waiting on hold. You just call me anytime you make any changes and I can make changes for you. Okay, all right, all right. I'm just typing in your son's info now. Just hang in there. I don't want to get anything wrong here. Um, do you have an address for your son? I want to make sure I get all of his info here. I, I, I don't. He, he, well, uh, and he lives in, uh, Utah. Okay. Okay. I could put it. And so I, I, I don't know. I know where he lives. Okay. I, I don't know his, uh, address. I don't. Do. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll just make sure he has my phone number and I have his. So if anything happens, uh, I'll be the one that's handling everything here. That's why it's good to have a young agent here. So if anything ever happens to you, I'm, I'm going to be around. <laughs> to make sure I can oh, yeah. step on the insurance company's throats and make sure you get paid out. Oh, there you go. There you go. So. All right. And, um, what's his, do you have his phone number? What's that? What's a good phone number for him? I'll save here. Uh, uh, oh, uh, hold on a second. Okay. God, the thing of it is, you know, with cell phones anymore yeah. and texts and stuff, I, I don't remember fucking cell phones. <laughs> I don't. It's kind of so. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on a second. I will get that to you right uh, here, right shortly. Okay. Sorry about my language too. Hey, no, so. you're you're so so polite, brother. It's all good. <laughs> I I I. It's a blessing, really. I don't have always the most polite people I speak to, so it's really refreshing. No. It is uh, 208. 208. All right. Yeah. Okay. Next. 
so so anyway uh so if uh if i happen you know you know if i happen to tip over mm-hmm. uh so this is uh it, it'll pay off my mortgage right yes and the good news here is really cool is uh you're getting coverage for your full 165 as of now but as your mortgage gets paid off, let's say if something would happen to you in 10 years, you're still getting that full 165. So he'll have the mortgage paid off plus, um, you know, whatever's extra. Oh, cool. All yeah. right, cool. cool. That's super cool thing about it. He ain't going to have to worry about, uh, he ain't going to have to worry about Yeah, it, so. or bur- burial expenses or all that should be. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Almost cool. done. I'm uh, once I'm done here, I'll just have you write down all the info here. But I'm almost done of the uh, what I have here submitted. I wish I was better at multitasking. I would have been done by now. <laughs> sorry oh, about. Sorry good. for the wait. You're good, dude. Yeah. Thank you. I don't have a uh, diet Pepsi. <laughs> awesome. I love there me some go. love me some diet Pepsi. Oh, what's that? So I love me some diet Pepsi. Good, good uh, caffeine. If I ever need caffeine. Oh yeah. Well, you know they say diet diet's worse on you than the regular diet. And I I prefer diet. I, I don't even care what they say. <laughs> I don't either. I'd rather either. not get. I'd rather not get fat over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know the. Yeah. The alternative is you get cancer from the diet stuff, but I'd rather be fat, skinny with cancer than, than fat and healthy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we think alike, dude. Right, we think alike. Yeah. And the best of your knowledge and belief. No, my number. Okay, now it's, I'm going to send you one more code, the six-digit code. It is asking to do it okay. twice. Yep, should be coming through right now. Oh, you got it. Got it. Okay. Let's say, uh, well, do I, uh, do I click, uh, click on the uh, link? Oh, no. no, just read the number out. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 732. Okay. 701. 701. Okay. All right. All set. So I'll have you write down on your paper here the uh, details. So, yeah. all right, all right. So the name of the company is Prosperity Life Group, or is it Prosperity? Yeah, yeah, Prosperity Life Group. And then the premium per month is two eighty nine. And then I set your, yeah. yep, I set your recurring bill date is the eighteenth. And then uh, yeah. the benefit you have benefits, so you have living benefits. So that uh, means, yes, I do. So that means. Well, uh, what do you mean? So what that means is, yeah. if you were to get sick, you can get. If you get critically terminally ill, they will pay out the full amount while you're alive. If you have some kind of, uh, not terminally ill, but like let's say you got injured at work and you can't work, you can take twenty five percent of the policy three times. So if you get, you know, you break, you break your back. This year, you can get 25%. If you break your back again next year, you get 25% again. You can do that three times. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So that's good. So that'll, that'll cover. Yeah, I got, you know, I got, I got, what are you saying? I got good insurance. I do. Okay. Yeah. So this is, I mean, it's good to have because you can cover extra medical bills. I mean, cover loss of income. You can use that money for whatever you want. This gets paid to you instead of like a hospital or something like health insurance. Right, 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 right. So that's what's better about it. Okay. And then, right. um, yeah, and then my last last thing here, just write down my name and number. Okay, here we go. Uh, you have my name written out still? Uh, where the hell is it? I don't know if Give I ever... Give it to me again. It's Benjamin St. Pauli. You know how to spell Benjamin? Uh, yeah, I know how to spell Benjamin. I, got, okay. I, I had a uh, nephew named okay. Benjamin. Oh, really? Okay. And what's your... Last name is St. Pauli. S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, E as in Edward. And then um, you're... you got that okay? Yeah, yeah. 
And all right, make sure when you hang up that you save it in your phone so it's not just on the paper too. So what I usually would recommend, I recommend people do is write my name and then also parentheses to like put like insurance guy. That way you don't have to memorize my name. You can just type in insurance guy and your contact and I pop up. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Man. And um, last thing here is just your security code. So if anyone else tries to call you pretending to be me or they say I'm they're my manager, that's not true. Um, they're just trying to scam you or, you know, this is Jonah. <laughs> oh, what's going on, dude? I don't even, oh, what's up, Jonah? I heard a lot about you, man. Yeah. Well, good things I hope. <laughs> yeah. Good things. Yeah, man. For sure. Right. Man. Of course. Of course. Cool. So, so MJ? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, nice to meet you. Um, I mean, Ben had, uh, Ben had great things to say about you as well. Um, and I mean, dude, me and Ben, we haven't been working together. Super long. I mean, a few months now, but I mean, he's coming to get it and he's been crushing it off the bat and super hard worker. So anytime he asks me to hop on a call, I know it's going to be an intentional conversation. So it's, uh, to get into it, Ben said that you're currently doing knocking, doing solar and also day trading. So yeah, I do tr uh, solar on the side and I do full-time day trading. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, so Ben said, is you're interested in something that's you know, more so remote that you can do in addition um, to day trading? So, yeah, because I usually day trade early morning. I'm off by like 10. And then I got from 10 and up, and I do absolutely nothing besides ministry work if I have to get out there and do ministry. Um, okay. So I, I've been doing a solar right after trading, but it's just like, kind of like the energy, that solar broke situation, which kind of sucks. So like that happens a lot, a lot sure. of cancellations. And then uh, Ben just told me like all about this insurance thing and how like more productive it is and you know, how it, it, it it's a, a essential for everyone versus, you know, a luxury for people like solar, you know? Totally. So, sure. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And just, just so you can get a gauge on your situation, is, is this like completely your first time looking into the insurance industry or do you, looked into it yeah it's complete rookie man super sure. fresh and don't know anything about it you know but i'm willing to learn cool man we're a brokerage so when we work with that we don't just work with one company we work with the top you know 25 a rated you know life insurance carriers we have access to all this all the products and the bread and butter of what we do is we simply call leads and all lead is is somebody to either fill out a mail or request, fill out a piece of mail, mail it in, or fill that out online. 13 question survey regarding life insurance, requesting life insurance. They sent it in. We get back to them. And basically we're simply calling people that raise their hand and said, please help me with life insurance. So we purchase leads, we buy them in batches of 100, 200 leads, wherever the case is. And we give them a call and help them figure out, you know, what company, what option makes the most sense for the life insurance. So, you know, we've brought a ton of guys. I mean, Ben, I'll tell you, and he was at our lock -in, but we brought a ton of guys over from solar in the past year. And we, the reason, and you know, I mean, I'm thinking of solar. I mean, there's, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a lot of people making a lot of money. I have nothing against solar, but everybody just to give you some perspective, everybody we brought on from the solar industry, as long as they're applying the same work ethic, we have increased their income across the board. And number one is because a, and we have like a very structured, very thorough training program, support system, help, great culture. Uh, but that's definitely one piece of it. But the main piece, and to be honest with you, is just simply the the, the business map and the system. It's, you know, when you're, mm -hmm. because A, number one, we're virtual. So back in the day, you know, same as solar, we'd have to, you know, we'd call the leads and we'd drive out there and. You can do the appointment in person, but driving out to someone's home and maybe no show or your schedule, driving out the back. So like we're virtual. So A, we're able to run two, three times the amount of appointments. But B, and the main reason is, dude, we're only calling people to fill out form. It's like, I mean, if you're only knocking the doors of people that are fill out a form for solar and are interested in solar, you're just naturally going to sell more solar. Huh. Yeah. That's basically what we do here is we're only reaching out to people that express interest in our product. And then how they the options. So they have, so on the front end of it, just to give you perspective. So on the front end, they have more luck, more efficiency, more leverage, but they also have leverage on the back end of controlling the, of controlling the process. 
and actually controlling to controlling the business. Where I mean, you sell a solar deal, and you know, let's say it's great, they love it, everything's awesome, and then the installers come a month after they were told they'd come, or they leave oil in the driveway, or they need new roofs, they need new electrical, or they talk to Aunt Sally and Sally's been sold a scam, so now they want to cancel. <laughs> or whatever the case may be, where there's a hundred scenarios that are outside of your control that aren't your fault, where it can go wrong and the client cancel the, the solar deal. Where this, it's they're simply approved on the spot and they're approved on the spot, so there's no follow-up, so there's no pending requirements, typically nothing like that. And then you're paid out, approved on the spot, they're billed you know, within a day or so, and then you're paid out a few days after that. So policies placed in force, they're approved, you know, pay the, pay the premium, you're paid out within the week. And so what I love about it is I don't have to worry about anybody else going in and messing up my business or messing up my process. And if a client ever calls me pissed off because something went wrong, it's, I know it's my fault and it's a hundred percent on me, which I love. <laughs> Long story short. That's great. Right. Love that, man. Yeah. Um, what happens when a customer decides can they cancel after signing up for a policy? Of course, yes, we definitely have chargebacks here. And so, okay, um, so how the chargebacks work here is the chargeback occurs in the first nine months of the policy. So, if oh. anything happens in the first nine months, you get a chargeback. Luckily, the, our business is prorated, so what that means is instead of them canceling six months in and getting a full nine month chargeback, it's you only have to pay that for the client for the pay. So if they paid the premium for okay. six months and then that do the math and they didn't pay for three months, so you get from the chargeback or whatever the case is. Um and then twenty percent, like this is agency wide across our entire agency, twenty percent of your business will fall off the books the first time, which is costing you. So more probably didn't be too pushy or you're not don't have a very good enough presentation I'm going to review that um if it's less you're either a really good so you have a lot of people on the team that are really good or to be honest with you more probable typical situation is you're just simply not selling enough and you sell the policies so factor in right around 20 percent cool um how does the because I, I keep hearing there's residuals how does that work is that based off of your team or is that based off of the policy that you sell both, but mainly based off the policies you sell. So if you sell so life insurance, what's great about it is obviously you get the full year's commission up front, which is awesome. And then every year after that on all of our whole life products, you get anywhere between a five to fifteen percent renewal on that pay. Ah, uh, gotcha. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. So every year um, I've got about eighty grand every year and just accident covers the drill. I mean, isn't a ton, but well, yeah, I was nice. expecting, and definitely not gonna can't complain about that. That's pretty cool. So, uh, I mean, I know this is probably a little harder to answer, but to make two hundred grand a year on life insurance alone, how many policies does that look like within a whole year? Great question. Um, so our typical policy commission is around. So our, our average commission is. Agency wide, we track it is thirteen hundred bucks. Um, okay. So round down, so I'll say about two hundred policies, two hundred grand. Yeah. And then you got to factor in like advances and are you saying like two hundred net or just two hundred two hundred grand in deposits? Two hundred grand net. Two hundred grand net. Okay. So obviously, so you're gonna have taxes, you're gonna have cost leads. So it'd be closer to two fifty. I would say three hundred just to be safe. About three hundred okay. policies and chargebacks, up to spend taxes, yeah. that three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Because if I can replace my, my solar money, I was what I, I would do about two hundred a year with solar. If I could replace insurance with solar, that'd be amazing. You know, you know how the insurance game works. It's yeah, it's, it's tough to make two hundred grand. You know, but yeah, um, but it, with insurance, it's tough. You said. No, with solar. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, just because I mean, just I mean the sales. Whole, yeah, sales, just the whole process, you know. Okay. Um, but like, for example, like Ben was amazing at 
solar, you know, and he's killing it. He came over to work with you guys and he's just like killing it. I'm just like, wow, but what are you doing? You know, so like he definitely made me pick a lot of interest because we go, we go through that solar coaster, you know, we all go through that. So if three deals cancel, you know, you got to go try to get another three or six within that week. Um, so with Ben just coming out here and just well, I'll tell you this. right on fly. Sure. Well, yeah, yeah. If, I could, if I could butt in there. So just to give you some context and perspective, and to be fair, like my first year I was right. Like I was working 12 hours a day. Uh, but my first year in this industry, to give you some perspective, I was able to deposit $548,000, over half a million first year. Amazing. So I probably netted about thirty fifty dollars that. You know, like I said, after taxes, chargebacks, et cetera. Um, yeah. And our average, I mean, our average agent is, you talk about 300 policies in a year, our average agent's getting a sale of that. And that's a great average. And you seem pretty sharp. Like, you seem like a dog to me. So I'd be fair to say you're above average. Um, but our average full-time agent is doing about a sale a day, which would equate to right around that 200 grand a year net. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, it's like anything, you know, like I said before, I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's definitely sales and you, know, you got really got to work for it. If anybody tells you that you're going to make a bunch of money from your pajamas and sipping coffee and it's not that hard and you're just calling yeah. people that, that request it and want it and da da da, like they're lying to you. That's not the case. It's like anything. You got to grind. But as long as you're willing to grind, it's, the money is certainly there. For sure. Absolutely, man. Cool, man. Um, Appreciate that. Leads, do you pr purchase them from different companies? How does that work? Yeah, great question. So the leads, we generate some leads in-house. Um, a lot of the leads, we outsource it, but we buy them directly from lead vendor companies. So we work with about five companies. Um, we've been working with them for a long time. They're reputable. They're very high quality leads because, I don't know, have you ever worked leads before, MJ? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So, I mean, I'll be, I'll be super frank with you. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're solar leads or insurance leads. Like, I mean, you, you probably know, already know this. I mean, eighty-five percent of leads out there are just shitty, just resold a hundred times. It's just very yeah. low quality, low intent leads. So, it's very important, especially in the insurance industry, that you have proper guidance and mentorship to make sure you're getting a good quality lead source. But yeah, as long as you're, obviously, that goes without saying, as long as you're getting good quality leads, the leads are. The life of the fitness. That's going to yeah. really dictate okay. your, your success level is where you're getting your leads from. For sure. Yeah, man. Um, cool, man. I think that's all the questions I had. I definitely respect and honor that you know you guys are Christian based, faith based. You guys all love the Lord with all your hearts. I just don't really like working with companies that you know don't follow that. But you know that was like. The main, not if not the money, but the main reason why I'm like, yeah, I want to hop on is because you guys all love the Lord. And I was just on that call at three o'clock and she was just mentioning the Lord. I'm just like, it's the company to be with. Anyone that has the Lord always wins, you know? So. That's right. Yeah, yeah man. Absolutely. Excited. I mean, you see it. Like, there's a lot of people they, that are making, you know, that I'm not saying like shady business practices, but, you know, they're not all above the board and all above the board and just push, you know, not, not like, blatantly lying, but it can be a little deceitful here and there. And you know, they may make, make yeah. money for a short period of time and they may be successful, but for any, everything I do, I always look in the long term. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, where are we going to be five years, 10 years? And at the end of the day, it all goes back to, you know, integrity, making sure you're working with the right people, you know, treating clients, putting them in a good spot, putting agents in a good position, being transparent, just shooting people straight. And, um, that's really one thing that our, you know, uh, that's one thing that our group really strives for. And one thing I'm, I'm very proud of, and I can say that, you know, in our organization, you know, we, uh, everybody supports each other, helps each other. Um, you talk about faith. I mean, we have a lot of faith based people here where like we, every week it's funny. We make a joke in our, in our men's group. They're like, dude, you bring one or two more people here every single week from your office. It's like half of our men's group is these guys from our office, but I love it. Um, and the, the guys above me, like our agency owners, they both went to seminary school to be, um, to be pastors, but ended up got led them into life insurance. And yeah, so yeah. definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, Joe, the guy, that yeah, was on the faith call. is a, faith is a big deal here. And Joe, Basso, that? Joe Basso, the guy that was leading the call, he was a pastor. Yeah. 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 
Um, yeah. I yeah, want so a youth pastor uh, for eight. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I was a youth pastor for eight years and then got into sales right after. Same thing. Oh, wow. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. Huge. Good for you. Good for you, brother. But, yeah, but like I was saying, definitely blessed to be working with, uh, with a good group of individuals because I worked with people in the past that, you know, if you're just concerned about, I mean, obviously it's, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a business and we're here to make money, but if that's your sole and all-encompassing goal, I mean, that's, that's empty. It's easy to get right down. Seriously. Yeah, been there, man. Been there, done that. So, yeah. Yeah, but they're yeah, doing, sure. a, cool, man. They're doing well, a lock-in. Can you come to the lock-in yet, or do you need to be licensed first? Yeah, you're definitely welcome. I'm flying to Chicago. Yeah, if you want to come up here to, to Chicago, on the to come for a lock-in, I mean, I would love to, love to meet you in person. Oh, sick, man. Yeah. yeah, man. And I actually go take the test uh, April 1st. So I just purchased the test today, did the whole onboarding thing. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, Oh, uh, you're, already, oh you're already onboarded? Oh, so yeah. Sick, man. I don't know. You're already coming on board. Yeah, did all that already. Cool. Um, going to study the test, take April 1st, and then, you know, God willing, I pass it, you know, and then we awesome. move up from there. You're going to crush cool. it. Awesome. Well, I do have another meeting here in 10 minutes, but, you know, while we're on the call now, are there any other questions or any other dots I can help connect for you? Nah, man. Um, those are the only questions I had. It was awesome just meeting you virtually, obviously. And I'm looking forward to, you know, working with the company, hoping to expand it, you know, and, you know, ask the Lord to, like, lead me through this and possibly do what I did in solar, but if not better. Definitely. Yeah, 100 percent, brother. Well, dude, I'm always, uh, I mean, regardless, I'm always fired up to work with sharp people, but especially sharp people that I love the Lord. So, amen, amen to that. <laughs> yes, sir. So, cool, man. Well, Ben, um, if you could shoot MJ my number, MJ, if you need anything else, just don't hesitate. You should me a call, give me a text. Um, okay. I'm typically available. So, cool, okay. man, brother. All right, pleasure, guys. Man. God bless. Have, Have a good bless. day. All right, bye, guys. Absolutely. Have a great day, guys. Bye bye. impressive with a push mower yeah wow. yeah i'm too afraid of the riding lawnmower okay anyhow well the push mower is self-propelled so at least it has that that's amazing and you just turned 70 years old yeah wow that's amazing well it must be keeping you pretty young well i have good genes my grandmother lived to be 100 and she would have lived wow. longer than that but wow but get the proper care at the nursing home. Wow, okay. Gotcha. And when did, did she pass away recently? Oh, no. She's been gone for quite a while. Okay. My mother, also. My mother lived to be 90, but she would have lived longer than that. But the doctor said that she would have caused her to have microdentin lung disease. And that was because he gave her microdentin for too long, and it caused... A lung disease, a progressive lung disease, and so she died of microdentin lung disease. Jeez. So. Wow. Okay. Um, do I have your spelling here? Or your name correct? Is it? Got it. It's actually French. It's pronounced, but you know, ah. they say two words. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay. And um, so you 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 retired, or do you 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 said you still do work, but. Oh, well, I run my little small ranch and do gardening and all right. of that stuff. I have horses, turkeys, and chickens, and dogs. Oh, and man. Cats. Yeah, that's a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Just cleaning up after them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> feeding them all and feeding them and watering. It's just to the horses and chickens at the two-hour feed and water them. And then I have to do the dogs, too, and feed and water I have dog runs for them to run in so they're not tearing up the yard. So I have mm. to, you know, scoop and wash that down in the day too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what would you say is ballpark is like the monthly income between you and your husband? At what? What would you say is like is a ballpark of your monthly income on average? Hmm. I don't, you know, I would know if I looked at my tax return from last year. Um, mm -hmm. 
Well, it could be a ballpark. It doesn't have to be completely accurate. Uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 50 or above, somewhere around there. 50,000 or above. Oh, okay. A little bit. It might be between 50 and 80,000. I'm not sure. Okay. Is that just for you or both of you and your husband together? Both. Yeah, both. Because I, I both. Yeah, okay. I'll collectively get one and why. Okay. All right, that's that's good. I'll put... I would know an exact figure if I had my tax return from last year in front of me. Okay, it that's fine. Much, you know, we can work with. Retirement. We can work with that. That's fine. Um, and now, uh, are you a smoker, Mary? Never been. Excellent, excellent. And then, um, what would be your height and weight? Well, I might have shrunk a little bit for my old age. I'm normally five foot three inches. Okay. And, and weigh about 126 pounds last time I weighed. Very, very good. Very good. And then, um, any surgeries in the past 10 years? Uh, the only surgery I've ever had is getting a tooth removed or, um, getting a cataract removed from my eye. Excellent. All right. And then any prescription medications? Um, your benefit from my podiatrist said okay. I, I wear boots a lot, so I have a bit of a toe fungus. Oh, okay. That's it? Yeah. Oh, all right. And, you know, I, um, you know, being an older person with a little bit of arthritis, the doctor gave me a lot to cam if I, you know, have a Okay. okay. But I don't take that daily. I only take that maybe once or twice a month. <laughs> oh, okay. Once or twice a month. When I really overwork myself in you know, <laughs> yard work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then for, I have to ask this to everybody. I'm assuming pretty good, but do you have any DUIs, felonies, bank robberies, anything like that? Do I what? Any DUIs, felonies, or bank robberies on file on your record? <laughs> no. Excellent. I am, a devout, I am a devout Catholic, and I am a sacristan and a lector for the church. So, God bless. No. <laughs> I'm very faithful to my, you know, my religion. Okay. God bless. And then, um... For your mortgage here, do you have a ballpark of how much you have left on the mortgage? Uh, just under 90000 Okay. And then if you were to sell it tomorrow, how much do you think it's worth? Well, uh, at least one hundred and fifty. Hundred fifty. Okay. I know they're actually less the lesser homes than what I have that go for more than that. But okay. I'm just making a guess, you know. That's fine. You know. Okay. And then here, what would you say is your monthly payment here for your uh, mortgage? Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Okay. All right. So as far as everything I can do here now, while well, it's just you, um, that's all the questions I have for now. When's the? When do you think the latest you'll be home and you and hus your husband will be together and we can get uh, the rest of this done? Well, I've got at least about 20 minutes before I arrive at my destination, so you can ask me some more questions. Yeah, as far as questions for you, um, that's it. Oh, that's all I have for you for now. I'll have the same questions oh, for I him, see. and then we'll go over mm -hmm. how everything works when you guys are together. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. All, all right. right. Cool. When do you think will be like the latest you guys will be together today or earliest? Well, what time is it right now? Right now it's one ten. So I would say about two thirty, maybe. Okay, I'll I'll try and give you a call around two thirty. I might be a little early. I might be a little late because I have some other families I'm calling all day. So I will uh, try and call you around that time. All right. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Okay. Um, it's not something I'm like. I'm not completely struggling on it, but I could use some pointers on it whenever someone says they've already got it taken care of. They already have coverage. Could just use a little bit of extra help on that. Oh, perfect. Who did we uh, put you with here? I'm not seeing any notes on the account. Usually that's a sign of a new agent. 
Are you asking who my upline is? No, that was your rebuttal. Oh. See well. how good my tone was? Got him. That's the exact tone that you guys need. <laughs> I know you guys are laughing here. I'm going to spice okay. up today's call. We're going to keep you awake on today's call. Gabe normally puts us to sleep, right? I'm kidding. I love Gabe. He was. Can crazy. you run that back? Uh, I'm not going to lie. You uh, you got me too. I didn't. Uh, it was go. smooth, but I didn't hear it. I need guys, to hear it again. that should be our tone. So lesson number one, write this down. Just kidding. I'm not Joe. Um, lesson number one, I'm going to just spend the whole time roasting these guys. I finally get my time. Uh, literally how I caught you off guard, Ben and Jaleel, that's the exact tonality we need to have with our clients. So for some reason, agents, and I'm guilty of it, um, for some reason, we feel like we have to go into script mode. And for some reason, people think that script mode is like this knob that turns in your head and it's like, boop, oh, I need to be professional now. Wrong. It's the opposite. Ben thought we were literally continuing on our conversation. That is how it should be. So how I like to say is like, James, I would say, okay, James, who would you call up and talk to and talk about their day? That's the conversation that you need to have. So Benjamin, it needs to sound like you were just having a conversation with me, not, oh, it's script time. It's time to talk. Okay. Benjamin, are you on a treadmill, bro? Yeah. I am, but also I'm so confused right now, like okay. super confused. Okay, let's break that down. Yeah. In my rebuttal, the point I'm trying to make is you did not even know I was rebuttaling because of how conversational I sounded to you, correct? Okay, but you asked me about my upline or are you asking, are you responding as no. a, a client? That I was responding as a client. So you said... To me, does everybody understand what I'm saying? See, you're the only one who doesn't, Benjamin. I'm totally okay. kidding. So, I'm totally kidding, dude. Promise. So you said someone who says, I already have a policy in place. Okay. Right. So I would respond to that. Okay. okay. So most people's tendencies are to be, oh, perfect. What carrier did we put you with? People have right. too high of prices. Blah, blah. Like, That's what I do. The typical salesman alert, yeah. salesman alert. It's a radar uh, uh, going off. You never want to set off that radar. Never. How do we not do that? Okay. Yes, please. By telling them, oh, perfect. I, I don't see any notes here on the account. Usually that's a sign of a new agent. Who did we put you with? Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm not seeing any notes here. Oh, we put you with America. America. Oh, okay. Um, did they? That's our most expensive carrier. We usually don't put too many people with that. They they probably didn't tell you that, right? All right. No. Okay. Here's. I, I apologize. This was not done correctly. Um, let's see. Here's what we're gonna do, Benjamin. I'm personally gonna make sure that this is taken care of for you. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna schedule a. a call with you just to redo this, put you with the correct carrier, correct cost. Um, usually takes about 20 minutes or so. I apologize that this was not done correctly. I'll make sure that this is all taken care of on my end. Okay. Okay. Thoughts? I love this. Very assumptive. Very assumptive. Very assumptive. Super chill. Um, very conversational. Um, just sound like you're chatting, Benjamin, is how we need to do it. Yeah, it's it's a team. We don't want to wrestle the client for a sale. If you wrestle them and you're just trying to beat whoever else that was, if you're trying to upsell and just beat the other person, it's not going to work. It's just, will it work? Sure. Okay, it will work at times. But the, the name of the game is to steal the appointment. And to put someone in a better position. And if they're not in a better position, then it's time to steal. It's time to swipe. That's the name of the game. And if they're replacing your policy, well, tough luck. Then you should have put a better policy with them. Yeah. I talk to team that too. And if someone replaces mine, I say, mad respect. Because I know a couple of you all have replaced mine on here. That's what I get for going with America though. Cool. Like it is what it is. I took the lazy way out and I didn't tell my crap down. Same with everyone else. 
Anyone else want to raise their hand? Something that they're struggling with? Jaleel, what's something you think that you could work on? Um, yeah, I mean, different objections. Like what? Um, today, not so much, but this week, you know, I get on all the way to the to the social and everything like that. And yeah. they're just, you know, they're not hearing it. So okay. um, by not hearing it, you mean they're not they're not giving you their info? Yeah, and they and they want to, but you know, they want to at that point talk to their bank, right? Confirm with the bank. I mean, I, you know, I've been kind of talking through it, but that Can has. Can someone been in the chat tell me why they don't want to give Jaleel their social? Somebody put it in the chat. Why? They don't trust you. You guys nailed it. No trust. No trust. No trust. We get it, guys. That's I hope it. No so. Trust. So how do, I build, how do I build that? Your tone is your number one thing that you have to work on. Mm. So the only thing we have in telesales, guys, is our tone. So why are we not practicing that? It's, that's huge. I mean, that is literally your number one tool that you have in this business. And for people not to practice that, you're insane. So you're sounding too scripty. You got to set the table. Exactly, Christian. It's never the problem you're facing, guys. Rarely ever is it the I want to think about it, social, too expensive. It's usually two or three steps prior. What do I mean by that? It's not I don't want to give you my social, Jaleel. It's that I don't trust you. You didn't build enough, not rapport, but you didn't set the table properly. It's not it's too expensive. It's, it's not worth that money because you did not build enough value. It's not worth your your price. Okay, value has to exceed cost. It's not, I want to think about it. It's, there's nothing to think about. I'm just too insecure to tell you that I don't want it. And I don't want it because there's no why. There's no value. So Jaleel, work with your mentor on building rapport and setting the stage properly. Because I think that's huge. Lorenzo. Yeah, Mindy, two questions here, two concerns on my end here. So I spoke with a client recently, but they're like, they were like really happy with what they had in place. They said they love their agent. They said their contact number and everything. They were just happy with it. And they're like, yeah, man, I'm, I really don't want to switch at all, man. I'm happy with what I got right now. I, I, you just can't beat it. Like, how would you overcome that? They said you can't beat it. Yeah. Yeah. They're really happy with who they had. So I was speaking with a guy and um, what's it called? He had like foresters or yeah, I think called the mutual. Yeah, foresters. <laughs> I always do that. And uh, mutual of Omaha. He was just like beyond happy with what he already had, and he was like Different. just nowhere near interested on seeing anything else. So how would you? There's a bunch of people that? still laughing at foresters. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm always going with that foresters. Because I'm twelve. I'm twelve when it comes to jokes like that. Okay, foresters. <laughs> um, first of all, well done to whoever that agent was. I'm still gonna try to make sure that they do have what's best. To be honest. Well, heck yeah, Lorenzo. That's awesome. I'm glad that we did a good job for you. Hey, I don't see any notes. Who did we end up putting you with? And then Americo. Oh, good. Looks like that agent, that that's a brand new agent that met with you. I'm glad that they did a good job here. Um, okay, let me write this down here. Americo. Oh, okay. That is our most expensive carrier that, that we do work with. They, they probably did not tell you that, right? No, but we're no. happy. With them. Let it go. That agent did a freaking mm -hmm. good job. But very rarely okay. is someone going to choose the agent over cost. Right. Okay. Yeah, very rarely. But it's never they. It's we. We're a team. Mm. And second thing here on my end is uh, with the scheduling. You know, I feel like I have a lot of trouble kind of like sticking with my schedule. What's something that you do to kind of help you be on point with your scheduling? Define stick with my schedule. What does that mean? Well, sometimes like, you know, you take a little bit longer on other things to take care of. And it kind of like, you know, you try to you try to fit in your work time at a specific time, but you end up going over it because you get caught up with some other things. And sometimes like it just gets late throughout the day You know, other things come up and whatnot. And I feel like I've been struggling a little bit with that, which is kind of maintaining the schedule that I've got. Yeah, yeah totally get that. Ryan Kosky said something that was so good. He said, if you hold yourself accountable on dial day, you'll hold yourself accountable on run day. 
because dial day is the most important day because it forces you to be accountable on run day. So I'm going to guess that you're too distracted on dial day. And if you're too distracted on dial day, that means you have free time on run day. And that's never a good thing. So the mm. most important day of the week mentally needs to be dial day. Because when you're holding yourself accountable that day, you're holding yourself accountable for a run day. Gotcha. And okay. so I'm never going to babysit my agents and be like, where are you at? But they're never going to call me and tell me they need money either. So right. if they're not showing up consistently. So um, make dial day a non-negotiable. If you don't hold yourself accountable, Lorenzo, somebody else will. And they're going to tell you when you can pee and how long you can go to the bathroom for too. So mm. hold yourself accountable or someone else will. Either way, you got bills to pay, boy. You got to show up. It's just whether you show up or someone's making you. Mentally, right. guys, when you have that hard day, think of the alternative. What would you be doing if you weren't doing this? Well, guess what? If you don't do what makes you successful, you'll be doing those things. And either way, here's what sucks. Either way, you're going to have to show up. It's just a matter of whether you got to request days off and whether they can tell you when you have to be or not. That's it. It's the difference. Make sense, Lorenzo? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Mindy. Hold yourself accountable on dial day and that will naturally hold yourself accountable on run day. Understood. Thank you. Gamey. Jamie. Gamey or Jamie? Gamey. Okay, cool. What's up, Gamey? How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for uh, letting me jump on here. Of um, course. Quick question. So I um I find myself obvious uh, when I'm talking to clients I can be very transactional when I speak with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of you know going through the script and things like that. What are some ways that you draw out the emotion in your conversation with the clients to help them with their buying decision? Absolutely. Um, what industry did you come from prior to this? Uh, I was I was in the mortgage industry for a long time and I was an underwriter. So yeah. Was very transactional. I was in real estate prior to this as well. So I understand that. Um, the number one thing, if you're sounding too transactional, pausing equals, can anybody put in the chat what I say? I say it all the time, hopefully. I don't know if anyone on my, pausing equals processing. If you pause, pausing equals processing and pause pools. I want to say promotion. I want it to start with a P so bad, but it doesn't. It's emotion. So pausing pulls emotion. Okay. For example, uh, Gamey, take a look behind that door. Okay. Okay. So if I were to say, um, hey, Gamey, take a look behind that door real quick. Or if I were to say, hey, Gamey, Take a look behind that uh, that door right there. It's more exciting. Like I said the same thing. Or, hey, Gamey, come here real quick. Hey, Gamey, come here really quick. Come here. Or if I were to say, hey, Gamey, come here real quick. I said the same thing. Now, you guys get the point of what I'm saying. Benjamin, you like that one? Like, you, thought... guys, you get the point. <laughs> I could say the same thing, but pull different emotion acting class over here. I tell my girls, my, and my guys be drama, be dramatic, like literally pausing equals processing and pausing pulls emotion. So when I'm giving the why, instead of saying, okay, so the first one right down is death. Okay. So a lot of people like this because it actually just like life insurance at that point and the fact that it pays out just like a life insurance policy would, rather than, okay, the first one, Gamey, please write down death. Okay, so a lot of people like this because at that point, uh, it actually acts just like a life insurance policy. So in the fact that, Gamey, let's say you passed away tomorrow. Well, I mean, your income passes away with you day one. So we immediately have to ask ourselves, what does that now look like for us financially? 
Do you see, do you feel the difference? Yeah. Okay. So pausing, lowering that tone. You're not selling me a mortgage. Okay. You are selling me a mortgage. You don't sell a mortgage. You're not helping me with a mortgage. Okay. Uh, you're not, I have a lot of car salesmen on my team. There's a lot of guys that are from solar, right? They're not, you're not getting something out quickly for them to slam the door in their face. Bro, they're listening to you. They're on the phone. Like you're good. Slow down, chill. So lowering that tone, pausing is huge. Okay. Thank you. You talking too quickly is half your battle. I promise you. Oh, I, I know it is. Yeah. Just by you talking to me, I can tell you talk quickly. Like I, I did, but tonality is something that always has to be worked on guys. If, if that can be the name of the game, um, tonality, work on tonality, pausing, pulling emotion through that. And you guys will very quickly see uh, a difference in your sales. Thank you. You're so welcome. Anybody else want to raise your hand? Tell me something you want to work on. If not, I'll call on you. What is a good way to pivot to an IUL? Oh, to, to an IUL or from? Like, let's say they got denied on a term. I've never sold an IUL before, and um, some agents were telling me to pivot to an IUL sometimes. If they're denied for a term, they're not getting an IUL. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what's the situation you you don't sell them a term and you pivot to an IUL? You don't. No. Like, like, I, and I'm not. I'm not trying to be dumb here. Um. Sorry, right, I'm new they're, here. So they're not. What is the situation you sell an IUL? Yeah, that's okay. If they would yeah. qualify for a term. So okay. with that, don't overthink it. You're literally saying everything that you would for a term. Okay. The only difference is right after that. Um, so I'm going through all of the living benefits, Benjamin. So mm -hmm. death, I always have my clients write down living benefits. If you don't, you're crazy. Always have them write down living benefits for whole life. Have them write down the ways that the policy pays out. Same exact thing, guys. Policy pays out for death, accidental death, terminal illness, and, um, cash value. Have them write those things down because the more that they write down, the more value it is, which means you're not going to get an I want to think about it or it's too expensive because the value exceeds cost. Right, Lorenzo? Kind of what we talked about. So make sure your clients are writing down those benefits. Back to what you were saying, Benjamin, writing down the death, critical, chronic disability, terminal illness. Um, after that, I'm saying what you would kind of like for CBO 100. If you don't use the coverage, they refund everything back that you paid into it. Same for an IUL. So all of your premiums that you're paying every month are being invested and then so on and so forth. You're just going into it the exact way that you would explain an IUL. Don't overthink it. Okay. It's nothing too complex. Everything that you're paying, you know, whatever. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that, does that answer your question? Yeah. I, cool. The difference between a CBO and an IUL though, I don't really know what, why you would pick one over the other. Um, an IUL is tied to the S&P 500 and it gains interest. You can borrow and pull from it as well. Okay. CBO 100, if you do not um, have the coverage the entire 30 years, you don't get anything back that you paid into it. An IUL, you do. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, but IUL is harder to get coverage for. It's a little bit harder. Mm. So IUL, it builds a cash value that you can start borrowing from maybe around year five or so tied to the S&P 500 and only participates in the gains, not the losses. If there's a loss, it stays even. The participates okay. in the gains, you can borrow from it. Um, you can borrow from it and you can pull the value from it as well. Now, if you borrow from it, it is coming from that death benefit. So you have to keep that in mind. So pretty much every time default to an IUL and if you don't approve, go to a CBO. Um, talk to your mentor. That's a rabbit trail okay. conversation. Yeah, okay. it just completely varies based off of the underwriting of that person. Permanent okay. coverage, exactly, Abby. And we we call it permanent coverage too because eventually, um, they can use that cash value to help fund the difference of the cost of the coverage every month. Oh, true. CBOs end. Okay. CBOs end. Yep. 
but let's say they year 24 or let's say it's year 29 and they need to end their CBO coverage. Well, you're, All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Brian. You don't, <laughs> <laughs> with CBO 100 at year 29, you don't get anything back and there's no cash value. Kind of sucks, to be honest. It's very simple. It's easy to pay out, but it's truly not what's best for the client. Eric, what's up, dude? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question regarding how is it in the beginning you're able to stay on, not necessarily just the script, but the pace that you need to be on in order to get to the appointment, the presentation, pre-close, close, the entire process. Because what I've come across is I've had a lot of clients just give me BS objections. I've had everything thrown at me. You know, I'm driving for spring break. I already spoke to someone about the mortgage protection. I don't need the, you know, everything that you can hear. How do you stay on pace and not let those throw you off script? Because that's my main thing, just staying on the script. Like, oh, that's the breakout right. rooms I've been in. Everyone's like, yeah, bro, no, you're good. The tone's everything. Um, boom, boom, boom. Just stay on script. Cool. There's no such thing as a BS objection. It's just an objection. So objection. Mm -hmm means they just need more clarification. That's mm -hmm. it. That's your job. And how many people have sold a sale after objections? Anybody in here? Yeah, a ton of people. So just because you're getting an objection doesn't mean anything. I mean, to be honest, like I'm the guy that would ask a ton of questions if I was whatever it is that I'm doing, whether I'm buying a car, I'm the annoying person that asks for the breakdown of everything. Like I am that guy. And when you overcome those objections, every time you overcome an objection, it actually makes you believe, it actually makes me believe in you more and gives more confidence. Don't take objections as a roadblock, guys. Take it as an opportunity to gain more confidence and rapport with the client. It's actually not a bad thing to get objections. It's very typical. It's all part of the process. However, the goal is not to be slick at getting objections. The goal is to what? Can anybody put in the chat what they think the goal is? Not to be good at objections. Avoid them. Steve Combs nailed it. The goal is to avoid them. However, sometimes you're going to do everything right and it's still going to happen. It just is part of the name of the game. The goal is Eric, to not let them frazzle you when you're new, handle objections before it comes one. I think that's a hyperbole, if I'm not mistaken handle an objection before it becomes one Chris but I respect the hustle to put it in the chat I appreciate your contribution I do think that it's an hyperbole if that is the word um so the goal is just to remove it how do you remove it by what we were just talking about earlier with Mr. Incredible I cannot remember your first name and I don't see you anywhere but it was the guy with yeah. the incredible shirt so the goal is to remove the objections let's say you get them the goal is to stay calm low slow all right. But what's natural? Can someone tell me when you get an objection, what comes naturally to you when you're speaking? Panic. Anyone else? Abby says panic. panic. You want to panic? How do you want to talk, guys? Quickly. What, in like higher a tone. higher tone? Faster, or... speaking too fast. Tire tone. You want to tell them that they're wrong. Yeah, these are all really good comments. You want to tell them that they're wrong. But the goal is to stay low and slow. Low okay. and slow. Write that down. Low and slow. When you get them. But the ultimate goal of the goal, remove the objections, like Steve Combs said. We don't want to get them. And how do we not get them? Let me know if you ever find that out, because it doesn't exist. But the best way to avoid them is um, by sticking to your script, using a script that is proven from proven producers. And don't ever listen to anyone you don't want to become. That was a little freebie shot for you. So okay. one I run into, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so I'm not insurable. I, the last person tried and tried and tried, and they tried multiple carriers. Um, I'm not insurable. Sure. I, I totally get that. That's exactly why you came across my desk. Um, so pretty much my job is to xyz and then you go but your intro is key there yep that's the exact reason that you came across my desk i saw that they weren't able to get you approved i have access to other carriers that they don't 
So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to schedule a meeting with you for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take a look at all the carriers that they did it. And then we'll put that in place. Christian, unmute. Christian's a top producer. What's up? What do you say to that? That's the easiest one. Because that's almost like them telling you. They want it, but couldn't have it. I really want the coverage, but no one's been able to help me yet. Sometimes what do you, say I, that? you know, sometimes I just be, answer an objection by answering an objection by answering it. And I say, um, sometimes I just say, yeah, you were probably dealing with captive agents. A lot of times that means they just work for one company and they don't offer anything that would approve someone like you. And that's why, like what you said, that's why it got referred to me. Um, I work with all the carriers that would approve you. And so there's not a question if we're going to get you approved. Uh, it's just a question on which one we're going to go with. And I'm going to give, give you all those options. Oh, I like that last statement. Um, I actually really love that. It's not a matter of if you get approved. It's just a matter of who's going to approve you. So I apologize that that happened to you. We're going to take care of you. So let's reiterate that. You can't approve me. I'm too whatever. I actually think I'm going to update my rebuttal sheet, Kristen. That was really good. Um, yep. That's exactly why you came across my desk. That's exactly why we're talking. You you had said it before. That's exactly why we're talking. Um, that's why it got escalated to me because they obviously didn't have the opportunity to, they don't work with enough carriers. That's why I'm a supervisor and I work with more carriers. There it is. Uh, you know, I have access like to carriers that they don't. Yeah. That's why it escalated. Oh, my girls, write that down. We're going to use the word escalated. I am okay. here for that word. Definitely that. Yep, that's exactly why it escalated to me. Day made. Love that. Yeah, Benjamin's clapping. I'm clapping too. Well done. Um, okay, Brian, hope you enjoyed that response, even though you're not here for it. And yeah, but hopefully everyone else learned from that because that was really good. Anyone else have a question? Lorenzo. Yes. So I don't know if you've run across this before. I've run through this twice where I get all of their info. I get the social security and everything, but the bank account, the routing numbers where like, I just lose them. They'll be like, yeah, uh, let me just look over this insurance company, make sure it's legit. And uh, you know, just give me a call back tomorrow. And then I'll never hear from them again. So that's Remember what I said, you didn't lose them at bank account and routing. Someone tell me in the chat, what happened? When did we lose them? Did we lose them at bank account and routing? He never built initial trust. Hmm. That's what it is. So it's not the banking and routing. It's not the social. It's not the I want to think about it. It's not the it's too expensive. It's the why. It's the value. It's you. That's it. It's the tone. Tone, why, and value. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, tone, why, and value. Got that. You can score a point if the other team has possession. Stay on the offense. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that's good. How do you build trust? Being assumptive and not asking them too much. Uh, ben, do you mind unmuting and, and asking that question? Uh, I was just answering uh, his question on how to build yes. trust. Yeah. Can, you can answer that, Tim. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So just, you know, like what I said, being assumptive. Don't like, hey, what do you want to do here? Because I did that in the beginning. And now I just started saying, all right, this is what we're going to do. This is what I recommend for you. This is your best option. And then, hey, let me see if we partner with your financial institution. I have the routing number here as blah, blah, blah. Can you confirm your account number? Let me see if we, partner, we partner with your financial institution. I've never heard that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I've gotten screwed because I do the wrong routing number and then they get skeptical. Oh, so you don't do that anymore? I do not do that. Okay. I messed up a couple of times on it and it was the right, but that's because they opened it in another state and moved to that state. Oh, yeah, as long as you ask them what state they open the bank account and I never have okay, an issue. Okay. I like that I know a lot of people use that I love that line though let's see if we mm -hmm. partner with your financial institution that's great mm -hmm. instead of saying bank yeah be sure to send a copy of your license and business card it helps with credibility that's a thought Jeremy I don't think that's the make or break it point I have done this for four years and I don't send a copy of mine ever people don't ask for it I, every once in a while they ask for it I think big one is tonality. A lot of people 
and the business, I'd say like 70%, 60% send their license and a copy of business card. I'd say that's a good thought too. All right, guys, I will take two more questions. A lady asked me for it this morning, said she wanted to look me up to make sure she was legit. And then I still this, oh, heck yeah, Abby. That's awesome. And I have FaceTime people too. Like I have sent them my license, my business card. I FaceTime them and do all the things. You're just that good. You'd tell me snow if you were an Eskimo. Not quite. All righty, guys, two more questions and then we'll be done here. Uh, so come across this a number of times where the client's like, you know, actually they got a lot of money. They got three, four policies. Um, you try to, you know, see what, what you can do as far as uh, maybe even consolidating or adding more value to it. I know I've kind of more so now since um, leaning towards like Jeff and like kind of leaning to like, you know, if I can show you a way to make more money and not lose any money, would that be something you're open to? Like that's, that's one kind of objection to it. But like, how do you go about somebody with so many policies that actually got, you know, money, maybe the mortgage is paid off. Like what, what does that look like for you? Andrew Clay's on here or did he hop off? Shoot. This is a strong suit of his. I think he had to hop off for an appointment. Um, oftentimes it's going to be a hefty IUL if they have bad health too. That's tough. Maybe searching for I mean, originally, why did they reach out to you, Derek, to cover the home amount? Okay, so see what you can do there. Usually, whatever they have, I try to spend that. So if it's like a life insurance policy, rarely will I find someone with like two, three, like you just said. I mean, that's such a rare scenario, Derek. Will I try to consolidate them? Absolutely. Especially if it's just life insurance, I'm going to try to get them like an IUL or something with living benefits that's hefty. Asking if they have the 401k, you know, are you interested in learning more? blah, 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 about what you just said. Um, just not being afraid to ask the question, Derek. I think some people, someone said something earlier. Um, I think some people are afraid to ask questions to the clients, especially if they're wealthier. I'm a little bit more intimidated by people like that who are wealthier. They kind of have their crap together, but they reached out for a reason. Um, Caleb Combs, are you on here? Yeah. Oh, I don't even need to answer this. Caleb, can you answer this? <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. Um, here's the thing when they have multiple policies, they usually tend to be whole life policies, majority of the time. They also don't really know what they have. Uh, because we work with a good majority of the carriers and you're going to run across them, you can help them figure out what they have, how much they're paying, add it up. And then a lot of the times I'm going to be like, look, so you've got, you know, 70,000 of whole life policies. It's with five different carriers. You don't have living benefits. Here's the thing, when you know your carriers or if they at least have their policies in front of you when you're talking to them, you can very easily consolidate them into one or two, make it cheaper, add in a few benefits that they didn't have before. And that's how you're gonna have these large two, three, $400 a month policies. Right. Not because you have these rich people, but they've already got multiple policies. So they already believe in the value of the product. You just have to show them how to do it better. On top of that, if you say the right things, I mean, if you look at the statistics, and I talk to people all the time, Individuals have four or five policies. They don't all pay out. Some are accidental, some are this, some are that. Yes. You can consolidate it if you do it the right way. And that's how you get all these four or five grand a month policies. Love that. I agree with that question. What he said, step one, identify what they have. Just because someone says, great point, Caleb, just because someone flashes that they have three, four or five policies. my One of my biggest sales was like 700 bucks a month. And it's from combining her policies that she had. Same exact thing. She had whole life. So ask what they had, or we've taken, you know, terms and converted them to stacking a couple whole life. We love a good double stack, triple stack as well. So identifying what they have, if it's a term, identifying if that policy is going to increase in cost as well. So that's a big one. Um, seeing if the price per month is going to skyrocket at the end of the day, Derek, Step one, identify what they have. Two, see if you can do it better. Caleb nailed it. Yeah, no, that's great. Good. It's good to hear from, you know, multiple people. So that's good. Yeah, for sure. Mindy, Does someone you might play chime in on that for a second. Yeah, I cannot see you. Oh, is that Jesse? Jesse. Hey, please. Hey, so you guys, I think the other part of what 
of what they're saying that that I lean on when people have multiple policies like that already is I, the one of the first things I was taught when I got into insurance like seven years ago at this point I'm old but um was what was the purpose for that coverage when they took it out right because it doesn't necessarily always have to be a replacement approach or a com com combination approach yeah. right it could be a, it can be a complement or supplement approach okay. right in my mortgage protection pitch if they said they had pre-existing life insurance the follow-up question is always you know what was the purpose for that when you took it out i love that right in seven years i've never had someone say it was for mortgage protection mm -hmm. so i've knocked down that it's great that you have that right but it's for some other reason uh, so you know earlier a couple minutes ago many said like don't be scared to ask the clients questions right like that's your job like your job is to make them talk more than you. Yes. Love that. Make them talk. Don't let them talk, by the way. There's a difference. Total difference. There's a difference between allowing someone to give you directions while you're driving the car or allowing someone to drive the car. We allow them to give us directions, but they're not taking control of that steering wheel, Derek. Answer your question. Step one, identify. Identify the policies, what they have. Step two, what Jesse said, identifying the purpose. And then three, let's beat the heck out of those. If we can always do what's best for the client. I love it. Perfect. All right, y'all. One more question. If not, we're going to jet out. Guys, I had fun with you today. I know I kind of keep it light. I do things a little bit differently, but that's what we do. We have fun. It's a serious business. Um, please text Gabe and Joe and tell them, dude, today's training was fire. You got to have Mindy on there more, please. So please spam them. Bye guys. Have a good day. Hope you guys were able to learn something. I know that I did. Talk All right. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Ben, I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for rocket mortgage. You're file that's associated with your property over on uh, just came across my desk and it's showing me is incomplete the um, only reason for that is um, sometime around when you close with rocket mortgage we uh, send mm -hmm. you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection right where it um, mm -hmm. pays off the home if you get sick or pass away yeah uh, so you actually did the right thing you um, fill out the card, you mail it back in to us, uh, but for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. Um, so I'm the manager in the area here, so I just want to make sure that we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home? Well, we were, no, <clears throat> mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. my husband also, but we were told we didn't qualify mm -hmm. because of the health issues we have. I see. So that's why it was escalated to me. It looks like you spoke to one of our newer agents. Um, I have access to mm -hmm. all 30 of the carriers here in the state of Florida. Uh, so I just had a few minutes mm -hmm. before my next call. Yeah, just grab a pen and paper for me real quick. Uh, it should take about two okay. minutes so to get this knocked out. And just let me know when you're ready. All right, go ahead. Okay, so I'm ready. Uh, at the top of the paper, yep, at the top of the paper, I'm going to give you my full name, you can write that down, and also my national producer number. This is essentially my social security number as an insurance agent. So my full name is Benjamin. Let me know when you get to the last name. It's kind of hard to spell. Okay, go ahead. It's S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, P as in Tom, P as in Pam, A as in Apple, L as in Lucy, and Y as in Yellow. Yeah, I wouldn't have never said that. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> and got it. And then my national producer mm -hmm. number or MPN mm -hmm. is two one zero one nine one uh seven nine. Okay. So um so tell me, uh so you said you went through this process before and it just was too yeah. expensive or you didn't qualify? We didn't we were told we didn't qualify. Okay. Um, so this is pretty simple here. I'm just going to spend about two minutes asking you some health questions here because it doesn't show on my file here what they asked you. They never updated it. 
Um, and then also okay. those financial questions. Everything's just, they didn't fill it in here. I guess they just didn't write down anything. Um, so let's see here. Um, how young are you? Uh, 57. 57, okay. And um, are you working? Are you retired? Working. You're working, okay. And between you and your husband, what um, is your average monthly income? Um, around 10000 a month. Around 10000 okay. And do you smoke at all? No. No? Okay. And your husband, he doesn't smoke either? No. Okay. Um, now, for I, you guys, do you have any surgeries or medications? Yes. <laughs> prescribed? Okay. Is there a lot? Yes. <laughs> There's a okay. lot. So, what they send us to if you're taking... Attack. I see, a history of heart attack. So what they usually send us over to if you have more than, you know, a couple surgeries and more than three medications is they send us over to AIG. Have you heard of AIG before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to see what they can get you approved for here. What would be your uh, mortgage balance? Um, right now, probably around 340, 340000 Okay. And then what would be your monthly payment on that? 2500 is what we pay. All right. Now, has anyone ever – it doesn't seem like they did, but they told you that you didn't qualify. Um, but did anyone explain to you how equity protection works? No. Okay. So as I'm sure you're already aware um, – if you wanted to cover the entire mortgage, that would be close to another mm -hmm. mortgage payment. So don't worry. Um, none of my clients do that in your situation. Um, so what my clients do in your situation is they put together an equity protection plan. So it's basically a much more practical and more affordable approach to protecting the mortgage. Um, mm -hmm. This way you can, you can have, we can find here what the most amount of coverage can get you with the, uh, lowest cost possible. Um, now, the mm -hmm. plan is different for every client in their situation. Um, so we, uh, so let's just figure that out. Um, so God forbid, you know, if something happened to you or your husband, um, what it would be the plan? Would you guys plan on keeping it or selling it? We're going to keep it. You're going to keep it? Okay. And do you mm -hmm. have anybody else that lives with you guys? Or is it just you two? No, um, both my sons live with us and, and my mother-in-law. Okay. Oh, so all so it's five of you guys? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So really uh, the most amount of insurance um, you would need is around a year to two years of mortgage payments to allow um, your beneficiary or um, your son's whatever would ha could possibly happen, God forbid, um, time to mourn, grief, um, figure out the financial situation, and move forward mm -hmm. in a healthy manner. Um, so this would leave them something uh, to you know, take care of, uh, you know, all kinds of expenses that come up when um, that the worst day of their life is happening. Um, yeah. so I'm going to pull up your AIG's um, location here and give you a few options. There's going to be uh, some options here, like three different options. Um, we'll be looking at nine months, a year, uh, and 18 months of mortgage payments. And you just let mm -hmm. me know what's most comfortable and affordable for you. And then um, I'll see if they can get you approved. Uh, just hang, hang tight one second. So this is, this is a payment we'd have to pay up front? No. Uh, it's a monthly payment. Oh. Uh, just, yeah. Oh, Mm -hmm. It's um, it's a normal insurance plan, the monthly payment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let's just see what options they have here for you. Um, would you guys want to be doing the him and hers plan, or would it just be you? Probably him and hers. Okay. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll take care of you first. Um, 
I'm just signing in here to my AIG. Give me one second, hang in there. Maybe I should have asked what what is the difference because between the him and hers and just getting one policy. The him and hers would cover if something happens to you, um, your husband would be uh, paid out, uh, and then if mm-hmm. something happens to him, you're paid out. Okay. So it's you guys are both covered as thought. opposed to yeah yeah that's what you're saying. Okay. So right now we're just going to look at getting you covered. So if something happens to you, your husband's taken care of, and then uh, we can do the vice versa. Um, okay. What was your uh, date of birth? Okay. Typing that in here. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to the first option here. It'll either be a six month or a nine month option. Just pull out my calculator here. So it's 23, 2,500. So that's 10 months. 10 months would be the most that AIG does. And that option would be 137 bucks a month. And then I'll give you a six month option. You got that written down? Yes. Yeah. And then the six month option would be uh seventy three bucks a month, and then okay. we can do twenty we can do a four month option, and that would be uh fifty bucks a month, okay, and all of these would be the same amount. It would cover the yep, whole mortgage? Same amount. Um, it would cover four months, six months, or ten months of mortgage payments. So that way they have time to figure out the uh, financial situation. Uh, mm-hmm. Gives them some breathing room. And um, this go, this lasts your whole life. So uh, the policy doesn't expire. The price stays the same. And it's, uh, it's it also builds cash value. So any money you put into this policy... Uh, after a year, you can start taking back out from it if you need it for any purpose. Does that all make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So it really just comes down to here is seeing which one you want to see if we can get you approved for, what's the most comfortable and affordable for you. Just trying to add up. Mm-hmm. So... Um. The, um, so that four months, that's ten thousand dollars in coverage. Mm-hmm. The sixth month is fifteen thousand, and the ten month is twenty five thousand. That's tax free as well. So those are paid out tax free to your beneficiaries because it's from insurance. Right. Okay. Uh, I need to talk to my husband about this and see what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, of course. So can we give just, you a call back? Yeah, so that's what I was going to do here anyway. I'm going to call you back in one to five business days. What we're doing now is just okay. seeing what we can get you approved for. Um, I would submit the application and call you guys back and let you know if you're approved or denied. And at that point, you guys can okay. let me know if you want to increase or can't increase, decrease or, or not move forward. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. okay. But um, for now, which one did you want to see if we could get approved for just to start off Six with? Six months. Yeah, six months. months. Okay. And um, your, your your husband, I don't have his name on file here. He would be your beneficiary, right? Your primary beneficiary? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I what would his first name? Okay. No, his is, is just... Okay. Okay, so how do you spell his name? And does he have a middle initial? Okay. Perfect. And then his date of birth? Is. Okay. So I'm going to see if AIG partners with your uh, financial institution here. Um, which bank are you going to be using to pay for the policy if you get approved? Okay. 
And was that bank account opened in the state of Florida? No. It was okay. open in Alaska. Uh, Alaska. Wow, you guys came pretty far, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All the way to Florida. Okay. So <laughs> the good news here is it looks like we do partner with Global Federal. Um, the routing number I have here on file is 325-272-021. Uh, if you could mm -hmm. grab a, either a blank check or a mobile app and confirm that for me. Yes, uh, that's correct. That's correct? Okay. And then mm -hmm. the only thing I can't see here on this end is your account number. It is. Okay. Got it. And then your social. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to put you in a brief hold here while I go through the application, and I'll let you know if I uh, need anything else. Actually, okay. yes, I will need um, your state of birth. Were you born in Alaska? Florida. You're born in Florida, okay. okay. Yeah, I'll let you know if I had any other questions here. Just um, stand by while I go through it. All right. Um, so you're all set. I'll let you know for yours in a few days. Um, okay. Whether you're approved, I'll have you write both of the details down when we're done. Uh, let's uh, get your husband's done now. Is your husband, uh, his date of birth, what would be his date of birth? I have it here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me see what options they have here for him. You guys are the same year, so usually um, the same year is just a little bit more for, for men. So I'll give you those options here. Okay. So if you want to be around the same price range for both of you, he, mm -hmm. I got for yours, we were doing, you had 15000 which was six months for 73. And the closest mm -hmm. I could get to 73 for him was 12,000. So that would be a little over, that would be around five months instead of six months. If you wanted to do six months for him, it would be 98 bucks a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. So which one do you think uh, you guys would want to put an application in for? Um, it would be for the same Six months for the same for so, five six months. Yeah. for the ninety eight. Yes. Okay. And all right. And did you have a middle initial? I don't remember if I got yours. It's okay. All right. All right. And then, what would be? Do you have um, your husband's social memorized or? Mm hmm. It's Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get through his application. I'll let you know if I um, – oh, uh, state of birth for him as well. Was he uh, born in Florida as well? No, Oklahoma. Um, no, Oklahoma. actually, okay. take it back. He was born in Germany. Germany, okay. Okay. Uh, yep, just hang in there. I'm going to get through his. I'll let you know when we're all set. Oh, um, are you guys going to be uh, paying for it with the same uh, financial institution, or would it be a different one? Yes. Same. Same. Okay. Okay. One. All right. Just hang in there. Be right back. Okay. I've submitted the applications for both of you guys. Um, I'll know about your approval either on Monday or Tuesday. I'll give you guys a call back then. Um, Okay. As far as what we got you guys uh, apply, what we applied for here today, I'll have you write down all the info here. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the company is called AIP. AIP? Uh, AIG, G as in Gary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the, uh, the premium per month uh, for you was 73 bucks a month. Um, and uh, that was for six months of coverage. And then that has 
the, and then you're going to write down the benefits. Uh, there are okay. living benefits. So if anything happens to you on the living side, like cancer, stroke, heart attack, um, you're covered there. There's also cash value. Let me know if I'm going too fast. No, you did. Right. And then it's also it's permanent coverage. So this uh, with, will last your entire life. Um, now you want to write down like another column there for okay. also six months of coverage. Same AIG, uh, 98 bucks a month, uh, right? And um, same benefits. So you can just say check next to that. And then lastly, okay. uh, two, two more things here. I'll have you write down my name and number, and I'm also going to give you a security code. So this is intended um, so that way if anyone else calls you pretending to be from my office or telling you they're my manager, they don't have mm -hmm. the security code. Just hang up, block them. If they keep bothering you, let me know. Uh, I'll be your agent here for life. So I got your back. If anything, if you guys have any, you know, questions, call me anytime. Uh, but yeah, that this will be my full name here. Is you have it there? My number and um, that security code is. Um, so I'll, okay. like I said, I'll give you guys a call on Monday or Tuesday. Now, if you guys do see that first draft, um, that's good news. That means you guys were approved, but I'll most likely call you before then. But if you do see that before then, that means you were approved. Uh, do okay. you have any other questions for me, before, anything we went over? No, not right now. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Uh, I'll talk to you guys then. Uh, give me a call or shoot me a text if you need anything else. Uh, we'll talk to you. Uh, have a great weekend. All right. Thank you. You too. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is Ben. I'm just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage, and we handle the mortgage protection for your file that's associated with your property over on this came across my desk, and it's showing me as incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you closed with Magnolia Bank. Uh, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right, where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. You actually did the right thing. You filled out the card, you mailed it back into us, but for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. So I'm the manager in the area here, so I just want to make sure we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home, or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? Uh, my, my husband and I. Okay, perfect. I just had a few minutes before my next call. Uh, grab a pen and paper for me real quick. Uh, it should take about 10 minutes or so to get this knocked out. Uh, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Oh, you got paper already? That was quick. Um, yeah. My name is Benjamin St. Pauli. I'll have you write that down. Um, let me know when you get to the last name. I'm ready. I can spell it. Uh, S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra, D as in Edward, N as in Nancy, P as in Tom, P as in Pam, A as in Apple, L as in Lucy, and Y as in Yellow. And then this is my national producer number. This is uh, like my social security number as an insurance agent. Uh, that number is 210 Now, is this your first time going through the mortgage protection process, or have you been through it before? Well, you know, um, we we get these cards, and then you know they're they're mm -hmm. kind of misleading because they say you can take out the insurance to cover the mortgage, but then when you meet with these people, because of our age, we can get like uh, coverage, you know, life insurance for like uh, twenty five thousand, and then you pay an outrageous amount. You know, what we were looking mm -hmm. for was insurance to cover the mortgage if something should happen to one of us, not okay. just so they, life mm -hmm. insurance. You, you know, well, it is kind of life insurance, but it doesn't cover the mm -hmm. whole mortgage. Yeah, so what I'm sure, I don't know if they explained it to you, but um, if you didn't qualify for full mortgage coverage, it's called equity protection. So if you, if you, because if you, I'm sure if you wanted to cover the entire mortgage, it would probably cost another mortgage payment. Um, so most of my clients, they they do the equity protection uh, 
because it's just more practical and it's more affordable. Um, Which so, is um, like if what, something mm-hmm. happens to one of us, it would pay off the mortgage, right? So I don't know if they explain it to you, but it gives you a month, couple months of payments instead of the full mortgage. So either 12 months, 18 months, 24 months of payments. So that way it's more affordable for you instead of covering the full mortgage. That way your equity is protected in the home and whoever uh, the house is left to, they have time to sell the house and it can't, doesn't get foreclosed on. Uh-huh. And how expensive is that? Um, so it's very affordable. Uh, did they? What were the prices they gave you for the... Um, they quoted you for 25000 Um yeah, Do you have a lot of health like issues? Like a life insurance, you know. Right. Yeah, so essentially mortgage protection and org- and and equity protection are still life insurance. Uh it's just the mortgage protection it has living benefits as well. So um if anything happens to you you get sick, it covers that as well. But anyway, um do you have did you have health conditions or surgeries? What was the reason they um are telling you you didn't qualify for full mortgage? Well, I never I never really heard anything. I mean other mm-hmm. people have called and basically what they were doing is just offering us life insurance, not mortgage oh. protection, you know. So they didn't know what they're doing. Okay, no problem. Um, so, uh, okay, let's see here. So it looks like they only offered you life insurance. That is weird. So, yeah, I'm the manager in the area here, so I'll just I'll, I'll make sure you're taken care of. Um, did you – do you have any surgeries or medications? I mean, we're both on – well, my husband's a diabetic. We're both okay. on cholesterol medicine, blood pressure medicine. He had open heart surgery December mm-hmm. 21. 21. Mm-hmm. Okay, surgery. heart surgery 2021. He had a okay. um, aortic, aortic valve replaced. Okay, aortic valve, okay. Mm-hmm. And how about yourself? Anything on your end? Just, no. Uh, di- no diabetes on your end either? No. Okay, perfect. Uh, and any uh, do you have any medications? Uh, blood pressure and cholesterol. Okay. Not bad. All right, blood pressure, cholesterol. Okay. And uh, for the mortgage, oh, I, also, do you guys smoke? He chews tobacco. He chews tobacco, okay. Yeah, I don't smoke. Okay. Um, and then what would be your height and weight? Uh, height is five two and a half. Weight is too much. <laughs> two <laughs> two, two thirty. <laughs> two thirty. All right. Let's see here. Okay. So what would be the mortgage balance as of now? Do you know? Uh, let me see. I think it's about one ninety three. I think. Okay. And then the monthly payment. Is let's see, twelve hundred. Mm, it just went up. It's twelve hundred. Okay. Um, I can't remember the rest of it. Okay, twelve hundred. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now let me check here on our under underwriting. Who takes um, blood pressure and cholesterol? Looks like. For blood, high blood pressure. Okay. It looks like um, American Amicable would be a good choice for you. I'm going to pull up and see what options they have here for you. You still have that pen and paper? Yeah. Okay. And how young are you? Um, I'm 66. 66. Okay. Sixty-six and a half. <laughs> okay, and the date of birth I have here on file. Is That's my husband. That's oh, your husband. Okay. Yeah, I'm. All right. Let's plug all this in here. So I have a couple options here. Let me know what is it would be like your budget for for the coverage here, so I can I don't give you any options here that I want to give you the options that work for you. So what what did you say? 
what's kind of like the price range you want to stay in so I don't I'm not giving you anything outrageous here. I don't wanna knock you off your feet. <laughs> uh let's see, as low as possible. <laughs> as low as possible. Okay. I'll get you some low options. Got it. Perfect. All right. So I got three options here for you. Um they should be a lot more digestible for you than whatever they probably gave you before. Um, so, do you know the difference between whole life and uh, term life insurance? Have you ever had a life insurance before? Uh, I think so, but I can't remember. Uh, okay. Whole life. And the whole term. life. The term is short for terminate, so it expires. It's only, you know, for a certain amount of, of years. So it's like 30-year terms, 20-year terms, 10-year terms. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why it's... They say they call it term. It's short for terminate. It's only two percent nationwide payout because the insurance companies they time it so that way you, you have a very low chance of them actually having to pay you out during that period. Uh, only because uh, everyone outlives them. So right. uh, these policies are whole life here. So these are guaranteed to pay out. Also, uh, they build cash value, which term policies don't build cash value. So if you ever that means you have a surrender amount. So if you decide that you don't want the coverage anymore at any point or that you want to take some of the money out and keep the coverage, um, it's very easy to log into American Amicable's website here and, you know, take uh, some of the money out. It's kind of like a savings account. That's that the whole sense? life, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole yeah. life, yep. Yeah. So this would be a whole life equity protection plan. Um, so I'll have you write down the three options here. Okay. So you understood what I meant when I exp explained it to you earlier about what equity protection was? Yes. So, okay. So, yeah, it's going to, for your situation here, it's going to, I have an option here uh, for six months of mortgage payments, nine months of mortgage payments, and 12 months of mortgage payments. Okay. Um, so, you can write those three down. Got it. Um, so, the six month option is 36 bucks a month. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, the nine month option is fifty three bucks a month, and the twelve months option is seventy bucks a month. Okay, that's on me, right? That's on you. Yep. Okay. So, which one of those do you think would be most comfortable for you that I could submit an application to see which one you get approved for? So, what about is he covered or he's not because of his? Surgery. We can do next. He, if you, is he's roughly the same age as you? Yeah, he's a couple years younger. Okay. Oh, younger? Then it should be similar, the exact same for him, just it would be a separate policy with the same prices approximately. Do you want to do what we call, it's called a him and hers plan? Yeah. Okay. All right. So for you, that would be that. Um, let me see pull up what his would be. Um, usually I I just do one at a time because uh, I do have to do them two separately. Uh -huh. um, let's go ahead and finish yours first and then we'll do his after, okay? Okay. Um, so which one do you want to see if we can get you approved for? Hmm. Uh, let's do the 12 month. 12 month, okay. Yeah. And what would be a good middle, do you have a middle initial? Okay. All right, and then let's see if, I'm going to see if they partner with your bank here. Do you, um, which which financial institution uh, are you using? Mountain Credit Union. For? Mountain Credit Union. In Waynesville. And now, did you, in Waynesville, okay. So you opened it in Waynesville? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so good news. They they are here in the system. Uh I have a routing number here for you. It's uh two five three one seven four five seven six. I don't know if yeah. you could confirm that's I, correct. I know it by heart. Yeah, that's correct. Oh. Okay, perfect. Uh and the only thing I can't see on my end is the account number. So what's the account number? Okay. And then your social? Zero. Okay. And then 
just one second here. I'm going to pull up the application here. Uh, if you'd like, I can share my screen with you and you could see it or just you can hold while I go through it, whatever you prefer. No, you can go through it. Okay. Ben? Yep, still here. Okay. I just want to make sure you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just putting, a, uh, putting your info in here. Were you born in North Carolina? No, I was born in Lake Megantic, uh, Canada, Quebec. Oh, Canada, okay. Okay, and your beneficiary's full name. So what would be your husband's first name? And what is his social? Uh, oh, gosh. I used to know it by heart. Um, <laughs> I think it's... Okay. Good memory. Okay, and his date of birth was... T Mm-hmm. And do you have a con contingent beneficiary, or is it just uh, him? Um, Just him. Okay. Do you receive text messages? I do. Okay. I just sent over... Oh, I'm about to. Okay. Is it not working so at is all? Is there just one it. place for me to sign? Yeah. And that would be right there, requested draft date. Hmm. I'm not sure what's on your screen, but just sign whatever it asks you to sign. Says then, signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to have to head out because I have a meeting to go to. Oh, okay. okay. This is so much... Okay. Oh, it's easier? Okay, good. Let's see. Sign Financial Institute. Signature of proposed... Is this one better or is it the same? No, it's not letting me sign. Huh. Do you have a computer you could pull up? Because we're done. I, I want to let you go. This is the only part you have to do here, and then we're done. Yeah, what about... I mean, I can call you when I get back. Yeah, yeah, you can just call me when you get back, but um, make sure you hurry. You make sure you... Because I've, I've had people wait to do their husband or something, and then literally something happens to them the next day. I, 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 it's, it's fate. It's like I really try to make sure that we do it all at the same time. Yeah, this one's not letting me sign either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it's you have about a computer? the same. Ha, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can, you can send it to my work computer. Hopefully it won't okay. go into spam. But my email okay. at work is dot net. Okay, I sent that. And uh, yeah, you're all set on that. So sign that when you get there. Um, how much time do you have? We can speed through uh well can you do it in five minutes <laughs> i'm gonna try i'm gonna five, try we're all set five, with your ten, five uh ten at the most yes absolutely okay. we'll get it passed i'm gonna do it in five so you're gonna do it in okay. five is it the same bank or is it a different bank same bank there okay. it is That's I got five. okay everything of his is just like mine Okay. Same address, easy. everything. Yeah. Okay. Same Perfect. account number for the bank. Okay. 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 So. All how right. So, it looks like his his rate is different because of the heart attacks. So what uh -huh. I can do for you for him would be to be the same price for you. It would be that would be six. Seven months of coverage. So you did twelve months. Yeah. This would be seven months for seventy bucks a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, usually the, mm -hmm. they'll have you do, you know, electronic, but it's not. Um, electronic what? Signature. Signature. Um, are you checking the? You just checked the email I sent you. Which email yeah. are you talking about? The one you just sent me. The application for me to sign. Yeah, that should be electronic. What do you mean? It's not it's not letting me sign. Oh, you checked the work email one? Yeah. Oh. Well you have to try it on a computer probably when you get it to work. The, it is on the computer. Oh, you're on a computer? Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right, well let me get through your husband's and then we'll we'll troubleshoot yours. I want to make sure we get you guys both taken care of. It's the most important thing. Um 
Yeah, we have five minutes. I got to get through this part, but I'll help you with that once we uh, once we get that. He was born in Canada as well, or no? No, he was born in Augusta, Georgia. Georgia, okay. And I'll put your email here. I did it. Five minutes. <laughs> what was his phone number? Uh. I'm gonna put your number in actually, because it's gonna probably text you. Uh, it was uh. Okay. Next. Are both of your names on the bank? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And his middle initial one more time. A. Okay. Okay. There's one other way we'll be able to do your application, so don't worry. He is all that. This uh, his company's. Uh, have you heard of AIG, American General? Where he works. He works at oh, AIG. Insurance. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the company that that we got him here for his insurance, AIG. Okay. And you have American. Uh, you have American Amicable. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Hold on a minute here. You are ready to sign your full name. Okay. You found, you figured out the your application? You are ready to sign. Type your full name in the box put right below, then click submit. I acknowledge that my signature below represents signing all signatures. Got it. Oh. Okay. Mine's done. Okay. Perfect. And so is your husband. So, yeah, application is complete. So, yeah, you're all set. I'm going to, do you want to write down all the info for, um, for both of them on the paper? Okay. You're going to get them both in the mail, but I'll let you write it down so you have it. Okay. Um, so, uh, yours, how much time do we have? I want to try and get you out. Uh, let's see. We'll One minute. minute. <laughs> One minute. Okay. So, there's going to be two companies, American Amicable and AIG. Yours is American Amicable. This is AIG. Got it. Both are 70 per month. Right. His is seven right. months and mine is 12. Correct. And then uh, the recurring bill date is on the 28th. Uh, the benefits, uh, there's the living benefits. So if anything happens, cancer, stroke, heart attack, you're covered. Uh, there's the cash value. Uh, so if you need to take any money out, you're all set. Uh, permanent coverage doesn't expire. All right. And then lastly, uh, just write down my name and number on the paper. So that Got you it. Have my, if you need any changes done, you just call me. And I can handle both policies for you guys so that we don't have to call the companies. Um, and then um, your security code. Yep. Okay. So if anyone tries to call you pretending to me, be me, and they don't give you that number, hang up and block them. Okay. And, uh, if they keep bothering you, let me know. <laughs> and your phone number is. Correct. Yep. Okay. So, all, right. all right. So, uh, yeah, sounds good. I will uh, right. call you if I, if I have any issues with your policies getting sent. Um, and otherwise, I'll t I'll check in with you in a year because I usually do an annual review to check in on your benefits. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Productive in the morning. All right. Before you hit the phones. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm waking up earlier and earlier and try that because um, yesterday I went to the gym at 7:30 and then it just like I didn't start dialing until 10 because it was just like. I'm trying to push my schedule back for wake up earlier and early, but like 7:30 for the gym is too late. <laughs> I didn't get anything, any sales yesterday. Oh, bro, yeah. Yeah. For real. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 7:30 in the morning. It's because you gotta really, you gotta wake up at five. Yeah. Because ideally, because do whatever you gotta do to get on the phone by eight. Yeah. Yeah. Because to to be back showered, everything. Yeah. Be on the phone, so you gotta wake up 4:30 or 5. Yeah, it's crazy that. 7.30 is late, but uh, it's a struggle trying to get to that point. But I'll do it. Okay. I'll get there. So what we need to work on, so what we need to work on with you this week is waking up earlier. Yeah. Getting on, getting on the phones at eight. Mm -hmm. Eight a.m. Um, what else do you think you need to improve on? Um. Well, yeah, that's proving that it's working. Starting eight a.m. is working, and um, I'll start. I'll try uh, the meditating, and um, I'll try reading some books in the morning, and try. Mm-hmm. Meditating, breathing. Yeah. Is that is it called the Wim Hof method? You sh I thought you shared it before. Oh yeah, Wim Hof is great. Is I that, like Wim Hof a lot. You recommend that? I've never. I, I don't know what it is. I never looked into it, but I saw you post about it before. Is that what you yeah. do in the morning? 
I do do that in the morning. It's a good cardio exercise too. It's an exercise. Like for, oh. Well, it get, it's good cardio breath work. So it's breathing and meditating. One giant breath. breath as well. Hold that breath for 15 seconds and let go. Okay. Or is that what you meant by breathing exercise, or is there something else you do? No. Okay. No, so is that what you do? That's okay. Good. Okay. Cool. I'll try that. Um, breathing, meditating, reading. Yeah, that's something good to work on. One step at a time. Absolutely. So other than mm -hmm. so those are I mean, those are healthy habits and things to implement, but specifically regarding the business. Yeah. What do you think you can improve on there? Um. Well, I've been working on today was it when they're saying they're not interested, um, kind of figuring out if they have a policy or not, and then, um, you know, phrasing it better the way I say, like, not just let me take a look at your policy or just like saying, let's, and being direct, you were saying to be more assumptive. So I tried that today and it worked because I was saying, um, you are eligible for the upgrades. Let's go ahead and, you know, get that. And I, I've been saying the three C's. I, that's what I did today. I was like, all right, I'm going to need your three C's here. The cost, the carrier, and the coverage. Can you go get your info on your policy? And uh, that worked really good today because they like that nice. catchphrase kind of. I guess it works. I like that. Yeah. Three C's. I got that from Bryce that's the other day. He shared it in the Slack, so I was trying it. Okay. That's pretty cool. Three C's, cost, carrier, coverage. Be more selfish, so that's all mm -hmm. I'm assuming when they, when they say they're not interested, I'm assuming they're saying that right when you get them on the phone in the beginning. Yep, yep, right in the beginning, like something like, Yeah, I already have coverage, and then I've been doing I did that twice this morning, that worked for both of them, and uh, it's good. I'm gonna keep doing that. Cool, okay. What else, um, what else do you think you can improve on that? So, you, you made improvements on that. Mm -hmm. So you got better luck. What do you think you're maybe unsure about? Or you're struggling, or mm, maybe a little bit. My I'm still I I feel like I'm still experimenting with my tonality. Like it's not consistent enough where I'm always using the same tonality. I'm still trying changing it between calls. Maybe after rejection, I'll change my tonality, even though maybe that tonality was good, but it was just the person, you know. Mm, I would honestly. I keep the same tone for mm. everybody I talk to. Yeah. You know, if it's if she's a little, the only really the only, and this is a rare case scenario, and I don't do it a, a lot, mm -hmm. or I don't make a big tweak in it. But maybe if she's like very old and married, I'll simply just talk a little bit slower. Okay. If she's hard period. Versus. Yeah. Twenty two year old Daryl. <laughs> but like, huh. there's really no difference in my tone doesn't matter the client in my communication it's relatively the same every time i mean yeah your tone is the same with me or a client you just have a very consistent tone jonah so you have it dialed in for sure but today i tried like, using some up tones which is so not like me and it worked for both i was up using tones, up tones up. um hey let me read it my, let's get it real quick because it wasn't like a, a basic up tone it was kind of like well i, I recorded them both i can send them to you but let me try it now it was kind of like, um, giving you a quick call here. I work with a brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. Like that. Instead of not Chase Bank. Chase Bank. Or right, your file that's associated with your property over on, you know, Monday Street. I just came across my desk and it showed me it's incomplete. Like that. That's not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would ultimately prevent, for you, I really wouldn't overthink it. Okay. <laughs> I would simply just figure out what yeah. works, what works the best for you. What yeah. You're, the biggest thing is what are you most confident saying? Yeah. Because That's you true. could be, you could be doing something that somebody else does, and you could be working at it really hard and doing it perfectly. But if you're not confident or you don't feel comfortable saying it, it's gonna, it's not gonna come across what the client. So do what, what you think's best, what you're most comfortable in, and of course you know what the client responds best to, and just roll with that. And don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. No, don't right. keep switching it up. Yeah, you're right. You can't get too in your head about it. Yeah, don't get too caught up about it. Exactly. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, I work, this week I was working on, you know, just staying more calm and collected and not getting too emotional over, 
you know, like a rejection or even even after the sale today that I got that first sale, I didn't get too excited. I just stayed calm and then I got that next one immediately after because I didn't get too excited and I kept going. So that was good. That's huge. Mm -hmm. 100%. Because it's just, you know, it's, you know, and use that, use that momentum for good. Like I got a sale, great. I'm yeah. Simply do it again. Yeah. You know, staying very calm, but still using that momentum and that calm sort of collective confidence. Right. It's really the best way to describe it. So that, that's everything, bro. That's mm -hmm. everything. Or I know like you had a, you had a big first week, yeah. first week, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I mean, I'm really happy for you, mm -hmm. but in a way I almost don't like when agents have you yeah, know, big week their first week when they first get started. It wasn't good. I then like, yeah, then when you have a couple, and then you have a couple of shitty weeks after that, and you start overthinking, and then you're a lot more emotional, like oh frog. Yeah. Versus if you like it's starting out rough. I've noticed people like tends to be taken better. In. Yeah. But I mean, you get it. Like you've been in sales. Mm -hmm. yeah, this isn't your first sales job. But yeah. You know, like just gotta stay level, stay consistent. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, and hearing your story, how you, it took you three weeks to get a sale, always I always think about that story. It always, you know, brings me back. Like, hey man, like this is a process. Even if you had a good first week, it might take you three weeks to actually get good, because that might have just been luck. Bro, even even two years into this, because mm -hmm. you know I was, and I wrote eight hundred k for the year. Mm -hmm. I would still have days where, I would still have shit days where I came home, I'd have twelve appointments, I'd come home at zero. Wow. <laughs> I wrote 800 for the year, and like it's funny because it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, mm -hmm. even three years in, it's still like you'll still have a bad week and you'll start overthinking. Like, hey, shoot, like I know I've been doing this for three years, I know I've written a lot of calls, but maybe I just got lucky <laughs> for two years straight. <laughs> maybe this is just maybe this isn't really legit. Like, it's, just, it's crazy how much, like, it doesn't matter how long you're doing it, you still over overthink and have negative thoughts. Imposter syndrome, yeah, imposter syndrome, exactly. Yeah. So it's keeping keeping the mindset right. You know that goes back into you know developing yourself continually, like reading, reading researching podcasts. Because the second you think you got it all figured out and you you, ha you know everything there is to know, that's when you're fucked. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, bro. Well, I'm excited to I'm excited to see you next week. Oh yeah. What you need to focus mm. on this week is just focusing on mm. really putting in the work and having a monster week this week. So yeah. when you get out of here, the lock in. Mm -hmm. you're you kind of through that initial learning curve and we can really hammer down and focus on specifics okay to actually get you that next level so we can get you right in 30 40k a month okay sounds good well so, hopefully i'll get to a 30k month here this week <laughs> cool all right. all right well i gotta call this other guy okay um, but cool yeah make sure you fill out your dial tracker and start getting on the phone today okay you gotta work on soon thank you brother all right G. okay yeah, I just finished packing all my clothes, my laptop, iPad, everything, ready to go to Chicago and about to call my Uber. It's time for the lock-in. What's up guys, live from the lovely, lovely Camry of Gabe this Anderson. Area. This thing is gonna be going to 300,000 miles. 300,000, we're gonna Either, Whether you're a millionaire or not, you definitely are gonna be a millionaire and you definitely are gonna drive this 300,000 miles. Anyway. We were talking about leadership. I just asked Gabe, what are some struggles or challenges you're facing as a leader that you're that you're trying to learn or overcome right now? Um, so the, the main thing is when you are in a, a role as a leader, is just continuing to lead by example and lead from the front. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing, is just doing, doing the right things, doing the things that you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. so that the people actually wanna follow you. Exactly. They actually want to. Uh, they they can see where you're going, and they want to they want to go with you. Yeah. So the challenge is just just like anything. It's just showing up every day, Routine. going to work, doing the things that you know you need to do, and um, being that example for whether they're brand new or they've been here. Just continually um, setting the standard and pushing past it. Your team's always going to do half of what you do, right? That's a that's a great. Um, yeah, I, that's something that I think about a lot so that's a challenge is doing more and more if you want your team to do you know you can count on them to do at least half mm -hmm. um, then you want to do more and more and that half becomes more substantial and that yeah. half yeah. Um, is very impactful for them too that's so, why it's so important to pick a high performing mentor because you're going to do half of what they do <laughs> yeah and you want to look at you like you want somebody who you know is 
is doing the things that you want to be doing, not just talking about them. Mm -hmm. They're either doing them currently or, you know, they've done them in the past and you have yeah. proof of that. So right. people are not going to, they're not going to follow blindly. Of course. I mean, what I talk about on my new agent training calls now, I've been going over the past few months. So some of you guys may have heard this, but it's a good reminder is make your effort tied to a discipline, not, a, not an achievement where because if your goal if your goal is to oh I want to make ten thousand dollars this week or I want to make ten sales or I want to make X amount of money this month and it's tied to a reward or an achievement it's gonna be much it's gonna be much more of a roller coaster ride versus if you make it tied to a discipline and you simply focus on what's in your control hey I'm gonna make three I'm not leaving the office until I get 300 dials or five presentations and I'm gonna do that every single day consistently and for me, when I was running in the field, that's what I abided by for, I mean, dude, for two years straight. Where in the field, it was, it was a little bit different, but it was, um, it was eight appointments. They said 30 appointments a week, eight appointments a day. I was like, shoot, I'm so bad, so I'm gonna book 40. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would book, I would book 10 appointments a day, and then on Saturdays, I'd book 12 or 13. But my goal was, every Monday and every Thursday was a dial day. So on Monday, I was dialed in and I was focused and I was not leaving my desk until I had 20 appointments for the next two days, 10 for each day. And then same thing on Thursday. Thursday, I would, I would typically book between 10 to 23 appointments um, on for the weekends, but I was just locked in until I did that. So a lot of days I would be dialing from eight to eight. Some days I'd get done at five, some days I'd get done at four, but I wasn't leaving until I got my appointments. And then back when I'm, when I'm in the field, I would just go run my appointments. And I wasn't coming home until I ran every single appointment. And I always, I, I never missed an appointment either. Even if it was 10 o'clock at night, I was running three hours behind, I would always show up to the last home, every single time. And that's what, that's what served me very well because even this, um, even my, the year I wrote two years ago now, when I wrote 800K in the field, I did, I still had days where I came home at zero and it was a shit day. And I still, I still had shitty weeks, but I never, I sure as, I sure as heck never had a shitty month. And that was, um, I was always just so dialed and so focused on what was in my control because it's very easy in this business to overthink, over perseverate. And I feel like a lot of times we're consumed by analysis, by paralysis, or we're, we're getting ready to get ready. And then you start overthinking the products and the situation with the client and this, that, et cetera. Where instead of getting pissed off that the client didn't buy what happened here, just take it as, as a learning lesson. And the regardless of that, I really don't even see it as a bad day. Because when I would have, it was, it was funny because it was very easy when I had a bad day and I had eight appointments or I went eight presentations in a row or 12 presentations in a row without making a sale. It was easy for me to be like, all right, well, the leads suck. All right, well, yeah, this, this is just a bad area to work. You know, people are, whatever, whatever the case may be. When instead I looked, I looked at myself reflected inwards. I was like, we either, none of these people know each other. None of them got on a phone call and say, Hey, we're going to tell Jonah. We're all going to tell Jonah. We need to think about it. I'm like, well, shoot, maybe I suck. Maybe there's something I need to improve on. What's up boys? And if you, if you guys just become so focused and so dialed on what's in your control and regardless of the outcome, that's really, it's easier said than done. It's easy. It's easy for me to stand up here and say it. But I'm not just saying it actually, I did it and breathed it. And Maka, I mean, dude, you're the same way. Well, you've been in sales, you've been in sales longer than I have. General sales. Well, how long have you been doing, how long were you doing Eco Show for? Two years. Okay, about so about the same. The same. Yeah. So same time. And same thing as the doors. Same principles apply. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you gotta stick to the commitments. Um, Go for no. That's a good book. If you guys haven't read it, it's literally what he just what, what he just articulated, right? If you're going for a goal, what happens if you sell the first three people you talk to? Are you done for the day? Are you gonna coast? No, because you didn't hit your your no limit, right? So go for that commitment. Stick to hey, I'm gonna do these these disciplines daily. And in this, it's even it, it's magnified even more, right? On the doors, we didn't get paid till end of summer, so. You're not really riding that roller coaster of like deposits, chargebacks, deposits. Um, 
here that those emotions get magnified even more because you could have a massive week. It's a double-edged sword. 10K hits, it's awesome, but what are you going to do the next week when you just had 10K deposit in your account? Are you still going to wake up at 5 a.m., do your routine, show up, be the first one in the office, or are you going to start resting on your laurels and then kind of coast off your disciplines, right? Um, so yeah, that's so powerful. Has anybody let a chargeback ruin their day? Just be honest. <laughs> okay, you guys aren't. Do you, bro, you've been written. <laughs> oh, a solar. Are you talking about a solar chargeback? Yeah, okay. A char that, a chargeback is a chargeback. That that that's yeah. a ruin, Dave. It's like it's like twenty grand commission. And you're selling for for a month. But it's and for anybody that's had that's let an insurance chargeback ruin your day, you guys simply just aren't writing enough business. Where if you guys are writing enough business, a chargeback wouldn't phase you because you already have five more in the pipeline. Yeah, you, that was. You uh, won't even see chargebacks. On the doors, there's one thing that cures everything it's more sales. More sales. So, whatever happens, mm -hmm. go sell the next door. Simple right? as that, no matter, man. No matter what happens. So. And I can, like, I'm, I'm not just saying that, like, I'm not just saying this to say this, but I'm saying this genuinely. I was so focused and so dialed on my daily action, the daily discipline. I mean, yeah, like, for a few minutes, but I never let a chargeback affect me more than five minutes. Like, probably not even a minute. It'd be like, well, shit, that was three thousand dollars that just charged back, and I'm negative in the whole three grand. Well, fuck, what do you do? You can sit around and cry about it, or you can just simply go write more business. That's huge. And then also, it's, I think not only that, but I think the biggest thing about this is, and what really affects staying level and managing your emotions is the shit from your personal life, where if everything was perfect and you didn't have any drama in your relationships you know, relationships didn't go to shit or this happened or this happened or et cetera, it'd be a lot easier to do this. And everything we just talked about would be a lot easier to execute. But when you're, you know, when you, your girlfriend breaks up with you or your parents are fighting or you had this fight or, you know, you, you're this much in debt or have this much credit card debt or whatever the case may be, or your, your kids are crying, it's, um, you know, personal shit happens too. And it's, it's important, it's a lot easier said than done, but it's important to separate the two. When you're locked in, dialing the phones, you know, put all of that, put all that aside. Like your, the, the fight you had or whatever it may be, whatever's going on in your personal life, put all that aside and focus on the phones. And that's why it's so important to come together. Like a lot of you guys made sacrifices to be here. It's a lot easier to focus and lock in when you're with another group of individuals. I feel like, especially as guys, like guys, guys need to run in packs. Like that's why a lot of these dudes moved up here to Chicago, moved into our office. That's why we dial on Zoom together. Whatever the case may be, if you're if you're local and you're building a team, dude, get an office for yourself. Because if you're working out of your house, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to separate personal from business because you deal with all your personal shit in your house and then it's all messed together. And that's that's what can fog your mindset and fog your mentality. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Sam. Uh -oh. yeah. you, you mind if I share? What? Well, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Bro, all right. So you guys. So, <laughs> I thought I was getting called out for being late. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's out of your control. Because what happened? Well, dude. So my man, Sam. So shout out to Sam. So yeah, yesterday, dude, my dude gets his car stolen. Oh, my God. Gets his car stolen. And he texts in, text in the group chat a picture of his, a piece of plastic off his car where the key fob went. And he's like, dude, I got my car stolen. And the next picture is in the back of a cop car. What? I'm like, at first, I, mean, I, at I didn't first, get arrested, but like, <laughs> dude, yeah. I I he's like, first time in a cop car, my car got stolen. I like, I responded to the group time, like, fuck, fuck off, bro, haha. -ha. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, no, for real, like, because I thought it was April Fools. He's like, no, oh, yeah. for real, my car actually like, got stolen. Definitely looks like April Fools. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> but do you still showed up to the office? Uh, you were still dialing yesterday. You still ran like your appointments? Hour. I was at the, the cop, the police station, and <laughs> dealing with insurance and police yeah. all day. But you, you had a gun stolen out of your car, you had all your yeah. stuff in your car. My passport, I had to report the that Passport, today. Yeah. your car. Your passport? Yeah, my passport. Um, the air fryer. Bro, the air, the air fryer. fryer. Oh, I had a suit too. <laughs> like, they can have the car, but not the air fryer. Not the air fryer. So like half of, this, half of your shit, not only your car, but half of your shit got stolen. Yeah. Basically. But they're probably rocking around uh, Chicago and my stuff in a suit with the gun. Uh. Right. <laughs> but as, 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 soon as, as soon as you were done at the police station, where'd you go? Huh? As soon as you were done at the police station, where'd you go? The office. The office? Yeah. Where are you today? Yeah, the office. Yeah, you're here. Yeah. You know, you're here like you could be upset, you could be emotional, but Can't what, control it. what is that going to do? Yeah. What is sitting around being upset going to, what value is that going to give you? Yeah. 
So, and, and it's like in this business, it's, you talk about staying level, like you get, you can make money so quick, which what we're talking about is a double-edged sword. But luckily, dude, if you get your fucking car stolen or your car, your car gets totaled, luckily, dude, you can, you can write 10 grand in a week. Like Colin, shout out to Colin too, bro. Cause no. Sam, Sam gets his car stolen. Sam calls me that morning. He's like, dude, I got my car stolen. And then Colin calls me late last night. He's like, bro, I got, I just got hit by a semi, dude. Yeah. And my car is total. So you're like, he's like, like a, we're writing 10K this week and we're putting the down payment on the gamer. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, and at first, like, I thought it was April Fool's, but I could tell by the way you're talking to me, you're serious on the phone. I'm like, all right, Colin, when you fuck with me, I'm like, so dude, now, so you, your car got totaled, your car got stolen, but you guys are both here. You guys are both here today. So what else are you going to do? And, and to give it, to give an example of that, I also want to give a shout out to Gabe. Because Gabe, what was your biggest month before joining our group? 8K. 8,000 in a month? If you pay it, yeah. What did you do your first lock-in here in this office? In this office? In this office. 19. 19K. In how many days? Three. In three days. So his, big, his biggest month was eight grand before. Before joining our group and joining our organization. Came to the lock-in and wrote 19K over the span of three days. Sure. So it's doable. You just got to lock in. And do it. Organization. Um, I'm gonna. Claudia's a better one to answer this than I am, but I have spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are everything. Yeah, I'll go more in depth tomorrow, guys. I just kind of put. So it should up we there, should, should we circle back to this one? Yeah, circle back to that one for sure. I'm not gonna go into it right now. Okay. But a lot of you guys, and I think also like organization is gonna help tie into like everything else that a lot of people. That's a ask. terrible looking star. That's. Like, um, you know, people asking about, you know, clients, you know, retention, keeping track of, you know, your book of business. Someone asked about, like, leads. Like, it all goes, I mean, my little spiel. Can you every, screen share on the projector, too, tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, so like, every, but, like, everything goes in together. Like, someone asked, like, what, how do you, like, know when it's time to, like, upgrade your leads? Well, let's see what you've been spending, what you've been getting, what's your ROI been, what you've been making. Like, then go from there. Like, it... it Organization is the key to everything in this. If you're not organized, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> what a degree I know to end on. All right, moving on. I see that nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, You'll hit too many people in this room. Keeping, keeping momentum. I feel like that ties into what we just talked about. Yeah. Who, who asked that? I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Keeping momentum, are you talking about just, get, just getting started? I, Once you get wrong, I don't know. Well, you, when you put me on the spot when it comes to a question, because it, I'm still getting through my coffee. But yeah, like, do you I want think, to redo your question? No, uh, <laughs> because I think like as other people were going through like product knowledge, and then like you and I had the conversation of just like getting through the fear of just like doing it, and so like, but I'm, I guess like for me is like you know keeping that momentum as far as like. Because I do like have a full time job outside of this, so it's for me it's like getting that schedule to keep that momentum, so that one day I can quit that other job and then well, still have that mindset of okay, I'm having a bad week, but like you said, it's not a bad month. Like I might have had a bad day, I might have had a bad week, but I never had like a bad month. So I guess just like. Like, keeping, well, keeping momentum, mind. like when you're having bad days. Like, yes, yeah. us females are emotional. I'm not going to point at people or make eye contact, but there are some emotional men in this office, <laughs> in this room. I know who you are. Um, so I think it's also just like how to keep going when you're mentally not having a good day. Yeah. You know what I, you I, know know what I think it is? I know a lot of us struggle right. with that. So, no, so well, I, tell this to every, I tell this to every single agent coming into this business. If they've never done sales before, I'm like, hey, dude, this is going to be a grind. Like your first 90 days are gonna be hard. Yeah. And you're probably not gonna make a lot of money. I've t anybody that's hopped in a hiring call with me where you're like, dude, I've never done sales before, I've told you that. And I think it, first of all, having the right expectations coming in, mm -hmm. but how long have you been working in the school system for? Uh, a while. Okay, yeah. so I have like my Five whole years. like, dude, I could go on a tangent about the school system, but <laughs> all that Same. aside, that, <laughs> that, that's another conversation, <laughs> but I'll leave it simply with this being said, that I think the school system and society has programmed us 
to treat failure like it's a bad thing. I agree. And to I agree. like and to or not like, ask questions, yeah. and to be compliant, and yeah. To, there's only one right answer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one right answer. Yeah. If you fail, you suck. Yeah. You're not good. Yeah. You sh like there's a, but really, dude. I I I don't think there's a single person in this room that can think of one successful individual that hasn't failed a hundred times. Yeah. Like, dude, Elon Musk. I mean, I look up to him a ton. Like, if I could have dinner with any person alive, it'd be Elon. And dude, that, like, how many times has Elon messed stuff up? And he's like one of the smartest dudes alive. Yeah. So you, you have to you have to fail, and you have to mess stuff up to be successful. Yeah. But that's what society doesn't want you to, doesn't teach us. I agree. And teaches again. So I think having the right expectation, the right mindset coming into it, mm -hmm. of knowing like, hey, this, this is gonna be hard. Yeah. I'm gonna mess shit up, but it's okay. Yeah. And then also, and then thirdly, and lastly, before we move on, I think we get in this state of analysis by paralysis, where, <clears throat> where we have all the, we have all the information, but there's there's no shortage of information. There's simply lack of execution. Where like first thing like first thing I wrote on mind, body, spirit, business, and I was writing all those out. None of you guys in this room were like, oh fuck, working out. Shoot, I never thought of that. I was trying to. Like you got, you guys all know. You guys all know that that's what you need to do to be successful, and all the, especially coming into this business, where every organization, every culture has, you know, every organization and sales company has their own culture, their own way of doing things, and some are, you know, there isn't information. Some are like, you know, hands off, use a script, go figure it out. But any, every single person in this room and every single person that's a part of an organization, I mean this in the most respectful way, dude. If like, if you guys aren't successful and don't win here, that's simply your fault. Because do we invest, we invest, invest a ton of time, a ton of energy, effort, finances, to be blown with like a lot of money into creating all the proper system structure and tools and resources, you guys need to win. It's like coming on board, like you guys do go through a full training. We have all the product knowledge, all the underwriting guides. And if you have a question, you need help, there's always five, six managers at all times that are available to help. You can call. Or unmute on the live dials, there's always 12, 13 people on there in any breaker that can help you. Like, is anybody, has anybody that's been here and actively working ever been in a situation where they couldn't receive help? Didn't have help. Yeah, nobody raised their hand. So there's really, there's no shortage of information or support. There's just lack of execution and actually doing it. Whereas like we were talking about yesterday, it gets to a certain point, but like you want to be prepared. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like you just want to jump in blind, yeah. but it gets to a certain point where once you've gone through the training and you've watched all the videos, you just, you just gotta get started. I think what helps is like, you're not face to face. Like I am a very personal person. I love like working with people, but I think also like hiding behind the phone <laughs> <laughs> helps hide those insecurities. So no, that's a good point. Yeah. Especially talking about building the why, or if you have to, if you have to get uncomfortable with the client, dude. When I when I was in the home, I would I'd be sitting at the kitchen table with John and Mary. And John's not like John Mice, John's like Jaleel size, dude. Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking sitting at Jaleel, <laughs> and I'm like, and he's telling me he needs to think about it. And I'm like, having to like, just like, I'm, I'm having to hammer down. Then he starts looking at me like he wants to beat my ass and kick me out of his house. He tells me he's gonna call the cops. It's like, like, dude, we don't have to do that here. It's, you, you just, worst case scenario, if they're really like, you ask the tough questions, you get uncomfortable. Worst case scenario, if you don't close it, you never talk to them again. And even if you do close it, there's a pretty good chance you're never gonna talk to him again. Who cares? It's not that. It's really not that deep over the phone. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, that's that's funny. You can. <laughs> it's really not. It's not as tough. I've never like, thought about you. it that way. Like okay, fuck you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. All right, cool. So keeping momentum. Better conversions. So submitted apps to issue paid. That was you asked that. Correct, yeah. Okay. What can you name a situation specifically or Yeah, when, so when I started I was selling a lot of like term products, specifically like a GTL turbo trunk, for example, and it's right. taken God knows how long for like an answer. So a lot of okay. underwriting and decisions there and I'm finding like specifically like Raiderman, for example, just has leaned more into like immediate decision, like whole life um, stuff like that as opposed to that. So just kinda understanding but also like managing the underwriting process too, like calling the uh, uh, the carrier, seeing where it's at in the process, and kind of like pushing them along. I'm finding there's a lot of steps to it. Um, just making sure that things get issued as well. Do you feel like? Do you feel like you always? You feel like you always want to get the client the absolute best for their situation, the absolute yeah, best product. Whatever makes the most sense. Okay. Do you feel like you're helping and serving the client if if it goes to underwriting, then it gets declined, works later, and you never end up writing anything? 
Because mm-hmm. they changed no. their mind. No. That's not doing them as a service at all? It's not. Just because you could maybe save them $7 a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with all that being said, because I, I thought the same way. And I love like where your, your heart's in the right place and I love where your heart's at. But if you come in here and you're looking at the underwriting guides, you're trying to get the, app, the client the absolute cheapest, best option. A, number one, that's not a good use of your time. Mm-hmm. And number two, dude, the client, the client doesn't, that's not the number, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a factor, but that's not the number one thing they care about. The number one thing they care about is, you know, is you, as you, their insurance guy, like how much does this person care about me? And will this person be fighting for me when I'm no longer here? Will this person be fighting for my family? And how much, and how much value is this person providing to me? That's really what they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And you do that by, that's why, you know, I, I told you before, like I've almost never, I'm, I've, I've sold a shit ton of life insurance. I've done like three fully underwritten policies in my entire life. Like 99.9999% of the time, it's always simplified issue. And the majority, not only that, but it's instant decision. Because it's like I said, it's it's not a good use of your time. And then, dude, the client has to really, the client has to really want that product to go through all that process. They're busy, you're busy. So at the end of the day, I think I know which one you're talking about. It's the same one we were talking about hers and hers. in the off. Yeah, hers and hers. It's like, dude, you could have just wrote an M M and an F T, and it would have been a little bit more expensive. Mm-hmm. And you got them approved and on the spot. So, uh, with all that being said, I would encourage you guys to. Pivot to our more lenient carriers, where it's not, everything's not having to go to underwriting. They're not having to email you back two weeks later with 13 pending requirements. And then after you finally answer all the requirements, all we're gonna need to do blood and urine. Like it's just, that's just not, that's not how you help clients. How you help clients is by getting an instant decision and getting them approved. Because the, to be frank with you guys, and some of, you, some of you guys may have heard me say this before, I'm okay with approvals. I'm okay with declines. I hate underwriting. I am not okay with underwriting. Underwriting drives me up a wall because it's, you just don't you don't know. So if you do have a situation where you're with a client and it get, refers to underwriting, and if you guys have seen me write business, I do not hang up the phone. I don't care if I'm on the phone for three and a half hours with the client and I'm running and I have three appointments I'm running late to, I am not hanging up the phone until I get that a client approved or something, mm-hmm. even if it was referred to underwriting. Because if you, let's say you write, I don't know, name him. And it's like, all right, all right, Mary, looks like it was referred to the home office, underwriting, um, I'll call you in a week or so, let you know what their decision is. And then you try to call Mary a week later, and then you can't get her on the phone because she's busy, or she changed her mind, or whatever else, and like, hey, I don't think we can afford this right now. I talked to my husband, blah, blah, blah. And now you just lost a sale. So I never, I always treat every time like, I, like I'm talking to a client where that's the last time I'm gonna get them on the phone. So if I do have a situation where an app goes to underwriting, what I do is I don't say anything. I don't say, hey, we're just wrapping up, nothing. I simply just, norm, just like I'm still filling out the application, no change in mood, no change in pace, just efficiently plug them back into another carrier and I write a backup. But what I do with the backup is I set the draft date out, because you don't want the client getting billed for two policies. So you simply set the draft date out, a couple weeks, a month, whatever it is, and then Worst, and then I, what I'll tell the client is like, all right, John and Mary, so it looks like we submitted that request with American Amicable and Foresters. I'm gonna give you a call here in a week or so and let you know what companies approve you. So then, worst case scenario, if the AMM gets declined, well, hey, Mary, it looks like we're going to Foresters. If the AMM gets approved, you just call Foresters and have the app withdrawn before the client gets approved. And make sure, you wanna make sure, don't forget to call the company. This is where it goes into organization. I'm going over tomorrow. Leave notes, follow up with your clients. That's how you write bad business. You get terminated by writing multiple policies on a client, getting them getting billed. But just make sure, with all that being said, that you, you're never leaving. You never hang up the phone with leaving a client in, uh, in an iffy situation. If that makes sense. Yo. Um. Just so people kind of understand this, because they might have missed it, but like, how many um, applications have you written on one person? while you're on the phone with them at one time. Oh. Like without getting off the phone. Without getting off the phone? Because a lot of people- Dude, I, like, had that, I had that one a couple months ago, do you remember? You, you, which one? Dude, it was, it was seven, eight apps. It was seven applications. I was on the phone for a long time. Remember I was in the office till 8.30? Yeah. 
Yeah. I was like, dude, this lady keeps getting declined. I don't mm -hmm. know why. I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, and we finally got her approved. I'll just do it. I'll just keep plugging them in. I'll just keep filling out applications. I do not give up. It's on the same phone call, too. The same phone call. So in a scenario like that, how do you continue the conversation? The you, you, yeah. just, you just got to make her feel like, all right, Mary, you know, just a few more minutes. You want to make her think like <laughs> two more minutes, <laughs> keep going, a little bit more, a yeah. little bit more. Like, don't say, all right, Mary, this is going to take two hours to get you approved. Like, she's like, all right, click. Yeah. Versus you just, you just keep, you just, you just kind of keep talking, keep small talking her, keep making her think it's a few more minutes, a few more minutes, a few more minutes, a few more minutes. And then by the end of it, and once you have all your information, you, somebody asks about building rapport, that's where you build rapport with the client. So you talk about their kids, maybe make some jokes, make them laugh, etc. Were you going to say something else? No. Oh, okay. Or you, you, or you raise your hand. Yeah, wouldn't it be better to just kind of hang up the phone there and fi figure no. out like a career no. that she's actually going to get approved for instead of just starting to write a bunch of policies? Um, well, I'm not saying just, just write policies decline. blindly. Okay. I'm not saying write policies blindly. That's why we have the underwriting guide. Do you guys have the new Pinnacle one? The spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Anybody that yeah. doesn't have that, let me know. I'll make sure you guys get that. Gotcha. But yeah, obviously don't just blindly Thank plug you. them in. But no, never hang up the phone on a client. Because gotcha. anytime I hang up the phone, I treat it like that's the last time I'm going to talk to them. Because you've lost, the, I know you've lost, we've talked about this before. You've lost sales from doing that. I've lost a couple, yeah. Hanging up the, hanging up the phone. Yeah. Versus if you would have just kept them on the phone and kept plugging away, yeah. probably wouldn't have lost it. So. A lot of times, too, they'll respect like how hard you're working for them. Yeah. And if you're dishonest with them, like, hey, something's coming up, but I promise you, like, I'm going to find you something and we're going to get this and this protected. They'll respect you for that. Absolutely. Hey, Jonah, what were you saying about it? they can terminate you if they get double billed? Oh, if you just if you have low persistency, oh. or if they're like, like not some clients will be like, oh, why never sign up for two policies, or if they call the company or whatever else. And if you have too many complaints, oh, okay. then yeah, so you definitely want to be careful with that for sure. Right? Good quality business is important. Um. Staying discipline, was that you, Mikey? Yeah. Staying discipline non-negotiables. What do you, can you give me specifics on just showing up at a certain or, time or? Yeah, like, I mean, sometimes I'll switch up what time of day I'm working out. Sometimes I'll work out at night, sometimes I'll work out in the morning. Like, I just need to stay consistent, like, get my day going and then make sure I'm hitting a certain amount of dials or appointments a week. Mm, what do you think has been prohibiting you from doing that? Well, yeah, myself, I guess. Not so. having a routine. Yeah, routines are everything. If if Claudia was in here right now, she would tell you how much of a psycho I am with my with my morning routines yeah, and my I daily routines. Really routine, so so that, that's the first thing. That's the most important thing. Where the past, dude, the past almost four years I've been here, I have relatively done the exact same thing every single day. I've woken up at the exact same time, read my Bible, drank green tea, stretched. Work, got a workout in, left my house, would go be out in the field all day every day. Once we switch to virtual, roll in the office, be in the office. I eat lunch at the same time, I eat dinner at the same time, I have all my appointments dialed in my schedule. And the more you can systematize your schedule and your daily routine, your daily process, the more efficiently and the more optimally you'll be able to, to perform and function, if that makes sense. Yeah. So first of all, lock in a daily routine. And then secondly, just create non-negotiables with yourself where if you if you don't show up dude, the only person you're hurting is yourself if you're not doing that if you're not showing up every single day and then after a while that starts that starts to take a toll on your mindset where then you know like oh i'm a person that doesn't show up for myself and doesn't put in the work even when i need to and that that's what reminds that your self-esteem and your confidence and momentum is everything momentum can be your best friend and can move you in towards success and performing optimally and to your goals and your vision, or it could also be your biggest detriment and hinder you. It's just the how you utilize and how you leverage momentum. Um, and then last thing, let me ask you, Mike, you, I mean, dude, what, and thirdly, would be your why. Like, uh, you, have, you have different goals and different levels of goals. You know, for me, like, one of my goals is to help Gabe and Joe start 100 orphanages in Ghana. That's a long-term goal, and that's too general, too broad. A short term goal, like for me and Claudia, is dude, we just want to move into a bigger apartment. And we set a non negotiable, like, hey, the agency has to be doing this amount per month, and then we'll we'll upgrade our living space. Shit, stuff like that. 
Like, dude, it's like I'm not saying like you, you have you have you can have really big goals and like hey I want to help and change a lot of lives. And you can also have a goal like, dude, I'm just trying to get a BMW in mm. two months. I want to buy a jet ski. A jet ski? There you go, <laughs> dude. You you just you stay you stay disciplined for 30 90 days in the office non-negotiables. I mean, dude, you're gonna have the cash for a jet ski in no time. Jet skis only like five grand. I yeah. looked. For a used one. Ten for a nice one. You're a peasant. Yeah. <laughs> at least twelve for a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. All right. I work in education. Sorry. I, I look at budgets. <laughs> All right. Um, building versus selling. Managing time. So this is this is a good one. I was just talking to somebody about this where. It's for me because I'm very systematized and focused and that's how I've learned to function better. And for, for that, and Chris might have a different, his own opinion or a different way of doing things. But for me, is I had to have specific times and specific days where I focus on each. Where, you know, when I first started to be this afternoon from this time to this time, on these days, I'm gonna focus on recruiting. And then once the business started growing a little bit more, I'm gonna focus, dedicate these specific days towards recruiting, training, helping agents. And then it just slowly, gradually took over my schedule. So that's one thing is have specific times like, hey, from eight to noon, I'm gonna dial the phones and run appointments. From one to five, I'm gonna focus on recruiting, helping agents, et cetera. And then from five to eight, I'm gonna go back to running appointments. Whatever that may be and have it blocked off in your schedule and be intentional about it. And then secondly, you know, Mikey made a comment. He's like, dude, it's not sustainable to dial 300 dials forever. Like, I agree, bro. I don't think anybody in this room wants to make 300 dials forever. That would suck. That'd be terrible. Uh, we say, we make, we tell new agents to make 300 dials because when you're new, we're just getting you the cheapest leads possible just to get your teeth kicked in so you can get the reps you need to and learn the skill set. Versus once you reach a certain caliber as a salesperson, especially if you're recruiting, building a team, did you, you're, Every, what should be on the forefront of all of your mind is how can I upgrade to higher intent, higher quality leads? So I'm gonna to have to spend less time dialing the phones. That should be on the forefront of all of your guys' minds. Because yeah, like ROI, yeah, ROI is important. Yes, it's a business, but the, the most important thing is your time. And I'm constantly, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but you guys all should be constantly thinking about what actions and what activities gives me the most leverage over my time. Because your time is your most valuable asset. You can always make more money, you can always do what else, but <laughs> your time is set. Like you can't, you can't get any more time in a day, with typically. So that's what I would really ask yourself is higher intent, higher quality leads as soon as you're able to afford it. Because as a salesperson, dude, making, bro, making $300 a day isn't gonna get you paid. Like yeah, it's important, like if you guys are new, that's what you're gonna have to do to become successful. But don't get it twisted. The only thing that gets you paid is helping clients and closing deals. So once you figure out how to do that and can do that consistently, and you could afford the higher intent leads, your thought process on the forefront of all of your minds would be how can I be in the sales process as much as possible? Because that is the only activity that's gonna get you paid as a writing agent. And then after that, obviously recruiting as well. Yo. So you're upgrading your leads based off your closing ratio, not how much, not your revenue. I would say your skill set, skill set, well, your skill set, and, skill your set, closing revenue, ratio closing ratio. Of your skill set, right? Yeah. So, like, it's, so basically, like once you reach this, then that's when you start upgrading. Like this closing ratio, that's when you start upgrading because you know that. I mean, yes right? and no. Yes and no. Yeah, I would simply upgrade as soon as you have money in your account. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> to be honest just, with you. Just. Yeah. And that that was the way I did it where I treated it exactly like a business, where I reinvested everything back into it. And I still do to this day. We do just put, we put $30,000 in the new office. I mean, I paid Ellen $6,000 a month, which is stat, like staffing, Excel, like, dude, that shit costs money. Recruiting, except, like systems, lock-ins. I mean, dude, I spent 30 grand, just almost 30 grand, like $28,000 just getting everybody down to the lock-ins, Airbnbs, food, all that shit. So it's like, Dude, it's no matter what what level you climb to, it's you know it's you're gonna you're gonna want to you have to reinvest back in your business to get to the next level. And speaking on a bigger bigger level than me, I mean, dude, Joe Basso, dude, he's invested way more money than I ever have. He invested four million dollars. 
past three years he's been in this business. He invested a million dollars his first year. It's like, dude, that's why that's why he's the top G. That's why he runs this organization. Because he he's not afraid to invest and he's not afraid to work hard. So you, you you're never you're never gonna become wealthy and you're never gonna become successful by putting money in your savings account. Like yeah, it gets a certain you, you get to a certain point of success where you want to diversify your portfolio, maybe buy some real estate, whatever. Great, but bro, when you guys are just starting your business, it doesn't matter what business it is. It could be insurance, anything else. Dude, you're gonna want to invest it. You're gonna want to have the mindset of investing it all right back in, because that's probably the number one mistake I see the most, especially new agents, where you guys you guys go from before you're a W two employee. We are a fixed income and that's all profits. That's all money you can spend. So like, oh shoot, I just got 10 grand deposit in my bank account this week. This is 10, that's not your money, bro. That's the business's money. And you should treat it like that. Let me ask you guys, who has, who has two bank accounts set up? Who has a business bank account? Fire. That's, that's solid. You guys all should. You guys all should have a business bank account where your deposits go in the business and then your personal spending, you pay yourself. Because if you combine the two, it's like mixing your personal life and your time. It's the same thing with the finances. Don't mix your personal finances with your business. Like have your deposits go in the business account and then pay yourself. And that's going to help you manage between the two. Because you talked about also, somebody asked about, yeah, staying hungry. I mean, dude, you want to stay hungry is my, my personal account. Dude, I want that to always say zero. I don't care how much is in the business or how much is here or there or whatever else. Like, dude, I want that just to feel like zero, so I feel like I'm broke. Even if I'm not broke, I tell myself, like, dude, you're broke. If you don't continue to work, go to show up to work every day, and continue to put in, you're broke. You're not gonna make money. Like, I'll, I'll lie to myself and I'll trick myself, because that's one way that I stay hungry and stay motivated. Cool, how are we doing on time? Um, so building versus selling, and in time. Who asked that again? You got, did that answer your question, though? Cool. Um. How to keep it simple. How to keep it simple. You wanna go over this? You wanna answer this one? How to keep it simple? Yeah, as a new agent. I mean, <laughs> you talked a lot about uh, paralysis by analysis, so don't overthink, right? Come in here with the unwavering belief that the system works. It's worked for countless other individuals and just apply the basics, right? Focus on the commitments. Get your dials, get yourself some leads, and I mean, it's it's that, it's literally, I know it's that simple, but it really is, right? You'll catch on, you'll, you know, start developing more of the product knowledge, all that extra stuff, but just come in, be a sponge to the best reps, sales is copy and paste, right? Just do what they're doing. There's no magic leads, there's no magic word tracks, it's simply just being persistent and doing it on the days that you don't feel like doing it, so. Um, I mean, if you want to get technical, stay organized. Um, same things he's been saying, keep your business and personal life separate. Uh, every day you come into the door to do your job, your personal life is, is, is out, right? No matter what happened that morning, that day, you come in, it's time to work, get your 300 dials, clock in, clock out, do the same thing over again tomorrow. You know what I think it is? It's just people come, this is why it's so important to not come in with an ego. Because people come with an oh. ego, Biggest thing. And they, yeah. they say it's analysis by paralysis or they say I need to prepare more, but really what it is, is they just simply don't want to fail. They're afraid of failing and they're afraid of looking dumb and looking bad in front of other people. Where I was taught, I was listening to a, a Wes Watson podcast the other day and this popped into my mind as you were speaking, but he talks about, he talked about how, you know, he's got four Rolls Royces and he's got all these cars and how many of you guys follow Wes Watson on Instagram? Dude, I love that dude. He gets me fired, he gets me fired up. He's, his podcasts are hilarious, but he's, um, I mean, he, one thing he talked about is, you know, he flexes all of this stuff on his social media and, you know, people in the comment section were like, Oh, I've got a Rolls Royce, but I don't post it. <laughs> and he's like, you just have a big ego and you're just trying to show off your ego. He's like, well, dude, he's like, you have a big ego for not, for not showcasing yourself yeah. and for not having a, having a loud voice because he's like, you, you post all this, all this content and all these different motivational talks and different things to, you know, appease other people and to feed your ego where he's like, he's like really people that don't post content and don't get out there and are afraid to fail and never do it. Do they have a way bigger ego than I do? Because think about it. It's like, what is ego? It's your ego is afraid to fail. 
You never want to look bad. You never want to look good. Dude, I don't care who you are. You can be the most intelligent person in the world. Like, dude, for me, like posting content was uncomfortable. When I first started, it still is sometimes. Yeah, you know, cause you're, you're exposing yourself, you're exposing yourself to the world where you're simply just saying like, here's all my flaws, all my introductions, like, and dude, people like my YouTube channel, dude, people on YouTube are savages. People just fucking, they just fucking talk hella shit, dude. Like every time I post a video, there's like three comments of these people talking shit. I don't even know who they are. It's like, like bot accounts or whatever else. But it's like, I'm like shit. But yeah, it's, it's the same, it's the same thing when you're coming into this business where you really, you really have to drop it. You go through the door and you can't, you can't afraid to look stupid. You can't afraid to, you can't afraid to fail because that's the only way you're going to get better. And that's the only way you're going to be successful. And I feel like a lot of people don't even consciously realize that it's an unconscious thing in the back of their mind where once you acknowledge like, Oh shoot, it is my ego. Oh shoot. I am afraid. And then that's when you can actually progress and get better. Cool. All right. Well, let's take a five, 10 minute break. And we'll hop back in here and then we got market training. The importance of, of our mindset of, about ourselves, right? Personal development, self-care, that kind of stuff. But also our mindset towards, you know, sales on the daily, right? Our mindset towards the vehicle that we're, we're taking part in um, and how to develop really just a bulletproof mindset, right? Um, a lot of these, these ideas and dynamics Jonah touched on, right? It's basic stuff like how to stay hungry, um, staying even, right? Keeping your, you know, your, your mentality up here, um, shutting all the noise out of your life when it, when it comes into, Hey, it's time to work. Uh, it doesn't matter how I feel this morning. Um, it's go time. Um, and then also touching on healthy habits, right? And how that helps us build that mindset. So first little background on me, just so you guys know who's talking to you. Um, I've been here for about a year and a quarter. Um, so not that long. That's kind of what I want to stress here. Um, I know when we're all sitting there listening to people up here preach and, and talk about their stories, um, it can not only get a little intimidating, but it's also like, well, hey, this guy's been doing this for his entire life. Or Joe Basso invested a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars. How am I going to get to that level, right? Um, with me, there's, there's really nothing that special. Um, I haven't been doing sales that long. Um, I'm not that talented at sales. I'm not that outgoing. I'm okay with being an introvert, living in my head, um, like talking to, to people on a daily, like that's not something I'm like, oh my God, I love this. I want to do this all the time. Uh, for me, it's a lot of business and hey, this is, this is what it takes. This is what I got to do. Um, so I really just want you guys to understand that, that if I can do this, I mean, you, you guys all can as well. Um, the reason sales is so powerful is we can do a lot in such a little time. I don't think there's another profession out there where somebody can, in one year, literally know nothing about this profession, get into it, and make different levels of six figures. And that's on your own pen too. I'm not saying, you know, building a team, like literally on your own pen, uh, my first year in sales made 150K, and that was seasonal. So again, if I could do it, the whole mantra here is, so can you guys. Um, to date, I've, I've been in sales for going on three years. Um, and two of those years was, were summers. So like they weren't even full years, right? They were five month periods. So accumulatively, um, about a year there. So, uh, <coughs> with that said, started in door to door, um, sold pest control. I know some of you guys are familiar. Some of you guys come from the same, same cloth. Um, and then transitioned out of that once I kind of felt tapped and didn't really feel that vehicle was um, boasting me up. It was kind of holding me back a bit. Um, came here last December, a year, a year ago last December. Um, and I felt all the, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt towards starting a new endeavor, um, even with having a decent track record, right? Um, it's a new thing, right? There's a bunch of people here telling you to buy leads, right? Spend your own money. Um, that can be a little intimidating, right? And, and it, for me, um, fortunate enough to be in a decent spot when I got in, um, but that's also something I wanna talk about is like, we're all choosing to be here. We all have some level of belief, right? Where um, you don't necessarily get into this business when, um, well, I'll backtrack on that thought. Um, 
either way, some level of belief. So my mentality was, I need to figure this out, right? And in the beginning, I think being hungry and relentless is, it's not, it's not easy, but if your back's against the wall, you really don't have a choice, right? You kind of just, all right, I'm gonna go. So my mentality was, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend away, right? I went right out there. I kind of went against the grain. Um, you know, everybody's like, start with the cheap leads. Don't, don't spend a lot of money, make cheap mistakes. Um, my mentality was I wanna figure this out fast, just like I did with door to door. Um, how do I do that? How do I get as good as the guy doing this for 10 years, five, five, 10 years, right? I have to work five, five to 10 times as hard. I have to invest more to catch up, right? I'm working from behind. So full disclosure, I was spending two grand a week right off the jump. Um, I was getting some aged leads and then I was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try all the leads, right? I'm gonna see for myself what works, what doesn't, what's good, what's not. Um, moral of that story is everything works a little bit. Um, there's no secret sauce. There's, uh, there's two parts to every lead, and that's gonna be sweat equity, right? Which is the amount of work you have to put in to get to that, that gold, that diamond in the rough. And then there's gonna be the, the financial cost of it, right? So typically, the cheaper the financial cost of a lead, the more sweat equity there's gonna be, right? Um, and vice versa. The, the more you pay for a lead, then there's a little less sweat equity, right? But there's pros and cons to both. Um, and I think to date, what I learned is, I mean, it's nice to have a lead that doesn't require as much sweat equity, but the byproduct of that is you get complacent, right? There's a, almost a sense of entitlement. Like when you have to go work tougher leads that require more sweat equity, you're gonna be like, well, I'm used to just calling five or 10 and at least having half those people answer and give me a fighting chance. So to date, I think I like the, the, the higher sweat equity leads more because you stay sharper, right? Um, your craft is going to be on point. So then when you're bringing people on board, you're sharp, you know exactly what you're doing. You know how to deal with them. And then the best part, which I'm sure a lot of you have experienced who have already been doing this, your ROI is huge on the cheaper leads, right? Cause you're paying in again, sweat equity. Um, so again, started out, said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to invest, um, figure this thing out month one, decent, nothing crazy. Um, we were in person at the time as well. So that's a little different. Um, but month one did like 15 K very, very whatever. Um, uh, month two jumped up to like 30. And again, the only reason I think that's true is again, work, 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 figure it out, backs against the wall. Um, here, there's the unknown factor here. Month three did like 45. Um, and then from there, kind of just teetered along those numbers. Um, the only reason I think I, I had that progression was what I want to get right into now, and that's that's mindset. Um, guys, if you're taking, take notes, write it down. Um, it all starts, and for me, I think this, I mean, whether it be life, a lot of these things will apply to life in general, right? Um, but sales, I think, is a direct reflection of your life. Um, it's literally a mirror. Your, your, your performance here, your performance in sales to me is like a mirror of your level of self-care and your level of personal development. Um, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank, she spoke at our last convention. Something she said stuck with me. She only hires happy people because happy people sell better. Um, and I thought that I, that hit home with me because I know there's times in my life where like I've been distraught or there's, there's stress going on where I know it's reflective in my sales, right? I'm getting more agitated at people, um, maybe not neutralizing as, as good as I should. Um, so I think that that's just so powerful. So to me, I, I think it's just a direct reflection of, of how life is going for you. And that's where we'll get into healthy habits. But uh, the foundation of a powerful mindset, it starts with belief, right? Your belief system. Um, not just in ourselves, that, that's, that's huge, but your belief system in the vehicle you're in, uh, your belief system of the product you're offering. Um, and then the other lever that I, I think is extremely important 
is desire or hunger, right? That's something we've touched on. Um, everything starts with that first idea of wanting to do something, right? And that's, that's that little baby step, right? But if you don't want to do something, you're, especially sales, you're not getting paid to show up, right? Like you have to want this. You have to be some sort of competitive, um, driven person that wants more, that wants this thing, right? So um, those two things, your belief system and your hunger are what, what's gonna drive you. Um, and and I, I put the question up here earlier, how to stay hungry when you have you know six figures in your bank account, right? How to stay hungry when you have a million dollars in your bank account, right? Like if you have a goal <clears throat> to hit a certain financial monetary amount, you're eventually gonna hit a point where like you're close to it but are you still gonna to stick to your commitments, right? Um, so I, I think that's just so important. And there's tricks that we obviously will implement. Jonah talks about it. Keep your personal bank account at zero, right? Feel broke. Um, I think that's so important is not necessarily tricking yourself, but once you start reading the headlines of like your, your own newspaper, like, hey, I did this, or like, hey, I'm doing this, I closed 10 people this week, right? I did 20K last week. Your, your ego, you're just blowing it up. Like you're literally setting up your downfall because you're starting to boast um, and you're just, you're literally raising yourself up to then take a little bit of a hit. So um, I, think, I think it's just so important to maintain that hunger and to keep your belief system there because, all right, belief system, right? Um, who do you believe you are, right? Obviously, we all have a pretty good sense of identity here. Um, again, you don't get into sales and do it consistently without a strong belief system, right? Who do I think I am? Um, I know I'm the hardest worker in the room. Um, I know I get shit done. Um, and I just, I know nothing's going to stop me, right? So when the going gets tough, guys, your belief system is literally going to be what you what you teeter on. We all have a thermostat inside of us, and when shit gets tough, whether it be like a fitness goal, financial goal, relationship goal, your thermostat is always, always going to go back to who you believe you are. So you can fake it for a little bit, right? You can say, hey, I want this, right? We all want a million bucks, right? We all want to be the person that, that runs the business. We all want to be Elon Musk but most of us don't want to work 100 hours a week, right? So really leveling up to, hey, um, who are you? Deep down inside, do you really want this? What level of success do you want, right? What lifestyle do you want? Because at the end of the day, when, you know, obviously you deal with some negativity, uh, as Jonah was saying, the first 90 days oftentimes rough. Um, there's days you're not going to feel like it. Your thermostat's always going to tick back, right? And it's going to be, hey, do I even get up today? Um, do I need to be at the office at eight sharp? Do I need to work on a Saturday, <laughs> even though I'm crushing it? Uh, team's doing you know crazy amounts of, every single month. So, if there's one thing to start on, and, and you guys aren't sure how to develop that mindset of just being bulletproof, you need to get your your belief system, your identity, just in line. Who are you? Right? Who are you going to be when things get tough? Um, and that runs deep. Um, you know, I, I, I just can't stress that one enough because, again, when things get tough, you know, we, we, we talk about who we want to be, but your, your true identity is going to show. So starts with that belief system and then also your belief system in what we're doing here. Right? Is, is this the best vehicle to be in? Without a doubt it is. And I believe that to the very core of myself. Right? And that's extremely powerful. I know we're helping people. We're putting them in really good positions. Um, having really good mentorship around us, people with good values, uh, good morals, that's given me a deeper sense of belief of like, hey, right, this is where we are putting people in a really good spot. This is a, an industry where a lot of companies don't do what we do. Look out for clients' best interests, right? It actually makes our job really easy. Because um, when you go out there on the field and you see people just writing terrible policies, um, it, it makes it right. It, it's like it's uh, it, it's not hard if you literally look out for people and treat them like your own family. It, it's pretty easy to to close people. But again, having 
having the structure of knowing you have really good mentorship around you, um, that's huge. That's really going to help that belief system. Um, and then also the products, right? Clients don't buy the product when they believe in it. They, be they will buy the product when they believe you believe in it, right? Your enthusiasm for it. So belief system across the board, personal identity, the vehicle you're in, the products you sell, I think that's the very foundation of, of developing the right mindset here, right? From there, how do we you know, solidify that? Well, that's where healthy habits um, help us build on that. So who in here has a morning routine that they're just like, no matter what, they, they hit it and they're always abiding to it? Okay, do you guys want to, what does it consist of? You can be pretty vague, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be specifics. Uh, pretty much I wake up uh, between times of six and seven, I'll go to the gym, I'll come home, I'll eat, I'll journal, and then after that I'll start my day and do whatever I need to do. Solid, yeah, simple, straightforward. Um, what about yours, if you don't mind? Uh, wake up, <coughs> drink water, use the bathroom, meditate, food. Solid. Love that. Anybody else? I mean, every morning, wake up, run, and eat the same breakfast every day. So I know that my body processes it, my energy levels remain constant in the morning, and just simply just go to work. Love that. Um, mine's a similar, right? It's uh, get up, um, some sort of mental prayer, meditation. Um, get the blood flowing, right? Get, get, get yourself moving a little bit. Um, and then water, nourishment, but super simple. I think that's, that's the gist of all those, um, all those morning rituals is we see all these things about doing like 20 different things before we get started in the morning, right? Five hour morning routine. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, yeah, your morning routine is your entire day. Um, I think the best thing you can do is just something super simple. Um, and, and that's what I'm going to actually focus on here because, again, I'm, I'm telling you all this stuff about, like, developing a mindset, but how do we do that? Um, automating that morning routine, right? Something – same breakfast every day, right? I'm on that same boat with him. I've eaten Greek yogurt with honey and flaxseed for, like, the last 900 days in the morning. <laughs> it just is what it is. I don't get to eat anything else until I eat that. Um, it just makes it really easy. You don't have to think about it. It's the same notion of, like, all these billionaires – wearing the same outfit every day, right? It requires no headspace. It's just, hey, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna do this, and that's my routine. Mm -hmm. So, how to get up every day and get yourself in that right mindset? Do basic things like that, but what you guys should all implement, I think the easiest switch you can make in your life to really have a positive perspective on every day you wake up, wake up in the morning with gratitude. So, mm -hmm. if you don't already, yes. guys, a grateful journal. It's super simple, three things every day. Um, I personally, I get up out of bed, the second my feet touch the floor, I say thank you. I woke up today, right? How are you going to be upset in your feelings, uh, any of that stuff, if like you, you literally just got, you got another day, right? You have a fighting chance. Um, so every day, um, whether it be in a note on your phone, something super easy and, and you guys could structure this to be really convenient for your life right you start work whatever at your desk before you get on the phones three things you're grateful for right that's the notion three things i'm grateful for today um, i don't like to do one because one is just like you can just put anything out there Re three requires a little bit of thought processing and you really get in touch with that 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 good feeling of dang there's so much to be grateful for um it is impossible to be in a bad mood and be grateful at the same time. So I think that for me, that that's what changed everything in sales. Um, when I was starting out in the door to door world, um, I was not that excited about it, to be honest. I, I was a chef prior. So I, I really like just like sitting in my metal box and cooking food. And for me, it was a leap of faith. Like I'm going to go out there and talk to talk to people all day. Um, <laughs> pitch them this, this, this pest control stuff um, and see how it goes. But, you know, my buddy Malad was doing it. He was crushing it. So I said, hey, let's give it a shot. I work five months. Worst case scenario, I suck and I fail. Not a bad setup. I go back to cooking. Um, I prepared a ton, guys. 
Uh, you can you can ask Malad. I was literally ripping him every single day for like two three months before role plays role plays role plays. I was like, hey, if I'm gonna suck at this, I'm gonna suck. Like I'm not gonna show up unprepared, right? I'm gonna give this my all, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, first two weeks, <laughs> um, I'm in Dallas for preseason, and if anybody knows the Dallas market, it's ran through. It's a, uh, you know, door to door world out there is, is just, uh, it's dense. So for a first time rep, you're just, you're going through hoods that have already been just tattered. Um, so it sucks. I'm like, yeah, this, this blows. I don't want to be out here. I'm getting yelled at. Um, negativity is just looming. Everything is just, uh, this, this neighborhood blows this, uh, these people are mean, um, whatever. Never, never in my head thought that like, Hey, this is it. I'm calling it right. I was like, I'm going out for the summer. I'm doing this, but called one of my, one of my managers, let him know like, yeah, this is, this is just going rough today. Um, and he pitched the idea of do the grateful journal, right? He's like, Hey, what are three things you're grateful for right now? Um, did it actually gave my mom a call. So I was like, Oh man, give my mom a call. Um, uh, can't be upset when I'm talking to mom. Right. Um, <laughs> Just said, hey, what's up? Obviously didn't like let her know the scope of the situation. I was just like, yeah, I'm out here. It's great. Everything's awesome. Um, go and close the next two doors, right? Um, I always like to talk about that because in sales, when things are going rough or you know we're in a we're in a lull, people aren't answering their phones. We always want to blame. We always want to you know project like these leads suck. Um, nobody's home right now. It's rush hour, whatever it is. But I swear, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's us. Um, our energy sucks. Um, they're feeling our negativity. And, and it genuinely, if you look inward instead of outward in that moment, you're going to have so much better of an experience. You're going to do so much better. Uh, I truly believe that phone call to my mom changed my energy, right? I was positive. Grateful journal, same thing. I, I said three things I was grateful for. It was a beautiful day. I still remember every little detail. Dallas in spring, Chicago was cold at the time. Um, so I was like, oh, this isn't that bad, actually. I'm out here, it's sunny. Um, don't need a jacket, um, fresh air. And I genuinely believe I projected that good energy onto those next two people and closed them. Um, the negative side of me would have been like, ah, oh, I got lucky, right? Which that, that's fine too. We can say, Hey, the harder you work, the luckier you get. But, um, the negative side of me probably would have, yeah, would have just botched those sales. I would have, you know, had commission breath. Um, so just the power of gratitude right there. If you guys are projecting that positive energy daily, um, it's going to show your clients are going to love it. Um, you're going to have good connections with them. Heck you, you'll, you'll see how many times have you gotten a text message from a client that just so genuinely grateful for what you did for them. Many times. Right? Many times. There, there's no greater feeling. And then same thing, you're being, you're grateful on the daily, now your clients are grateful. Right? right. You can literally... Chris, let me, let me add one thing to that. Because what's funny, exactly what Chris said, your energy and your mindset is literally everything. And that's why we, that's why we talk about it so much, because that same client that I got a grateful text with, if my mindset would have been off, or if I would have had a negative state of energy, or to add a negative projection on them, it would have been a completely different scenario. I probably, not only would I have not gotten a text, I probably wouldn't even have helped them. So a lot of times when you're dialing leads, you're like, oh, the leads suck. It's like, well, look at yourself. What's your, not only your level of preparation, your product knowledge, but on the other side of that, what, what Chris has been talking about is huge. It's everything. What is your energy <coughs> your mindset for trying through the phones? We've all heard the saying, people don't know how much you care. Until, if people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's a fact. 100%. Um, you touched on it earlier, just like the fear of whatever, basically the fear of failure, but yeah, calling people and things like that. I felt that a ton. And there's actually times where I know my call has been botched because I was like anxious over what this client, right, or they, whatever, whatever it might be. It's irrational. It's, it's really non-existent. The fear is just made up in our heads. Um, but when we do that, one, one way of looking at that was it's, a, it, it's actually a selfish mechanism, mm -hmm. right? We're so obsessed with how we feel in that moment that we're actually taking away from this client. This client might be like dying for this product. Like they might be like, 
That person never called me. Um, I had it last week. I literally did a training on the urgency with clients helping them right away because you might call them in a week and they might have passed away. Like that's a real thing here. And we literally, Bryce, one of our guys on the live dial called somebody and they're like, yeah, he, he passed away last week. Like nobody ever called us for this. Um, when you look at it from that scope, right? Like fear, uncertainty, and doubt is always going to be there to some level. But where our focus goes is where our energy flows, right? So if we shine attention on that fear, uncertainty, doubt, it's literally going to fog us up and we're not going to be able to help people how we're supposed to, right? Like literally in this business, it is a matter of life and death. A lot of times there's been numerous times I've called clients three month old age lead, pick up the phone. They passed away. Like that's, that's crazy. And if you think about the idea of like being scared to pick up the phone and just dial, it's so selfish. Like there's literally a person on the other end of that call. They could be the biggest lay down. They could literally be like, yes, please sign me up. And you're sitting there stressing over something that's non-existent. So um, how do we avoid that? Again, it comes down to mindset, uh, mental clarity, focus, um, accountability, guys. Um, something people don't realize when we start blaming and projecting outward uh, for faults and things going wrong, <laughs> you're literally destroying your self-confidence. Because you, what, what you're doing there is saying, I had no control over the situation. It was X, Y, and Z's fault. How demeaning is that to yourself, right? You're literally telling yourself that I, there's nothing I could do. I'm powerless in that situation. That's why it's so important to be accountable. When you're accountable, I'm focusing on what I can control. It's on me. That makes me confident. That gives me the power that, hey, this is on me. My decisions matter. I have control over the situation. So accountability, always focus on what we can control. What can we control? How many dials we do today? what time we show up, gratitude. Um, our gratitude, our mindset towards um, today, right? What can't we control? We can't really control how the client responds to us. I mean, to an extent, obviously, with psychology and sales, you can, you can you know, manipulate it a bit, but you can't, fo uh, you can't control what mood they're in. You can't control if they have money for this. Um, really, you can't control if the sale gets, gets done to, to every extent, so... Um, that's why we preach so much about commitments, guys. Focusing on the inputs and not worrying about the outcome. Um, and to add to that, guys, the easiest way to love what you do here, don't focus again on the outcome. Obviously, we all want to get, we all want to make money, right? That's 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 ultimately the foundation of why we're here. Whether it's financial freedom, work freedom, schedule freedom, uh, building something that's yours. Um, but if you just learn to love the process, like if you literally learn to love going through these objections, knowing that like you're getting really good at this, right? It's like a sport, right? You obviously practice, I mean, usually sucks to an extent, right? Um, at least in the beginning, you're like, you're not, you're not excited when you're a little kid to go to, to practice. You're excited for the games. Um, but how does your game level up if you weren't practicing? It's not that fun because you're not that good. If you can adjust that mindset to, hey, my belief system, right, we're coming back to that, is so strong in this vehicle and in myself that I know if I stick to these commitments today, every day, do this on a level of consistency, the rest is going to, it's going to settle. It's going to handle itself. My bank account's going to overflow. You're so focused on, I just got to hit my, my commitments for the day, for the week, that you don't even have time to stress over any negativity, um, any of the other stuff. And that's, that's how you win in this business, right? It's, it's, it definitely sounds simple, but it really is. You just, it, it's a level of focus. It's a level of belief. And then the one part that I really like to emphasize that I think changed everything for me, um, and every grade and anything I've ever seen, actually, um, the art of working like you're always behind, right? Um, Kobe Bryant, the, the, the man was... I mean, unreal. He was a professional basketball player, and he was obviously at the pinnacle of that. But what really stands out about Kobe is his work ethic, right? If anybody knows anything about him, like, that was it. Everybody knows, like, Kobe just outworked everybody. He basically set up a daily schedule, right, where he was going to implement how he could out pretty much 
practice twice as much as every other player so he would get twice as good in less time right he was he was working as if he had to make up a ton of ground um and it's like the guy's making millions he's got everything he wants in life at that point i mean he was still doing this when he had won numerous championships so it's like just maintaining that level of focus but working like you're always behind right jonah talked about it with the zero on the bank account right if we start celebrating a big week you know we get a deposit in our bank account um whatever treat yourself i'm not saying you know a little instant gratification whatever but the more you delay it the better off you're going to be if you start celebrating last week's wins excessively i guarantee you you're not going to perform to your your pinnacle level of your you know your, your top level of performance that next week I've, I've had it happen in my life numerous times i hit a goal whether it be financial um business fitness um doesn't matter and then you kind of coast you're resting on your laurels like hey i did something right i'm celebrating and before you know it like you're backtracking you're like what the heck i i hit my eight percent body fat and then i went back to you know whatever or i hit my pr on you know this and <clears throat> now i'm going back a couple steps or financially right i hit 100k i hit 200k i hit 300k and then before you know it, you're not performing like you were three weeks ago. You're not doing the things that literally got you to where you wanted to be. It's crazy when you really break it down. Um, if you guys can f figure out, which I'm basically giving you the, the info on, how to maintain working from behind, like you're always at zero. Rent is due every single day, right? Do tricks. Keep your personal bank account at, literally on broke level investing back into your business. I think that is the biggest X factor here. Because what happens when you invest in your own business, guys? The money's spent. So one, you don't have to pay tax. It's getting reinvested back in your business. So you're actually saving a ton on taxes. The equity in your business is skyrocketing, but it's not actually tangible money yet. So you do feel a little tight, right? You have six Gs going to Ellen, another couple Gs going to rent. Um, lead spend, this, this spend, before you know it, you're working with smaller margins, like you literally feel a little, a little anxious. You're like, oh, oh shit, I, at this level of my business, I thought I'd just be flowing, but you're intentionally putting yourself in that sort of handicapped position, right? Um, well, yeah, it also gives you responsibility. Like it's not, a, it's not a question of if I feel like showing up today, it's I have to show up and perform because I'm people I'm responsible for. And I had an, I had an agent t ask me the other week. They're like, <clears throat> like, well, well, dude, how do you deal with stress? It's like, what do you mean? I love stress. I was like, I try to figure out ways I can get more stress into my business because that's how that's how you perform. Is you perform under pressure. And diamonds are made under pressure. So I I don't I wouldn't and I would I would encourage you guys like implement stress, implement responsibility, but leverage it in a good way and use it as a positive, not a negative fire right there um that's great self-talk too right I'm, I'm a diamond more pressure the better right that's actually one of mine is um uh, i love when my back's against the wall because that, that i have no choices i need to freaking go right when i start giving myself options and choices every day that's when i start making poor poorer decisions right um guys i, I just i can't emphasize enough mindset is everything um there's a couple last things that i, I just want to emphasize uh, again, of how, how to get there. Um, I think the biggest thing in sales, right? We talk about being even, even keel. Don't get too high, right? Don't ride the waves too high up because you're going to fall and don't, don't get too low either, right? Um, in this business, that is magnified. We get paid right away, right? You have a big week, you're up. Get a couple chargebacks, you're down. Life stresses you out, you're down. Uh, have another big week, you're up. It's going to be a roller coaster. You're gonna. It's it's going to be. It's going to be rough. You have to zoom out, um, and again, just know that if you if you're consistently doing the little things, you'll never have a bad month. Right? Bad days happen. Um, even a bad week could, but typically, if you're abiding by, hey, I'm getting this stuff done. I'm doing it on the regular. When you when you zoom out, it's always going to look. It's going to look how it should. Your trajectory is going to be up. Um, the main thing with that, with maintaining that mindset. Staying even, you have to be overwhelmingly positive. I know that's like, well, what, what do you mean? You just said, let's be even. Um, guys, we are five times more prone to thinking negative thoughts, right? 80% of our thoughts on the daily 
are negative. We're programmed that way. If you watch, I mean, anything on TV, typically negative news, social media, um, even the stuff you see on social media that's positive has a negative effect on us, right? There's studies coming out that watching people show their glitz and glam all day actually has a, a negative effect on you know the, the generations coming in. So guys, you have to be so intentional with positivity. Like, it literally needs to feel awkward sometimes. And for me, it did. That was, that was a big thing. I was like, it's kind of cheesy. Like I gotta like, you know, get up and go when I'm feeling not so great. Um, you, you literally have to, you have to practice it. You have to be intentional. And you have to offset that handicap, 80% negative, 20% positive. You, it, you literally, for every negative thought you intentionally recognize, like there needs to be four positive ones to just offset that imbalance. And that's ultimately how you will stay even. Right, so that to me, I think was a huge factor um, in my in my years doing doors, um, even in this seeing people struggle because they 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 couldn't grasp the, the the idea of staying even, but then being overwhelmingly positive. Guys, positivity, right? Gratitude, those are the fundamentals that'll keep you on the right mindset, right? So if there's anything we're going to implement starting today to develop a bulletproof mindset. It's going to be one practicing gratitude. Um, there is no, I mean, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to, to see you guys all here. I'm grateful to be able to talk in front of you guys. Um, grateful for, you know, the infrastructure I've got here, business partners. Um, when you wake up with that, that, that energy, um, that, that energy is always going to be more powerful than any of the negative forces, but you have to acknowledge it. I have to proclaim that when I get up today. Right? If I don't actually show any focus and energy into that positive thought, then I'm letting that negative, that negative mindset win. It's always going to overtake it if you're not intentionally shining light on the good, on the positives. So starting today, just implement three things you're grateful for every day. Um, if you don't believe in it, just try it for a little bit. See how it changes your life. Right? Um, and then the other thing is just be overwhelmingly positive. Right? Intentional. Um, anytime a negative thought pops in your head, make sure to, to just let it float on by, right? It's a little cloud. If you're showing attention to it and you're unraveling it, that can, can get pretty toxic, right? I've seen negativity wipe out entire offices, guys. It, it's, it's, it's infectious, literally entire sales offices. Um, so don't unravel it. it, you're gonna, it they're going to be there, but where you shine your attention, that's literally where, where your energy goes is, is, is where your focus flows. Um, just be intentional, be positive. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what I got for you guys. I understand. Yeah, another a great book on mindset too is Winning the War in Your Mind. I mean, you guys have read that, but that's a powerful book. All right, guys. So Jonah asked me to kind of go over sales psychology one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So I've been doing direct sales as a job. For, uh, for 15 years and then had multiple sales teams up to the insurance for about five. And if you count like, I don't know, invite people to church in the hood, I guess like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that as a teenager, which looking back was definitely sales. And um, there's some principles here that will really help you go far in this industry, both as a personal producer, but also as a team builder. So the first thing I want to go over is as a new agent, whether or not you're new and just figuring this out or you're actually getting decent, like I, I see some guys like, you know, Turner, you know, getting, you know, momentum, you know, different people who like you're starting to get like that consistent number. Here's some of the things you need to strive for. So first thing, same thing every time. You need to get to the point where your sales process is the same exact thing you do every time. That's why a script is so powerful at the beginning. Is everyone in here new using a script? Okay, good, good chunk of people. If you're, if you're new and you're not using a script, you need to be <laughs> using a script. That will be one of your biggest tools starting out helping you because you just get in use. You, you shouldn't be focusing on what you're saying. You should be focusing on how you're saying it. That is the power of sales. When we used to do ride-alongs, when we were all in person, 
every time I was in the field for the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years, and Jonah knows this is true, every time I was in the field, I had a new agent with me. Because I was like, it, it, they got to a point where our agency got to the size where it literally wasn't worth my time to go out and write the business, even if I had a five or 10K day, if a new agent wasn't with me. And there were days where like maybe someone was sick and there were days I literally skipped like a full day of appointments because just the growth of the business made me so much more money than writing would, that that was the most valuable time and most valuable thing I could do. And every agent said the same exact thing at the end of the day. Whether or not we you know, sat four, five, six, seven, eight people, closed however many sales, every agent said the same thing. They say, wow, you really say the same thing in every house. <laughs> like everything, everything you say is the same. Even like the dumb joke, <laughs> like you say like at the end, you say it at the same spot with every person, everybody, and no one can tell. They're like, I'm shocked that no one, it's like, they're like, it's like a secret they know <laughs> that like they're watching me do this thing and it feels super organic with the person. The person feels like we're having a genuine conversation, which I guess in a way we are, <laughs> but I'm saying the same thing to them that I've said to the last six, seven people. My intro is the same. The way I go into the financial inventory, the way I ask the questions. Now, the way I position the coverage might be a little bit different based off you know their situation but generally speaking it's the same thing every time so you need to get to that point right when you lock in and, and figuring that out is tricky at the beginning you've heard Jonas say I love this quote from him where he talks about it's it was harder to do the first 30k month than it was the first 100k month and it's because that first 30k month you're figuring out exactly how you're doing everything. You're figuring out what that thing is gonna be exactly the way you're gonna say it. But once you have that down, you got it. Once you have that down, you, you, you got it. Does that make sense to anybody? Any questions about that? I only wanna drive that point home. This is my right. No questions? Go ahead. What are some good jokes? I was about to say, what's the joke? <laughs> what's the joke? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a trade secret. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm trying to even think about it. Like the joke I would always do whenever it's a couple, I would, cause like, I'd ask like, oh, who hit on who first? Uh -huh. And they would, when it, always, inevitably, 90% of the time, one of them like takes it, like be funny, like, oh, they point at the other one. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh, Mary, Bob said you were thirsty. <laughs> and, like, <I'm> saying... <laughs> and they always laugh and they always start like, no, it was him. <laughs> like, da -da -da. I do that every single time. I do it, oh, it works just as well over the phone and it never, it always kills. <laughs> it always kills. <laughs> it really does. We're gonna um, hear our agents ripping it, but it's not gonna be the same delivery. Right. It's just gonna be awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, you've been married for 50 I'm years. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the war, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think there's one or two more. It's like it's skipping my mind right now. It'll come. It'll come to me later. Okay. But uh, but yeah, just just that same exact thing every time. This is the next one. And this might be confusing, so I'm gonna explain what I mean. Find the easy sales. Find the easy sales. Now, does this mean that you should never fight for a sale ever? No. I've fought for literally thousands of sales, <laughs> literally for, but here's what you're going to find out eventually in this career is, and actually just last week is a great example. So I had three new agents. I was at the Imagine Lock-In and I had three new agents from a team of solar guys. Like they're going to be studs down in uh, South Florida and they flew up and they just went through contracting and they've never sold before. So I'm like, all right guys, I gave them all a stack of second chance leads. I'm like, start dialing, like get somebody on the phone with me. Just find like, hey, the senior underwriter is available now. Um, like get them on the phone. And you know, they're like, oh, but what do I don't want to, one guy's like, I don't want to burn leads or just like, <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> I was like, literally do this one half of the script 
See if you can find someone to get on the phone with me. If not, book an appointment. We'll try it later. We get somebody on the phone. First lady they get on the phone is uh, this like lady. I spent on the uh, on the phone with her for 25 minutes. She doesn't want to give me her date of birth. It was going to be a small policy, like financial inventory. She was only making a couple grand. She probably had 800 bucks over after everything. Um, and then she wouldn't give me a date of birth. And I literally just hung up the phone. <laughs> Like, then they were like laughing. They're like, it was like 20 minutes in and like, I was like, you want to give me a date? She's like, no, I was like, click. <laughs> and they're just like laughed. They're like, you can do that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was going to be a waste of time. Trust me, find me somebody else. Next guy they get up, guy named Barry. I'm on the phone with him for 15 minutes. He sends me his license, his picture of his banking information and his, uh, his medical card for his doctor. I replaced the final expense. He was paying 160. I, told, I saved him 40 bucks. The SBLI got him 120 and covered the whole mortgage for 360 a month. So 5,800 AP. I'm not exaggerating. 10, 10, 10 minutes in the financial inventory before he was sending me his banking info. He's like a boat captain. He's like, I'm going over a bridge. I'm going to send it through a text. Sends it. And then maybe another 10 minute in the app, 6,000 AP. 5,800. Like, so the lady who was going to be the small sale didn't even want to give me her date of birth. I was going to fight her like every step of that way. And here's the real thing that really cuts you too, because I've gone through these, where you fight for like that $30, $40, $50 a month premium, and then next month it charges back. <laughs> so like, man, how many, has that happened to you, Jonah? Yeah. That's happened to me so many times, bro, to where I'd like, I fought for that sale charges back and then another person I spend two three minutes with them five five ten minutes two three minutes exaggeration but five ten minutes and then they're like oh yeah two two hundred a month yeah that's fine go ahead they're like you need a check or <laughs> you send you a picture and then you and then that one stays on the books so what do, what do you find you find so some a change happened in my mind Jonah at some point in this and it was probably like a year or two into this where it's like can I just talk to those people and at first it comes across like a joke I'm like no Gabe of course you can't just talk to the easy sales I'm like well wait why not because I have leads so why can't I just find the easy sales and then you start talking to top producers I've talked to every top producer literally in 2021 I interviewed every top producer in the company at that time like I did a podcast for one of the integrity uh, partners and I interviewed every single top producer in the company. Everyone who wrote more than 400K a year over the span of like six months. I interviewed every single one for like their podcast. And then we had to take numbers down so they all got taken down. <laughs> but they're still out there somewhere. And, um, and here's what I found. All of them were doing that. All of them had like found a way to like skip. How many of you guys come from door-to-door -door sales? I know a big chunk of this group. Just about everybody. So think about it this way. Think about you're knocking doors. So I I did most of my sales experiences door-to-door -door sales. So whenever I had a sales to sales job, and I did everything. I did lawn care, cable, energy, newspapers, everything. Um, I always knew. I found out within like the first few weeks what were my what was my knock to like sale ratio, right? How many people did I need to talk to? When it was newspapers, I remember like, okay, for every 10 people you talk to, you, you, if you're normal, you're gonna get one person to buy. And once you get good, it'll probably be like two. So I was like, okay, so knocking from four to eight, I'm a kid in college, just trying to you know, make seven, 800, seven, 800 bucks a week to pay my bills. Um, I'm like, okay, if I talk to 50 people every day, I'll get my five sales, which will be seven, eight hundred bucks a week, you know, and I'm working four or five hours a night instead of my buddies working third shift, doing this or that, or, you know, being a waiter somewhere. So I'm like, so that was the numbers I had here. What leads allows you to do is skip to that interested party in the tent. Cause you guys know how it is door to door. I have no idea if you answer the door, whether or not you're interested. Now I know you've been knocked before, right? I know, did you ever knock a door and think you were the first person knocking it? No, you're not confused. That's why I always weird when people are like, this lead gets resold? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you, ever, did you ever knock a door and think you were the only person knocking it? 
Like, so that shouldn't, that shouldn't bother you. So I, like, I want to add one thing to resold leads because you I mean, we, we have exclusive leads as well, but I've worked fresh mailers in fresh leads where I was the first person that called them. And in a way it's a bit harder. I almost prefer calling an age lead where they've already talked to people. They already understand the process. They already know because you can just simply get to yes or no a lot sooner and filter through all the riffraff mm -hmm. versus a first person. Like they don't understand what it is. You got to explain it. You got to take a little bit more time, answer more questions, etc. cetera. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to both. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, so Joe and I, you know, we come from the energy industry and we, so at Joe's company, which has you know, a smaller stake in now, you would have the option between a $90 fresh lead for like a mix between like solar and, you know, just like economic, you know, repairs to the home and or a 31 that was resold. The place was honest. Like we sell it like four or five times. We bought that $30 one all the time because we just believe we were better. And to your point, like usually you can make yourself stand out when you know you're better than your competition. <laughs> so that, that's legit. That 6K AP sale, that was a second chance lead. It was all, they were like, they were all proven. They were like right, right around a year. And he's like, yeah, I already talked to somebody. They never got back to me. I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm calling you to get this settled up. So let's just, ooh, <laughs> 15 minutes later, 6,000 bucks. So skip your way <laughs> to find this easy sale. There's a couple ways you do it. One, lead flow. Guys, don't be confused. You need new leads every single week. Thanks. Number two, after lead flow, find after you get this consistent same thing every time down, like don't waste time on people who are not buyers. I know some top, some top producers disagree with me about this, but I'm right. <laughs> like I, I am. Like you find those people, find the berry. That's that guy that was that 6K sale. Like I'm looking for that guy. That's who I want to spend my time on. Because you guys got to think, this is a performance job. You've only, be, be real with yourself. You've only got so much of your mind when you're fresh. You can only do so many repetitive activities with your best. Like you like to lift weights. You like the, the, the muscle, muscle lady over here. So yeah, I see it. <laughs> and so... You, when you're in the gym, and I know several, several people here are, like think about doing a repetitive motion. Like if I take a 10 pound dumbbell and I put it over my head a thousand times, I'm only gonna be able to do it so many times before I, I'm done. Like I can't do that anymore. But if my goal is to build, like it's better for me to do it with a higher weight sometimes in a certain way with a plan. It's the same exact thing with sales. You got you got you got to get your mind to a place where you're thinking about it that way. Otherwise, you're going to just always be in you're going to feel like you're doing the same thing again and again and again and it's going to get repetitive and you're going to go through waves of performance where it's like, "Hey, I'm I'm really sick and tired of doing the same exact thing every single day." And you're going to slump, and the only thing that's going to get you out of it is you got to pay your bills. And you're going to like shake yourself and be like, oh, okay, okay, I got to make money. But if you learn how to find the easy sales, like if you're actively looking for those, you will, it, it, it remains fun. Can I add a few things? Go because ahead. Because I, I agree with everything Gabe said, but as a new agent, a couple things. Well, A, you don't have money to burn through leads and reinvest in leads. But B is you don't know the easy sales. Because you're only going to know the easy sales and the laydowns, and not even laydowns, but people you can actually close once you do it, do it a significant amount of times. Mm -hmm. Because for me, every time I would go into a home, I knew within the first five minutes if I was closing them or not. Mm -hmm. And like anybody that's done a ride along with me, like Chris, Malad, Claudia, they're like, dude, it's almost uncomfortable because like I'll roll in there. And they'll give me a few objections and I'll kind of like look at them in the eye mm -hmm. and then I'll like get silent and then I'll like, if I know I'm not closing it, like I pack my stuff up, like I'm out of there in three seconds and mm -hmm. they're like, where do you go? Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm out of there so fast. Mm -hmm. But if I look them in the eye and I like talk to them and communicate them and they give me a few rebuttals, but I'm confident I can close it, dude, I'm putting it all in the line mm -hmm. and it's a dog fight. Yeah. But I, you're not going to, you're not going to understand those. I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to be very clear because I agree with everything Gabe said. But don't think just because, oh, this client gave me a rebuttal or they're giving me some pushback, they're not a buyer. I'm just going to 
close the laydowns because then you're leaving a bunch of sales on the table. Yeah. And well, and, and full transparent and bro, <laughs> I want to add one more thing, dude. I've I've rolled into homes after I've never told you this, but I've rolled into homes after you presented like your business card mm -hmm. and closed them. Mm -hmm. and they're still books, so <laughs> it's with all that being said. So if they had my business card, I closed them. I don't leave it with people that. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you knew I was there, I closed them. Interesting. Yeah. Never replaced it. I, I never leave. I, I never, I never left a business card with someone I didn't. Post. I never replaced any of your policies. A <laughs> couple other agents I did, mm -hmm. but none of yours. Well, and the thing about this is, it is a goal. You're not. It's not something you're going to have as a new agent. Just like doing the same thing every time. Like, if you did that, from, if it did, did that from day one, you're going to be trash the same time every time because yeah. you're not. You're not good at the beginning. So this is something you are attaining, but it's something that can be attained in a relatively short amount of time, like usually like under a year, especially if this job, especially if you're doing it like full time, like every day, like all day, you'll get a very sharp system where I can say the same thing every time, then you're gonna get good at identifying the sales. Cause here, here's the truth for you guys, and I hope all of you guys recognize this. Like you should be full, like John is a great example of this. Jono was full time in the field for about two years, right? And then you started aggressively building a team, yes. like after that. Now, obviously, he's trying to build a team in there, and it was just like, just like selling trial and error, and then really started to get momentum. For everyone in here, you have one or two paths, like doing this career long term. And honestly, you, I mean, you heard Chris Marcus say it. This really is the best opportunity. I've done a lot of direct sales. There's nothing else that rivals this. But there's one or two paths. There's the path of the builder which is a great thing, you know, come in, build a team, you know, obviously have a lot of people selling business, no one's confused, doing 500,000, a million a month, you know, you have a 10, 20 point rip on that, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of money. Not, that's not for everybody though. Like some of you guys, you hate working with people. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but I know you're in here and that's fine, I don't wanna villainize you for feeling that way, you, you, when someone comes to me, me and Joe are actually like this a little bit. Like when someone comes to me like with an issue and like you're struggling, I actually enjoy helping somebody get over that problem and like seeing that grow, seeing that light bulb come on. Joe hates that. <laughs> Joe like doesn't have the like the the patience for it. He'll be like, Gabe, can you please work <laughs> with this person? Cause they're like not getting it. Um, some of you got now there's obviously Joe and I you can get a partner and still build a big business you know so just just like he did um, but you can also you guys know who Dave Pyle is Jeff Monkenist some of you guys do some of you guys are brand new you don't know him you guys are gonna know you, you're gonna get to know him well guys these guys really don't have a team and they make seven figures and it's because they got really slick at their sales process and they also do advanced market, like annuities. Like I remember seeing Dave Pyle when I came into this industry and seeing him take six months off because it was COVID and then still close 500,000 plus in business that year and then do like 7 million in annuities. And so thinking about that, you want your growth. Don't, you do have as much time as you need in this, in this business but the way you need to think about this business, like, okay, in two years, let me give this a super concentrated full-time effort and get all the skill together that I need to get. And then I can really start ramping this up to the next level. Does that make sense to anybody? Anybody have a question about that? I see some questions and some eyes, so don't, uh, don't hold back if you do. No? All right, next lesson here, law of large numbers. This is illustrated in a couple different ways. So is anyone here running final expense? Probably not. No, okay. So when I started, I ran final expense. Some of you guys probably don't even know what that is. It's burial policies for old people. <laughs> And so I would get them off uh, Facebook. I'd buy these leads. They were like 25 uh, bucks a, a rip. Did you ever do final expense? I know you did internet. I did. You did do final expense? Okay. Yeah? Yeah, dude. That in person, it was my bread and butter. 
Yeah, dude. I bet old people love you. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, so the way final expense would work, it was a whole bunch of super small policies. It was like, you know, $30, $40 a month. That's one of the reasons we don't, as an agency, focus on it much at all. Um, usually we're actively leading people kind of away from it. It's good for new agents because it's simple. You literally walk in there, you're like, hey, Bob, uh, you're going to be buried or cremated? <laughs> and Bob's like, I'm going to be buried. We're like, all right, who's paying for that? And he's like, my son, Jonah. We're like, okay, what are we leaving your son, Jonah, to pay for that? He's like, ah, oh, nothing. Also, this is really important, huh? He's like, yeah, it is. I was like, all right, you go through the health questions, show him what he qualifies for, and then just like, all right, which one is it? Um, and then that's it. So it's super, I mean, dude, I used to do in person, I would do four appointments in an hour if I could get them close enough. Because I would walk in, and five to ten minutes, the appointment was over. They were either giving me a check in their license or they weren't buying. And I was just moving on to the next one. So how those appointments went, it wasn't worth the $30, $40 appointments. Like you really couldn't make a profitable, like I would barely be scraping by if I was only getting those. So I would have to run 30 of these appointments in a week. And if I ran 30, there would always be one or two big ones in there. That was gonna be like a two or three K policy. You know, an older couple that just waited too long and, you know, 500 bucks a month was like, they're like, oh, that's the best we've seen. And they had the money for it. They could afford it and they couldn't get it anywhere else. And boom, that like, I'd, I'd have like 10 policies. Most of them would be 30 bucks a month, like 300 AP and then one fat one for like 5K and that would make my week. And if I didn't run that many appointments, I might be waiting a week or two. So I might have one week where I barely paid for my leads and made a profit and the next week I made a profit. So, and then I met Chris Photo, who obviously you guys know well, Chris, uh, John and Claudia, and he hit Hall of Fame on these leads one year, final expense. And I thought he was lying. And I'm like, Chris, like, just tell me the truth. Like, you say you're running final expense and you're running mortgage. And he's like, no, he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I really do run these. He's like, he's like, how many are you buying? And I was like, oh, I buy like 50 a week to set 30 appointments. He's like, well, I buy like a hundred or 150 a week. And he's like, cause you know how like every week you get one of those fat policies. I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I buy enough to I get two or three of those every week. So that's the law of large numbers. And it's present in every area of sales here. It's, it's these three, now all of these go together. These three combined are why people that buy, that drop 2,000, 2,500 a week on leads, write 10, 15, 20K every single week. And it compounds. Like the, these three together. So but some of you guys, Ryan's gonna train later today. I don't know if you guys saw the post he put on Slack. Ryan had two days where he absolutely blanked and they had another two days where I wrote 16K in those two days. It's because Ryan does the same, you're gonna hear his sales process, he does the same exact thing every single time. He buys so many leads, the law of large numbers, he always drops 2K plus, sometimes more, on leads. And so he's sifting through, if somebody's giving Ryan a tough time on the phone, he skips them, because why? He's looking for the easy, sales he's, he's looking he's looking and if you when you get to this level this is how you have those every week now to jonah's point are you going to be at this today for for a lot of us no now some of you you could be at this but it's like a combination between you won't spend enough on leads so you're not taking advantage of a lot of large numbers you're not being as consistent enough in your uh sales style or sometimes this is a little less rare. You have enough leads, but you're not utilizing them well because you, you're spending two hours on Betty with 30 bucks and you should be finding Barry who wants to spend 450 a month. Gabe, if you could elaborate a little bit more on the agent that tries to squeeze the last bit of ROI and arm wrestle every client yeah. into buying policy. It's a huge waste of time. Um, so, it looks like it looks a couple different ways. So it looks like maybe waiting to buy more leads because you're like, oh, like you're profitable. Like basically when you're new, because I know how it is. I started, guys, my first lead purchase, 
I dropped a thousand bucks on leads and that was like half my net worth. <laughs> like it was a lot, <laughs> that was like a lot of money to me. Like I needed to get this money back to be able to pay my bills. So like I get it. So like if you will buy leads, you need to be profitable on those leads to be able to buy more. But once you are, so let's say I drop a thousand bucks on leads, 3,000 gets deposited. Like I need to go right back and get more leads. Like trying to squeeze those same leads like for more juice, for one more sale, that is gonna interrupt your like sales cycle. Like the sale, and this, that's what you can really call this. You can call this the sales cycle. You're, you're, you're messing up the law of large numbers because now you're trying to get more out of a smaller base of people. You've already went through the easy sales, so now you're spending more time with a harder group of people, people who are harder to reach, people who didn't buy the first time you talked, people who are more resilient to the sales process. And you know, you're trying to, and that, that makes consistency frustrating because now you're trying to do the same sales process on people who are more difficult. And when you, what happens when you meet constant failure? You start doubting yourself. And so you're more tempted to change your sales process. Mm. which is not which is not what you should be doing. That's what people think. They think, "Oh, I'm I'm hitting a wall and they start changing what they do every single time." You know, how many of you guys have done that? It's like you you're you're messing up and so you're like, "Oh, let me try this this time." And then next time you try something different. And the time after that you try something different. That only ever leads to frustration. That never works because you're you're the problem is still the problem and now you're just going to have trouble identifying it because you've changed what you've done so many times, you don't know what the issue is. That's why doing the same thing every time is so strong. Because when Jonah is like, if Jonah is having a rough day in the sales process, he can just go back and look like, okay, well I say this every time, what part in my sales process is giving me an issue? Is it the intro? Is it the financial inventory? Am I getting people to acknowledge the why? Is it the close? And you can kind of dissect it. But when you change it every time, that's where you start messing up. 100%. Any questions about that? Go ahead. What's your, like, what's your cutoff point to when you're like, okay, I've called this person, you know, three, five, ten times, or this batch, where you're like, all right, let's move on. Mm -hmm. So um, usually, what I would say is, is it presuming that you're buying leads every week. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say, let's say it's Monday and I sit down with a new batch of leads and I'm going through and like I'm dialing everybody three times, I'm booking appointments, I'm texting, you know, I'm making some sales. Normally once I've touched every lead, like at least once, like triple dial, text them, and then like follow up again, like I'm ready to move on, especially if I'm profitable at that point. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. Those leads are yours. Like, you have them. So if you ever have, like, a week, I know some top producers who buy a ton of fresh leads might have, like, let's say I sit down every week with 200 leads. After, like, two months, I'm like, okay, I have 1,600 leads. I bet if I go through and maybe for a three days I text all of them, like I just send the same text to everybody, I'll, pr I'll probably get some juice like out of these. Like I'm not opposed to that. I think trying to do that on any regular basis though, like every week is really, really messes with you. So basically dude, once you get your money out of it and you feel like you've, you've touched all these leads, grab, grab some more. Cause remember, I mean, and I'm talking about for me personally, John made a great point. That this is not necessarily for every brand new agent, but once you start getting momentum, dude, I have no problem working second chance leads, but I want to go through and find the easy people. Like I want to go like, cause I, I mean, think about it. I dropped a grand on those leads. The second person I talked to, I made six grand. And it's like, so let me get through, talk to everybody, find the two or three of these. And then bro, let me go through and find the easy ones in the next group too. Like that is like, that's ideal. Will it happen day number one? No. People wonder how Caleb Coombs does it. Caleb Coombs did 600K last year, only works second chance leads. That's exactly how he does it. He's just going through trying to find the easy ones. 
trying to find the big one. Oh, this is going to be two, three, four hundred dollars a month. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, talk about the difference between ROI and net profit. Because I feel like some agents, they're, and obviously you want to have a decent ROI in your leads, but some agents are too obsessed with the ROI versus what they're actually profiting in the end. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I have a perfect story to illustrate that. So I'm a new agent, Jonah. Um, my upline is out of Aurora, uh, Illinois, and I'm going to the office, and there's another brand new agent uh, starting with me. I can't even remember his name, but he was a cool guy. He was nice. Um, same age as me, young guy, sharp. He had been in like real estate sales, something like that. And he had been used to generating his own leads for real estate, like using Facebook. And so I was not, so I didn't even mess around with that. I was just buying my leads. And we were like two months in, meeting back up. And he's like, uh, he's like, man, you guys are doing good, huh? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I think I just did like a 30K a month or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, dude, we're trying. He's like, uh, man, I'm getting a crazy ROI on my leads that I'm generating. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, he's like, how much are you spending on leads? And I was like, uh, at that point, it was like two grand a week. And he's like, you're spending two grand? And I'm like, he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, so you're spending a to write 30. And I'm like, yeah. So he's like, you're getting like a three and a half X ROI. I'm like, yeah, roughly, I guess. And so, and he's like, well, I'm only spending a hundred bucks a week on Facebook ads. And I wrote last week, I wrote 1100 AP. So I'm getting, a, I'm getting an 11 X on my, on my lead spend. And I'm like, yeah, but you made 3,600 and I made 20,000. <laughs> and like, I promise he did not acknowledge what I said. He, he's, he would not, he's like, yeah, but you know, ROI, like he went on this big thing about how he still thought he was better. <laughs> and like, it was completely going over his head. And I just like, he said this whole thing for five minutes. He got so bad at me. I'm like, yeah, but I'm making more money than you. <laughs> and he just, it just was not getting it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the money you're actually walking away with. Now, here's the thing. I'll be, I'll be very transparent and honest with you guys. When you are going through your first three to six months and you're figuring all this stuff out, like you're getting your skill level to the same time, you're getting your just mind, you know, what these guys said about, Chris Mock, I only caught part of it, but he's talking about his daily process, his ritual, like how he, like how he treats himself as a top performer. Like some of you guys don't do anything about that. And uh, you, you're gonna need to, if you're gonna excel at this job, you're literally gonna have to become a better person <laughs> to do this well. And some of us in this room, we take really poor care of ourselves. We eat bad, we get bad sleep, you know, you go out, you party too much on the weekends, like that will mess you up in this job because you're not clocking in anywhere now. Like it doesn't matter. Like I used to, I went through a stint guys where I loaded boxes at FedEx. I was one of the FedEx ground drivers. That was probably the hardest job I ever did. And um, you'd get there at seven in the morning, start loading up your truck. I, you know, all the, I think the max way was like 150. You'd be lugging these around upstairs things of paper, get back at eight o'clock at night, guys. It didn't matter whether or not I was having a good day, a bad day. As I was lugging those boxes upstairs, it didn't matter if I had a smile on my face or I was cussing. It didn't matter. Didn't I had a job, that, right? huh? I was a UPS supervisor, they cuss a lot. Yeah, they cuss a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> there, there's this one dude in particular, just a quick side note. Uh, he, every day he flipped out at how full his truck was mm -hmm. and I would wait for him. Right. Like, that was another truck, because I used to love to watch him flip out. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I would wait for him to get there, because he would just be like, he'd get up. Like, you saw him already. I'll never forget him. He was Brian. He, uh, he was, like, this balding, middle-aged guy, and he always wore those, like, super high socks. Uh, <laughs> like, oh. even it's, like, winter. He's, like, shorts and these crazy high socks. And he'd walk up to the truck mad and he'd look in and he'd be like, son of a <laughs> Every day, like every day he forgot that his job was to move boxes. <laughs> I love watching this guy. But anyway, <laughs> so, uh, man, that was such a great memory. <laughs> but uh, watching Brian flip out. But dude, it didn't matter uh, what my mood was. Because I, I moved boxes. Guys, 
it matters what your mood is. It matters where your mental state is. It matters where energy is. Like all those things affect your performance. So while you're figuring this stuff out, you're all, if you're making your money back, I would say for your first three to six months and eking out a little profit, focus more on getting that consistent sales schedule right, finding the easy sales and just that law of large numbers. Constantly put that in your favor. Now, Ryan's going to come in here later today. I like the way that Ryan breaks down his numbers. Now, a lot of people ask me, like, hey, if I hit 400000 in a year, what will my net be? And I always respond to it the same way, Jonah. I say, your first year or your second year? And they're like, uh, my first year, I guess. I was like, your first year writing four hundred k, you'll probably net somewhere between one fifty and two hundred. After it's all said and done, after chargebacks, after what you need to spend on leads, your second year writing 400K, you'll probably net closer to 300,000. You'll probably double your, your actual net because your sales process is so much slicker. You're doing, you're getting higher sales out of it. You also have a book of business where you're, and you're better at getting referrals. So you're getting more money out of it. Right now, what a lot of you guys are doing is you're just getting your skill set together. So you're going to make money your first year. You'll make good money. But the faster you get that together, the faster you'll keep the majority of your money. Does that make sense to everybody? ROI versus net. Any questions about that? Joan, anything else you want me to hit as far as that's concerned? Mm, what, what about hit on, hit on a few minutes for sales tactics? Okay better ways to help and serve clients? Maybe specific scenarios you ran into or rebuttals you've overcome or situations, whatever the case may be. Sure, so better sales tactics. I'll go for a few things here. These are, these are always really big ones. Um, active listening. That's a big one. That's a big one. So there's this pretty famous study. Maybe you guys are familiar with it. Um, about uh, wait, waiters and waitresses in the United States and what kind of activities result in bigger tips. And so they had a, a few different uh, waitresses come up and one of them was like extremely polite, very friendly, like touching people on the shoulder. And like, so you'd come in, they'd be like, oh, like, um, like what do you want? And you'd be like, oh, bacon and eggs and this and that. She'd be like, oh yeah, John, that's a good one. You look great, you look super sharp. Like super complimentary, all that stuff. And, you know, at the end, the tips were, it seemed relatively, she got maybe a little bit higher than average, but relatively unaffected. But when they had another uh, waiter, wait, waitress come in and Jonah's like, yeah, I want bacon, eggs with sausage. And the waiter was like, okay, so you want bacon, eggs, and sausage? Jonah's like, yes. She's like, okay, got it. Nothing else, no fluff, just literally repeated back to Jonah what he wanted. That person got more tips than anybody else. Why? Because the, the client, the patron, felt like they were being heard and attended to and that the person really kind of understood what they wanted. And that person, I mean, think about it for you guys. When you go to, how frustrating is it putting an order in, something getting wrong? And how much more comfort do you have when the person repeats back to you exactly what you want? And that has become like standard training now. Um, across many because that's a very popular study. The same exact thing when you're with a client. If the client feels like you, that you are trying to put them into a product, like you're going to come off very salesy and you're always going to get a lot of resistance. Like so a huge mistake sometimes new agents make is you're in the we're in the we're in the financial inventory and maybe you're talking about an issue you have or like a concern, like, um, like, oh yeah, if I can't work, you know, I'm, I'm worried about my family. Like uh, me, the bad thing to do would be like, uh, like, oh, so yeah, that living benefits are gonna be perfect for you. What does that, that feel like? It feels like I'm trying to fit him into something, talking about the benefits of the product. So, but if I'm just like, okay, so it sounds like your main concern is if something happens and you can't work, that your family wouldn't be taken care of. Is that the main reason you were looking into this coverage? You're like, yeah, that's exactly it. And then I'm not gonna say anything about coverage when we actually have them writing down, going over everything. 
it's going to feel like whatever I'm presenting is custom to the client because I listened and I got everything that they said. And then um, agreeing on why. Every top producer does this. If you're filling, filling out a financial inventory and you start talking about numbers before you get that person to agree on why, then you're making a mistake. Like you're, you're completely wasting your time. You should not be flipping over any page, getting them to write things down before you got them to agree on something. And sometimes it's not... That's what's gonna come into your skill. Sometimes people aren't gonna say like, oh, I'm concerned if I can't work. You know, this is what's gonna happen. Sometimes it looks like, like okay, like maybe I'm talking to you and let's say you're single and you're making good income and you know, you filled this out, maybe you weren't 100% even sure on the reason why. And I'm looking at your situation and I'm like, okay, so it looks like here, now what do you have to replace your income if you can't work and you're like uh, I mean I have some savings in the bank gotcha that 5k we talked about you're like yeah so that's about one month of your income um, anything outside of that that could like long term like replace your income you're like no nothing yikes nothing like okay is that the main reason you were looking at this coverage to make sure you would be okay if something happened and like he might have not even been thinking that way but now through asking him these questions, getting it, I'm going to get him to agree. He's like, yeah, that is, you know, a big concern. Now I've got him to agree on his why. Maybe it's the same thing with a married couple. Maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe you're married. You got kids. And you're, maybe you think you're okay. You're like, yeah, yeah. Like, as we're talking, it's obvious you feel like you don't need it. You're like, oh, yeah. Like, I have, you know, $100,000 in whole life. And we have $100,000 in the bank. I'm like, okay, got it. So let me ask you this. If something were to happen and you were to pass away, do we have anything besides this $200,000 to pay for the home, replace your income? Because right now we're about $300,000 short on the home. Anything else? You're like, well, well, no. Got it. Is that your main concern, just making sure if something happens? Because, Andy, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way it's looking here, is if something happened to you, we wouldn't have anything to pay for these other things. Is that correct? And you're like, well, yeah. What am I doing? I'm getting that lock-in with the client. I'm getting them to agree on the why. You need to do this before you get into the, uh, into the options. And then I think I won't pass my time a little bit. Who's up here? No, you're good. It's um, just me. Just you? Okay. I'm just 45. Okay, got it. Um, does that make sense? Any questions about that? Getting them to, so active listening, agreeing on your why. And then the last thing I would say that has really served me well in the sales process is never my opinion. Never my opinion. This is a, this is a big one. This is a big one. A lot of people like using words, and I used to think it put me in a better light. Like, do you want, I used to, do you want my professional opinion? Mm. I used to say that a lot. Like, do you want my professional opinion? You know, what, anything that is your opinion is always gonna be questionable. You gotta know that. Anything that's your opinion is always gonna be questionable to a client. Anything that comes out of their mouth is law. Anything that comes out of their mouth is law. So what your job is, is to get them to say what you want them to say. You have a question? Is I recommend the same thing? Yes. Okay. Don't say that. Okay. Like, don't, like, anytime, so instead of, let me give you some, some examples of like how you replace that. So what, so like, let's say instead of saying something like, I think, I'm going to say, it looks like. You know, usually when I'm talking to a client about the why, I'm not, I'm not going to say you. I'm going to say we. I'm going to put me in the position of the client. Like, so if something happens to you, would we have anything else that would make up for the income 
because it looks like, and then I'll, I'll, the one place I'll put me into it, I'll invite them to correct me. I'll be like, now tell me if I'm wrong. Like, tell me if, if we missed anything, you know, that da, 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 da. And so what does that do? Everything that's going to come out of their mouth, it's going to feel like their opinion. It's a, I'm just asking. I'm just asking them what they think. But obviously, I'm leading them down a path. You know, this book, phenomenal, The Straight Line Method, you learn how to lead a client down a path. And so, but it's not coming out of my mouth. So yeah, you never, you want them to always feel like it's their idea. Like there's always a way to do that. Like they're, they know you're the professional. They know you're the expert. They, and a person wants to feel, think about how you feel when you go, when I go to the mechanic, guys, I've never worked on cars ever. I can change a tire. Like, I can put oil in a car. <laughs> that, and one shear of the water. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 about, that's about all I can do. If anything outside happens outside of that, and I technically can change the brakes, but I don't like to. I'm going to pay someone else to change the brakes. <laughs> but, like, but when I go to the mechanic, I want to feel like I'm in control there. Like, think, think about your psychology. When someone's telling me, I want them to explain why it is, like, imagine, have you ever gone to a mechanic and they're just like, tell you the car needs this, this, this. You're like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to my head. No, it doesn't. You're trying to scam me. But when the guy is like, hey, come take a look at this. You see how this flap is? You see that rust in there? What that means is that this is going to go bad. You probably got six months on it. See this right here? The treads are gone on the tire here. Like, look at this. You got some sparkles in the oil. That means this is grinding, yada, yada, yada. Uh, what you normally do in that situation is this, this, this. And then I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh, well, let's fix it. <laughs> like, then I feel like I'm empowered to make all the decisions and that it's not him trying to sell me something. He's just showing me what's there. And I feel good about making the decision to get it fixed. That's what we do with clients. It's not us telling them what's wrong. It's us saying, hey, look at this. You see this? What about that? And they're like, well, yeah, let's fix it. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? So when you're giving them options, instead of saying, oh, I recommend this, or mm -hmm. you just say, it looks like mm -hmm. these are the options that you have. It's not like you're saying you recommend these three options. You're saying these are the options we have for you. So the first thing goes into like get pulling out the why. Yeah. So like I'm getting them to agree on the why. So. It looks like, you know, some, something happened to you. We won't have anything to take care of the home. Is that correct? Did we miss anything? And they're like, yeah, that's right. Like, okay, give me a few minutes. We're going to put some options together for you. And I come back, go through the options. Like, okay, you have a pen, write it down. If we're covering the whole loan for you, $300,000, we are going to cover you for this, this, this. So by the time that I'm going into those options, it feels super custom to them. So it was their idea. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> that's, that's the way you always want it to be. Because then people, like, usually the only response that makes sense, like, psychologically, you're setting them up to buy. Because once you've been confronted about a problem, <laughs> like, that makes sense, and people agree that it's a problem, the rational next step is, like, okay, let's fix it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the rational next step. Like, that's why, like, when someone tells me, hey, you need to change your tire, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. but, like, <laughs> but if they're like, hey, you see this tread? Yeah. You probably got about three months left on your tire. I'm like, oh, okay, I should probably change it, right? <laughs> they're like, yeah. <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're leading them down a path instead of, like, kind of confronting them. Yeah. Because, any, like I said, any time it's your opinion, you're, you're setting yourself up to be doubted. You got to get yourself to a point where it's always their idea. You always want this be solution to be the client's idea. And books like this will help you that do that. Books like if you guys never read Never Split the Difference, it's probably my favorite book there is for sales. And it's not even directly a sales book. It's a book on negotiation. Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Huge. And I just want to add one more thing to what Gabe said because this is one of the most I just want to make sure everybody absorb what Gabe said because it's one of the most impactful things that's going to 
separate you from the rest of your competition. Where I, I can't tell you how many times on the live dials from the office, I hear you know somebody communicating to the client, they're like, well, these living benefits do this, and this is why this is important, and this product is awesome because you get all your money back at the end if you don't want it, mm. or it builds cash value, or you know, it's 80% you know, or whatever the case may be. And I want you guys to write this down less about the product, more about how that solves the problem. Yeah. Because it's everything. Jonah, we had a new agent at the lock-in in Imagine. It was a good size group there, like 40, 50. And a new agent asked the question, he's like, how do I get clients excited about the product? And I was like, that's a good question, but you don't understand why. <laughs> I was like, because you, you don't. You don't get them excited about the product. You get them excited about solving their problem. Because people know that they have a problem. Like people know, and like everything that you're saying, like I relate it back to like things that I already do in like my personal life, like with training, with counseling. Like people know that they have a problem. They seek you out to either help that problem, but like you can't confront people and say like, oh, like you're fat, you need to lose weight. <laughs> no, they are coming to you and you're almost like, okay, well, you know, like what are your goals? Like what can we do to help you like overcome this? And so, like you said, it has to be their idea to create change because you people know that they have issues. People know that they have like, they're struggling financially or they know that if they die, like they're not gonna be taken care of. They know that there is this problem, but you sitting there saying, yeah, you have this problem that's not gonna make it, it's almost like they're feeling defensive mm. a little bit. They have to want to create that change for themselves and like they have to be the ones yeah. to initiate it. R write, write this down. A lead knows they need something. They get a conversation on a conference. A, a lead yeah. knows they need something. Here, you ever have this? This happened to me a lot with leads over the years. Someone fills out a lead. It actually happened in my first couple months with a final expense lead. Lady fills this out like 12 o'clock at night on Facebook, <laughs> up on her TV, up watching TV, scrolling through Facebook, sees the ad, fills it out. I see it hit my phone because I get that text right away and I'm like Monday, like, oh, this is gonna be an easy one. I'm gonna call this, call like a couple hours later. I call her like first thing Monday morning, she cusses me out right away. <laughs> She's like, I wouldn't need this. You, need, you guys need to stop calling, da 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 da. And so I'm like, I just paid 30 bucks for this lead. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I saw that it was uh, like 10 minutes away. So I go to her house mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, I just played dumb. I'm like, hey, uh, you filled this out over the weekend. The office said they couldn't get a hold of you. Is this right? <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, they sent me by to do a wellness check. And she, you could see like the, like, she's like, oh yeah, I just cut someone out this morning. <laughs> this is probably that. She's like, oh yeah, come in. I need that. I ended up selling her. Why did she? <laughs> she just filled that out. Why did she push back so hard? She didn't it, want to admit that she needed it probably. No. She didn't feel in control. No. no. So she knew she needed something, um, but she didn't know what. This is a rule. I probably had you got right for you guys that were here last time I went over this. She needed direction. People want to buy, but they don't want to be sold. Mm -hmm. People want to buy, but they don't want to be sold. And th think about that in the mindset of a lead. They know they need something. Now they're talking to a stranger on the phone. What are they scared of? They're scared that they're going to get sold something that they don't need by someone they don't trust. And they don't trust you. You're a stranger. And they're thinking of you as a salesperson. Sometimes the connotation people have with sales is that they're going to try to give you something you don't need. So how do you overcome that? You make it all about a needs analysis. That's why even our our rebuttals to that objection, like, oh, I don't want it anymore. Turner, yeah, no problem. Sounds like you're gonna make my job easy. I just gotta get this information out to you because you submitted the request. Why is that a good uh, rebuttal? Because it takes the sales pressure off. Like, oh, Gabe's not gonna try to convince me I need something. He's just gonna give me information. At the beginning, that's fine because it, it lets the sales pressure down. And so that's good. Now, if I try to be like, oh, Turner, why don't you want mortgage protection? Like, don't you know, da 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 like Jonas said, the living yeah. benefits, where does that feel? The bear is gonna go back up because mm -hmm. it feels like I'm trying to sell them something. So people, a lead knows they need something. They wanna, just like me, go back to the car thing. I'm driving my car, my car is shaking. 
<laughs> I know that there's a problem with my car. I go into one mechanic, he says, you need this, this, this. I'm questioning it. I don't want to be taken advantage of. I go into another mechanic, he points everything out, lets me make my own decision. I trust that guy. That needs to be us. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> Where it's, the, you guys really want to, you guys, anybody that goes to the new agent training, one of the first things I say is, the, um, you simply want to be as non-salesy as possible. How can I be the most opposite of a salesperson? Mm -hmm. And Jeremy, Jeremy Miner, I consume a lot of his training, and in my opinion, one of the best sales trainers says the best salespeople in the world are not the ones that have the most elaborate pitch or have the best tonality or all the best rebuttal. They're simply the ones that <clears throat> ask intentional questions, and they spend they spend the emo the majority of the time asking intentional questions painting that picture, guiding the client down a path, making them see why they need it, and having the client buy in themselves. So by the end of it, the pitch is very minimal. The pitch is simply a few seconds, because they the client's already sold themselves. So like how many how many of you guys have seen the movie Inception? Yeah, great movie. Um, love Leonardo DiCaprio, but it's kind of like in that movie where you plant ideas in the client's mind. That's what's what our job is, where you just drop little hints along the path and you subtly close them along the way. So by the time they get to the end, they're like, yeah, that's simply the logical answer and we need this. Because the more you try to push a product on a client, the more they're gonna give that resistance. Where you, you, again, just the only way is to ask intentional questions and to guide them down a path. It's almost like, in a weird way, it's a little bit of an adventure. Yeah. If you're going down with the client. Just kind of just asking questions, painting that picture, Figuring out what that looks like and you guys are gonna are not only gonna have a much better close percentage and have much better success in this business But you guys are gonna have more fun. Yeah, versus just trying to sell them and pitch them every single time That's what everybody wants every th think about you in literally any situation you go to the mechanic You meet a personal trainer, you know, you go to the tailor, you know, whatever you want something that's custom to you and anytime you feel like you're getting something you don't need like the sales, like the resistance comes up, like you don't want to buy. You'll wonder if you're being taken advantage of. Even if I go to a personal trainer and he's like, well, this is what most people's macros are. <laughs> like, no, I don't want people. that. I don't want that. <laughs> like I want what mine is going to be. You know, if you went there somewhere, you could get a suit and someone gave you one, well, most people, you look like you'll fit something like this. Like, no. <laughs> like, so sometimes we come off that way to the client if we're not leading with what their needs are. Tell me, tell me you're working, you just can't really take it. You can't take care of it. Be like, all right, Colin, so grab a pen and paper. This should take about 10 minutes. I'm actually at work right now. It's not a good time, man. Sure. Okay, because this has been pending for about a year now. Um, I know this is important to you, you know, but this, and this should take only about 5, 10 minutes. Do you have about 5, 10 minutes to get this knocked out? Uh, what is this for again? It's for the mortgage protection. So basically covers the home. If you become sick, disabled, pass away. Okay, yes. On. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you have about 10 minutes to go to your options? Uh, actually, right now is just bad time. Okay. I'll be off work kind of later tonight. Not sure though. Gotcha. That's perfect. I typically run by appointment only, anyways, and my schedule slammed. Shoot, let me pull up my calendar here. Oh gosh. Okay. Um. So looking at it here, it looks like because Colin, what's the? Let me ask you, what's the latest you're typically in the door from work? Probably like 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. Okay. I tell you what, I don't have a 7 available, but I could either do a 7:30 or I got a 10 p.m. That's better for you. Probably at 10 p.m. The 10 p.m. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna put you down for that. And then, Colin, let me ask you before I let you go. I know you got a jet here. How do you typically keep track of your appointments? Oh, me, like personally. Um, me, it's a calendar. 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 Okay, you got your calendar pulled up. Right now? Yes. No. Let me know you got that pulled up. Pulled up, yeah. Okay, perfect. So if you could just jot briefly down there, first of all, mortgage protection, and then that's at the 10 p.m. tonight. Should only be about 15 minutes or so to get this knocked out. Um, and then lastly, just briefly give you a quick security code. So the security code is JL2520. And then, so that's the last, so that's my initials on the last four, my license number. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of these scams going on. Artificial intelligence is getting crazy. So if you could keep that code safe, because when I give you a call at 10 p.m. tonight, if you get it, I'm gonna need that code in order to proceed with our appointment. But anyway, got you down for that. And then before I let you go, Colin, 
Um, let me ask you, any reason you would not be available to speak at that time? Um, only if I had to grab the kids from work or something. Or okay. from, from practice or school. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is my this is my direct office line. So if anything does come up, please let me know. Uh, because they have me running a pretty tight ship here. And anytime a client misses an appointment, it really messes up my calendar. And obviously at the spot we're taking away from another family that does need our help. Um, other than that, got you down for 10 p.m. tonight and look forward to helping you in. That's money. That's oh. so money. I'm going to start using that because initially, um, one, I always go and say, I'll schedule, schedule super packed. What's the best time to work for you? I've got this, this, and this open. And I'll be like, uh, hey. But Jonah. what does that do when you throw times out? Yeah. Put it back. Yeah. What time works best for you? How does that hinder you when you throw times out at first? Without picking the my schedule's open. That too. But, you're not busy. but, but throwing times out before you clear their schedule. Yeah. What does that do? Are you doing that's that's fine. <laughs> I guess. Well, it allows you to. It 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 creates the opportunity to lose control. Yeah. Yeah. Of and lose your leverage. Right. Because if I'm like, I'm like Colin. Perfect. I don't have by appointment only anyway. Dude, I got a 3 p.m. or a 5. You're like, dude, I don't get home till 7. Yeah. I'm like, well, shoot, now I now I got to backtrack, and now I lose my control and my leverage, versus, listen, like, I got a slammed schedule here. Let me see where I can squeeze you in, man. They got me helping. And I'll BS with clients. I'll be like, man, they got me helping 12 p.m. a day. Oh, shoot, okay, so I'm at that time available. Okay, looks like I could do. Call, let me ask you this, actually. What's the latest you're on from work? 7.30, please. 7.30, yeah. okay. So I got 7, I got 7.45, 8, 8.30, shoot. I tell you what, I could, I don't have anything between 7 to 8 available, but I could do an 8.30. Like, I'll just, I'll just say shit like that. Yeah. Like, I don't even care if I have a completely open calendar. I'll be sitting there looking at my completely open Google calendar, <laughs> just yeah. fucking bullshitting with them. Not, <laughs> not like too long, but for a solid like five, six seconds, I'll kind of like mutter a few things under my breath just about how slammed we are. Yeah, and then I'll throw, <laughs> and then I'll throw times out because like because it's like shoot because then it, it creates now you're the authority figure and it, you always want to have the posture of you're going out of their way to help and serve the client because nobody dude how many we've all ate at the restaurant where you're the only person eating there yeah and the waiters looking at you all weird how uncomfortable does that make you yeah nobody you, know, you don't want to be that person you, you want to you want to eat at the restaurant that's packed. That you have to book a month out to even get a res, to, right. to even get a spot in there, to eat there. So it's the same thing here. People want to work with people that are busy. So number one, always act busy. Number two, write this down. Clear their schedule before throwing out times. Clear their schedule before throwing out times. <clears throat> and then thirdly, when you lock in a time, have them put it either put it in their calendar write it down, or what Turner does, he has clients set an alarm. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's great, either calendar, write it down, or set an alarm. Do some sort of physical action to make to make them aware of the appointment and how important it is. Because throughout the entire process when we're tying it down, you basically simply want them to visualize you calling them later that day about the appointment. And for them to actually think about it, be in the forefront of their mind. It's very easy, like, hey, um, I got a five or eight. All right, great. Call me at eight. All right. All right. Sounds good to call you then. All right, bye. And they have already forgot about the appointment five seconds after hanging up the phone. So letting them know you're busy, that this is important, and you're getting back to them. Um, and then after that, after you have them put it in their calendar, um, just be intentional. Be like, hey, is there any reason you guys wouldn't be able to speak? Uh, no, we'll be available. Perfect. And you don't, you don't just move on awkwardly because then that makes you sound needy. You always want to follow it up with perfect because they, going, going back to the business scenario, perfect because they got me helping a lot of families. My schedule is slammed and it really messes up my calendar when a family misses an appointment and obviously that's a spot we're taking away from another family that needs our help. The last, the last thing to write down is you want to make them slightly you want to make it slightly uncomfortable where if they miss the appointment they feel bad there's a balance because you don't want to push them too much to the point where it's just it gets awkward or it gets weird but you want to make it slightly uncomfortable like letting them know you're doing them a favor 
And then perfect. Please keep your phone on you and be intentional about speaking at that time. And then throughout the entire appointment process, you want to kind of have the posture of like, all right, perfect. So you want to make them think in the back of their mind, like another two seconds, all right, then another three seconds, then another second, and then another couple seconds, another second after that, and then you let them go. You had a question? You had a question? Um, so just going back to, you know, being busy, right? When it is time for that appointment, let's say it's seven, we call them right on the dot or? Oh, that too. And that was one thing I missed. I'm glad you brought that up. So I let them know, I'm like, hey guys, please give me a 30 minute window um, between you know, seven to 7.30. I will do my best to give you a call at seven as close as possible, but they got me seeing a lot of families. So in case I'm running ahead schedule or behind schedule, just give me that 30 minute grace period. Um, but I will be giving you guys a call around that time. Yeah, because the, it's one thing that drives me crazy. I'm cool. Thank you for bringing that up. Because the thing that drives me crazy is when agents will sit there and they will wait till 7 p.m. on the exact dot to call them. Mm -hmm. It drives me wild. I have never done that. Like if I'm in the field, I'll, I'll show up to a home two hours late. I'll show up an hour early. Like, I don't care. And I'll leave in my notes like what, what time they get home, if they have like church event or like the window they're gonna be home. Because even worst case scenario, if you guys are running an hour behind and you call them, dude, first of all, most of, most of the time they don't even care. They're pretty relaxed, but secondly, if they're like, oh, well, you're supposed to call me at seven, like, listen, man, I apologize. They got me seeing a lot of families. Um, I actually just had to deal with a death by just today. And I was, you know, my, my clients, you know, they are the forefront of my priority. Or, you know, I apologize. I just had a client, you know, they, were get, they got declined. Um, we were having trouble finding coverage for her. And it makes you look busy when you are running an hour behind. Because if you call them right on the dot, and, and also just think about how much of a waste of time that is. <laughs> like, there have been agents in our office, I'm not gonna name names, there have been agents in our office that will sit there and the last 15 minutes, they won't do anything just in case they get a client on the phone because they have an appointment and then they call the appointment at 3 p.m. and then they no-show them. It's just like, it's like dude, you, you should always, always be busy and always doing money-making activities. Like, even if it's 2.59 and you have an appointment at 3 and you get somebody on the phone and <laughs> go through a one-call close, go through it. Like the other, the other appointment can wait. Always, and write this down as well. Love the ones you're with. Love the ones you're with. I said earlier, and I mean it, it's you never want to rush a client to get to your next appointment. Never rush to an appointment to get to your next one. Again, I don't care if we, they've gotten declined four times and we got to submit three more applications. I am, I'm on the phone with the client until we figure something out, until we get them through it. And you, don't, you never want to waste time or waste time, but you want to be very methodical and make sure you're, you're hitting every single step and every single point where you know, you're spending enough time building the why, you're asking intentional questions, you're painting that need, you're figuring out what that looks like for their family. You know, at the end, you're not like, all right, Mary, all right, we got you approved. That's going to be mutual Omaha. Great. All right, talk later. You know, you're tank, taking time at the end. You're having the client write down their coverage, write down your number letting her know you're going to be her direct point of contact. Let me know if you have any questions, you need to make adjustments. I can be more help than waiting on hold for the insurance company, making sure you're letting Mary know, hey, send my contact to your kids because I'm going to be the one putting my foot on the insurance company's throats to make sure that your family is taken care of on the worst day of their life. And, you know, I'll be giving you a call in a year. Like all those little things throughout the entire appointment process and at the end are huge. So just like Gabe said, he said, where, where do you put it? Um, yeah, same thing every time, first time. That's so huge. Same thing every single time. <clears throat> never rush it. Never rush it, never skip steps. Because I've also made the mistake of, on the flip side of that, I've called clients and they're like, oh, thank you so much for calling us. Like, we've been waiting for somebody to call us. We need this. And we'd be, we'd be screwed if something happened. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lord. And then, so I'll be like, great. And then I'll get excited and then we'll get into the products. And then we'll get to the end, they'll be like, well, you know, we just gotta, you know, we just gotta think about it and check our budget. You know, we don't make any decisions the same day. But you're, you're for sure our guy, John. We're for sure gonna get it. We just gotta think about it. We've all heard that. And I'm like, dude, what did I, what did I do wrong? But then I reflected back on the appointment. I'm like, oh, because I skipped steps. Because I got excited. So I don't care how much of a lay down it may be or how many rebuttals they give you. Just stick to the, I can't stress this enough, stick to your process and maintain the control. Cool, any questions on that?
Cool. All right, product knowledge. Who's the bell? Yeah, um, and then that's kind of like a two-parter because I, I did want to know, I guess, how important the product knowledge is overall, but also, um, you know, I guess how important is it to, you know, just be able to go off the cuff and kind of, you know, know their medications and stuff like that too. So not only the products that we're selling, but the products that they're taking. Um, if you just want to elaborate on that. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So first of all, as a new agent, what you guys should be focused on and write this down is dialing the phones, presenting and overcoming objections. Just those three things. So you're not expected to know all the products, all the underwriting, all that off the cuff. Because that's what we have the live dials for. That's why we always have four or five managers on deck at all times. And for your help. So, and that's why we tell you to call your, your mentor, your first 10, 15, 20 appointments, whatever the case may be, because it's our job to know that. So if you're recruiting and building a team, yeah, you own all the products and all the underwriting. That's your job. As a brand new agent, that's never closed. Not off the cuff, not yet. But then as you progress and you get a few sales and this and that, like you'll naturally learn it and you'll naturally pick it up. So A, that's why we have a cheat sheet, a spreadsheet. So just get their medications and COPD, okay, that's gonna be Aetna or American Home Life, whatever it is, okay? Like you guys will just naturally pick these things up. Um, and also, you're really only gonna write about three to five carriers. Like yeah, we have 30. Most of our carriers were, you were only gonna write maybe one or two policies in your entire career. 90% of your business is gonna be a few primary carriers, which you'll learn is gonna be pretty mainstream. Um, but yeah, just, um, I mean, I'm not saying just ignore it and disregard it, but don't make it the primary forefront and don't let that hinder, you know, you starting and hinder getting going. Because that will, that'll simply come as time progresses and it'll be close. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, ready to stick to your business. Is that, GPS. oh, GPS that. That was a good question though. Um, what specifically? Just decreasing chargebacks or? Well, yeah, that's the idea, but mostly just like, what does your tie down sound like? Okay. How are you solidifying sales, building that relationship where when the next guy calls, they're like, no, John is my guy, you know? Yeah, let's, um, let's role play that. So be like, all right, JP, uh, appreciate your patience. We're just wrapping up here. And do you still, do you still have that pen and paper handy? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I just gonna have you write down a few details of coverage so that way there's no confusion. Um, so the first thing, if you could write down the company we're applying with, so that's gonna be Mutual of Omaha, right on Mutual slash United of Omaha. And then that's gonna be that 183 bucks a month that we talked about. And then covering the mortgage plus one year salary worth of coverage. And then also write down the um, the reason we want this product JP is A, it builds cash value. So write down builds cash value, never expires, and 80% access to the living benefits. Let me know when you get that. Got that. Okay. Perfect. And then also, if you could, I texted you my digital business card at the beginning of this appointment, but just in case you lose my contact, uh, if you could write my number down as well. So my name's Jonah, and my number is 605-400-6716. And then the last thing I'm gonna have you write down, JP, is a security code. So that security code is the same code I gave you when you booked the appointment, which is gonna be that JL, Two five two zero, and let me know when you get that. Okay, all good. Okay, perfect. And <clears throat> so JP, so God willing, you're approved. You should be built here in the next couple days or so, and you'll be getting the policy packet in the mail within the next week. If you don't get that, um, you know how stand mail can be. Sometimes it gets lost. Make sure to give me a shout, and we'll get another one mailed out to you. Um, in addition to that. The reason for the security code is because unfortunately there's a lot of scams going on, artificial intelligence is getting crazy. So this is important. If anybody gives you a call, either claiming to be A from my office or B claiming to be from the insurance company, ask them for this code because they will have that. 
And if they don't have this code, they're either trying to scam you or get information. So if that, if that occurs, all you have to do is hang up the phone, send me their number, and I'll handle it. Um, also, JP, because I know we had talked about that, you know, this is the protection that protects your home for your wife and your kids and allows them to, protects the mortgage and allows them to stay in the home. God forbid something happens. But in addition to that, it's, you know, we also want to make sure this is affordable. We also want to make sure we're not taking food off the table. Because typically, I've been doing this a long time, and what I see, JP, is when finances get tight or the bills get tight, the first things to go, the first thing to go is life insurance. So I want you to make me a promise, and that promise is that if this ever becomes too expensive or too unaffordable, instead of canceling it, what you can do is simply give me a call, and we'll drop this as low as we need to go, because I think we can agree having some protection for your family in place when you are no longer here is better than having nothing. Um, but other than that, the um, like I said, look out for your policy in the next week or so. Um, again, if you wanna make any adjustments or have any questions, I'll be your direct point of contact. So either give me a text, give me a shout. Um, I work eight to seven, Monday through Saturday. I will be, if you need to get a hold of me on Sundays, um, I am available, but only in the case of an emergency. So other than that, JP, um, I'll be giving you a call here in about a year or so to re-explain your benefits, um, make sure you have the best market on the pro or best product in the market. But other than that, let me know if you need anything. All right, it was a pleasure being helping, me and serving you. Boom, boom, boom. Have a blessed rest of your day. And then tie it down and let them go. So that was, because I actually spend a good chunk of time at the very end just re-explaining everything, having them write down everything, making sure they understand the significance, the important, because a lot of times the client, because you're saying a lot of things and you're going through a lot of information, so a lot of times the only thing the client's gonna remember is when you first get them on the phone, the first few seconds, and the last 20 seconds. So I just wanna make sure those last 20 seconds are impactful as possible, and not only impactful, but they also, they, there's also, there's no confusion because I, I never want to get a call of like, oh, I didn't know we were approved and no, you know, we're no longer interested or I don't think we can afford that or just anything along those lines. So I've constantly throughout the entire process, I'm trying to paint the need and build the why and create different situations where that doesn't occur. So that's your question. Cool. All right. How much, what are we doing time? We have about 10 minutes left. Um, how much to invest back in the business? Watch that one. Mm -hmm. That was you, okay. okay. That was a good question. Um, how, how long have you been doing this for? Uh, like three months. Three months? Okay. Are you just personally producing or are you looking to build a team? Uh, right now, personally producing. Okay. So are you, are you just saying this in reference to strictly leads or yeah. think on a higher level staff and uh, strictly leads right now. Strictly leads? Okay. Gotcha. So a lot of you guys know my story. And for you guys, for you guys that haven't, when I started in this business, I didn't make a sale for my first. It took me three weeks to make a sale. And I spent three thousand dollars on leads before I made my first sale and bought three lead batches. <laughs> I invested a lot of money into leads. Before I was even not even profitable, before I was simply baseline, zero. And I mean, I, um, I understood very quickly that, and thankfully I, I always treated this and looked this as a business where I understood that in, it doesn't matter what business you're starting, it takes a lot of capital. And most businesses are not profitable in the first year. Especially you look at, talk about a tough business to start, look at the restaurant industry. The restaurant industry is a tough industry to be in because they operate on such thin margins. And I know people, I mean, dude, they've owned restaurants for years where they're barely making money and you know they're not they're there 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So thankfully we can you know make a lot of money in a few short years as long as you treat it right. But it's still gonna take a lot of a lot of time and energy and funds invested. And you can think about it, and I've always thought about it from the perspective of, well, I could not invest back into it, and this is the best it's ever gonna be. 
they going to be baseline or declining, or can you continue to invest and grow and become more profitable? And I think the second option makes more sense. So you continue to invest back into it to grow it and to become more profitable. And if your goal is to just, hey, dude, I want to produce, personally producing, I want to make $10,000 a month, then I'm fine doing that, and I don't want to make any more money than that, then great. Then don't reinvest back in. But if you guys are looking to grow an actual grow an actual business and become profitable and become wealthy and be successful, then yeah, it's going to take sacrifice in terms of time, finances, et cetera. So for you, let me ask you, you want to reverse engineer it because that's, that's a loaded question and it's different for everybody. What are your goals? I mean, how much do you hope to be producing a month? Um, I mean, soon, like 30. 30K? 30, yeah. Okay. Do you want to build a team over? Yeah. Okay. So, you you want to build a big business? Yeah. So that's going to require staff, an office, different systems, different things, technology. So, first of all, just strictly from a lead perspective, if you want to produce 30k a month, you're going to want to invest 2,000 bucks a week on leads. So I would ask yourself, well, how soon? How what's the shortest amount of time? Like, how soon can I be invest, investing 3,000 dollars a month? All right, three thousand dollars a week. I'm sorry. So two, two to three grand, two thousand dollars a week. So that would be six thousand dollars a month into leads to produce that thirty k. Just reverse engineering, and that'll answer your question right there. It's um, just keep your goals at the forefront of your mind, and that'll that'll let you know how much you should, how little or much you should invest in your business. Cool. All right. And then you asked how to hire your first five solid recruits. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Have you recruited? Have you started recruiting? I have one person. Yeah. Okay. Just one. Is he? Is he got? Is he here? No. Okay. Is this the only thing? Or got his license? Yeah, he's licensed. He uh, he hasn't uh, closed anything yet though. How many conversations have you had? With him? Or just in general, just mm-hmm. recruiting in general. I've, I've had like four guys like on the fence about it, like bought their course and things like that. I just never finished it. Mm, and, um, gotcha. Okay. I've seen that many regarding like, recruiting. Like, sure. I've seen the people. Cool. Okay. That makes sense. So the reason I asked that is because you guys are going to be amazed. What, and a few of you guys are already definitely recruiting and are building teams. I mean, JP's one of them. JP's a savage. He recruits a lot of people. But you're going you're gonna to understand how... It's, it's funny how similar recruiting is to running business, where it is a numbers game to a certain degree. Where you just have to, you just have to run the numbers. And in addition to that, I'm not saying run the numbers and hire anybody and everybody that breeds and has a pulse. Because some, insurance, some sales organizations do that. I've tried that. And that's the fastest way to run this business, by hiring the wrong people. And it's frankly just a waste of everyone's time. So you have to, first of all, run a significant amount of recruiting appointments to get those quality hires. And then once you hire them, for me, the way I do it, and a lot of you guys I've recruited directly, I bring them through a three-step hiring process where I don't hire anybody on the first call. So I, I'll basically have a call. And the way, the way I stage the first call is I'm pretty much sharing my, sharing my story, figuring out what their pain points are, asking intentional questions, figuring out what they don't like about their current job or their current situation, what they're looking for, what's important to them, and whatever it may be, whether it's more control, not working for a boss, making more money, having more freedom. You know, there's a hundred different scenarios, and then I'm I'm sharing about you know my story or other new agents that came in and have success or talking about other people, whatever, basically hyping up, simply hyping up the opportunity. And then the second call is I'll either get on there or Sometimes I'll have like another radio agent or a producer get on there, whatever the case may be. I think third party validation is huge. Um, but basically just talk about, I mean, dude, yeah, it's great. You can make a lot of money, but it's hard and it sucks. And you're probably not gonna make a ton of money your first month or two here. And just really, really challenge them and try to just weed out the riffraff. And people that are soft or complacent or lazy or don't have the right habits and just disregard them. Because they're not gonna, they're not gonna be successful. Um, and then sometimes I'll hire them on the second call. But then the, if they're still skeptical, or they're still not sure. 
Like for example, I had one guy I was talking to, uh, I just hired a solar guy not too long ago. And he said, he was like, yeah, well, you know, I want to get my insurance license, but I still want to knock doors in the afternoon and the evening. I'm just looking for something to do in the mornings. You know, it just makes my dream come. Like I, because in his head, he was thinking solar was the better opportunity. I was like, no, it's not. I, couldn't, I didn't tell him that. But what I did was I leveraged, I leveraged other people, shared stories, shared tes testimonials, broke down details, asked intentional questions, and painted that picture and did, and schedule, I think I did four calls with this guy. And I scheduled out a couple more calls to simply to break down his belief level. So his belief, I only hired him when he finally reached the point where he was like, dude, the insurance industry is the best industry to be in. And there's no better opportunity out there. Because if I would have hired him on the first or the second call, and he was still skeptical, or he still had some hesitations, or maybe it's an MLM, or maybe the leads really don't work, or whatever the case may be, then who knows, he might have got his license, but he probably would have fell off and wouldn't follow through with it. Because there was something in the back of his mind that he had some sort of rebuttal or disposition, and you just want to, you basically want to get that out and get them to stay. And the only time I hire someone is when they're fully committed and 100% ready to go. And if they're not at that point mentally, they don't hire them. And dude, I've had, I've had some people where it's just not a good time. And we've served around six months and I brought them on board. I mean, Derek, Derek's a great example. Too. We all like Derek's, we all love Derek and Derek's crushing. And he just uh, actually just landed, but he, I got on, a, I got on a call with him in, she was either June or July. Wow. And he basically got on a call with him. He's like, listen, dude, I'm committed to the doors, solar. Like, I don't know another opportunity where I can make these larger commissions. And I basically, you know, I, I involved him a few times. I could tell that he was fully committed. I was like, hey, no worries, bro, keep crushing. <laughs> you know, let me know if anything changes. And I didn't even know this until he hit me up, but he followed me and he continued to watch my content and continued to watch my stories for the next six months. And then finally he, he gave me a call and he hit me up and we actually, actually we were here in this office of one of our lock-ins and he called me, he's like, he's like, yo, I'm ready to get started. <laughs> like for a second, like I forgot who he was. I was like, who is this? He's like, Derek, we happened to call back in July. I was like, thought about, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. And then I'm like, all right, dude, well, I'll be back in the office Monday. We'll hop on a Zoom. You know, we'll see if it's good. Like, we'll see if it makes sense. Like, I, I didn't think he was serious. He's like, no, for real, like, is there any way I could get started sooner? And I asked him, like, a few questions. And I could, like, I could tell, like, and by that, we spoke on the phone for about 15, 20 minutes. And by the end of it, I'm like, this dude's committed. I was like, shoot. So I put him in the course, got him hooked up with Ellen. He got his license, like, ASAP. And now he's just been, he's been a dog. But it wasn't the right time for him. If I would have hired him back in July, he probably would have fell off and probably wouldn't have done anything. So, you know, people, if, and you, you also can't convince people because, because people have to be open-minded where if you get, if you get on a phone with somebody and, and they're just, they're not receptive and they're not open to a new opportunity, it doesn't matter what you say or who they speak to. It's a waste of time. They have to be open and they have to, now I wouldn't say be looking, but they, for lack of better words, not to be redundant, but they have to. They have to have an open mind to the opportunity. Shoot. But yeah. So I think just at the end of the day, just having conversations and doing a numbers game and looking for the right people. Because also, I mean, I, you know to probably about 90%. There's other 10% where you don't necessarily know for sure. Because I've hired a lot of people where, dude, I've been, I've been fired up. I thought they were studs, mm -hmm. and they're not here. I've hired other people where I'm like, all right, well, you know, we'll see what he does. You know, he might be in five, ten k a month producer, and they've come in and they came in and crushed it, and wrote way more than I was surprised. So, you also never really fully know. Um, and I mean, just to go off of that, like, how much, how much easier was it for you to recruit when you were producing at a high level versus when you first started? Oh yeah, that's that's a good point. That's another thing where it's um, I think because people ask me how soon should I, how soon should I start recruiting and. My biggest, it's funny, not only myself, but any other big producer, they'll say, like, if you, could go, if you could go back and you could change one thing, what would you change? And almost everybody will say, well, I wish I started recruiting sooner. Mm -hmm. But then any, every new agent that comes on board, they're like, all right, well, I need to wait till I'm ready to start recruiting. It's kind of like waiting until you're ready to start writing business. It's the same concept. Where if it's all you and if you're fully doing it by yourself, then, yeah, you should probably wait a little bit. But with the, the systems, the processes, the new agent training, the other managers that are available to help, the staff, the support, et cetera. I mean, dude, you guys, you guys have a system and have it set up where you guys can start recruiting day one. 
But, um, so yeah, so I mean, you, when's a good time to start recruiting? Yesterday. But on top of that, the mindset behind it and the psychology is you should never bank on recruiting people to pay your bills. Because that sounds terrible. I've never recruited that way. Like I never ever want to bank on hiring someone or someone coming on board and me relying on someone else's efforts to pay my bills or pay my income. Because that would be considered an MLM. And that's weird, in my opinion. Hmm. And it's, um, I've always recruited where, from the point of view, is like, hey dude, this is what I'm doing. Whether, whether you're a brand new agent, you've been here a week, and you've made no money, or you're a 40K a month producer making great money, you're like, hey dude, this is what I'm doing. It's an awesome opportunity. I think you'd crush it at this. But regardless, whether you come here or not, like I'm gonna win. Yep. Like what you're doing does not affect me in any way. Whether you come on board, great. If you don't come on board, no worries. But I'm committed and I'm doing this and this is what I'm gonna do to become successful. Mm -hmm. So I think also recruiting from that posture as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you're recruiting from the posture of being pressured, trying to pressure someone into doing something, that's just weird. And you never wanna, you never wanna be that person. What's up, bro? What's up, all right, dude, so I asked you to come up and train because how long have you been doing this for? Uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years. What did you produce your first year? Uh, 300. 300. Second year? 500. 500. And this, what did you do this past year? 520. So you're a savage. And you've been, the thing I love about you is just you're, you're so consistent. You're so consistent in your work. You work day in, day out. I mean, you're not like, you're not an animal where you're grinding 12 hours a day and just doing it, but like you're making great money, you're producing at a very high level, and you're you're doing it in a way where you're able to do it for a long and of time, where you're not you're not gonna get burned out. Because I'm big on you know really grinding and staying focused, especially when you're new. But you get to a certain point, like you can't run appointments twelve hours a day every single day for years on that. Yep. So I, w I really want you to break down your your flow and your process and. How you're able to do that consistently? Because yeah. you have, you've got a great like work like great work life balance, where you've built your business to the point where you let's be honest, how much time do you spend on the golf course? Uh, 12, 16 hours a week. Of <laughs> bro, bro, this this man goes golfing every single day. I don't want to lie to you. So it's like, so yeah, dude, I'm just excited to get into it. But I'll let you take it over from here. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it, guys. Um, all right, so Jonah said y'all did a lot of like mindset training so far. So if you guys have any questions like throughout, just like raise your hand. I might not like get to everybody's questions, but like I want this to help you guys. A lot of this to be able to help you guys make a sale like on your next call, right? So if you don't know me, my name is Ryan. Some of you guys I know, a lot of you I don't. Um, but so we're just gonna kind of go through like my sales process. I'm gonna talk about a lot of things um, that I might do a little bit differently why I do them, why I think they probably should be done that way. I think differently sometimes than like Jonah does. His sales process is different than mine. Obviously, we're both good salespeople, but our processes are pretty different, right? Um, so that's not to say if I do something different than Jonah does that you should switch it or do it the way Jonah does it or I do it. Like sometimes you, your personality might be more like mine or more like Gabe's or more like Jonah's. So you might do something like Jonah, whereas some of you guys might do it more like me, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do things. Um, just kind of what, what fits your personality. Um, so first of all, guys, the first thing that I want to talk about is just um, in order to have a good, strong sales process, you have to know what your sales process is in the first place, right? So if I say, Jonah, what's your sales process? And you're like, oh, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, I kind of, I call them and I start talking and, you know, Swing we it. kind of figure out what they need. That's not good. Right, you need to know, hey, I start with setting the structure, then I send them my license, then I do this, then I do that. Yes. And you need to know exactly what every step is, okay? And if you're a brand new agent, you might not know that to the T, that's fine. Copy somebody else's and do theirs the same way every time, right? Um, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of times as new agents, we will try to get a sale, we'll use a script, it doesn't work. We ditch it and we use something completely different, right? That doesn't work. That's, that's not how you build a strong sales process. You build a strong sales process by doing the same thing every time, saying the same things every time. At the end of like a month or two, you're going to be able to look back and say, okay, every time I say this line, the client reacts negatively. They hang up the phone. Or every time I say this, they laugh and it lightens the tension. And you'll start to learn what you actually do well and what you're doing poorly. But if you don't say the same things every time, it's never going to work out. 
I don't know if you guys saw, I threw in Slack. I don't know if you guys are in, our, are in the Slack with the rest of us, but I threw in Slack this last week. I had two days where I blanked. And for me, I haven't had a day with like more than two sit, more than two presentations where I blanked in like a long time. I had so two much. days where I blanked. One of them, I had five, I gave five presentations and didn't sell anything. The other one, I gave four presentations and didn't sell anything. But guess what I did not do? I didn't overhaul my script and change everything because mm -hmm. I know my sales process. I know it works well. And I still closed like 16K like in the last week, even though I blanked for two days. Like hey, who saw that post in Slack? Anybody? All right. We, we need to plug more to the pinnacle Slack. <laughs> it's all good, right? Not a single person right <laughs> It's all good. That's what I, fi but, I figured so. Dude, no, that, I saw that post and that was, that was important because mm -hmm. because I want to I wanna really emphasize and make sure everybody got that. So, bro, you went two days mm -hmm. without making a single sale, and you, it's not like you weren't working. Like, you were running appointments, yeah. you were presenting. Give nine presentations. Nine yeah. presentations, zero sales. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do the next two days? Um, well, I mean, for the whole week, for the seven days, I did like 16 and a half. So, did, but still had a $16,000 week. Yeah. And no, like, big sales. Like, my biggest sale was like 2100 so it's not like I had a giant sale that was like half of it. You know, like, it was, it's just the consistency over time. So my point is when you find a sales process that works or if it works for somebody else, it can work for you. Say it the same way all the time. Um, so um, that's the basis for everything because you're never going to learn what works and what doesn't if you change things every time. Okay. So if you guys are changing your script, don't find a script that use it. The script you use today might not be the script that you use six months from now. That's fine. But you're not going to learn what you should use in the future, what works best if you don't say the same things all the time. Um, one thing that I want to talk about, guys... Um, that I, I don't think gets talked uh, gets talked about a lot. We're like salespeople. On average, we are probably the most aggressive people. Like if you take uh, the aggressive people in a room, like a random room of not salespeople, like the most aggressive people, a lot of times like they're salespeople, right? We're go-getters, we're driven, we're confrontational, we're going to get what we want, we know what we want it, we know what we want and we know how to get it. Um, with clients though, a lot of times you can't really handle clients the same way, right? Um, so for instance, like back when we were in person, Jonah, when we had someone who had a life insurance policy, we would sit at the table, look them dead in the eye and be like, Hey, go get that policy yeah. <laughs> and just stare at them until they went up and got that policy. Right. When we were like across the table from them and they might sit there for a second, kind of like, look at you. And then they're like, okay, all right. Like, you know, let me, let me go get the policy. All right. And then we would sit there and we would show them most of the time people don't have good life insurance. So we would sit there and we show them, Hey, look, this is terrible life insurance. Right. Well, we're over the phones now. We don't really have that same power. Like you can't really sit there and try to shred some shred somebody's, um, you know, life insurance that they already have. So if someone already has life insurance, one thing that you don't want to do, guys, is you don't want to attack their policy and attack their stance. Because if they feel like you're attacking them, um, they're going to get immediately very defensive, and they're not going to want to give you valuable information that you might need to make the sale. Who are they going to trust? This guy that just called them on the phone 12 minutes ago or the insurance person that they've been dealing with for the last 15 years? Regardless of whether or not you're right about their life insurance policy or whether or not they have something bad, you can't be in a position to where you're arguing with them and you're being really confrontational with them. So when somebody has life insurance or if they already have a 401k or IRA, if they maybe they already have short and long-term disability or an AFLAC policy, if I ask them about that, I don't immediately attack that and say, well, you don't want to use that for mortgage protection because X, Y, Z. Because number one, if they weren't thinking they could use it for mortgage protection, I don't want to give them an objection, right? I don't want to be like, hey, here's an objection for you to give me. Go ahead and give it to me, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to be like, hey, you don't want to use your 401k for mortgage protection, you know, because of taxes, penalties, fees, whatever. Like, don't say anything about it, right? You're not confrontational. You're not argumentative. So, hey, do you have a 401k? Yeah, okay, how much is in it? They're like 50,000. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm assuming you're saving that for retirement, right? They're like, yeah. Like, okay, it's, it's spent. So that's what we want to do is we kind of want to ignore that and spend it. It's very non-confrontational. It's not argumentative. And we're not like planting the seed in their mind that they could use it for mortgage protection. So same thing with life insurance. Um, when they say, hey, I already have like half a million dollars of life insurance. I'm like, perfect. I'm really glad you have life insurance. Not really. Who's that life insurance with? Uh -huh. or, oh, that's probably only term life insurance or this or that or this, or, you know? So you want to be like uh, complimentary. You want to say, hey, I'm really glad at your age that you got life insurance already. Most people aren't that responsible. And what that's going to do, it's going to take their guard down. 
they're not going to be on defense mode. And they're going to give you the info. So info that we probably need to know whether or not we need to handle it. Like I had an appointment yesterday um, where she said she had $200,000 of life insurance. Would have been enough to pay off the house. Um, so I'm asking, you know, who's it with? It was with New York MetLife, which they only do like increasing term policies. Um, I, who is it with? How much does it cost? And how long ago did you get it? That's all info that you need to actually figure out what is a life insurance policy, okay? Because sometimes you can just spend it and it's fine. Sometimes you actually kind of need to handle it if they're saying they use it for mortgage protection. But if they're on defense mode, they're not going to give you that info. They're going to be like, oh, I don't really know. You know, they're just not going to want to tell you because they know what you're going to use it for. Well, people aren't stupid. They know why you're asking those questions and you need that, you need that info though. So compliment them on that. Uh, that's one thing that I think is super important. But let's... Uh, that's just one thing that I feel like doesn't get talked about a lot. Is anything that they bring up or anything that they already have, don't immediately attack it and jump on it. Try to like make them feel good about it. Um, so let's let's go through my in-home a little bit. Claudia said she sent this to you guys, I don't know, in your Slack or group chat or whatever. So you guys should all have this. Um, if you want to follow along with me, you can kind of follow along. It's like a four-page. It's just my sales process. This is what I have my agents use. I have yet to bring on a brand new agent, brand new to sales, that doesn't have at least a 40% close ratio days, day one if they use my script and ask all the questions that are on my script. So it's a very good script. It might not work perfectly for you exactly, but I have developed it. So that way it works for a variety of different agents from a variety of different backgrounds. Like you don't have to have a super big, you know, you don't have to know everything about sales to do well with this. So if you guys want to follow along, you can. Um, so the first thing, the first thing that's on there, guys, what I try to do is I try to be, uh, the first line that's on there is, Hey, my job is to help educate you on what the mortgage protection is. The reason that I specifically use that word educate you is because I want to come from a standpoint of where I'm helping them understand something and I'm on their side and I'm like helping them understand the process. Um, I don't just want to like take them through this whirlwind of a sales process where they feel like they don't know what's going on, right? I want them to feel like, Hey, I know what's coming. I'm comfortable with this person. He's here to help me and here to educate me. Um, and so then I, I basically, I go through the three types of insurance, PMI, homeowners insurance, mortgage protection. I lay out the differences. We're not going to go through that because pretty much we all know what that is and it's built into the script. Um, and then, um, basically I, I will screen share with them my state license. Some people take like, uh, two or three minutes to be like, Hey, here's why I'm legit. Look me up on the state insurance website or whatever. I don't think you really need to do that. I don't think most people are naturally like distrusting of you, especially if you just send them your state license. Like I don't think you need to do a ton of work to get people to trust you. So I just send them my state license and I send them that sheet with all those carriers. Do you guys use the credibility sheet? Oh, uh, not anymore. Okay. We need to create a new one. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. We do need a new one. I still use the I still use the old one, but no big deal. People don't overthink things. I still use the old one with that for calling. But also talk about why, because some agents have like they'll send them the link to look up their state license and they'll like run them through the whole deal, and then the client still won't trust them. Yeah. Talk mm -hmm. about the importance of why that doesn't work. Um, the why like why why in most like why process. in most situations yeah running them through a five minute process is not effective. Yeah. So I mean, in my this is this is what I think about that. So if if somebody gives me an objection. Somebody give me a random objection that you don't want to buy mortgage protection. Random objection. I need to think about it. You need to think about it. Perfect. I want you to think about it as well. Once we submit a request, we'll have 30 days to think about it and bump it up or down. Which one of these do you want to start with? Right? Very quick, very simple. However, if I take the next five minutes to go through this big, huge, long spiel of why you don't need to think about it and all these benefits of doing it today, what does that do? That says to you, the client, okay, this guy spent five minutes <laughs> trying to handle my objection. So this must have been a really, really good objection. And it validates their objection uh -huh. just by spending a ton of time. But if you don't spend a lot of time, you make it like it's not a big deal. Your tone doesn't really change. You're like, yeah, no worries. I want you to think about it as well. That's why they give us 30 days. Which one do you want to start with? That's it. You know, but if you spend a ton of time. So that's what I think about that. If you spend like a ton of time trying to get them to think, I'm legit, you know, I'm real, I promise I'm a real person, I'm not in some Korean basement trying to scam you or anything, mm. uh, then that starts to like raise red flags, right? That's kind of like putting objections in their mind and like, and that's like planting seeds to sprout. Like if those seeds aren't there, like I, I don't want to plant those seeds of objections like in their mind for them if they're not already there. 
So, hey, this is my state license. I'm licensed by the state to help you get the coverage in place. That's it. That's all you need. Really quick, really simple. Um, probably, I would say the most important, one of the most important parts of like the mortgage protection um, uh, appointment is what we call like a pre-close or a trial close. Call it whatever you want. I know um, some people work it a little bit differently, but this is what I do. After I show them my state license and all the carriers we work with and stuff, I say, um, now, Jonah, this mortgage protection, it's not an open enrollment thing. So it's not something you could just kind of call whenever and add on. It doesn't matter to me what we're doing here. But just as long as once we get to the end, it's just a simple yes or no from you. We either need to apply for it or decline it. Is that fair? That's right. Boom. Cool. Yeah. That's like a pre-close. That's just helping them understand, hey, when we get to the end, the expectation is you are telling me yes or you are telling me no. A lot of you guys, if you haven't done something like that before, you're going to be scared to try it. And the thought process, the thought process is, well, I don't want them to, I, I want to at least show them numbers. So that way, if they want to buy, like what if they say they don't want to tell me yes or no, and then I never get to show them numbers. Okay, well, you weren't going to close that person anyway. If they're not even going to agree to that, you were never going to close them in the first place. So that's not losing you the sale because that means you don't have control. If they don't agree to that, if they don't say yes, you do not have control of the appointment. If you don't have control of the appointment, you will never make a sale. It does not matter. If you're not in control, the client's never making a buying decision. So that's what we put that out there for. And that also helps when I get to the end and they're like, hey, I want to think about it. I don't, this isn't like the first thing that I say, but if they've said I want to think about it two or three times, I'm like, Jonah, at the beginning, I, I asked you if it was fair that you tell me yes or no at the end. You said it was fair. So what do you want to do? Right? That's like the very <laughs> final thing that I'll try. And any, any objection that's going to come up during the sales process, you need to have preemptively handled it, right? You have to have handled it before it came up. Um, some of them might never come up um, if you do a good job of handling the objections before they come up. But that's what that's doing, is trying to get away from the I want to think about it objection before it ever comes up. The reason that I think that it's so effective, and this is kind of a stupid reference, okay, but y'all know in the Dark Knight movie when the Joker's making his monologue about how, like, if everything goes according to plan, nobody freaks out, even if the plan is terrible. If people know that it's going to be terrible, they're fine with it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's when you don't know what the plan is, it's when you never say, hey, we have to apply for or decline this. You get to the end, and they're like, well, hey, Jonah, thank you so much, but we need to think about this. And all of a sudden, you start pounding the sales pressure that they're not prepared for, that's sales pressure, right? But if you prepare them to make a decision, they'll be prepared to make a decision. Now, it's not going to get rid of every single person that would say, I want to think about it, but it gives you a basis to stand on to help them try to make a decision. And I'll even have people, it's so funny, the other day I had um, an appointment with this younger couple. I tell them, hey, we've got to apply or decline. They're like, yeah, that's cool. I get to the end. I ask them which one they want to do. The husband goes, hey, well, you know, we want to think about this. And the wife goes, hey, hey, no, no. He said we have to say yes or no today. And then they, they she did my job for me. I'm like, the amount cool. of appointments I've had where they've said that exact yeah, thing. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. And if you do your job right, like, it's it's very easy job. But it's if it's when you just wait to handle everything until the very end, that's when it gets difficult. So that pre-close um, is really important. That's honestly... As far as my sales process goes, that's the thing that's made me more money than anything else. It's saying, hey, we have to apply for or decline the coverage today. Before I was doing that, my closing ratio was 35%. I was a career below average closer before I started doing that. Once I started doing that, it immediately added <coughs> like 15%, uh, a 15% on my closing ratio. So I went overnight from 35% to 50%. And so just to put that into perspective, because that's just the number. At the time, I was running about 30 appointments a week. I was sitting with about 15 people, and I was selling somewhere around five, okay? So that put me from selling five to selling seven or eight, which the average AP is right around 1,000. So that made me two or $3,000 every single week, eight to 11, eight to $12,000 a month extra, just by saying you have to apply for or decline the coverage. No extra work. Nothing. And I never would have learned to say that had I not used the same script all the time. Because I got to the end, people kept saying, I want to think about it. I'm like, how can I fix this? I listen to a ton of training. I add that in. Boom, it works. You had a question? Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, so on that point with people that still push past to think about it, will you have to follow up with them? Or if they decline, then? It depends. So if, some, if I get to the end and someone does say, I want to think about it. So my line is always, okay, uh, what's your name? Bailey. 
Bailey. All right, Bailey. Now, do you need to think about whether or not you want the coverage at all, or do you know you want the coverage? It's just kind of a matter of which option you're going to pick. And I'm, you know, saying which one. And uh, that kind of weeds out the people that aren't serious. If they're like, well, you know, I don't know if I want the coverage at all. I don't waste time. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll go back to the why. Bailey, if you die tomorrow, your, your wife and five kids are homeless. You have zero savings. Why would you not do this? And I'm just, and if he says, well, I want to think about it. I'm like, hey, buddy, I told you you got to apply or decline. What do you want to do? Like, you can leave your wife homeless. I'm not the one who's going to take care of her. You know, it's fine. Um, you do whatever you want. Um, and if she says the other one, if, she, if they say the other one, hey, I know I want the coverage. I just don't know which option I want to pick. Then I'm just down closing them. I'm like, okay, cool. No, I completely understand. I'm the same way I like to think things. I like to kind of think things through as well. Now, like I said at the beginning, we do have to apply for or decline it here. So what we'll do is we'll start down there at the bottom and then we can bump it up whenever. So if that's tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, whenever you've had plenty of time to think about it, we can bump it up whenever, all right? And then that, all right, that, okay, I can't just say we can bump it up whenever and stop talking because that puts him in control. He can respond however. But if I say okay, mm. they w they'll like automatically say okay back. Like try it in a random conversation with somebody. Just go try this. Like with your family members, say some random dumb sentence and then say okay. Like look at the person dead <laughs> and then say okay, and they'll be like okay. And they don't even know why they said okay. Right? That's because people will like follow what you do. So when you're in control, so that's why at the end I'm like hey, what, we can bump it up whenever. Okay? And I'll be like all right, okay. Cool, let's do it. And uh, I probably get about half of them say, well, we don't know if we want it at all. Half of them say, um, we know we want it. We just don't know if we want to, you know, which one we want to apply for. Of the ones that say the latter, I close about 75% of them on the spot. 25% of them I do schedule for a callback. And I'm maybe one out of 10, I'll close a callback. So obviously I'm not trying to go for callbacks. But yeah, any follow-up questions on that stuff? So the second they say, okay, so what's your... Next thing, grabbing financial institution, like asking them routing number, all that stuff, right? Yeah. There. So if they're like, okay, sounds good. I'm like, all right, cool. What's your what's your date of birth? And then I start doing oh, an application. Okay. I'll be like, go grab your ID. I'll start working on this. Okay. Depending on how, like, you can. I mean, I'm on Zoom. The reason I do Zoom is because I can read people's body language and I can tell by, based on their body language how in sync they are with me. So on the phone, if they just say okay, I don't really know. Are they in? Like, if they say okay, versus okay, <laughs> you know, like that's different and that's not something you can totally pick up on their voice. Uh -huh. So if I'll know if I kind of need to hammer home a little bit more because I'm like, I'm looking at them, you know, I'll know if they're with me. They're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Or, okay, you know, like, yeah, I don't really know type of thing. So if they're like, yeah, I don't really know. I'm like, okay. What? And then if, if I'm getting those kind of vibes where they're saying, okay, but I know they're not 100% on board, I'm just like, which one of those bottom two do you want to start with? Mm-hmm and then let them pick one and then go from there. What percentage of your presentations are you doing over Zoom instead of the phone? I mean, I try to do 100% of them over Zoom. I mean, obviously there's a lot of old people out there that can't mm -hmm. hop on Zoom. So, um, but that's something too, like you have to have control in all things. So when I'm dialing, I don't let them decide whether or not we're like doing an appointment on Zoom. So if they're like 55 or older, I'll ask, have you ever done any Zoom meetings? If they say no, then I say we're gonna do it over the phone. So I don't like give them the option. If they say yes, we're doing it on Zoom. And even like, I've had like 85 year old people that I walk through hopping on Zoom. So mm -hmm. like, don't worry about, if you have a young person, like dude, young people all the time will be like, well, you know, I'm not gonna do Zoom. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, actually we are gonna do Zoom. We have to do it on Zoom. <laughs> or they'll be like, oh, well I don't have the app. I'm like, oh, no worries, click that link. It'll download the app. Or they're like, I don't have Wi-Fi. I'm like, oh, you have a smartphone, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, we're good. <laughs> you don't need Wi-Fi. It's just a bunch of like excuses, like, you know, you're either selling or you're being sold. So are they selling you or are you selling them? Right? And you prefer this method like to book the appointment and to do it through Zoom rather than like, having like one call closes? I personally do. Yes. Uh, the reason that is is because like for my schedule, like I, I kind of need to know when am I working with agents? When am I running appointments? Yeah. So like it really helps me be very structured with when exactly I'm in appointments and when exactly I'm like working with agents or doing anything else. Okay. Um, I mean, as a new agent, I probably would try to one call close stuff. It just makes a lot more sense on paper. Like you already have them on the phone. Why let them off the phone? Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you've already got them on the phone and they have the time, you know, so, but okay. either way it works. Like I have my agents do it the way that I do it because I wholeheartedly believe that that works and that's what I do every day. Kind of like call like Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of thing, schedule. Yeah. Like Tuesday, so Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. Call in and book in same day next day. So yeah. priority is same day. We book next day if we have to. If it's two days out, it doesn't count as an appointment um, because people tend to forget. Yeah. Um, so book in same day next day. So yeah. And do you recommend like when you're doing those, like you use Zoom, but like what about like Google Calendar and then like creating like a Google Meet? Yeah, Google that? Google Meet's the same thing. Sometimes I do FaceTime. It doesn't have to be Zoom. Okay. I just like being able to see them. You can see them on Google. You know? Right, right. Yeah, and I know Google Meet's easier, but I don't like change. So I've been doing Zoom for so long. Zoom has made me so much money that I hate to think about like leaving Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like Google Meet is a lot I easier. Like there's, there's already a, a link built in. Because like to me, I guess like, um, and this is probably like something that I would do like whenever that time comes is, okay, you know, when we're getting all the details to schedule that appointment, you know, pull out your calendar, how do you schedule like, your appointments, let's go ahead, actually let me go ahead and text you or email you a Google Meet and what by, it's going to go ahead and go straight on your calendar, it, Google Meet already like sets up the reminder yeah. and stuff like that, so, it, um, I just didn't know, you know if there was a, like a reason why like you went through Zoom and stuff. But Honestly, I don't think I knew what Google Meet was when I started doing Zoom appointments, fair. I what Zoom <laughs> was. I do feel like Zoom has like a professional connotation about it, like, mm -hmm it is the professional one, you know? Yeah. Where if you're like, hey, let's hop on Discord, like that's like for the game and stuff, and it's like, all right, cool. So like Zoom does seem a little bit more professional. I don't know if that would actually help or not. It probably wouldn't, but Google Me would be fine. I know okay. people who do Google Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you're very assumptive and you're like, no, like we are gonna do Zoom or like that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously like assumption is part of it. Do you ever like scare people away being over assumptive or like kind of like you said, sales can be aggressive. Do you ever like scare people away just really taking control like that? Or uh, I guess what is your experience? So yeah, that's actually a really good question. So the entire like sales process is just a battle for control. You want them to make a buying decision. They want to never make a buying decision and think about it forever. Right? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a pansy mindset to be like, well, if I can't have control, I'll just let them have control and, and you know, we'll do the appointment anyway, right? Like, whatever, you know, I'll just, I guess I'll just do it. If you, if you don't have control, you're not, you're not going to, they're never going to make a buying decision. So yes, I absolutely, I'll scare some people away by, you know, by being over controlling because those people, they're the people that aren't going to let me take control. And if they're not going to let me take control, I'm never going to close them. So those people that you are going to scare away by being too controlling are the people that you're not going to sell anyway because they want to be in control. There are some people that like, like you guys, some of you are those kind of people where you're just not going to let somebody else take control and that's fine. Don't spend your time with those people, you know, scare them away as quickly as you possibly can. Dude, I used to spend, um, if you guys, if any of you guys have been in sales for a while, like y'all understand this, I'm not a racist, I promise, but Indians. The hardest people in the world to sell. Okay, yeah. if you've ever like tried to sell, no, 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 no. Yeah, now nowadays, I kid you not, bro. If I see a Patel or a Dev or whatever on my lead call, I'm like, I already mar pre-market red. I don't even call it. Wow. Um, Send it the book. But I used to be like, I'm going to sell this one. He's going to buy, and they would never make a buying decision. They would never let me take control. So now I know and I understand. Okay, if I sit with a hundred of them, I might close one. Whereas, whereas if I sit with a hundred other people, I'm closing 62. Mm -hmm. So why would I spend someone with a 1% a chance of potentially selling them versus people that have a 62% chance of selling them? It's the same thing. Like, you know, don't, if they're not going to let you take control, don't spend any time with them. Because you're, you're ne they're never going to make a buying decision. Yeah. And is, is that in sales or is that with one or two? <laughs> I'm married, so you know it's uh, no comment there. Um, all right. So, um, if you guys have any other questions, raise your hands or whatever. I'll, I'll get to them. Uh, last one. I was just yeah. follow up on the last question. When you're taking sensitive info, are you just sandwiching it in with like the date of birth and the address and stuff like that? No. I mean, I, it, like it's it's another one of those things where like. Um, 
it, you know, if you're controlling, if you're comfortable and confident, they're going to be comfortable and confident giving it to you. Mm -hmm. So I don't ask for their social until the very end of the first application page. Like that's the last thing that I ask for. Oh. Um, and I just basically what I do, and I, I never, I haven't had anyone in over a year and a half not want to give me their social. Um, I've had someone say, well, I don't know if I want to give that to you, and then I'll, I'll show you what I do, and we get through it. So I just basically say, hey, in a minute, I'm going to send you a text. What's your name? Ben. Ben. I'm going to send you a text here in a minute with a six-digit code. I'll have you read that to me. That just lets them check your prescription history and make sure you didn't, like, break out of prison. And then I kind of chuckle. Mm -hmm. They laugh, too. And I'm like, um, so your social is what they'll use to check that stuff. Go ahead with your social. And then they give me their social. If I have someone who's like, well, I don't want to give you my social. Again, same concept. We don't want to spend five minutes to tell them that we're legit and we're this super cool person that's never going to mishandle their information. We just kind of want to like go, you know, get past it as briefly as possible. I, I kind of chuckle a little bit like, oh, that's kind of funny. I'd be like, oh, okay, now I gotcha. I, I completely understand. But Ben, they're not going to take my word for it or your word for it that you're healthy. They just have to have something to verify that by. That's all that they use that for. So go ahead with your social, please. Oh. Just quick. They don't take my word for it or your word for it that they're healthy, that you're healthy. They have to have something to verify that by. On Zoom, do you ever share your screens? Yeah, I, I don't like, you guys probably text your state license or send yeah. your digital business card. I just screen share that stuff. What about, and so like, if someone doesn't want to give their social or banking info, like I've done it a couple times where I've used Crank Wheel. It's mm -hmm. like Zoom without the webcam. Yeah. Um, and I'll actually, just screen share the application, be like, hey, this is where I'm putting that information. Like, do you do that with Zoom sometimes, if they're really? If you have you control, know. you're never gonna have to do that, but yes, if I have to do that, I will. Again, if you're getting to the point to where you feel like you have to screen share your screen to let them see, then you know you, you probably don't have control, so there's probably a, a variety of things that have gone wrong up mm -hmm. to that point that mm -hmm. you didn't do, but I've had to do that one time, and I did not sell it because I did not have control. <laughs> so, um, again, if you're confident, comfortable, in control, most of the time people follow suit um, for the most part. Um, okay, let's let's talk about like dealing with young people. I just want to kind of go through like a couple different scenarios. So one mistake that a lot of people make, um, you know, when talking with like young single people, obviously like you and I in this room, like we understand the value of life insurance or mortgage protection. We understand what all it can get you cash value, living benefits, cash back, death benefit. You know, there's a lot of different things that can actually benefit you. Um, and so sometimes we try to make people think what we value is valuable to them. Okay, that's not the case. Like you and I, me and Jonah, we don't value the same things. Like we just don't. We're different people. Me and Ben, we're not going to value the same exact thing. So if in my sales process I find myself trying to convince Ben that what's valuable to me is valuable to him, He's tuned me out. He's not listening because he doesn't feel it's valuable. So he's not going to listen to me. So when we're sitting with young people, I used to try to help them understand that death benefit is awesome. Your family's <laughs> going to get a paid off house. And after a few people being like, you know, I don't really care what happens with the house if I die. I started saying, you know what? I don't really care what happens to the house if you die. No one's homeless. No one's living in it. And what that does, that saying that line helps them understand, I value what you value. I'm not trying to get you something that you don't care about. And then I have their attention. Whereas if I spend four or five minutes trying to get them to understand, dude, this death benefit is the best thing ever. You know, it's tax free and all this stuff. Like they don't care. And then when I talk about when I would talk about things they do care about, cash value, living benefits, those sorts of things. Then they already tuned me out and they're not listening. So I spent so long talking about things that they didn't care about that once I actually got to the things they would care about, they're already not listening. So when I'm sitting with young people, I'm like, Ben, um, I'm sure you don't really care too much what happens with the home if you die, but do you know who you want the home to go to if you pass away? Most of the time, like, Mom. Mom? Mom? Yeah. Okay, cool. If they say mom, then I know they really don't care. If they're, <laughs> their parents, then I know they really haven't thought about it. Right. So I do ask that question, though, because sometimes you'll find a young person who's like, oh, my little brother, I really want to take care of him. <laughs> okay, cool. Like, that's good. Like, he feels like that's valuable, and now I know that. But most of the time, they're like, ah, oh, you know, probably parents. I don't know. I'm like, cool, yeah, I know that's not your number one concern. And I say, that's not why people get mortgage protection. That's life insurance. Life insurance is for other people, Ben. Mortgage protection is actually for you. And I have their attention. They're like, oh, it's for me, huh? Oh, you don't care about other people. Like, I don't care about other people. Huh? Cool. Like, what are you going to say? Right? And it helps them understand. Now I have their attention. Now they're listening to me. Um, and then I'll talk about the living benefits, 
cash back, cash value, whatever product you're showing them, and they're listening to me the entire time. Um, and guys, by the way, all these changes that I've made, I'm able to make them because I say the same thing every time. So I would say the same thing every time. It wouldn't work 20 times in a row. So then I would look back and say, what do I need to change? And then that, you know, by doing that process over and over and over again, now I have a sales process process that everything's really strong. Everything works really well. But if you're changing your your script every time, you're never going to know. You're never going to get a strong sales process. Um, so that's what I do with younger people um, is I'm just like, hey, I don't, I don't care about what you don't care about. Um, even to the point where I used to I used to say, hey, you know, I'm sure you're not too concerned about the death benefit, right? But then I would talk about, hey, it's tax-free. It always pays out 300000 no matter what. And if you move, it goes with you. <clears throat> and since I talked about those right after I talked about the death benefit, they, like, associated all those things with the death benefit. So now I just say death. Yeah, I just, hey, I don't, you know, I know you don't care about the death benefit. And I go immediately to the things that they might care about, living benefits, cash value. And then I'll circle back around to tax-free, you know, you know, it, it's not like it's just for this house. You keep it if you move, and it always pays out the same amount no matter what. And I say that at the end, right? So there's obviously steps there with that. But any questions about like, those situations? That's young single people. Um, sometimes old single people that also might not care about. Um, what about <clears throat> old people that basically did a reverse mortgage and they're convinced that it's the bee's knees, right? You guys staying on earth. But what would you say to somebody like that? Yeah. I'd be like, okay, so are you making a mortgage payment? Oh, you're, you're role yeah, yeah, playing. I'm gonna just role play with you because oh, this is exactly uh, what I do with the client. If they're like in love with their reverse mortgage, they're like, yeah, you know, they're gonna give my house to the family when I die. I'm like, okay, are you making a mortgage payment? No. Okay, and you think that they're gonna give the home to your family when you die? Yes. But let, let me get this right you're not paying the bank any money. No. So what's in it for the bank? I don't know. Okay, I'm just trying to get them to think. Oh. You're stupid. You think that the bank's going to give away the money for free and give that like, I'm like, okay, the bank is obviously there to make money. So they're not going to give the home to your family when you die. They're not making a more, they're not making you make a mortgage payment right now so they can immediately take over the house when you die. It's not that there's not a mortgage payment. What's your name? Jalil. Uh, Jalil. It's not that there's not a mortgage payment. There is one. It's just coming out of the equity of your house. So when you die, your family will have to make mortgage payments. If they miss one with the reverse mortgage, then the bank will immediately take the home. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, and then I'm talking about equity protection, you know, cover the mortgage payments for six months, 10 months, a year after you die. So your family actually does have time to sell the home because if they don't make a mortgage payment, the bank's taking the house. The bank is not a charity. They want their money and they're going to get it. And just trying to help them understand like the bank's not on their side. Now, one thing that I think is important is you don't want to seem like you're attacking their loan officer, right? Because some people really do like their loan officers. They trust them. Some loan officers are really great people. I'm sure some loan officers are terrible people too. Just like some life insurance people are terrible people, right? And some of us are great people. Um, but I, I always make the distinction of, look, it's not that your loan officer is a bad person. It's just that's the way the banks work. They need their money. And I try to make sure I establish that line because, again, they've been working with their loan officer. If they did a reverse mortgage, they've probably been working with them for more than just two weeks. So they're going to trust their opinion over my opinion. Um, but that's what I would do. Ask them a few questions. Try to get them to think because, again, if I just tell them something, it's not the same as them thinking it themselves. So I'll ask them a few questions, get them to think, and then, you know, kind of go from there, see where I need to go. Just so you guys know, though, like uh, a reverse mortgage, who does not know what a reverse mortgage is? Anybody not know? Okay, all right. So a reverse mortgage is you have to be like a certain age to qualify. If you have at least 50% equity in your house, so let's say your home's worth 200 and you owe 100, the bank will let you do a reverse mortgage where you don't make any mortgage payments. But when you die, the, the house basically goes to them. Again, the mortgage payments come out of the equity of your house. So if you have 100,000 equity and the mortgage payment is 1,000, then you're like, you're like having, you know, your equity is like going down in the house, basically. Um, some reverse mortgages are structured when I say some. Very few of them are structured where the family actually will have six months. I've only ran into one in my three and a half years where it was legitimately structured like that and the client knew that. Every, every, all the other ones are structured so that way, you know, the bank basically just assumes the loan, uh, assumes the house when they're gone. But, you know, that's the reverse mortgage thing. 
Um, all right, cool. So let's uh, talk about uh, people with, uh, let's just talk about the people with money, right? So we have older people, 50, 55, 60, getting close to retirement age. They've already got a lot of money, right? Maybe they've got half a million dollars of life insurance, half a million dollars in a 401k. Their home's worth 300,000, and let's say they've got half a million dollars of equity in the house. So their home's worth 800. That can be a very intimidating situation to try to go into because you're like, dude, they're already really well set up. They've got life insurance, you know, they've got a really good 401k, they already have a lot of equity in their house. And um, one thing that I think it, it, the one thing that I think is funny is we we always assume these people aren't going to want it because they're already set up well versus people who aren't set up well are going to want it because they really need it. And I'm going to help you guys understand something here real quick. So there's such a thing as chronic bad decision makers and chronic good decision makers, right? There's people, y'all y'all have friends, y'all have family members, that every decision they make in their life is a poor decision. And no matter how much life coaching, life advice, how much money you throw at them, they're never going to make a good decision, right? So a lot of times at, when we're talking about mortgage protection, we'll key in on those people who really, really, really need it. And we'll try to be like, hey, these people really need it. When sometimes they're chronic bad decision makers. And we think that the people who are really well set up, who are chronic good decision makers, aren't really going to want it. You should flip that mindset because the people who have made good decisions are probably going to want to make another good decision. And mortgage protection is a good decision. So don't be scared by that. You're sitting with somebody who understands the value of being in a good position and like and having that comfortability. So that's like a level there like that's honestly kind of easier to sell a lot of times than somebody who really does need it cuz the the reason that they really do need it is cuz they make bad decisions. So it's like maybe all of a sudden they're going to make a good decision, but more than likely they're probably not, right? So but um so I'm going to get down to the financial inventory. Number one, don't let anything that they say, no matter how wild or ridiculous, change your tone. So if they're like, I have $6.78 million in my 401k, don't be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. Or, oh, dang. You know, like, you're like, oh, man. Like, in your head, you can be like, oh, dang, that's a lot of money. But don't say it like that out loud. You need to be unfazed. You need to be like, I sit with people like this all the time. The mentality needs to be, I help people like this all the time. This is any other client that I'm working with. Because if they feel like you're phased and you're intimidated by them, dude, they're, they're in the driver's seat. They're in control. So they're like, I have $6.7 million in, in a 401k. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm assuming you're saving that for retirement, right? Like I almost sound like bored, <laughs> not excited by that at all, right? Okay, that's kind of how you want to sound. Don't let it phase you. Don't let it bother you. Like how much life insurance do you have? I have half a million. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm assuming we got that, you know, to replace your income if you die, right? They're like, yeah, okay. I will say with people that are like 50 and plus, I typically ask when does your life insurance expire, especially if they have money because they probably actually know. Uh, but the reason that I ask that is because like I want to know if they know it's a term or not. Sometimes I, I, if I feel like I don't need to tackle their life insurance head on, I, I won't. Um, but I don't want to have to, again, because they're working with an insurance person that they've worked with for several years. They're going to trust them over me. So if I don't have to try to you know, battle that head on, I'm not going to. I'm going to try to like just kind of get around it. So spend it. Hey, you got that to replace your income if you died, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, so then we, once I get all the way through the financial inventory, I know, hey, they're planning on dying in this house and they want to have it paid off by the time they retire. Let's say they, they're 55 years old. They have a 30-year mortgage. I would have asked, hey, are you guys paying extra towards the mortgage you know, to get it paid off early? They'd say, yes, we want to have it paid off by the time we retire at 67 years old. Okay, so they've got 12 years. And in this scenario, maybe the mortgage is like $2,000 a month, and they're both making 6000 So they've got really good income, $12,000 a month. You guys are going to run into this all the time. Um, and when I say all the time, you're going to run into this you know, fairly often, a couple times a month. Um, so what we're going to do... What I used to do, again, having a consistent sales process will teach you what you need to change. What I used to do is I used to like kind of try to paint a picture like, hey, if you die tomorrow or if you can't work tomorrow, the world's falling down. Your family's going to lose the house. Everything's going to burn and crumble. All your years of hard work. When in reality, that's not the case. They've got a lot of money. They're going to be okay either way. They could just pull from their 401k and pay off their mortgage if they had to. Is that ideal? No. But they could if they had to. So... 
instead of trying to make them think that you know their position is terrible and you know everything everything's gonna crumble I say hey now you guys are already set up really well you know you're on your way to retiring with a paid off home worth almost a million dollars plenty of money in your 401k retiring really well so congrats to you guys on that. Uh, now I'm assuming you guys are depending on your incomes, you know, to aggressively pay off that mortgage and try to get it paid off as quick as possible. They're like, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. That's exactly what we're doing. And I'm kind of repeating that to them to make sure they understand that I'm on your page. Um, and then I'm just gonna be like, okay, so really the only thing, Ben, that could come between you and retiring the way that you want to is just some sort of like major medical issue. Because uh, now not only are you losing out on $6,000 a month, but the average out-of-pocket cost just for having cancer is $83,000. And that's after healthcare. So a lot of people are having to pull from retirement to try to pay that off. Now we have half the income. We're having to pull out of retirement early you know, to either pay off the home, and now we're not retiring the way that you want to. So what this mortgage protection is going to do, and then I'm talking about death benefit, living benefits, you know, get cancer real sick, can't work, you know, home is paid off, boom, we're retiring the way that we want to. This serves your needs. Um, and so don't be intimidated by that situation at all. It's really easy to see that. I, I remember I, I had, um, uh, back when we were in person, um, there's nothing like being in person. If you guys can, you should buy some leads that are like in your neighborhood and you should like try to go out there in person because it's just fun. Um, and there's like an energy that gets transferred. If I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably done like in-person sales at one point or another. Like it, it's just fun. There's like an energy that gets transferred that's pretty awesome. But I remember I sat with this one guy. He was a painter. He owned his own business, him and his wife. And he, uh, he didn't sit down at the table. Um, and he, he sat like this uh, off by his kitchen counter the entire time. Had his arms crossed. He just answered the questions. One, one or two were answers. Yes, 500,000. Yeah, we want to pay it off by the time we retire. That's that's what he was doing the entire time, leaving out his kitchen counter. And so I'm like trying to crack a couple jokes, you know, just like try to get him to loosen up, lighten up a little bit. His wife loved me. He didn't love me, right? So I was fighting this battle the whole time, try, you know, trying to get him just to like loosen up a little bit. Um, and the problem was he had sat with other agents before, like because they wanted something, but everybody had tried to like convince them that, if something happened to them, they were gonna. His wife was gonna lose the house, which was never gonna be the case. There was no way she would have to be an idiot to lose that house if something happened to him. Most of the income was from him, and so he was thinking that that's what I was gonna try to do. So once I said, "Look, you guys are on your way to retiring really well with a paid-off home, plenty of money in a 401k. You guys got any big plans? You know, for a vacation retirement?" And he told me, "Yeah, we're gonna go to Europe. You know, we never got to do that for our honeymoon. You know, we really want to do that." And then he starts opening up to me. Because he understands, like, hey, I'm on the same page. I'm not going to try to convince you to get something that you feel like you don't need, you don't want, or you don't value. And then all of a sudden, I walk out of there with, like, literally, they pay me, like, $983 a month. And I got paid almost $12,000 on that sale from a guy um, that had a ton of money. Uh, by all intents and purposes, on paper, you would look at that and think he doesn't need this. But... I was sitting with a qualified buyer. He already had three life insurance policies. The odds that that person buys mortgage protection versus a person that has never had life insurance, again, we need to flip our mindset on this. If they've never bought life insurance before, the odds that they buy mortgage protection are actually lower versus someone who's a qualified buyer, someone who already has life insurance, understands the value, the needs, the purposes, and is already committed to life insurance. That's your person. They already have it. They know they need it. They know they want it. They're already spending money on it. They value it, right? So we need to flip our mindsets a little bit. Um, and so when you're sitting with people that have money, don't be intimidated. Also, don't try, to, don't try to convince them of something that's not true. So again, the tendency is to be like, look, your wife's going to lose the home. Your kids are not going to have a father. They're not going to remember you. There's no legacy. Everything's terrible, right? But that's not the case. If that's not the case, don't try to convince them of that. Butter them up. Make them feel good. Get their guard down. Um, don't be fake, because people can tell when you're fake. But compliment them on how hard they've worked, you know, and, and things like that. And then they'll let the guard down, and then you can tell them how you can help them. Any questions about those situations? Um, have you ever sat down with anyone and you're just like, yeah, you don't need this. And, like, you just don't get them anything. Or do you assume everybody that is in front of you on an appointment is, yeah. like, there for a reason? The only people I've ever done that with are like 
old frail old ladies that really don't need it and they don't have that much money and I'm not gonna like take money off, uh, I'm not gonna take food off of their table to have them buy mortgage protection if I really feel like they don't need it um, I haven't done that in quite a while but yeah I mean I, I've done that before when it's when that's the best thing for the client yes that's what I tell them. oftentimes okay. it's not the best thing for the client but you know sometimes sometimes it is and it's a little so that's, old lady. that's rare yeah barely that's ever rare. Rare. Typically, 99% of the time, it's, yeah. it's not like it's not a question of if they need it or not. Like, oh, I hope they need life insurance. I wish they would have filled out a form requesting it. It's not like you cold knocked them. It's yeah. simply what makes the most sense. Um, on the topic too of people who are pretty well off, um, you mentioned like the living benefits and stuff. What about somebody who's older, unhealthy, but they have everything set up for retirement? They have insurance. Are you pitching an equity protection to them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So. Um, so his question is if they can't get living benefits, so, you know, uh, I can't get them living benefits, but they already have life insurance. They're already pretty well set up. Um, one thing that's like, it's makes a lot of sense to do is be like, Oh, how much are you paying for your hundred thousand dollars of life insurance? You know, sometimes a lot of people that aren't healthy, they're paying a good bit of money for their life insurance. Um, and they're only going to get a hundred thousand. So if they have a lot of money, they probably have a lot of equity in the house. So I'd be like, hey, what we're going to do with this equity protection, you're paying $150 a month for $100,000 of life insurance. You have $500,000 of equity or $200,000 of equity, whatever the number is. You have $200,000 of equity. We're going to use the, we're going to leverage the insurance company's money. We're going to pay $60 a month to get your kids $250 or I try to make it as sound as good as possible, a quarter million dollars of value just spending $62 a month. If we were going to do that with life insurance, we'd have to spend, you know, double whatever they're paying right now, you know, and that concept makes a lot of sense to people. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of what I would do. I try to make sure that they view it as something different than life insurance. So, oh, that's to go to your family when you die. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then when I'm talking about the mortgage protection, this is specifically for the mortgage. I'm not going to volunteer the information that this is just life insurance, right? I want them to see it kind of as being different. I got this yesterday. Like, I was like two applications in. They wanted to start off pitching and I kind of wanted to switch the whole life, but they were not like, they didn't want that. Would okay. you like to set yourself up for like a whole life property protection? Before you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I call it, sometimes you have to slap people in, in the face with reality. Okay. Do it in a nice way, right? So like I, I had this guy yesterday who was 72 years old. He had had... Uh, he had two stints put in back in 2022 and he owed like a hundred thousand on his house he was like yeah i really want my home to be paid off so i i um, i showed him equity protection kind of what i do is i'm like hey you don't really there's no reason to pay off the home when you die no one's living in the house with you so there's no reason to spend that kind of money however what you do have is this amount of equity i get to the end i show him the numbers he's like wow i really want my home paid off and this is kind of expensive and i was like well i literally i said well you're not 30 and healthy anymore and that's it. And then I kind of chuckled and he kind of laughed. He's like, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. So sometimes you got to like slap people in the face with the reality. One time uh, we, I, there was a lock in here. We had an agent, Malak, who was kind of going through the same thing. She was an older lady, AIG only. If y'all don't know what that means, that means she's basically dying. <laughs> she's about to die. Um, not really. She wasn't actually really about to die. Okay. Um, but she was you know, very unhealthy. The only one carrier would take her. They don't pay out the coverage for two years. And... She kept saying, well, I want the whole home paid off. She had like no money. So there was no way she was going to pay. To, she was going to pay enough money to pay off the house. She's like, uh, she was 78 years old. So I'm like, Malak, give me the phone. So I got on the phone with her. I'm like, hey, my name's Ryan, whatever. I'm senior underwriter, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I'm like, okay, can I ask you a couple questions? She's like, yeah, go ahead. I'm like, all right. Like, do you know the average life expectancy nowadays? She was like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, all right, it's 79. And I said, how old are you? She's like, 78. I'm like, okay. All right. And you have congestive heart failure? She's like, right. I'm like, okay, that means your heart is failing. She's like, yes. I'm like, okay. I was like, all right. Um, so you owe $200,000 on your house. Let me ask you, if you were going to give somebody in your position $200,000 if they died, how much money a month would you want them to pay you in order to make it worth it? She's like, well, I don't know. It'd probably have to be a lot. And I was like, exactly. I was like, and unfortunately, I said, unfortunately, no insurance company is going to give you this coverage. There's only one insurance company in the entire state that will offer you coverage. 
And then I'll usually try to like tell a little bit of a, say something kind of funny or lighthearted to like lighten the tension. So I was like, I was like, I was like, you know what my dream car is? She's like, no. I'm like, it's a Bugatti. And I was like, do you think I have money for a Bugatti? She's like, probably not. I'm like, no, I don't. But I didn't walk to work today either. I drove my wife's old beater car from college. It's a 2008 Dodge Avenger with the bumper hanging off. Because I got to have something. It's not what I want, but it'll get me to work. And I don't have to walk for four hours to work in the morning. And then I'm like, if you don't have this coverage, your family will lose the house. Because that legitimately was the case for her. I was like, so I think we can both agree. And so she started saying, well, you know, like, what if, you know, if I put this in savings, I could, you know, if I live uh, X amount of years, I'll have this amount put into savings, you know, and I don't want to get five years in and then I didn't need this. And so I was like, I was like, ma'am, I completely understand that. I was like, I think we, I think you could agree that if a year from now, or no, this is what it was. She was, she was like, well, it doesn't cover for me for two years. So if I die next year, like nothing pays out. And I was like, yeah. You're right. Nothing will. So sometimes we try to like, like we try to like immediately convince them that it's the best thing in the world. People don't want that. If people are right, tell them that they're right. So it's like, yeah, you're right. It is only going to pay out, and it's not going to help your family. But I think we can both agree. I literally got like a real dark and I was like, I think we can both agree. If a year from now you pass away and you're looking down from heaven, you'll be glad you tried to take care of your family. <laughs> Would you agree? She's That's like, fine. Yeah. Like all right. Which one do you want to do, right? So sometimes, like, in those situations, I call it slapping them in the face with reality. Sometimes it takes more than one time. Sometimes it just takes the one time. Sometimes it's like, sometimes they're like, well, I want to cover the full mortgage. And you can say something dumb, and I wish I was in the NBA. <laughs> it's not a thing, though. It's not reality, right? Like, in that, like, people get those. People get that. Like, they don't get the insurance lingo. So don't go on a 20-minute tantrum about how underwriting cheat sheets, stints, and last six months, blah, 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 actuarial tables. People don't know what that means, but they understand that you want something that you cannot have and it is not a realistic possibility. Like if you just use something that's really simple, they will understand that. It will resonate with them. And it kind of like, it helps humanize you and it helps make you a real person versus just like an insurance person, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you, big dog. Yes, I'll be in my office running appointments if y'all want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Point. Well, there's a three month lead, a year lead. Uh, I've closed 13 year old what? leads. Would I recommend closing 13 year old leads? Heck no, they suck. It's terrible. But I've closed them and I've written business off them. So at the end of the day, I mean, A, call us, but B, is you simply just need to get what's available. Because leads are the lifeblood of this business. And the reason you're getting frustrated is you Dude, you're just not getting enough leads. Because you because I guarantee you if you were getting a consistent lead flow and you had your lead you had your leads automated and it was a discipline, you wouldn't have a choice but to go for it. Like you're you would be hitting your numbers because you just spent two grand on leads this week. So you're like, dude, I gotta work these because I was somebody else is gonna call them. And then you'd be writing ten grand. So I think A just just making non negotiables with yourself. Where it's not if I feel like it, it's, this is what I'm gonna to do today, this is how many dials I'm gonna make, this is how many people I'm gonna to talk to or present to, and I'm not leaving the office until I do this. And I think really, um, I mean, let me ask, why'd you get your insurance license? Uh, I mean, just try to get out of the car dealer, <laughs> to be honest. Was, uh, I felt like there was no ceiling here, no. Okay. Did you enjoy selling cars? Somewhat. <laughs> Do you want to sell cars long term? No. Do you want to go back to selling cars? No. That was that was a de- that last one was a definite no. No. <laughs> well, bro, if you don't if you don't keep getting more leads, you're, you're gonna go back to selling cars. So think about that. Like think about what the alternative is. And that was that was because that's what I thought about. That was for me. It's like, dude, if I didn't if this business didn't work out, I was gonna go back home. And I would. And my parents. A lot. Some of you guys know my story where. Dude, my parents were borderline disowned for like moving to Chicago. They're like, don't move to Chicago, it's a murder city. You're not gonna be successful, you're gonna fail, you're gonna come back home, you have to be a millionaire to live down. Like there's all these all these negative all this negative talk and this negative energy portrayed on me. So I'm like, dude, I'm leaving. Peace. And that was the best decision I ever made. Getting out of my hometown was the best thing I was the best decision I ever made, and I can say for a fact. 
I would not be successful right now if I would have stayed in my hometown around my old friend group. Where are you from? South Dakota. Sioux Falls. So like Sioux who? Yeah. What? <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Sioux Falls boys? South, oh, they're in the other room. South Dakota. Yeah, dude. It's just like middle of nowhere. It's just yeah. no, no one has I was any. Saying, what's in South Dakota? No goals, no aspirations. <laughs> No, they're just small minded. You grow up small on minded farm? individuals, yes. Yeah. Yes. Which I that was where I learned my work ethic from. So I'm mm -hmm. thankful for that. But you have to think about what's the alternative. And that was my why. That was a pretty dang good why. I was like, I would rather die than <laughs> go back to that. Fuck that. So i just I simply did what it what I needed to do and took the took the emotion out of it. So I hope that was helpful. Did that answer your question though? Yeah. But Long story short, you just need more leads. It's typically, it's typically the answer to a lot of problems. How to reduce complacency? Letting my foot off the gas when I feel like I made that day what I wanted to. Do you have bigger goals than where you're at now? Yeah. I mean, pretty much the same thing as what I said to Joe. Right. Let's um, talk to, let's think about why, why am I doing this? What do I want to do over the next? But because if it's just a financial goal, you guys are all going to be pretty complacent pretty dang quick because you can make money here like that and as soon as you have you know it's different for everybody ten hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars in your bank account it's it's a different number but every if it, you only motivated by finances that number is different for everybody but once you hit that you're gonna let your foot off the gas have a bigger why than yourself yeah i was just reading patrick for david's book choose your enemies wisely and he was talking about that and he said that once he sold his his insurance company to Integrity for two hundred and fifty million dollars, a quarter billion dollars, quarter billion with a B, and he had that money in his account, he said, "Dude, nothing changed." He said, "I was still in the office that Saturday, <coughs> worth a bunch more money, had a bunch more money, but I'm not motivated financially. So why does it matter? I still continue to show up, still is in the office." And he said, "I didn't even know if I would keep showing up until I had that money deposited, but." So, you know, I just love what I do, and I love helping people, and I love, I love business. Um, but also, what really, what really helped me, and you can probably test this too, Turner, dude, you're bringing on some studs. I mean, you got some studs in this room, so you have people looking up to you. And one, one of the, one thing that somebody told me when I was first starting out, and you guys may have heard this, it's been repeated a few times now, where your agents are going to do about half of what you do. So. If you want your agents to write 20 grand, we need to write 40. And I took that to heart. I was like, well, dude, I want my agents to write 50, so I'm gonna write 100. <laughs> but it's different, it's whatever whatever the case may be, but if your agents see you, see you slack off and become complacent, they're gonna do the same. You can't win for that. So I think it's important to, and what I really don't wanna drift away from or get complacent in is leading from the front. Because that was my, that was my last insurance company. And that was why I left, where, Dude, is like the district manager. Dude, he wasn't managing <coughs> shit. I would call him and either be on his boat or sitting at his house watching TV. <laughs> now, he was never in the office. Couldn't get a hold of the guy. When I could get a hold of the guy, well, dude, he wouldn't have an answer for me because he hasn't sold a freaking insurance policy in nine years and didn't know what the heck I was even talking about. And that's, that's demotivating. When you're grinding in the field and your, men, your quote unquote mentor is just jacking off somewhere, not doing shit, not working. <laughs> so I never want us to want our organization to get to that point. It starts with once you guys close a few policies, once you get some momentum, you, we have the spreadsheet. You type in COPD, Command F. All right, COPD. It looks like American Home Life. All right, cool. Whatever, whatever their health situation may be. But you know, we also set those clients where they're on 13 medications, and you're googling them, and they have all these health conditions. You're like, oh shoot, I don't know what to do. Dude, I mean, just on, like I said, JP, whoever your mentor is, Malad, Chris, myself, Claudia, like there's never gonna, again, there's never gonna be a situation where you're with a client and you're not gonna be able to receive help. So I think you as a brand new agent that's only been doing this week, make sure you're taking the full financial inventory because don't call anybody before you fully fill it out. If you call them, it's, we're not gonna be able to help you because we don't know their situation, but fill the thing out. First of all, unmute in the live dials because it's a lot, for me as a, as a mentor and a manager, it's a lot easier for somebody unmuted in the live dials, hey Jonah, and I'm always in the middle of something. Like, I'm never not doing something. So it's like, all right, cool, boom, 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 do this, this, and this. 
versus calling the phone. Typically, I'm on the phone <laughs> the majority of the time, so I got to hang up. Hey, dude, let me call you back. I need you to call me. Answer the phone. Hey, bro, what's good? Hey, so this, this, and this. Okay, sounds good. All right, you buy a click. It took three times, three to five times as long versus just a meeting on the Zoom. But between the Zoom, calling somebody in, or underwriting guides, it should be, I mean, it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy to get to the, the bottom of the solution. But make sure you have those saved. So underwriting guides, the general, you have the spreadsheet, right? The pinnacle yeah. spreadsheet? Cool. And then do you have the specific carrier saved? of their health conditions. So that would be, that's a super helpful tool as well. So you guys should all have that saved. The specific insurance company carriers. Save in your notes as well. Your, yeah, exactly. Your like, job is a medical underwriter. That's like. It, it, that's not even what we, something <laughs> we made up. That's your definition <laughs> with the insurance carrier. So yeah. So exactly what Derek said, I'm, that, that was a good point. Cause I just want to clarify. It's as a brand new agent, you've been doing this a week. That was the reason I asked, is like, yeah, you want to lean on other people, but you want to figure it out as quickly as possible. Because some of you guys, not to call any names, some of you guys have called me, and I'll just, I'll play dumb, I'll be honest. Where like, an agent will call me, and they've already closed, they've already been in this situation, they've called me about this exact situation three other times, they've had a few big months, like they've closed a significant amount of deals at this point, they know what they're doing. They'll be like, hey, so I'm sitting here with this person, they have this, and I'll know the answer, but I'll just be like, oh shoot, all right, well, what does the underwriting guy say? Oh, well, I didn't check it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's pull it up together. Let's see what it says. <laughs> okay. All right. What does it say on there? <laughs> oh, okay. That's gonna be that's gonna be mutual, Omaha. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Write a moo and let me know how that goes. So, like, it gets to a certain point where you gotta be somewhat self-sufficient. But and when you guys are new, we're here to help you. But we are, we love you guys. How to have a smooth appointment flow. And those like gaps, like where like it's just silent. Like, what are some like questions that like, you would ask? You know, just to like talk, like while you're filling out like the great day, or you know, like that kind of stuff. Keep shaking his head. I um, think. I mean, silence can be a good thing. Yeah. I, I mean, know. yes. I don't just fill through. things in. Oh, really? Yeah. I I love. I certain situations I love silence. Okay. Like if you guys have heard me close, I actually it was funny because I had an agent uh, a few months ago. I was, I was closing a policy and. He was like, he's like, dude, you're you're quiet for a lot of the, the process. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, why not? It's, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to keep talking the entire time. But everything you say, you want to say with intention. And also, I don't want there's there's zero dead space in my appointment process, where I don't uselessly build rapport, I don't uselessly ask questions, and I don't use, uselessly sit in silence at times. Like, if there's silence, it's either a, I'm filling out the application, I know that. Like, I'll tell the client, I'm like. Hey Mary, if, I, if I'm quiet, it's not because I hate you, I promise. I'm just filling this out. She's like, all right, great. Well, I'm just cooking dinner now, so no worries. Like, they don't, like, they, they don't want to talk for 39 minutes the entire time to you anyway. I don't want to talk to them for that long, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So that or else also leveraging silence as a sales, as a sales tactic as well is huge. So when I'm building the why, I want them to sit and perseverate in that and think about that. I'll ask them the question and I'll wait. And sometimes it'll be silence. Sometimes it'll get a little bit awkward. That's okay. I want to leverage silence to my advantage. And also, another example, building the why, or another example would be when you show them options. Dude, I'll have them write out three options. And sometimes, especially in the home, it'd get a little awkward. I'd sit there, <laughs> and they'd look at the piece of paper for two minutes and not say anything. I'd just do my thing. I'd just be on my iPad, typing away, not typing anything but preventing you just be busy or whatever and just wait for them to pick one because once you show them options and show them numbers the first person to talk with this just let them just leverage silence to your advantage don't be afraid of silence how to build rapport with the client was you yeah i mean that's pretty similar <laughs> sure um, so how many uh kinda, sorry uh, how long have you been here uh like a month and a half okay how many policies i think you've closed tell me something 28 or something. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I see you in the sock. Um, what was your, what's your, like, can you give me specifics on that? Yeah. So, really, kind of, kind of like John was saying, like, filling in dead space, like, when you're going through the app to, I don't know, like, keep them engaged, I guess. And I'll, I'll just ask, like, do you got any dogs or like kids? Just marry the, just marry the weather. Just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, basically, I mean, what we went over yesterday was, I mean, I'm not a big rapport guy, personally. I don't like rapport either, so I get it. I'm with you. But the just so you guys understand what we talked about earlier is there wants to very minimal rapport. Where if I build rapport in the beginning, it's, you know, like Buck said, hey, what do you do for work? Oh, for how long have you been doing that? Or how are you enjoying retirement so far, Jerry? Ha ha. Oh, I need someone to keep me busy. It's boring. Oh, yeah. Okay. Grandpa said the same thing. Whatever. You know, just... But if you're building rapport, it's two, three seconds. And then you're, you're staying on task. But the only time you really do build rapport, and what we went over yesterday, is after you get their information. Because this is a much different type of sale than other sales companies. Where, like, if you're selling... You know, doors and windows, home improvement products. Dude, that's a three-hour pitch. Or if you're selling solar, like, bro, you're doing an hour of rapport with the client before you even get into anything, where it's the opposite here. Because I made the mistake as a new agent of building too much rapport with the client, and then what I would do is I'd get friends on. Because <laughs> I would. Because, the, like, clients have a lot. It's a lot easier for them to say no to and tell you they need to think about it and say no to a friend than yeah. a professional. So, really, um... You build rapport in the end, and I feel like it's just just being personal, just small talk, you know? How long you guys been married? How long have you been in the home? Awesome. You guys live out in Jersey? Uh, how do you like Jersey? Awesome. How long have you been out there? I mean, there's a hundred different things, or what Gabe Erickson said, you know, just little one-liner jokes. Like, you'll you'll develop that, and you'll get more, and it'll feel more natural, and you get better at it as time goes on. Okay. Just to add something to that, um, I came from Doors for Solar and, you know, I was very rapport built, this and that, and I started at the same time with another agent who also came from Solar, and Turner might remember it, but we were on the live dial, so this kid uh, unmuted when he was first starting, and was just like, rapport, 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 like, oh, where do you guys live, oh, cool, I used to work there, I used to have the same job, this, that, and the other, and Turner texted me, he's like, this is a shit show right now, mm -hmm. and he was like, this is an absolute lay down, the person just took him off the phone, because he's like, I just wanted it, you know, I just wanted the product that we called about, we requested the information, I just wanted this, but like he almost sold him on not doing it because it was just too much talking, too much like it was too salesy. This isn't like a, this isn't like they're not getting this product because of you, like other sales jobs are getting it because it's an emotional sale and it's a logical sale for them. Like they need it. They don't like you building rapport. I, I'm a talker. Jonah knows I'm a talker. Anyone that knows me, I'm a talker. <laughs> when I do this, like 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 silence is like so powerful in this, just because like that's what builds the trust. Like I picture like I'm on the top floor of like a corporate building just yes. like you got i'm a slave that's how i feel like i'm just here to do what you ask me to do you know and if you're like doing all this rapport and stuff like i remember watching that first appointment i was like i'm never doing a report like that because i just saw like turner text me like he's blowing a layup right now <laughs> that was my that was like my first week and that's kind of for me as someone that does a lot of talk and that built that made all my money in the past from rapport it's like just don't <laughs> not only that i'm glad you brought that up but because you are a talker <laughs> and we, we, well, we've talked about this before. We've had many conversations in my office about exactly about this exact thing, and not only in regards to rapport, but simply talking in general, where less is more. Where just like when Ryan Koski was up here and every other guys were up here, dude. Anytime a client gives them a rebuttal, they're just acknowledged. We've got a couple words, two seconds. You know, a lot of times, as especially as a new agent. What happens is when, when we're new, we're nervous, and when we get nervous, we tend to talk too much. We tend to over talk and over share. Where it gets to a certain point where you do, you just gotta shut up. You just gotta shut up and help the client. Where the more, it's like the more you talk, the deeper and deeper of a hole you dig yourself. And it's just the only way to stop is just by simply stopping and being silent. So yeah, definitely, like, I, I would say be careful with that with everybody, because see, I've seen that with so many new agents, is they'll just, I'm like, dude, you could have closed that, but you said way too much. I, and even in the homes, when I was in the home, they'd be like, I'll give you guys an example. When I was in the homes, they'd be like, well, do you, do you need to make a decision today? I was like, yes. <laughs> I just look away. They'd be like, okay, well, we'll do that one. <laughs> <We'd> like, <laughs> you know? Versus like, yes, this is why I need to make a decision because this, this, and this, and blah, 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 and, and it's just, now you've just created more power to that objection. So again, any objection we always talk about is acknowledge, move on. No change in mood, no change in tonality. And think about how can I have, kind of what Gabe, what Gabe also talked about is how can I be, how can I have, how can I be intentional? How can I utilize my time the best? Because, I mean, just from my, the point of uh, a guy buying it, like the last time I signed up for insurance was my car insurance. I signed up for my car insurance, I gave them all my information, my banking information, 
in the car in traffic on the way to the office in seven minutes. And I was like, dude, I just need, I need this. Let's get this taken care of. Like, boom, boom, boom. Whatever, you know, whatever, like, can't be bothered. I didn't, I did not, I wanted, and the dude, the State Farm agent was like, he's like, oh, well, do you have a dog? And how's the weather? I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> just sign me up for the fucking car insurance. I didn't say it just like that, but that was what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, dude, I just need to get this taken care of. The same thing with clients. <laughs> So, all right. I mean, really, at the end of the day, like a report doesn't matter if it's a necessity. Like, is that kind of like what yes. you're saying? Exactly. And like, I think, I mean, maybe go like, it's an emotional sale. So the more you're quiet, the more they can think about like why it is so important, right? Like, if you're sitting there talking their head off, asking them all these questions, you're distracting them from, you know, the decision that they could be making. I want the client to be talking. Yeah. I don't want to be talking at that time. I want the client to be talking and I want to, again, it's simply maintaining control and maintaining leverage. Where you're going to help clients by asking questions. I'm guiding the entire time. I'm asking questions and I'm asking the right questions to push their pain points and get them to start sharing and communicating and getting them to sell themselves. Like once you guys get good at this business, you guys aren't going to understand like once you ask the right questions, hit the right pain points and do this, this and this, dude, the clients, they're going to be talking they're just going to sell themselves. And you just sit, sit there in silence. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the guy talking the entire time. Because that's how you get sales resistance. And also, it's gonna get to it's gonna get to a certain point where you guys are gonna it's different for everybody, it takes a different period of time. But once it clicks for you guys, it clicks. And you guys are gonna be able to go out there and write 30k a month at will with your eyes closed on autopilot. Dude, Ryan Koski, he writes business on autopilot. He's got, he knows his numbers, he knows this, he knows that, et cetera. He's like, dude, I just do my thing. I just know I book this amount of appointments a week. I want to set this amount and I'm for this amount. He's got it locked in. It's not a math equation. How to create urgency in when you first get them on the phone. Are you talking about when you first get them off, like, hey, John Mary, John came back to you about this, this, yes. or when you're in the actual, no, when you're actually going through the closing, going through the process. Okay. Okay. Oh, so when you're closing, going through the process, yeah, you're. Just, that's all about asking questions and painting the picture. But just to clarify, when you first get them on the phone, and they don't tell you, or they tell you, "Hey, I don't think we're interested," you don't have much leverage there. You're like, "All right, well, I just, you know, we just got to run through your options with you. You just got to present your options because you don't know their situation. You don't know why they need it, so it's tough to to build the urgency because you don't know why they." what urgency there is. Yeah. But versus, dude, once you have that financial inventory fully filled out, oh, bro, it's game on. I, cause, cause dude, every single question on there is, that's your ammunition. That's how you, that's, you have it all painted out. And once you learn how to read that properly and utilize all the questions on there, dude, you give me a rebuttal. Like you tell me you don't need it. I'm this, I'm spitting this, this, and this right back to you by asking, again, asking those questions. And you have all the leverage in the world once the inventory is filled out. So there's zero reason after that thing's filled out, you shouldn't help them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. How to hire quality people. For me, when we come, we've been doing this a while, and we come from the same company, it's like we've had to unlearn a lot of what we've thought. It's like, yeah. oh, just plug them in, hire anybody that has a pulse, just numbers, volume, and I tried that. I tried that, and I hated this business, and I hated recruiting. And I was working with a bunch of people that I didn't enjoy, and it wasn't, it wasn't a good fit on both ends, because none, none of them are here. To be honest with you, it's like, yeah. and because they didn't even want to, and then it was just like, I feel like I was having to pull teeth to get people to go to work. Where the more traditional you can keep it, the better. Like, I, you should never, you guys should never be pitching somebody on why they should work here. It's kind of like talking to a client, it's like, hey, so we got this product and it's 100% access living benefits, and it's just, just <laughs> same thing with, same thing with the recruit. You know, again, asking intentional questions. You know, what's, what's going on? And then it should be, it should always have the posture of, okay, well, how do you think you perform here? Okay, why should we hire you? Okay, how, how much of an asset are you to the team? Same, I mean, same type of thing. It's because you're taking on the liability of that person, and you're investing your time, effort, and energy into helping getting them going. So they 100% should be selling you on why they, should, why they should join, not the other way around. But again, it really just comes down to the only way you're going to have leverage and be able to operate like that is if you're putting the numbers in your favor. It's kind of like if you only buy five leads, <coughs> call five people, you don't have much leverage there. Same with recruiting. How to sell a regular IUL.
Um, just kind of like the difference on why you would go that IUL route instead of like a 30 year term if we're trying to protect someone's mortgage. Yeah. So I see IULs get written all the time, you know, following the board. I just, dude, I was find that like what makes you go one way or the other. I, so the IUL, yeah, I love it. So I've written a ton of IULs and I haven't done, I've done a few max funded where it's more so to borrow against and a few of those, but I've just, the regular IULs, I'm glad you asked that because that's what, dude, that's, I ranked number two in mutual, not just with FFL, but like the entire company in my first year. So I wrote so freaking many of them, they're like crack. But what I would, because what I, how I would pitch it to the client is, it's just, it's just such a great product. I love it, dude. Because it's A, it's permanent coverage, and this is the thing, and the number one thing I want you guys to understand is you have to keep it super simple with the client. I would, I don't go into indexing, and it's tied to the S&P 500, and this like, you're just gonna freak them out. I'm like, hey guys, so what this policy is, there's really no situation you come up behind. Um, what it is, it's uh, called an index universal life. It's a whole life product. What that means is it's permanent coverage. It's gonna last you till age 120. Which means it's never, it's never gonna expire and you're never gonna have to worry about the policy running out on you. Secondly, builds cash value. And on average, you're getting about a 5.6% 5, 5 compounding interest on the cash value. And then in addition to that, it has 80% access to living benefits. So not only does it pay out when you pass away, which is important, but the living benefits are just as important, if not more important in my opinion, because John and Mary, like, I'm assuming you guys don't plan on passing away anytime soon. Yeah, I didn't think so. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but 80% of home foreclosures is actually not due to a death. Believe it or not, it's either due to A, unforeseen medical bills, or B, being disabled for a period of time and not being able to work. So having a policy that protects you not only on the death side, but also the living side is critical in terms of if you were to become sick, disabled, you know, anything happens, basically this has you covered. So I really don't leave it, I don't go any more into it than that. It's permanent coverage, it's never gonna expire, never gonna go up on you guys. It, you're getting interest on the cash value, you're building cash value, and 80% access to living benefits. That's it, I keep it super simple with the client. So like, what's the deciding factor on if you're gonna present the IUL or if you're just gonna present like a term to a mortgage protection? Mm, you want the honest answer? So honestly, bro, if they don't have it, I typically sell them a term. But if they do have a term, I replace it with an IUL. That's that's the honest answer. That's fair. Bro, I'll, I'll role play with you right now. Let's say you have a 30 year term okay. and I'll call you up for your client. So, so you have a 30 year term and I'd be like, all right, Farah, so it looks like you have a policy now that covers the mortgage. It's got living benefits. Um, it's a fairly decent policy, because you never want to talk badly about what they have. So I would say it looks like fairly decent. Uh, Farah, let me ask you, has anybody explained the difference between term and whole life to you? Uh, briefly, but you can go over it for me. Sure, yeah, basically there's two types of coverage, and not to bore you, but on the term side, so term is what you currently have. It's short for terminate. So term is 10, 20, 30 years, whatever the case may be, and expires. Okay, for, are you aware of what percentage of term policies pay out? Not sure. Okay, so look this up, but according to the National Insurance Association, less than 3% of term policies pay out. So the insurance company knows that there's a 97% chance you're gonna outlive that policy. And for when you outlive this policy, well, you're 30 years older, so insurance is 30 is going to be right around 30 times more expensive, and that's even if you're eligible. Versus on the flip side with whole life, well, with whole life, there's really no situation where you come up behind fraud, because a, this policy is paying out, and you're never. It's not a quite. Or sorry, what I say is, there's really no situation you come up behind on this policy, because it's not a question of if this policy pays out or not. It's simply a question of when because it's never gonna expire on you. And then in addition to that, for I still sit down with some clients and they're like, you know what, Jonah, whole life sounds great, that sounds awesome, but really, I really only care about having insurance for the next 30 years, I have the mortgage, and then after that, I really don't care about having coverage anymore. You know what I tell them? I still tell them to take out a whole life policy because I'm like, listen, for 30 years from now, when your mortgage is paid off, whatever the case may be, and if you decide that you no longer want this policy, not that I'd recommend it, but it's your policy. You do whatever you want. If you decide you no longer want it, you simply surrender the policy 
and you're gonna get all the money you've paid into it back refunded to you plus interest. So either A, this policy is paying out, or B, 25, 30 years down the road, if you decide you don't want it, you simply get all your money back. And those are the two scenarios that occur with this type of coverage. Does that make sense? It, it does. Um, so IULE, those can expire on you? It's or it just depends? So that lasts your entire life. Okay, interesting. As long as you select the easy song yeah, on gotcha. it. Just, I think the biggest thing is keeping it super simple. Well, I don't even like using the word IUL or index universal life because mm -hmm. it freaks the client out. I just say whole life. In the case, whole life, it's permanent coverage, it's never going to expire and builds cash value. And also, I replace not only terms, but also CBOs. Because a CBO 100, dude, it's, it has a time and place and it's a great product. But when you look at the 30 year illustration of how much money they're going to be getting back in 30 years of a CBO 100 and how much money they're getting back with an IULE, well, comparing it to Americo, for example, dude, A, you're able to get them way more coverage for what they're currently paying. B, it's they're gonna get, and they're, secondly, they're gonna get way more cash back in 30 years, because not only do they get all their money back, but they're getting a 5.8% interest. So as long as they don't cancel before they're fully vested in the cash value, which you'd have to look at the IUL, depending on the age and what the cost of insurance is for the client, it's usually about, as long as they don't cancel within the first, between 12 to 20 years of the policy, they're fully vested in the cash value. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Cool, any questions on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, that last thing, how you ended that off when you said, does that make sense to you? And how do you transition into like, you know, flipping it into like your application? Yeah, so I'd be like, really John, so really John, you know, with your term, you're basically throwing your money in the wind because you're really rolling the dice in this policy to see if you know if this policy even pays out or not, and you know since you are young and you're healthy, I'm assuming you don't plan on passing away within the next thirty years. No. And I'm like, when I say that, I'm not. I don't ask that as a question. I say that as a statement, and I'm nodding my head like crazy. Like over the phone. Over like the phone. Sure. Even though they can't see me, they still feel that energy. And I'm, and then they're like, well, yeah. I mean, hopefully not. <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at two options. The first option we're gonna look at is the same base amount, that same three hundred thousand just convert it to a whole life. Obviously, it's gonna be a bit more expensive because it does build that cash value. So the first option is gonna be the same base amount, just a little bit more expensive. The second option is gonna be the same premium, simply just a little bit of a decreased base amount. Basically, let me know what option makes the most sense to you, and then from there, we'll submit your request for coverage. And then the takeaway every single time is, I'm like, listen, John, so the only downside to this product is they're a lot more strict on the underwriting than they are on term, so no promises you'll qualify. So we want to make sure before we go canceling anything that you're fully approved of this new product. So God willing, you're fully approved of this new product, then don't worry, I'll help you make sure that policy gets converted over. I don't like saying canceling because it freaks them out, so I'll make sure like payments stop on that or convert it over or some, something similar. But that's always the takeaway. It's like, hey, listen, the only downside is they're a lot more strict on the underwriting, so no <coughs> promises you're gonna get approved. So we don't want to go canceling anything to your proof of this new product. Because it's kind of, you say before the client says it. And it also builds a lot more trust and credibility in you. Yep. What are your thoughts on uh, replacing an IUL with an ROP? <laughs> terrible. <laughs> if you if you do that, you should just, you should, you're a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you, bro. <laughs> for, those, for those that don't know, Henry's first week here, he replaced an IUL with an ROP. I was just like, oh. <laughs> Bro, next time just don't do that again. <laughs> don't make my mistakes. <laughs> it's all good. We all make mistakes. I got a quick question for you. Yo. Just because you mentioned it earlier that you said if they don't have IUL or don't have a term, you'll give them a term instead of the IUL. Is that what you said? I'll, I'll gauge it based on the client, but typically yes because I thrive I thrive off of simplicity. Okay. Where I just try to, the simpler the better. And if I'm trying to, because I've, I've done the reverse. Where dude, I'll, I'm too heavy on, like I'm a little IUL crack fanatic. I mean, that's crazy. mainly what I wrote mostly. I, I Which is great. Like I if you're doing that, that's great. Keep yeah. doing that. But for me, was dude, I would lose deals because of it. Mm. Because they're like cash value and whole life and permanent coverage. They're like, dude, I just wanted the mortgage protection. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then they think they look at then they look at me as some salesperson that's trying to upsell them some crazy fancy doodad more expensive policy when they just want the simple basic coverage. 
I'm knowing it's going to be okay. So it, that's where an IUO can actually be detrimental because it gets a little salesy. Gotcha. And it gets a little, not only salesy, but it gets more complicated. Especially if you're like interest and whole life coverage and life insurance. And I just want, I, I, like, yeah, like the amount of, I've literally pitched that and by the end of it, and I'm, I'm excited and I'm like connecting with the client, we're building great core and they're with me. And then like, we'll present the options. They, they'll look at it, they'll be like, they say exactly what I just said. They're like, I thought this was for the mortgage protection. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Okay. And then uh, like with the older client, cause I mean, if they're like 60, 65, even 70 healthy, you can get more coverage with an IUL. Typically cheaper, say if it's like 50,000 versus a 50,000 whole life or mutual, like living promise is going to get a better deal. You know, as far as that, if that's what they're looking for, or if they want more coverage, I you're mean, saying an IUO versus a traditional whole life. Um, just at like that age, like if they're healthy and they can get the IUO at like oh, 65. If you're, if a client can qualify for term or an IUO, we're always going that route. I don't think I've ever written a client where they could qualify for a term and written them a whole life. Gotcha. Um, so a whole life is we only write that if, if that's the only thing the client can qualify for. Well, actually, no, I take that back because I have done his and hers. Where the husband was more unhealthy, like the wife might have qualified for a term, but the husband was unhealthy. So I kept it simple, and we just did an equity protection on both of them. Mm-hmm. That's really the only scenario. But other than that, it's yeah, they can qualify mm-hmm. for a term or an IUL. 100% always go that route. Here's the thing, though, if it's if it's skeptical and it's kind of that gray area where they like, might qualify, they might not. I always take the safe route, and I always go whole life equity protection. Gotcha. Because. A lot of times when you pivot that way, they'll go for it. But dude, if you pitch you pitch them an IUL or you pitch them a term with living benefits and you get them all excited about the product and hype it up and da da da, and then you get to the end they get declined and you try to pivot to equity protection, that's a tough that's a tough transition. And now you just fucked yourself. Yeah. So gotcha. yeah, if okay. it's if it's in that gray area, dude, I would encourage all you play the safe route and do the equity protection. Gotcha. Because that's a great way to, yeah, because it's, it's tough, bro. I've tried to pivot, and I almost, I lose it almost every time. We'll get uh, <clears throat> Justin on a call, dude. He only writes whole lives. Really? And he just tells them, he's like, hey, we're shooting for the stars because this is what I do for my family. Now, God willing, you don't get approved. We do have other options. He's only written one term since he started. All boo and whole lives. Hmm. Wow. We'll get him on a call. I don't think, he, I, he I, just, don't think I got He just started. like, I was like, I don't believe in terms. I don't pay out. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, Justin White from Connecticut. Interesting. Fair enough. Huh, off the talk. I didn't know that. Huh. Dude, he's written. He's written a big. Tra- he's written a few he's, trance. He's written some terms. Call. Now I think terms. there was a immediate solutions. Oh, they were IUL. Yeah, they were right. An NLG whole life. True. Yeah, he does write IULs. IULs and NLG. Mm. I, I mean, I don't blame him. He just the way he tees it up. I don't know how he says it, but he's just like I just tell him. You know, we're gonna to try to get you here. If not, we'll go to option B. That's I like that. That's solid. Uh, yeah, this is Turner. Hey, it's Jake. Share. It's Jacob Schoenfeld. Give me a quick call here. I work with the mortgage company, and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase. Your file that's associated with your property on one two three Main Street just came across my desk, and it's shown me as incomplete. Um, I just wanted to make sure that. We got this taken care of for you. I'm the manager in the area. Okay. The only reason, ah, oh, fuck that up. Does it say that you're with the mortgage company on the script? No, it says brokerage. Yeah, make sure you say brokerage. Yeah. You, it's like fraud to say you're with the mortgage company. Okay. Damn, for real? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, um, so you're, <laughs> you're, you? <laughs> I was about to say no. <laughs> Your file that's associated with your property on 123 Main Street just came across my desk and it's showing me it's incomplete. The only reason for that is sometimes when you, when you close with Chase, he sent me several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right, where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you actually did the right thing. You filled it out, you sent it back to us. But for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. I'm the manager in the area here, so I just wanted to make sure that we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home, or you have a significant it's other? It's me and my wife, yeah. Okay. Um, so I just had a few minutes before my next call. 
Um, grab a pen and paper for me, and we'll get this busted out. It takes a couple minutes. I'm busy right now, man. She's not here. Totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm super busy too, man. Is this normally something that you guys would need to talk about amongst yourselves? Or? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in a rush. Like, do you okay. do appointments, or how does this work? Yeah, normally I only book up by appointments anyways, so. Okay. Um, what's like the latest time that you guys are both home together? Typically like 6.30. Okay. What time do you usually eat dinner? Like seven thirty. Okay. Um. Okay. So I wouldn't be able to do six thirty. Um. I'm super busy. I could give you a call like right before you guys do dinner at like seven. Um. Would that work for both of you guys? Yeah, I think we could do that. Okay. Let's do that. I'll get you guys penciled in. Um. You've got my number, so you know if anything comes up, just let me know. Um. Just give me fifteen, twenty minutes. I'm not. I might not call at exactly seven o'clock. I'm super busy, but. For the most part, it should be right around there. Gotcha. Um, and then last thing, right? I'm super busy. Like I work with a lot of families. I just want to make sure that, you know, this is something that you guys will actually be there at seven o'clock for. I don't want to take time away from somebody that I could actually be helping. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So seven actually works for you guys? Yeah, we could do seven. Okay, cool. Well, we'll talk to you then. Nice. Or right. did you go through every tie down that was on the new script? I didn't. Make sure you are I really intentional. In yeah, no worries. That was really good. Um, your tonality is solid. You sound comfortable. Sounds like you've gone through that a lot. Um, you never want to skip any of the tie downs. They're all yeah. really important. Some people use different ones than others. I know Jonah likes people to write something down. I don't personally do that. I'll go through mine in a little bit and kind of show what I do a little bit differently. But the with every tie down you skip pretty much, it's like a, you're closer your sit rate goes down like 10 percent okay so it's just important to make sure that you don't skip those even if you've already had them on the phone for a long time and they're really like i'm busy like i gotta go you still just hammer those because obviously you want to make them feel bad if they ghost you okay but other than that yeah that was solid honestly better than like 95 percent people when they're new yeah cool any like tonality um, at the beginning, I think you should work on the confused tone a little bit more. Okay. I didn't really notice too much of that from you. Um, and just sort of like pausing in certain places to enunciate certain things to make sure that they really get it. I, your pacing was good. You were talking at the right speed. Um, but as you like go through the script a little bit more, you kind of learn where to stop so that you give them a little bit of time to process what okay. you're saying because it is the first time that they've ever heard it. Okay. I'll like kind of show what I mean more when I we do go through mine. But so we'll is it more ones first? Is it when there's like the dot 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 or like a comma? You yeah. Want to emphasize all of those. Pause? You always just want to okay. pause, and you, you pause in the middle of the sentence so they don't jump in and cut you off with an objection. I you see. You pretty much just want to talk okay. the entire time until like a minute through the conversation, and then you ask if there's a spouse there with them, and then that gives them the opportunity to talk. And if they have an objection, that's usually where you hear. Okay. Money. You wanna go? Yeah. Um, Turner? Yeah, this is Turner. It's Ben. Um, just giving you a quick call here. Um, okay. I work with the brokerage and to handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. Your file that's associated with your property over on 123 Main Street just came across my desk and it's showing me it's incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you closed Chase, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? That's where it pays off the home, you get sick, they pass away. You actually did the right thing. You filled out the card, you mailed it back into us, but for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. Uh, so I'm the manager in the area here, and I just wanted to make sure uh, that we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home, or is there a significant other? Or it's just me there? here, yeah. Okay, perfect. I uh, just have a few minutes here before my next call. Uh, grab a pen and paper for me real quick. That should take about 10 minutes or so. Let me know when you're ready. I'm driving right now, I don't have a pen. Oh, jeez, I want you to get into an accident. Go ahead, pull over real quick, I'll be super brief. I'm not pulling over, man, what's this about? Uh, so this is about the mortgage protection. So if you were to get sick or pass away, this would pay off the home for you and your family. Um, oh, I do remember filling that out. Okay. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I don't want you to get into an accident, and it sounds like you're not able to pull over at this time. So, let's go ahead and book a time for you, uh, either in a few hours here. Um, I have some time here at 5 p.m. Would that work for you? Um, no. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just try tomorrow instead. I don't really book out appointments for uh, the next day, so I'll just try again tomorrow. Okay? Is five all you have today? Yeah, unfortunately, that's all I have for today. And you can't book an appointment? Nope, no appointments. But I will try and reach out to you in between some of my um, calls tomorrow. Okay. Why don't you book appointments? Because they don't show up. Do you go through all the tie downs? I just stopped booking appointments entirely. What do you recommend? I recommend a book appointments. Okay. I like appointments. Yeah. Some people are really strict on only one call closing. Yeah. I've been doing this for like six months and done like 130 policies and I'd say like 60% of those were from appointments. Dang. Only like 35, 40% were from one call closes. Wow. So when you do set the appointment, it's really important obviously that you schedule it around their time as opposed to just shooting a timeout. Uh -huh. like typically I'm like, is morning, afternoon or evening typically oh, okay. best for you? And then I kind of work around there. Uh -huh. And I usually just spit out two times, like let's, let's say evening, I'm like, okay. I am usually meeting with about 10 to 12 families a day, but let me look to see if I can squeeze you in. I have a 5.30 and a 7. Uh -huh. Which one of those would be better for you? Okay. Um, as opposed to just spitting out a time with a chance that they might pick it when you don't really know their availability or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, do you talk that slow with every client at the very beginning or only yeah. the older people? Like if you're talking to someone younger, do you mm -hmm. speed up a little bit? True. No, I, I touch the little bit. Okay. I, I do like the slow, slowness. You have like a good confused tonality. Mm -hmm. When you're talking to young people, they're under the age of 40, you want to speed it up a little bit. Because oh, okay. if I picked up the phone and you were talking that slow, I'd be like, dude, just get to the chase. <laughs> but not everyone's like sharp. Like we're obviously dealing with a lot of retards in this yeah. industry. And if they're old and they're like 50, 60, then that tonality and speed is perfect. Yeah, talk to but just kind of adjust it based mm -hmm. off of who you're talking to when you look at the sheet. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, I do recommend booking appointments for sure. Do you like, have you, have you tried and you just gotten ghosted every time or what? Yeah, literally all the time. Okay. Do you, do you like send them a text before? Like, no. Do you have a, any sort of appointment reminders? No. Okay. Set up a calendar. Okay. That's what like most of the top producers that use appointments or that run appointments do. Okay. It sends an appointment reminder. You get like the $15 a month version. Okay. So it'll shoot me a reminder 24 hours before if you set more than a day out, an hour before, and 20 or 10 minutes before is what I recommend. Okay. Just shoot some a text, let them know. And then right after I get off the phone with them, I shoot them a text, um, hey, blank, got you confirmed for Monday at 9 or whatever it is, and then I shoot my business card. Huh. I'll kind of go through my script here okay. um, just so you guys can kind of see the tie downs because I think those are really important. I'll just start with this. Who's gonna be the client? I'll be the client. Yeah, Ben? Yeah, hello. This is Turner. Uh -huh. Just had to give you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. And your file that's associated with your property on 123 Main Street just came across my desk. And it's still showing as incomplete. The only reason for that is sometimes around when you close with Chase Bank. We sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you were to get sick or pass away. And it looks like you actually did the right thing, Ben. I mean, you filled out the card, mailed it back into us, or scanned the QR code. But for whatever reason, on our end, we still haven't gotten that completed. I'm the manager in the area here, so I just want to make sure that we've gotten you taken care of. Now, is it just you in the home, or is there a spouse there with you? Uh, just me. Okay, gotcha. I've been assigned as a state licensed medical underwriter to show you your options and shop around with all the carriers in the state of Indiana who offer mortgage protection to help figure out what makes sense for you guys. Mm -hmm. If you put pen and paper handy, get this knocked out, it should only take about 10 to 15 minutes. Yep. Okay, gotcha. 
Is this your first time going through the mortgage protection process? Yes. Okay. It's pretty simple. Basically, I'm just going to spend about two minutes asking you some health and financial questions. Based on that, it's my job as a medical underwriter to run through the top 39 carriers in the state of Indiana that offer mortgage protection. And once we figure out a couple options you will hopefully qualify for, I'll present the options to you. You just let me know what's comfortable and what's affordable. And then from there, we'll submit a request for coverage. Make sense? Absolutely. Okay. And I did shoot over my business card last time we spoke. That's obviously just your way of looking me up to confirm that I am a state licensed broker. Did you have time to review that? Yes. Okay, gotcha. And then I just go straight into the financial inventory. Okay. Let's do that again, but say that you're busy and okay. let's set an appointment. Got right. a pen and paper handy to get this knocked out? Should only take about 10 to 15 minutes. I know, I can busy right now. Okay, no worries. I typically do run appointments only anyway. Mm. Let me see in about 10 families a day. Let me look to see where I can squeeze you in. Would sometime later today or tomorrow be better for you? Yeah, later today. Okay. I have a 4.30 and a 6 still open. Which of those two would be better for you? Okay, 6. 6 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any reason at all, Ben, you could think of that that time wouldn't work for you? I might have to go pick up the kids from school. Okay, gotcha. I do have a seven open. You mm -hmm. think it might be better shooting for them? Okay, yeah. for sure, seven. Okay. Yeah. And do you want me to call this number right here? Mm-hmm. Okay. And can you get text messages on this line, Ben? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna shoot you over a text with my business card. On the bottom of there, there's a link to the Department of Insurance website. Mm -hmm. Up at the top, it shows my national producer number. That's like my social in the insurance world. So that's just your way of looking me up to confirm that I am a state licensed broker, and then I'm still in good standings with the state. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And can you also, just as a courtesy to myself, just make sure you have your phone near you during that time, that your ringer's on, and that you're available? Sure. Okay. Go ahead and set an alarm on your phone for 7 p.m. too, and just so you can see that I'm going to call you. Okay? Okay. I'll talk to you at 7. Okay. I just like, I'm, I never skip any of the tie downs, because whenever I notice that I do, my sit rate drops like 20, 40%. Wow. Like it's important to make sure you hit those. I don't like having someone grab a piece of paper and write shit down. I find most of the time people don't have one or they like kind of give you pushback there. Mm -hmm. But you just kind of keep reiterating, like you just get the yes, 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 and yes. And even when you like ask, do you want me to call this number right here? A lot of times they're like, yeah, I want you to call this number. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like changing it to where they feel like they, need you more they're like oh i want this guy to call me oh i, I feel like that one like helps you made them lot. say that you want them to call you mm -hmm. yeah and i like the alarm thing i heard you, uh, jonah say that yesterday that you do that so i'm yeah. gonna try that i usually ask in different ways sometimes um i say gotcha can you also as a courtesy to myself just make sure that you have your phone near you during that time mm -hmm. maybe just go ahead and set an alarm right now mm -hmm. like 6 55 7 so you know that i'll be calling you Mm -hmm. But regardless, they're going to get those text reminders and they're going to know that I'm calling. Wow. Yeah. And the only reason they're going to ghost me is not because they forgot, but because they decided that I like cornered them into the appointment and they don't actually want it. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? That's Blair. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of psychology behind that because like <laughs> you're getting them to agree to the call three, four, five times. Exactly. Like, versus just a flimsy one layer appointment, you know? Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that'll definitely work. So yours. <clears throat> Turner? Yeah, it's Turner. Turner, it's Vish. Giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. Okay. Your file that's associated with your property on 123 Main Street just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. So the only reason for that is sometime around when you closed with Chase. We had sent several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. You actually did the right thing, Turner. You filled out the card, mailed it back in. Stop, us. start over, roll your shoulders back, try to work on sounding less robotic. Just start from the top. Okay. Turner, 
Yeah. Just turn her. Is that too much or no? That's good. Turn, turn yourself. Him. Yeah. It's Bish. Just giving you a quick call here. I work with the brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. Yeah. Your file that's associated with your property on 123 Main Street just came across my desk and it's showing me as incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you closed with Chase, we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection. Right, where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. You actually did the right thing, Turner. You filled out the card, you mailed it back into us, but for some reason on our end, we don't have that fully completed. I'm the manager in the area here, so just wanted to make sure we got you taken care of. Now, is it just you in the home or is there a significant other or spouse there with you? I have a spouse, yeah, my wife. Okay, so I just have a few minutes before my next call. Uh, grab a pen and paper for me real quick. Should it only take about 10 minutes or so to get this knocked out? My wife's not here. I think she wants something in her too. Okay, perfect. So I typically do run um, by appointments only. Okay. So let me see where I can squeeze you in here. Um, what's the latest you'll be home today, Turner? Um, I'm home. I work from home. It's just my wife. She gets home at like six. Okay. Gotcha. Unfortunately, I don't have a 6 p.m. available, but I can squeeze you in between 7.30 or 8.30. Would any of those times work for you, Turner? Yeah, I could like, do a 7.30. Okay. And then would there be any reason you wouldn't be able to speak at that time? No. Okay, perfect. I'll put you down for that. Um, and Turner, how do you keep track of your appointments? Um, usually I just like write on the whiteboard. Okay. Um, let me have you write down 8.30. Okay. Didn't we say 7.30? 7.30. You're okay. right. Yeah. Have you, let me have you write down 7.30 p.m. on your whiteboard. Okay. Um, and let me know when you have that down. I got that. Okay. And then under that, write my name, Vish, V-I-S-H, okay. 8.30 p.m. And my security code? 7.30. 7.30. And my security code? V-S. I don't even have one. Um, but I do have you down for 8.30 today. 7.30 today. Um, any reason you wouldn't be able to speak at that time, Turner? You already asked me that and I said there wasn't. Okay. So the only reason I'm asking is because I have a full day of help helping families. And when someone does miss their appointment, it really messes up my schedule. But I do have you down at that time, so I'm looking forward to helping you and serving your family then. Okay. Is that like a new script from John? Uh, or is that like an old one that you got when you first joined? That's, yeah, that's the one I see too. Really? Yeah. I think it's updated. Do you ever use mine? I don't know. Have you tried it? Yeah, I have. Did it not work for you? No, nah, it was just like, it was kind of spaced out weird, so. Okay, well, what parts were spaced out weird? You definitely need more would, tie downs. Yeah, it was more in the actual FI and like. Okay. The, yeah, the well, carriers and stuff. When I get to the bottom, I pretty much just go off script. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, more tie downs, you need to sound a little bit more like nonchalant. Like okay. that kind of feels like there's like a gun held up to your head yeah. <laughs> at some points. It does. Um, especially when you're saying, is there any reason you can think of that this time wouldn't work for you? Like you just kind of want to sound a little bit more laid back, just like a kind of comfortable saying that because it usually is something that can make people slightly uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. the way you said it, like if I heard on the other end, I would have been like, yeah, like, just kind of weirded out about it. Yeah. Do you send the business card for the appointment? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'd start I telling people that. Mention that, yeah. I'd look back at the script that I shared with you a while ago and mm -hmm. try to add that in, the where I explain why I'm sending it. Mm -hmm. That just builds a shit ton of credibility and trust. They'll obviously like 
be able to look you up if they decide to, but realistically, like, one in every ten people will actually take the time to look you up. Yeah. But just them knowing that they have it will make them want to answer the call more, make them, like, obviously see you as a professional. What you said with the business card, is that, like, verbatim in your script? Yeah. Okay. I can share that with you. Okay. I think Kyle sent it to me, but it must have been, like, an old one, because I don't see that in it. I think I added that kind of recently, but I, I, I'll just share it with you so you see all the updates if I ever make any. Turner. Yeah, this is Turner. Yeah, it's just John. Give me a quick call here. I uh, work with a brokerage and we handle the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. Um, your file is associated with the property over on 123 Main. It uh, just came across my desk, just showed it as incomplete. The only reason for that is sometime around when you had closed or refied with Chase, we sent you this several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Okay. Where it's paying off the home if you get sick or pass away. Does that yeah. kind of ring a bell to you? Yeah, maybe have been my wife or something. Yeah, it might have been a, a, a little while ago, but ultimately you guys did the right thing. I mean, you fill out the card and mail it back to us. It's just for some reason on our end, we just haven't gotten that completed yet for you. Um, it's just flagged for review a couple of days back here. Um, so I'm the manager here at the office. I'm handling those accounts that get flagged. Just want to make sure that I can get that uh, taken care of for you. Um, do you have like 10, 15 minutes here, Turner? No, I don't. Okay, gotcha. That's okay. I typically run by appointment anyway. Um, what time, let me see my schedule. What time's the latest today that would work best for you if it's knocked out? The latest, like an eight. Eight, okay, let me just check my schedule. Let me see. Okay, I have a 7.30 or an 8.30 open, which will work better for you. If we do a 7.30. Okay, no problem. I'll put you, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pencil you in for that. Um, is this the best number to contact you at uh, uh, right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome, awesome. And then you can get a uh, text messages to this line, correct? I can. Okay, perfect. I'll shoot you a text when I'm about 10 minutes off from calling you, so don't be guess. Okay. Obviously, you know, I'm super busy today, you know, helping other families out. So give me like a you know, 20, 30 minute grace period if it's not right at 7.30. Okay. Um, and one, uh, one more thing before we hop off the line, um, just give me one big favor. Um, just as a courtesy, just make sure you have your phone near you, you know, between that, you know, 7 to 8 o'clock range um, tonight. And just put, and just, Put something in your calendar, you know. Um, actually, pull it up for me super quick. I got it. Like a calendar. All right. Um, just on uh, 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 seven thirty. Just put in there. Um, call with John, and then um, you know make sure that you have that uh, reminder on. You know, just so that you know about the appointment. And uh, I'll make sure that I'm available for you as well. Okay. Okay. Awesome. You want to take care, Terry? All right. You too. How long have you been doing this? Two weeks. You started dialing it? Yeah. Cool. How's it been going? Three deals. Nice. How many days have you been dialing to get those three deals? Actual full days? Yeah. Is this your first time role playing in a group? Group setting, yeah. You nervous? A bit. <laughs> yeah, just be as comfortable as possible. I literally, when I dial, I'm sitting like this in my chair. Yeah. Like, I'm just shoulders all the way back. Yeah. Like. Usually like this. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just say, like, when I'm by myself, I'm a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet. I, yeah. Obviously, there was just a little shaky yeah. at that point. Do you catch yourself using ums and other filler words when you're actually dialing, or is that something no, that you just did? Kind of, yeah, it's kind of. Okay. Just, Definitely slow down a little bit. Okay. Speak up a little bit. Yeah. Enunciate certain things mm -hmm. and pause in certain areas where you want them to process what you're saying. Yeah. Especially since it is so new to someone, like. We probably got through that entire thing in like a minute. Yeah. And if you set an appointment in a minute with someone, they're not going to show up. They're right. going to forget about it 20 seconds later. You want to at least like have, have them on the phone for a few minutes, go through it really slow, make sure they fully understand what you're saying. Um, and definitely like, I mean, confidence is really everything in this industry. Yeah. Like if they can feel that confidence and conviction over the phone, they're going to trust you and treat you as a professional. But if they don't, they're probably just going to go to see appointment. I got you. But definitely anytime you catch yourself going to use an um, if you do catch yourself doing that when you are actually dialing, mm -hmm. it's so much better just to pause yeah. and catch your thought than to say um mm -hmm. here and there. 
that's something I had to really work on when I started because I would say uh or um right. all the time. Then I learned that like I heard myself act, like maybe you record yourself a few times when you are pitching, listen to it, see how you think you perceive it, having someone else call you, and just know that when you do pause, it just makes you sound so much more confident. Um, I liked how you, I just did it. <laughs> I, I liked how you went through it. Like you didn't stop at certain points and give people the objection to jump in. Mm. I noticed you did, I forgot to mention that with you. At the very beginning, after you say like the mortgage company or whatever it was, you like pause. Do you ever get cut off? Like the people jump in with objections at that point? No, nah, they just are like, okay. When, just okay. like agree, so. Okay. When's the first time that you usually get objection in your presentation? Um, when you ask if there's a spouse there with them, is that? When you might hear it? Um, or did they ever cut you off before? No, nah, sometimes if, if I say I want, if, like I'm the manager, I want to take care of you, they're like, no, do that part again and see how long. I just want to see how long you pause for. Okay. You actually did the right thing, Turner. You filled out the card, mailed it back into us. But for some reason on our end, we haven't gotten that completed. I'm the manager in the area here. So I just wanted to make sure we got you taken care of. Can you just pause then? You don't, you no, don't no, no, no. I keep question. going. I was trying to see how long you pause in between next, that and the next okay. question. So just start from I'm the manager in the okay. area here. I'm the manager in the area here, so I just wanted to make sure we got you taken care of. People sometimes now, cut you off in between that little gap? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. It's either they agree or they're like, I don't have time or okay. something like that. I think that's something that's not talked about enough. Mm -hmm. Not giving people the opportunity to object mm -hmm. and yeah. stopping mid-sentence so that they know it's still your turn to talk, so they don't cut you off, but that you at least get everything out and they know why you're calling, and that they like know who you are. Yeah. Because realistically, I'm like, yeah, Vishnu? He's like, yeah. And that's the last time I hear their voice until my phone says one minute and like five to one minute and 10 seconds. Yeah. And then I ask, is it just you in the home or is there a spouse there with you? And typically that's the only time they ever jump out with an objection. If they say like, oh yeah, it's just me and my wife, I know I'm gonna get no objections and then mm -hmm. I just stick into the appointment. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but like the way I, when I only put pauses like after the first word of each sentence. Really? I kind of figured that works best. It for does, me. yeah. I, I just pause at like random times. Yeah. In my script, I kind of put like certain dot, dot, dots where I do pause, but sometimes right. I just like. You gotta take a breath. As long as right. it feels conversational. Yeah. Yeah. Not just like a, Script. Yeah, right. Okay. You want to make it sound okay. like every single time you say it, it's the first time you've ever said it. Right. So, yeah. That's most so, so after that where it says, so I just wanted to make sure we took care of you, you just jump into now is it the is it just you in the home or and then you pause in that sentence. I just wanted to make sure we got you guys taken care of. I'm the manager in the area here. Just wanna make sure that we got you guys taken care of. Now is it just you in the home or is there a spouse there with you? Just like a short pause, not enough where they're going to cut you off, but like yeah. where they clearly know that you're still talking. Yeah, just go straight to the now and then pause. Now. Right. Is okay. it just, yeah. How many brush offs do you typically go through before you actually book an appointment? I feel like people. On brush offs. Like, um, you get, you going through it, they're like, yeah, no, I'm busy, man. For, yeah, for sure. I just keep rolling the script like three, four times. Because I feel like a lot of times people just don't want to talk and they're just trying to find an excuse to get off the phone. So I... When did they cut you off with a brush off? Um, what part of your script you typically see? After like winter maybe, or even just like, uh, I'll say, yeah, get a pen and paper and we'll knock this out for you in about five minutes. Yeah, no, I'm busy right now. Yeah, for sure. Just go ahead and get that paper and then I'll go to the... I start the, I start the inventory. I literally just... Steam I don't roll. think you should push that hard with yeah. call closes. If, okay. if they say they're busy and they really can't do it, okay. maybe you get them on the phone for another five, ten minutes, mm -hmm. but is that really enough time to go through your entire presentation? Not or really. Not that's a good point, yeah. Some people do that. Some people force the one call close. I think yeah. you're better off setting a solid appointment as opposed to blowing that lead by that's making you seem too pushy yeah. and like, <clears throat> especially if you can hear anything going on in the background. Like if you can actually hear them at work, Good chance yeah. they're actually probably pretty fucking busy. Uh -huh. If yeah. they're like 
65 or 70, like yeah. that might push the one call flows a little yeah. bit more. They're probably doing nothing. Truck drivers, right? Yeah. Has wire. And that point, when you do get the brush off, yeah, perfect. I typically do run appointments yeah. only anyway. Um, and then you just go straight into setting the appointment, yeah. and obviously making yourself some super busy. Do you ever schedule a Zoom call like Ryan or yours? I've never done one. Oh, okay. I did them with Solar for a bit. I liked them. Uh -huh. I prefer them to think I'm a little bit older than I actually am. Oh, yeah. And I feel like when they see my face with no beard or nothing, yeah, they'll be like, oh, fuck him. Yeah, your voice does sound older. You're like, buddy, I'm 6'4", alright? <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> but yeah, well, because like door to door, I'm rolling seven, eight brush offs before I even get to anything. So mm -hmm. it's a lot different, obviously. But I'm so like a smoke screen, you mean? Oh, yeah, smoke screen. I'm so yeah. used to just like bullying the shit out of people to get my pitch, you know? Okay. So that's How long have you been doing this? Uh, I started like November, like late November. Okay. I just haven't like really gone full time dialing. I haven't, I put too much time in recruiting and not okay. dialing so far. How much yeah. time have you been like, or how many appointments are you running a week? Uh, presentations. Last few weeks I haven't been working really much at all. Uh, wow. I've been traveling and then just okay. with the guys and just recruiting and team building, which is not a good excuse. But um, when I was like, when I wrote, when I was calling consistently, like five a day, uh, five a day probably, four or five a day. Okay. Yeah, for like a good month. How many closes do you think you have? Like sales, like, like sales, yeah. yeah. Um, like seven or nine, like seven to nine, nine sales, okay. probably. How many guys do you have on your team? Total, like, 32. Okay. Were you, who's your upline again? JP. JP. Is he just really trying to push you guys to kind of recruit? He's not pushing build? it. We just did it on our own. We just want to. Is yeah, your like, team like all info show guys? Mostly, yeah. And then a couple, uh, we have a guy that came from a different insurance, a different insurance IMO, and he's bringing like, a lot of people okay. so we just have a lot of interviews do you mainly, feel like you could properly support them confidently having nine deals not yet that's why i'm trying to really dive into a full-time dialing schedule okay. so yeah just kind of like i think you just yeah. need to work on that balance a little exactly. bit more okay. um like i have a team of 30 guys too yeah. but i'm still writing exactly. at least 25 30k a month get, like it's get, get them balanced so. yeah and like i'm not even working that many hours realistically mm -hmm. Are you like helping your agents all day? Is that where your time's going? Or is it a lot of just like being on call and just like you feeling like you can't work because you have to attend to them? Both, for sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I mean, multitasking, especially when you really know what you're doing, isn't hard. It's like I could be mid-appointment, sending some, like reading through his financial inventory, letting him know exactly what to write and just doing it in the background because it's so muscle memory to me and just right. takes, zero brain power really mm. and you, you just want to get to that point so you could be that guy for your agents exactly, so yeah. you don't have to pass them on to jp who also doesn't really write much business because he's full-time recruiting yeah pretty much and definitely just want to work on kind of getting more policies through just so you kind of have more conviction and i think that will help your team do better too because jonah says mm -hmm. it all the time like your team will do half of what you do yeah and if they see you not producing, then they probably won't want to exactly. work either. That's not working out for sure, man. Yeah. Let's go through your script. Definitely. Hey, Turner. Yeah, this is Turner. Hey, it's Hunter, man. Just give me a quick call here. I work with the brokerage that handles the mortgage protection for Chase Bank. How's it going today? I'm good. Good, man. Follow with your property at uh, 123 Main Street. It's just came across my desk here showing as incomplete. The only reason for that is around whenever you close with Chase, we sent you a few things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? Where it pays off the home if you get sick or pass away. Does that sound familiar to you at all? Yeah. Okay. So you did the right thing. You you filled it out. You sent it back into us. For some reason on our end, it hasn't gotten completed yet. It was actually flagged for review a few days back. So as a manager in the area here, I'm just, in charge of calling all these accounts that get flagged. So I just want to make sure to get that taken care of for you. You have a pen and paper handy? Do this about five minutes? No, I don't. I'll give my, I usually run my appointment anyways. Um, what would be a, a good time for you to, to, to where you're usually free? In mornings. The evenings, at, in, yeah, mornings. mornings, awesome. So I, um, I might have a couple spots here in the early morning. Um, for tomorrow, probably, I mean, it was, I guess it's like probably afternoon, right? So yeah, yeah. For tomorrow, so like, uh, I could probably get you in around 10 or noon. What's better for you? Do it 10. 10, awesome, man. 
Yeah, so um, is this the number that you want me to call yet? Yeah. Okay. You can get text messages here as well, right? Yeah, I can. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to text you over my business card. Um, that way you can see my national producer number as a licensed broker in Indiana. Okay. And then um, I'll shoot you a text about 10 minutes before I call you as well, just to, just to confirm the appointment. And then do me a huge favor here, if you don't mind, if you will, uh, as a courtesy to myself, uh, just make sure that you have your phone near you during, during that time, around 10 o'clock tomorrow. Um, put in your calendar as well. I'm going to pull up that calendar real quick and just put in a reminder there. I don't do calendars. Awesome. So do you have an uh, iPhone? Yeah. Phone. Cool. So go on your reminders app on your phone. You can just add a reminder for 10 o'clock tomorrow. That way you know that we had that call, okay? Okay. Is there any reason that you think that you wouldn't be available for that? No, should be good. Awesome. Well, we'll turn it on. I'll give you a call tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll talk to you then, okay? Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks. Finished up strong. Um, first half I didn't like too much. Yeah. Who Quicker. taught you to ask, how are you? Mm-hmm. Vlad. Does he do it every single call? That's yeah. what he told me. Yeah. How does it work for you? Uh, it seems fine. It, it seems like it worked because it kind of breaks it up to where they're getting a word in and then I just kind of like get right back into it. But it makes it, I feel like it's do, more Do they ever try to take control me. there? Uh, sometimes. Do you get objections there? Not really objections, but more of like, good, like, like what's this about? I'm like, yeah, exactly. So then I just get, right, I just get back into it. Do you ever feel that that builds a wall that doesn't go down? Maybe a little bit, for sure. Yeah. I've tried it. Yeah. You know, I've like tried, it. you doing okay? Pushback. Why guys don't like it? Yeah, I can something feel the wall build up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If someone calls me on the phone within the first 15 seconds, mm-hmm. seconds asking what I'm doing, I'm like, what the fuck is this about? Yeah, like, why are you calling? Point? Exactly, yeah. Sometimes I do a how are you doing right before I start the financial inventory after they grab the paper. I like that though, because it's like like what you're saying, because like, have you guys ever gone to a car dealership or a fucking couch store or the mall? Like, mm-hmm. every time somebody's yeah, trying to sell it, you yeah. something, they're asking you how you're doing. You don't care. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's almost like just like a like you don't you're not even asking like like it's like saying what's up like you're not asking what's up you're just saying hi basically. It's just like, polite, you know? right? But no, that's a good point though. It, it's sure. polite. It doesn't work for me. If it works for you, then don't change it. Yeah, I I try for a few days to go without it, see mm-hmm. if you notice any difference. Oh well, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I can just totally feel it in their tone. You kind of get like, I mean, good. Like like why do you care, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. right. I think it yeah, worked on the right. doors. I don't think it works that well. It's fair. It definitely yeah. comes with your tone. You're like, how are you doing? Or, Hey, how's your day going? Yeah. yeah. Hey, no one actually cares. Anymore. No, right. No, right. Calling, yeah. If you're calling Perfect. someone like over the age of 25, they're going to know that you don't give a fuck. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, when you also ask, do you remember, or does that ring a bell yeah. with that? Do you get pushback there or objections? Um, I wouldn't say objections. I get more so confusion, which is kind of nice. They're like, I mean, not really. Yeah, of course, you filled it out. You did the right thing. And you then you get them back into us. I feel like it builds it builds some like some confusion there. Okay. I feel like. Huh. What age leads you work? I'm doing tier four or tier three now. That makes sense. Tier three, yeah. So okay. they did it a while ago, right? Thing is, so they probably like, won't remember. They do. Sometimes they do, but they usually don't. Everything you say either helps or hurts you. Right. Do you think that helps you? Probably not. Then why do you say it? That's a good point. <laughs> I'm just reading the script. <laughs> but yeah. I try to skip it. See yeah, how it goes. Fair. I'll try it. Try it out. Yeah. Else. Is that like mm-hmm. Milad's script or is that just the Yeah, one? so I took the one that Jonah had yeah. um, online, it, like on the, the time to roll sheet, and then I took Milad's and kind of just like made a hybrid of it. Okay. Okay. You started out talking pretty quick and you slowed down yeah. and your pace and tonality got better. Yeah. Do you think that was just because of the role play or do you always start out? I usually quick? always do that, honestly. Yeah, I feel like I like it kind of like. Maybe it's, maybe it's complete bullshit, but I think it kind of like grabs the attention and then it like draws it kind of just like takes control of the conversation do people ever hang up when you're talking at the very beginning i know they let you talk it's it's talking usually, yeah. okay. i always avoid talking quick especially yeah. at the beginning because yeah. telemarketers talk quick and yeah. Yeah. these people get calls multiple times a time, day from yeah. telemarketers right. so you just want to separate yourself mm-hmm. it's working for you don't change it not yeah. something that i do no i do need to work on slowing down a bit for sure i yeah. do talk you know I talk really fast on a day-to-day basis, right. so that was the hardest part for me, just it's trying to slow, slow down, down and make exactly. sure that they really understand what I'm saying. Because yeah. if you talk too fast, they'll just tune you out and they'll act exactly. like they're listening, and then they won't actually know what the fuck happened. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're presenting, you're, you talk really fast. Like when I'm presenting, I slow down another step. Even more just to really, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 
and no one's ever like, can you, can you get this? Like, no one ever calls that. There's... What would you say is like your percentage of one call close versus, versus appointments? 40% one call close, 60% appointments. And could What's I, your sit rate? Um, of appointments? Yeah. It's bad. It's like maybe 15 or 15, 15, 15 20 percent. It's not bad. I feel like what you were saying because they, they don't show up, and I haven't been doing tie downs. Yeah. So that's what I'm starting to end my mandatory. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been doing that. I've been just. And you said that you sent the business card, right? So yeah, you do that. Yeah. I had the hi hello thing. Yeah. So you guys use it? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's it's a it's a whole new mindset from door to door, right? So it's like, um, callbacks never never call back, right? So right. it's like you just. Train not even to fuck around with appointments or callbacks, you know. I so it's like, I, it, it, I can trying. see where it 100 percent works because if you show credibility and you show that it's important, they'll answer the phone. Right, right. It's gonna make that real. Yeah. So, and it just gives them that opportunity. I find I close a lot more appointments than I do one call closes. Like my close rate for appointments is like 90% if wow. I show them the numbers. Yeah, one call closes like 60 to 70. Because they're taking time for it versus... They already just agreed to, yeah. to look into it. And then like like you said, they're taking time for it. And a lot of times they kind of make their decision before they even get on the call. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of finding something that works for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. As opposed to you just kind of bamboozling them and then all of a sudden like, wait, I'm paying an extra 200 bucks a month for something? Like what? Mm -hmm. Uh, I get a lot more I want to think about it so when the one call closes that are kind of hard to push through. Like, I'm good at handling that, but occasionally mm -hmm. it's just, I get fucked with that. Right. Trying to preempt it versus, because once you get it, it's tough to get, it's tough to keep going. Yeah. Right. Do you, when you, when you do a one call close and you're giving options, do you tell them right before you give them options that we're not, you know, making decisions today and this is just a submit application? Uh, they tell me I want to think about it. Then sometimes I say something kind of along the line, but I never say that they're not making a decision because I just want good persistency. I'd right. rather not put a policy through than have it canceled two right. weeks later. Okay. Um, like if someone's like, I want to think about it, you're just like, gotcha. Where you want to think about which which option mm -hmm. you'd go with or whether or not you wanted the coverage at all. Okay. And if they say whether or not I wanted coverage at all, likely they're just not going to get it. Right. Um, and then you realize it's a why problem. You didn't build enough value. You go back and ask them those hard questions. You figure out where you kind of lost them or if they weren't listening at all. Okay. Um, if it's like, wh which option I wanted to go with? It's like, okay, so I assume you just want to make sure that whatever thing you get locked into, it's something that fits in the budget. Okay. Okay. So what we do here is we just submit a request for coverage, the lowest option. So we'll start you out there. Yeah. You have the next 30 days to decide if you want to raise that coverage up or down, mm -hmm. and I'll be your main point of contact going forward. If you ever want to make any sort of changes to the policy, just call me. That mm -hmm. way you don't have to sit on hold with the insurance company, and I'll get that updated for you. Right. Okay? So if I go silent on you here, I'm obviously not hiding from you. I'm just clicking away in the computer, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I just shut up and get right into the app. Okay. What's been helping for me with the one call closes is doing that, so that way I don't have an issue, but then also when I call them back, tell them they're approved, that's when I ask them if they want to make any changes or if they still want to move forward. That way it doesn't affect my persistency. Okay. Have you tried go, trying doing it the other way where you don't mm -hmm. call to get call to let them know that you get approved and just immediately telling them? Um yeah. Um I I was telling people they were declined on the spot, which is a huge mistake. Right. <laughs> and I stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing only I'll let you know in one to five business days. So, Who taught you to do that? Um Jonah, Marco, okay. everyone's been saying to do that. Where do you think that benefits you? Oh, by calling them back and finding them approved. Um, it gives me time to you know look at other options and try other other carriers. Is that if you get the underwriting, or is that if you get the approval, and you still tell them that you're gonna give them a call in one to five days to let them know if they're approved? Oh, I just do that so that way if I can you know have good persistency that way I can make sure they're sure. To so call them a few days to make yeah. sure that they're not backing out? Yeah. Okay. Have you had anyone back out after that no, call? No. Okay. No. And sometimes I have somebody I feel like they're skeptical and then I call them back two days and they're like happy and they're like, hey, I'm like, okay. yeah, it's great. Cool. Thank you for helping me out. Yeah, if it works, don't change yeah. it. It's, it's something that I've never understood why people do. Really? I think it just takes more time. Um, I think it's always good. I, in solar, we, the more contacts you have with them the more solid it would be like don't be afraid to go back and show them your design after they already signed and mm -hmm. go back again and see how they're doing because it just makes them more like happy with their yeah. decision.
I, I think I tried it for like a week, and I just like noticed it was pretty hard to actually get a hold of the person again. Oh. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure I did have one person decide, you know, I... Did you tell them you were going to call them one to five days? I told them I'd give them a call um, in one to two days, let them know if they got approved. It was like a mutual Omaha one or something, uh, where it like usually doesn't take longer than that. Okay. So you never tell them they're approved? On the spot. Yeah, okay, so right before later. I tell them prices, I'm like, hey, look, you're not making decisions today. We're just seeing if you're getting approved. That way, that I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting away to think about it right away since the one call closed. I don't think you should yeah, say we're not making decisions. But you're lying to them because you're submitting an application and they're going to have their account drafted. Mm -hmm. But there is a 30 day period, right? So if they yeah, want to cancel, they can get their but money. When back, someone sees money out of their, okay. But when someone sees money get pulled out of their account, when you say, well, I also, they're making a decision. I also say every time, hey, if you see that first draft, that's good news. You got approved. Oh, okay. well, as long as I guess you preempted When you say we're not making any decisions today, go and ask for that banking information. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get pushed back? Um, no, I, I tell them that, hey, this is how we're going to prove it to you that's taking up this policy. So, do you say that before, or do you say that after they have an objection? Like, well, why do you need this? I don't even know no, how to make I, a decision. All the, all the objections are possible for, I have that, I say something preemptively. Like, okay. I say that for think about it, I say that for banking, so I don't have objections. Okay. And that, that's been working? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I just avoid bringing it up. I know that works with solar. You bring up the objection before they do, and you get around it. But I find it works even better just it's different on the acting like it's so normal it's that totally they just like the yeah that they just won't think anything of it yeah because a lot of times if you preemptively say something I found that yeah. kind of the guard can go up uh -huh. just because it's like you're trying to explain why this is the right thing when like they should just trust that you're the professional and that's right. just what we're doing right I guess the way I say it's kind of chill it's not like it's a big deal good. Yeah, so, if it works, then I should don't change yeah, it. Definitely, it's like, hey, don't worry. Oh, what do we, I'm like, no, we're not making decisions today. Blah, blah, blah. Like, two seconds, explain it's that. It's kind of like you have to change it, but it's kind of weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fair. So, yeah. Did anyone teach you guys about the, the go ahead with your social? Or like the go ahead with your account? Remember? Is that like, that? like that? Yeah, like, you, that's okay. how you do it? Yeah, like, okay. um, you like, uh, like, I'll just, or you say, like, uh, they just confirm your identity and make sure there's no hidden prescriptions. They check out, you know, your medical history, so they might be. Uh, they do all that. So just go ahead with that whenever you're ready. Is that, that, that okay. what you mean? The, that's kind of explaining what he does, which okay. I don't, where okay. you so kind you of do, yeah. explain what why you need it before you say it. Mm -hmm. I skip that part entirely. Okay. That part in the script where it's like, we're going to need three pieces of whatever required in the application. I don't do it until I ask for it. I don't do that until I ask for it, but yeah. You might want to try, what's your close percentage? Uh, 25%. Okay. You might want to try not saying that before yeah. and just asking it really calm, shoulders rolled back. The way I, that's kind of how I used to do it. I got a lot of pushback, mm -hmm. close percentage was low. I started to, when you're going through the application, when it's on the page where it like asks what state they're born in, I asked that question. I'm like, okay, and I assume you were born in the state of Missouri, mm -hmm. right? They're like, yeah, okay. Go ahead with your social. Mm, wow. And they just give it to you. Yeah, when I was like, what's your social? Or it's like, what's your, like, then uh, push back, like, and your social security number, or you explain it before, then they do it. They're like, I don't know if I'm comfortable. That's like, cool. if you're just so comfortable with it, and you act like you do it every day, like, which you do. I have no issues with social. I just have a different way of doing it. Yeah. Um, after I get them their options, I ask them immediately, they pick an option. I just go straight into asking who's your beneficiary. I don't make a big deal of it. Okay, who's your beneficiary? What's their middle initial? And I'll be like, okay, let's you see. Write that down, save it. Yeah. And do you do you ask who do you bank with? Let me I see who partner with your bank. So yeah, so that's what I do. I don't say let me see who we partner with your bank. Uh -huh. I just say okay, this is important if any guys don't do this. Uh -huh. And who do you bank with? Oh, okay, I like okay. that better. And Wells Fargo was I assume that was opened up in the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you Google their routing. Looks like we do have their routing number on file. You have that in front of you, let me know. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read out what we have. So after you get it, you immediately read it out. If they try to read it, you're like, oh I got it, I'll read it. And then you just cut them off and start reading it. Just yeah. Lock and go number. ahead with that yeah. account number. Yeah, and so I, the second they say their account number, I just say and social. And that's when I usually get it. You get the account number before the social page because most applications yeah. ask for the social long before that. Well, I, I get all info before even going to an app. Really? Mm -hmm. I just write it all down that way. I don't have to like wait. I just have it and now we can go through that. Oh. 
but um, I feel like it's a it's a good ladder because I have the routing. Okay, that's credibility. Right now they're giving me account. All right, we already have account. Give me social. Okay. And you never get pushback. I mean, I already show them I have routing so that they're like comfortable with account. Now we're comfortable with social. They already giving account. Interesting. So that just works for me, but I like yeah, the kind of state. Yeah. State works good too. Yeah. I'm gonna, it's a good thing to experiment with. Anyone feel like they really want to work on their clothes and want to go through that with me? Clothes? Like, yeah. Just like the actual clothes, like we're, we go through the one call clothes mm -hmm. script. Because mm -hmm. we don't have to go through everyone if you guys don't want to. Yeah, I want to go through it because I got rejected yesterday. A Hawaii lady. <laughs> Let's do it. But uh, she, she just didn't have, I have this problem a lot. They don't have a checkbook, they don't have an app, and I'm just like, okay. You call the bank? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. You just look up their bank, merge the call, um, explain. What do you say? Go ahead and ask them for the routing account. Like after they say don't have a check, okay, we're going to go ahead and call your bank. You don't have a check? Okay. Do you, do you get like bank statements in the mail? Do you get that on your phone? Okay. They're like, uh, if they really don't have it, okay, gotcha. Yeah, the only other way we can get that is we just call the bank. So give me about two seconds. I'm going to find their phone number and I'll get the call merged. Okay. Some. It's crazy how many people have that account number, like, like, like memorized. Yeah. Right. Well, like old people. Especially with like twelve like, numbers. So they, like, got the shit, they got that shit locked down. down, man. That's I'm the like, best. Now I'm memorized. Oh. You ask him. Oh shit! You should write it down. So <laughs> soon, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Nice. I don't have it memorized. I have no issues. Then. Let's go through your clothes. Okay. Um. Just from the top of the one call close script. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got a pen and paper. Oh, okay. So that would be, at, we're doing financial inventory and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did all that. Just get that. Okay. So, um, Turner, um, I'm going to be the one that's going to be helping you with the mortgage protection today. Now, just let me ask you this. Uh, what was the reason you're interested in getting mortgage protection today? So to protect your kids, your wife? I don't really know if I'm interested in it. I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, if you were to pass away tomorrow, God forbid, um, what would happen to your, you know, how, would, how would your kids and your wife you know, handle the mortgage payment? Um, my wife would probably just have to pick up a few extra shifts. Mm. Gotcha. Um, so, is this something that's important to you that your wife doesn't have to do that? Yeah. Okay. If the price is right. Gotcha. Um, so I'm assuming... What does this cost? Right. Um, so I'm just the medical underwriter. I don't... I'm not sales. That's a different department. Oh, okay. So I'm just the one that qualifies you. Now, I'm assuming as well you were looking for coverage on the living side as well. So God forbid any situation where you become sick, uh, disabled cancer, heart attack, uh, that or any disability that your mortgage is taken care of as well. You can't work. I guess so. Yeah. Is that extra? Gotcha. Um, so it really depends. Um, I don't really do the prices here. Like I said, uh, we're just going to see what you qualify for today. Um, so let's, I'm going to go into the financial maturity here. Ask you, hey, how young are you, Betty? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it looks like I got all the information I need here. It looks like they're sending us to a company called Aetna. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get you approved here. Now, who do you bank with? Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, perfect. And was that open in the state of Indiana? Yeah. In that county? Okay, perfect. Uh, it looks good news. Looks like we do partner with your bank here. The routing number I have is one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and the only thing I don't see here is the account number, so go ahead with that. We didn't even go over the numbers yet. How much is this going to cost me? Oh, uh, right. So usually we just have to see if, you know, you're the one that's on your bank here. So we can see if you're the one that's taking out the insurance today. Uh, once we approve that, then I uh, can get you some options. Yeah, well, like I said, man, earlier, I don't even know if I'm interested in this. I just mm -hmm. wanted to see what it's going to cost me. Of course. Uh, I totally understand that, um, and what I've you know what I've seen here is you know 
we don't get you approved here, then we don't have anything to think about it in the first place. Right, but I don't even, is this a hundred dollars? Is this three hundred dollars? Like, I, mm -hmm. it, bills are tight here, man. Of course, and we're gonna find here something that's within your budget. Okay. And I work with the uh, state regulated programs here, so we'll find you something that's affordable here for you. Now, um, that round number, was that correct? Yeah, that was right. Okay. Let's go ahead with the count here. Six two three three one four. Perfect. And social. You can't even give me any sort of numbers before that. Um, well, until I can confirm your medical, you know, information here, which is tied to your social, I'm not gonna be able to get you any type of numbers, any kind of approvals. Okay. Six one one two seven three zero five zero. Perfect. And all right. So let me pull up here. So Aetna here, they have a couple options here for you. Um, so should I do an equity protection or just mortgage? Doesn't you already pitched living benefits, so just go mortgage. Okay. All right, so it looks like we have uh, three options here for you. Um, sometimes, okay, so looks like we have the full mortgage option here. Uh, second option would be half, and then the third option would be a quarter of the mortgage. Uh, okay. So the top one's gonna be 200 per month. The middle is going to be 100, and the quarter is going to be 50 bucks per month. Uh, just let me know which one would be most comfortable and affordable for you. Okay. And we'll see if we can get you approved. Yeah, I want to talk about this with my dad. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, so usually it takes about one to five business days here to see if we can get you approved for this coverage. Uh, insurance companies um, still need to see if your anything on your medical record here that you told me is, is all factual and correct. Okay. And then at that point, I'll give you a call back. Just let me know what you guys talked about and we'll make some changes. Okay. So okay. Let's, let's see if we can submit here for the lowest one here. I'm going to go ahead and just get this submitted here for you. So we can get you approved. Um, and we're not paying this today, right? No. Yeah. Well, as soon as um, we get you approved here, uh, you will see a draft from the bank. So that's good news that you were approved. I didn't even tell you I wanted it yet. Right, so this we're just going to be submitting for the lowest option here. Um, so that way you have time to talk to your wife and if you want to increase at that moment. You said it was one to five days? Mm -hmm. So if it gets approved tomorrow and drafted, mm -hmm. what then? Right, so we can always call up the insurance company and if you decide you don't want covered at all, that's no problem at all. Um, it looks like here you definitely are going to need some coverage here because your wife would be without, she would have to pick up some jobs, like you said. So definitely going to need to get you some coverage. Um, but if, you, if she decides that, hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to want to get a job in that situation, no problem at all. You can always make those changes. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you write down the info for your policy here. Can, can we make this start in like July? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course we can make it start in July. Now, I mean, if something happens to you, I mean, life happens, you know, you can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, right. You're, you're going to be left without any coverage until July. Okay. What was the reason you wanted to start in July? I only get paid on the 31st. Things are just tight here, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, can you cut back on some cigarettes, Turner? Stop buying some nice I, I don't smoke, man. You don't smoke? Okay. <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever your expenses can you. <laughs> we, can we uh, stop going out to eat so much, Turner? We can make some room for your family. <laughs> I guess, man. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, silver guys. I'm going to have you write down the info on your policy here. We got Aetna, it's the name of the company. Uh, we submitted the lowest amount here for today, which was 50 bucks a month. Um, that recurring bill date will be on the third of the month. If you don't want to make any changes, it'll stay there. If you do, when I call you back, you can always make a change to that draft date. Um, your benefits here are the living benefits, cash value, oh, cash value. Um, uh, my name's Ben, uh, so make sure you write that down, save it in your phone as the insurance guy, so you can't remember my name, just look that up, you'll find me. Okay. And uh, your security code here is very important. Uh, you might be getting some other calls from other guys here. Um, it's, it's just been an issue with our system here. They've been giving out info and we haven't been able to get a control over it yet, so just make sure you hang up on them or send me their number if anyone tries to bother you. Um, that security code is BM4091. Okay. All right. And uh, it's been a pleasure helping you today. I'll be calling you about one to five of the days here. And uh, just give me a sh 
call or shoot me a text if you need anything else. Talk to you then. Okay, and if I want to cancel, what does that look like? No problem. So you're not going to have to call any of my Android numbers or anything. I'm going to be your insurance agent for life here. So if you decide you don't want it, no big deal. Uh, if you decide you do, I'm going to be your agent here. You never have to call the companies. I can handle everything here for you, okay? Okay. Gotcha. All right, perfect. Uh, who taught you to show three options for the full mortgage and to show it 25%? I usually don't. I just was role playing. Gotcha. Yeah. I always show two. I just do full and half usually. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. full and salary, for like they're young. Yeah, I was going to do salary, but I was like in role play. I, was, I usually do salary and half and full, yeah. Gotcha. What, any other thoughts? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember what thoughts I There's have. A lot, yeah. I think when they are really trying to push a certain date, because I was trying to get you to push the draft date out. Mm -hmm. We're still just trying to hammer that it was going to be charged in the third. <laughs> when I made it very clear that like I'm not getting paid until the 31st. Yeah. I think you're better off explaining that we can push the draft date out 30 days max. Okay. Since you do get paid on this day. We just want to make sure this policy won't lapse. Okay. So we'll set it up for the first of the month, knowing that obviously you'll have the money for this. Okay. Because otherwise you're going to get a lot of insufficient funds notifications where it just tries to draft from your account. I already said I don't have the money. They're not going to have the money. Then you're not going to get paid. Then it's just going to be a chargeback. Oh, wow. So it's, you're better off pushing the draft date out, knowing that that's going to delay your pay, but make it a stickier sale because like 90% of the population that we're dealing with, when they get money in their account, they spend it. Yeah. Especially if you're dealing with someone older. Like their social security's gone in the first two weeks and they're just like floating on like 20 bucks. Wow. So you just need to make sure that it's the first thing that comes out of their account at the beginning of the month so that they will pay for it. Okay. And then that little expenses and they can pull that over instead of just kind of making that helps a lot. impulsive this buying decisions. My first month that in experience any chargebacks or any frustrations yet, so I'm probably going to because I haven't been doing that. Gotcha. My first week I did draft out and then I was like, I'm not getting paid. Let me just do all my sales the same day. Yeah. Well, if you really need the money, I understand uh, trying to force it. Right. Um, that's how I was when I first started. Right. But now I'm at a point where like, if I have to set the draft date out 30 days, care. like I couldn't care less. Right. But, but also the longer you put it out, the higher the risk is of just not them dropping it. Cause right. it's like time kills deals. True. So it's, I mean, what, what do you think about that? I mean, I mean you, realistically, you know they what? have to keep it in place for 12 months. What difference is it going to make if they already make one payment versus like... I guess they can't have a free for free in the one. Yeah, it's not like solar where they can rip it off the room. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Like, this is something they have to be committed to for the whole year. Mm -hmm. yeah. You always ask for the social and account number before showing numbers? Um, no, usually I give options first. Okay. But that's what threw me off completely. That's why I was giving you so much pushback. Right. Just because, like, if I did that to someone, it would not go well. <laughs> you were persistent, too. You yeah. wouldn't budge, man. Yeah, he asked you for numbers, like, five times. Yeah. You were like, nah, dude. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Turner gave in, but they wouldn't have given yeah, in. Yeah, you had great tonality. I liked how calm you sounded. Like, any anything I threw at you, mm -hmm. you just shrugged off, treated it as, like, a smoke screen, which is what you're supposed to do. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, usually I just go till they hang up on me, which has happened yesterday with the Hawaii lady. She just hung up on me after I asked for account number for the third time. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. That's what I do. I one call close, you know, until they hang up. Either we get we're getting a deal you or they're hanging up. Options? On me. Yeah, I show their options, yeah. I might think of some I'm just more looking for the easy sales like Gabe was saying yesterday, you know. Yeah. Move on to the next guy. It'll give me account. How's your close percentage? I haven't really gotten around to calculating all that stuff. Yeah, I just You're got the, the dial tracker. You just I got just it. got the sheet quantity. Yeah. It makes it really easy to look at it. Luckily, okay. as long as you're like keeping good track of everything. I will. It's definitely important, or an important metric to, to track, just so you know like really what you need to work on. Because a lot of people like they swear it's their close that's the issue, but they have like a fifty percent close rate, which is like average. So then it's wow, fifty is average. Yeah. I mean, you should be closing one out of every three people you talk to, no matter what you say. Is that 33? Even if you're brand new, 33%. So 50 is good, right? 50 is average. I mean, I guess like 45 is average. Huh. Uh, you, you'll be closing like 70% of people, depending on your skill level. I'd say like 10 to 20% just won't close. One call close percentage is totally agreed. Because you have to set, appointment is a close as well. If you can get an appointment, that's a close that you have on top of the appointment close, right? I, I mean, I just see that as an appointment set. Like, setting an appointment, I don't feel like I really did much. 
Okay. Just got my foot in the door for another time. So I feel like I'm getting a lot of presentations with the one call close, but they're not always gonna close. Presentation, you're getting a lot. You don't have as much appointments. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but um, I'm trying to convey what I'm saying, but it's not coming through. But uh, you have to get that appointment set. The one call close, you're just going right into it. So it's a lower chance of that close. Agreed. It's hard to calculate the closing percentage that way. Some big agencies have found that the persistency with one call closes is lower too. True. Especially if you're just talking to them once. Mm -hmm. I, I do kind of like what you do where you call them again for those one call closes. Yeah. For the appointments. Yeah. I don't think it matters that much. That's already the second time you talk to yeah. them. And if you lock it down really well where you make sure that like they realize you're their agent for life and right. you're going to be the one to put the necessary pressure on the insurance company right. to make sure that policy pays out, like they will feel good about it. Mm -hmm. I always explain when they're going to get the policy packet. I assume you probably do that too. Yeah. Especially with Mutual of Omaha. I write like 80 to 90% Mutual of Omaha. Okay. They're harder to replace. Mm -hmm. Persistency on those is the best out of any carrier with FFL. Mm -hmm. Just because it's so fucking cheap and they have living benefits with their term. Like no one's right. gonna come meet my price. You work by 12 hour shifts, so that's how that goes. Okay, so yeah. Maybe, you know, it's just gonna be maybe, maybe Tuesday, maybe. Yeah. It works for me, but hopefully it works for him. Okay, gotcha. What time does he get home from work today? Okay, yeah, I'm not really available until about 8 today anyway, so I'll put you on the calendar for then, and I'll be real respectful of your time. You said you're driving, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the what's the best email to send you the Zoom link to? All right. Okay, and then is this the best number to call you at? All right, good. Uh, so I just asked for two things from you and your boyfriend this afternoon. I know you guys will be real busy. Of course, I will be as well. But just want to make sure you're intentional about being ready for me. So if you need to set a reminder or an alarm on your phone, you know, whatever, just to make sure you guys are ready to go uh, when I call between like 8 and 8.30. All right? Okay. Sounds good. We'll talk to you then. Have a good one. All right, thank you. All right, yeah, bye. Hey, Yeah. Yeah, this is Ryan. Uh, just having to touch base with you real quick here about your file for your home there on that you just closed out with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just need to confirm some info that you received here real quick and I'll let you go. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, right after closing, we had uh, sent something important out to you. It was that letter about the mortgage protection. That's the coverage, yeah. you know, that pays off or down the home if you get sick or pass away. Do you remember seeing that at all? Okay, gotcha. Is that because somebody showed you something way too expensive or they said you wouldn't qualify? Um, neither. We just don't feel we need it. Okay, cool. I'll decline it for you. Have a good one. I'm looking for like nice, easy yeah, come back quality people. appointments. You know, like I work in Fresh Lead, so I'm, I'm not trying to argue. Yeah. Um, fresh call in mortgage. Call in. Yeah. So you call in. Why are you? I mean, the mailers aren't like, hey, if you want to have mortgage, someone call you for mortgage protection, <laughs> like, like no, you know, call know. in on this form. It's kind of like, hey, you might be able to get this mortgage protection. You missed it when you yeah. closed call in. Type. It's more like along those lines. Yeah. Cool. With the call in ones. The fresh mortgage is like pretty obvious. Is it integrity? You have a uh, This is through MailPro. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's, I think integrity owns them now. Which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. You call directly from your phone, or do you use an auto dialer? So I don't use an auto dialer. Um, you have to have like specific leads that have consented to being auto dialed. So I don't really yeah, this, uh, don't I don't really use them. I just use I have a burner app on my phone that just gives me different phone numbers. So that's what I use. So every single call that you make. It, it changes, it randomly gives you a number? No, um, I, you, I, you can get up to 10 phone numbers. So I pick an area code and then I just dial with an area code from that state. Yo, Ryan. Yep. Ryan. How are you? Good to meet you, brother. Good, good to meet you I as well. I see you're busy. You yes, sir, we're, we're back here working, how are you? All right, good, real good. So you're in insurance. Yes, sir, yeah, yeah. I do. So you obviously have heard of situations like mine mm -hmm. being older of course heart 
issues. Yeah. And smoker. What are the odds of me getting insurance so I don't waste my time? The odds are 100%. Okay, so let's if rock you, and if roll. If your heart's beating, we're good. You're now, good. Okay. I will I will tell you, it's not going to be what I might get, right? So just set that but, expectation. No, no, I know. Wouldn't be the same exact thing. Okay. Um, so, so I gave him all my information except my social. Do you have everything you got? He me sent me, um, he sent me most of, uh, hold on, let me go find the text messages from him. He sent me a lot of, uh, what we'd need. Okay. Where and why name? do you need a social security number? So they they're access not, my medical records? Yeah. So that's what's required? Yeah. They're not okay. going to take my word for it or your word for it that you're not already dead no. or you know what I, so they, they just have to have it. something to check that by. Um, so basically he... I got a dress, how much you owe on the home. Mm -hmm. um, he was telling me you're wanting to, wife, girlfriend? Wife. Wife, okay. So wanting to make sure if you die, she's got Mortgage some help coming. paid or as much okay. as you can get me insured for. Okay. Um, so let me do this. Let me ask you a few uh, health questions. He told me um, a little bit of it, taking some blood thinners. Nothing crazy going on, um, but heart attack. Yeah. What, uh, how long ago was that? Uh, 10 years ago, at least, maybe 11. Okay, heart attack. 10 to 11 years, okay. And then taking blood thinners. Do you know the name? No, nah, they're long names. That's okay, just one? No, I or think more than one. one blood thinner, but the other other one's cholesterol, okay. cholesterol. blood pressure, yeah. you know, a little mixture of... Probably like Arturolistatin, Metropolis. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's Brown. one of them, mm -hmm. yeah. It sure okay. is. All right, and then uh, so we're taking medications for cholesterol, blood pressure. We got the blood thinner. Do you take medications for anything else? No. And then had the heart attack ten or eleven years ago. Any cancers, stints Nothing. put in, COPD? No. Nothing. Okay. You trying to quit smoking? No. 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 All right. I have one carrier who might give you a non-smoker's right for three years if you're trying to quit. If you're not trying to quit, then there's other carriers that'll be better though. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so. Okay, um, all right. Yeah, normally there's like eight or nine of us here in this office total. Mm -hmm. They we every month, you know, we'll bring a bunch of newer people in and do a I bunch of training. So people. that's where everybody's everyone flew in from all over. And you're the an place. insurance broker. Is that what your official title is? You got a yes, business sir, card. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay. I don't do physical ones. I because normally I do everything on Zoom. So I don't have this office set up for people to come in. It's just for gotcha. you know for me <laughs> my, or my wife basically. She does uh, she does interior design, so she designed this office. But I'll send you uh, my digital business card here. Okay. What's your cell? You from the Chicago area? Yeah. So I texted you a link that three one nine area code. That is my cell number. Okay. Um. So that's the one. Um. So I'm gonna. I already know what we're going to be able to get. Um, so there's a couple different types of insurance. So just so you just so you understand, um, when we do mortgage protection, it's not like it used to be where it's separated from like life insurance, right? right. So now we put it under the umbrella of life insurance so that way it's tax free. The right. funds get paid directly to your wife and she can use them however. Because okay. it used to get paid to the mortgage company right. and if you were paying for 500,000 and only 100,000 paid out to them, they keep the leftovers. Right. And it was taxable for you. Right. So we have it under life insurance now. So we'll be able to get um, permanent insurance for you. So it's not going to expire. It's not like a term coverage where, right. you know, you have five years or 10 years and then it's done. Right. So we'll get something permanent. Um, with your health issues, um, again, nothing crazy going on. So when I say with your health issues, I just mean with the, you know, the stuff. Um, no one carrier is going to give us more than maybe 50,000. So we are going to do if we, you know, depending on what you, what you'd like to spend, we'll probably use a couple different carriers about right. to get us, mm -hmm. you know, to get us a good amount of coverage. All right. See what you can do. Um, so let's see. Uh, how old are you? 63. Yeah. 63. Just yesterday. All right. And then date of birth. I am going to ask you all these questions, most of the questions he asked you yesterday, just okay. because um, I can't, uh, I had to ask everything word for word on the application. <laughs> right, so, right. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm just going, I'm logging on to a couple of the different carriers that we work with and pulling, pulling the quotes and stuff from them. 
Uh, so give me a second, and I'll have I'll have some options up here for you. Um, how long have you been married? Three years. Three years. Oh, good. She from here as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like where our office is. I live over in uh, Cherville. You know where Cherville is? I sure do. Yeah, I live in Cherville, and it's nice. The office being here, it's kind of on the way to Chicago, right. you know, so some right. days will... Easy to get to yeah, right off the highway. Exactly, like, boom, yeah. boom, boom. I work for one of the dealerships I work for is Web4 in Highland. Oh, yeah. It's one of my big accounts, the Web Boys. Okay, good, yeah. Um, my wife, she did interior design for Daisy oh. for quite a while. Daisy Webb, who's Brian Webb's... Do you know Brian? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Brian Webb's uh, wife, wife, Daisy. Yeah, yeah oh, my good. wife, she worked for her for a couple years. And now my wife works for me. Nice. <laughs> so, um, but you can tell she did a really good job yeah, in this yeah, office. Very huh? nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, basically, there's no shortage of carriers. Um, so, we'll be able to get, if you want to get the full, co you know, coverage for the full 355000 we can, that's going to get real pricey on you. Um, so... Kind of what I um, what I do, what I'll do for some people is we can look at doing a hundred thousand dollars of coverage is probably going to run you over five hundred a month. Okay. But it is good coverage. So this is coverage that I would give to m like my parents. Be like, okay. hey, I'd be good giving you this coverage. So um, we can look at three hundred and thirty thousand or three. I think you owe three fifty five. We can look at three hundred fifty five if you want. A lot of times, what I'm doing in a situation like this. Some people can spend five, eight hundred a month. A lot of people can't. Right. Either way, it, it's um, we'll be able to get something. So we can set something up to pay out like a hundred thousand dollars when you die. So you die, your wife gets a check for a hundred thousand. She can decide. She okay. Can give me a couple of those for a hundred, so we get her up. To, you know. Okay. We get her a couple hundred thousand. Okay. Yep. Let me and do quotes with a couple of the other carriers. What's like, because um, I can quote with the carriers all day, basically. Uh, what's the max that you'd want to, that you're like, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't spend more than X amount a month. Yeah, I don't want to spend more than a G-note, you know. Okay. All right. I think a thousand a month is plenty to sew into that program. Yeah, and a thousand a month will get her coverage where you're young. Hopefully we got another... 20, yeah. 15, 20 years, 15, you know? 20 years, yeah. So 15, 20 years from now, the home will be paid down a good bit too. So right. if you do 100, right. 200,000, it's just about enough to pay off the home. And even if it doesn't, the mortgage will be a couple hundred. Right, right. that's right. I got 125,000 for 831 a month between three different carriers. Um, those are going to be the cheaper, the cheapest carriers. So just just so you know, like life insurance is kind of like gas, where it's state regulated. Mm -hmm. So if it's the same exact product between the different carriers, there's not going to be a big pri a big price difference. Right. So the price differences will come from this carrier will pay out double if you die in an accident. Or you know, like right. something like that. Right. So that's the only reason they're different Accidental is because they're death. they have different benefits. Right. Um, so at your age, accidental death, the chances you die in an accident are less than a percent of a percent. Right. So I don't think it's. Uh, so I wouldn't have my parents spend money on that. Um, right. What do you do for work though? Sign maker. Okay. Wrap vehicles. We wrap cars. Okay, not too dangerous. No. So, uh, yeah, I don't think accidental will, will fit. So I'm going to try to get you that mm -hmm. 125000 around 830 a month, um, and then go from there. I got to do this one carrier at a time. Yep. Um, so so you me... can do that. You can do your homework and put it all together. Now that I've met you and this and that, we, you need right, something to you sign something. Um, you, you, got all, you need my social? What do you need? Um, so I can get out of here. So... Yeah, let me let me get all the info that I need from you. Mm -hmm. I don't like to write stuff down, like right. social and things like that. So let me um, give me ten minutes. Okay. I ask you a couple questions, and oh, I'll okay. start an application, and then um, 
uh, that'll give me all the info that I need. So later on, I'll text you probably like a six digit code. There's a couple carries that I just text you a six digit code. There's one where I text you something to sign. Gotcha. Um, so uh, first name and last name, please. Are you Italian? No. Right. German. An Indian. German. Okay. Indian. I'm German too. Alright. Yeah. Height and weight? Uh, height 5'9, weight 225. Okay. Alright, and then what state were you born in? Missouri. Missouri. What, yeah. what part? Lebanon. Okay, cool. My, my wife's grandma's in, um, she lives in St. Louis. Oh. But she's like born and raised there. She was there when it was like small, you know? Yeah. And, all right. Yep. All right. That is the new address, the new house. All right. Well, uh, you've lived there less than five years, right? Yeah, I haven't even moved in yet. What was your previous zip code? 60540. Oh, okay. And then bill. best email for you? Is my wife's email at yahoo.com. That's her maiden name. All right. And the best cell number for me to text you at, that's uh, six. Mm -hmm. All right. So then I'd be naming a beneficiary on the policy. Yep, I'll get her info here from oh, you okay. in a sec. Um, all right, and then, so like we were saying, social is what they use to check prescription history and everything. Um, right. So go ahead with your social. Social. All right. Okay, in a second here, I'm going to send you a text with a six-digit code on it. Uh -huh. um, you don't need to click the link or anything. Just read me the six digits. This lets them check your prescription history and make sure you didn't, like, break out of prison or anything crazy. Right. All right? Um, so give me one second. And we said not planning on quitting smoking, right? No. How much money can I save us if we backdate? Oh, look at that. You had a birthday recently. That's mm -hmm. good because they'll let us backdate the coverage so instead of basically we're saving what are we saving nine bucks a month with one of these okay, <laughs> so good. everyone ma everyone matters yeah. okay so from yeah. 227 down to 218 so let's do that let's do that all right i'm going to text you this code it'll say america authorization code just read me the six digits that pops okay. up Three eight zero six two zero. Three eight zero six two zero. All right, perfect. Um, okay, and then wife's first and last name, date of birth for, or phone number, whatever. You, if you don't know date of birth, you uh, phone number is fine too. And then if you'll, uh, I'll need to just see your driver's license. Mm -hmm. Her phone number is. Okay, and then um, right, just read me your driver's license number. I know you're. I ain't tripping. <laughs> right. Could you read me your driver's license number when you got that out? Yep. All right. And then the account that you want to use for the payments, uh, what bank would that be through? That would be through Chase Bank. Okay. Did you open that in Illinois? Yeah. Okay. So I'll read you the routing number. I just need just the account number. Oh, I, I don't know that I have that, brother. That's My wife uh, does all that checking. How would I get my account number? Do you, do you I have, have the debit Chase, card. Do you have the Chase app um, on your phone? No, she does all that. Do they give you a little card with uh, I have a debit they give card, card? That's it. Okay. Um, not too big of a problem. So uh, most of this, so I, they they do draft it out of the bank, but I yeah. can obviously I'm we not have in time. A rush. You have yeah, I'm not in a rush. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. not in a rush. Um, so. Um, yeah, if you could try to call her right now. Otherwise, when you get home, you know, give me a ring. Hello? I'm with this life insurance gentleman here in Munster, Indiana. I need our, a routing number for our checking account. Actually, the account number. I have the routing number. Oh, he has the routing number. I need the checking account number. Thanks, baby. Bye. Okay. And then in a second, I'm going to send you one more text. Okay. Um, with another six-digit code. I'll have you read it to me. This is, this is, once we have this done, I have you approved with one of the carriers, and then I'll let you go, and I'll right. let you know what, how everything. You'll go from there. Yeah, I'll go from there. I want to get you approved with at least one, because that gives me a, you know, uh, for that way, I don't have to call you 20 times just in case something happens. So I text you one more code. Okay. Did it get it? Yeah. Okay. 
again, you can call me anytime. Okay, okay. brother. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Five four zero oh, one one six. All right. And then as long as we get approved, coverage starts right away. All right. So there's no like waiting period or anything. Um, the first premium wouldn't draft, but it probably next week. It's late on a Friday, so maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, and, and that would be, be for one hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah. So um, this carrier right now is two twenty-seven a month. So I'm gonna get all the work done today, and then I'll call you and say, There's Hey, here's carriers, these three carriers. This is one hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, it'll be se it'll be separate, separate ones. So I'll text payment. you what to look for, how much from each carrier, mm -hmm. um, and then it'd be on the fifth of every month. Okay. And going forward after that, the fifth of every month. Right for right now, we're looking at. I would say it'll be between eight and eight sixty a month. Right. Um, for the one hundred twenty five thousand, I'll get you approved for that, and then if you want to add more, you know, I know I, I feel like one hundred twenty five thousand is a I good amount of coverage because I have some life insurance already. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, so cool. We got approved with that Thanks, carrier. Brother. Good. Let me good uh, man. yeah, let me text you the carrier and the policy number. I just want to make sure you get it before you get out of here. Uh, six three zero. Oh. Okay, I'm going to text you the name of the carrier, mm -hmm. the first one. And I'll get paperwork on all this, right? Yes, sir, it'll come in the mail. Policy number. And that in three, four weeks, you'll see it come in the mail. And then somebody calls you about the mortgage protection, ask them for your policy number. If they don't have that, tell them to kick rocks. Kick right? my policy number from what? Uh, I just texted you. Uh, oh, any, any one of the carriers. You're going to have three policy numbers because we have three carriers. So if someone calls you and is like, hey, mortgage protection is incomplete or anything, because um, obviously you probably got more than one card in the mail, so there was a miscommunication. But okay. that's the policy number right there. For so if someone one. other than myself or if Johnny calls you, he's a great guy, by the way, Johnny is. Okay. Um, if he calls you or I call you, you know, that that's fine. If anybody else calls you, just ask them for a policy number. That's how you'll know they're legit. From this particular carrier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's there's, how you there, know. You're getting me more carriers, though, mm -hmm. so I'm going to yes, have sir. multiple policy and I'll send numbers. You the, I'll, I'll send you the, the stuff when it comes up. So Sounds I'll call you later on today. Sounds I'm going to send you a couple other text codes, so I'll just call and be like, hey, read me this code. And that's it. Gotcha. Thank All you. All right. Sounds good. Yep. You have a good day, man. Yep, you too. Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. My name is Benjamin Sanpali. Today we're here with Jonah Lewis. Just started selling insurance with him about a month ago. Incredible mentor, has an incredible story. Um, just so much to learn from him. He's always doing podcasts of his own and he's, he's a great interviewer, asks great questions and I just don't see a lot of people interviewing him. And I said, hey, now it's your time for the spotlight. I'm a mysterious no, guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so now we're going to get you know, a chance to get to know a little bit more about Jonah. Um, so Jonah, tell us here more about you, know, you. Like, What's your story? How did you get started in sales? And how you ended up where you are today? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you for the great in introduction. Of course. And I uh, appreciate you having me on the, the mobile podcast set up here. <laughs> and... um. Yeah, dude, and also I want to throw in there that I've enjoyed working with you so far as well. But my story <clears throat> so far is I grew up in a small town, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I uh, grew up out in the country. There's about out of Sioux, outside of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so there's like less than a thousand people in my hometown in the country. And um, I was actually a lot of people don't know this. I was homeschooled until eighth grade. So I went to school for the first time in eighth grade. And I mean, honestly, I had a great childhood, you know, parents that loved me and um, grew up in a good home. We you know we didn't really struggle much. I guess some adversity that I did face though as a kid, uh, when I was 14, my mom got diagnosed with colon cancer and she passed away wow. um, actually three weeks after we found out. Wow, and that's quick. So that was mm -hmm. pretty tough and obviously affected me as a teenager because, you know, me and my mom were, were very close and it's, um. but other than that, you know, grew up. I uh, come from a big family, so I've got I'm the oldest, and there's eight of us now. So it's uh, I have six younger brothers and a sister. Wow! Mm -hmm. So I am the oldest in my family. So oh. you know, gotta be a good example to everybody. And um, but it's been awesome, dude. You know, having a big family and that many people is really cool. And you know, they're all they're all great individuals. All my brothers are you know they have big aspirations, big goals. They're hard workers. They got a lot of integrity. So. Yeah, dude, and could, could not um, 
not sure if I'd want that many kids of my own. Actually, definitely don't know. I can say that for a fact. <laughs> but I, I've enjoyed growing up with that many people. And our uh, our holidays are always uh, it's always, always eventful in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. What do your parents do for work? So my dad is the uh, – he runs the South Dakota – foundation for medical care so oh. they review doctors and records of hospitals nurses nursing homes uh-huh. in the state and basically make sure everybody's doing their job so medical kind of as well yes so, uh-huh. yeah so mm-hmm. similar mm-hmm. similar to insurance yeah um and then my stepmom so she was actually actually nobody really knows this not, not a lot of people know this either but she was a so she was a chaplain um so he met my stepmom after my mom passed away they got married but she was a chaplain for many years basically a pastor um, but now she pretty much takes care of my younger siblings full time. Mm-hmm. She's a full time mom. That's great. That's great. Uh, do, so, do your brothers look up to you? Like, are you their role model? Uh, or not really? That's a good question. They're I kind mean, of, I would are they rebellious? So. No, they, I mean, they definitely, yeah, they, they definitely look up to me. Um, and I was, was not a good role model as a teenager. <laughs> I was, uh, I was wiling out, but do my best now to create a good example and be a good role model and Mm -hmm. show them um, ways that, you know, and help them not make the same mistakes I made and ways they should become successful and and improve themselves. So So you used to be a different person a few years ago, right? You used to, you know, have completely different... Different habits? Yeah, your habits have... You've changed who you are as a person entirely, right? Yes, yes. So I'm sure they've seen that development, right? 100%. And... um, so they've seen both sides of you. So now I'm sure they're like, wow, I want to, you know, do what he did, right? You know, are they trying to, you know, live up to what you've built? Yes, they're definitely a lot better teenagers than I was. Oh, okay. As a teenager. Yeah. When I was, or when I was a teenager. Um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, to your point, it's, you really have to, it was funny, I was watching a Tate podcast the other day and he says there's, uh, there's two ways you can learn. There's the hard way which is the way you should learn, or there's the harder way. He says, most people have to learn the harder way, where the harder way is making the mistakes, getting slapped in the face, and then learning from, from what you've messed up on. And that's, that's pretty much how, I, how I've had to learn. Um, What's the difference between the hard and the harder way? The hard way is being told what to do uh-huh. and listening and doing it, and the harder way is messing up and getting slapped in the face. Okay. And learning from your mistakes. But... The, um, but yeah, I typically have to learn the harder way, but it's, you know, everything I did and everything has taught me is I've learned from and, uh, you really, anybody can change and that's the biggest thing. And that's what I want people to, to take away from this is mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who you are or what your habits or what your lifestyle is, no matter good or bad. Um, the morning sales training today, mm-hmm. you, we, uh, who did we put on the screen? David, David Goggins. Goggins, David Goggins. And he's the perfect example of that where he was somebody that was 300 pounds, incredibly un, undisciplined, mm-hmm. um, was not very smart. You know, you look at the t- guy like that back in the day and you're like, oh, he's not going anywhere. He's never going to be successful. Mm-hmm. And he goes from that to not, not only joining the military, but becoming a Navy SEAL doing so. He's ran some of the hardest marathons on planet earth, multiple Ironmen and just insanely hard marathons and, done some of the the hardest shit out there and continues to put himself in uncomfortable situations, um, continues to self-discipline himself, put himself through suffering. And he's uh, he's been a big testament of, you know, anybody can change as long as you're willing to do the right actions, the right activity to to bring those into fruition. So what made you decide to change and level up so much? Was there a hitting rock bottom? OK, 100%. what was what was rock bottom for you? Um, basically just looking at my, uh, my current situation and mm-hmm. my lifestyle uh-huh. and knowing that if I continue down this road, mm-hmm. it's not going to lead anywhere good. Okay. I'm never going to be anybody. I'm just going to be from that day forward. You just had like a discipline to just work as hard as possible. Yeah. Huh. Because I knew from an early age is I would, I've never understood somebody that wants to live a normal life. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that aspiration. And right. if that's if that's what you want to do, great. But so you always just tried to be different, but you were trying to be different in the wrong way. And you're like, maybe I should be different in the right way. Yeah. Where if I would have continued down the path, to be frank with you, I would have ended up in jail. Mm-hmm. Um, probably. So it's uh, – Yeah. But what, what you're talking about, I mean, the most most Americans, you know, they're in debt. They're unhappy. 
they don't have a good marriage, they don't have a good family life. Mm -hmm. And I frankly just don't understand the psychology of it. Like me and the way I'm wired, I can never just work a little bit, come home, drive the minivan, (laughs) work a little bit, come home, relax, and just do nothing. Yeah, it's crazy. Is that I've I've never relaxed in my entire life. I don't know what that is. It's, yeah, that's good. I always yeah. I always have to be doing something. Mm-hmm. So I um I went from doing and I just want to live life to the fullest. So I went from doing those doing negative things and you know partying and you know partying and drinking and hanging out with the wrong people and doing what I what I should have. And I took all that energy and that passion, and that mm-hmm. exploration. I channeled that into something good, such as business. So you were always doing something, but it was just partying. I have to. I have to be doing something. <laughs> it was partying, but yeah, you just changed what you were doing. A hundred percent. Yes. Cool. So I guess that's that explains how you got so disciplined, which was going to be my next question. It's just hitting rock bottom. So I, I'm a mm-hmm. firm believer, mm-hmm. especially as a man, hitting rock bottom is one of the best things you can do in life. Mm-hmm. It is one of the best things you could do. What was it like? Was it like a lot of debt, or was it you know what was the rock bottom for you? Um, it was hanging out with shitty friends, hanging mm-hmm. out with shitty people, um, partying, and going down a negative, destructive path. Uh-huh. Where if I would have kept going down that road, it would not have ended anywhere good. Okay. And I saw the trajectory of when I was going, and I just woke up one day. I'm like, dude, what am I doing with my life? Like, I'm going to become nothing if I keep so, doing this. what did you do about it? Did you find insurance right away? Did yeah. you start a different sales type of thing? So, first of all, it started with taking care of getting my health in check. Mm, health first. Yeah. Okay. And it's funny because how many – it's funny how many people I've talked to that started down a self-development path. And I'm a firm believer it all starts in your health and your body and the way that you take care of yourself. Where anytime an agent comes to me, they're like, Jonah – you know, I'm struggling. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm not closing. I'm not presenting. Like, bro, typically their sales pitch is on point. Mm-hmm. Like their rebuttals are on point. But it's their it's their personal life. And they're letting their personal life flow over where the first thing I say is like, what does your mind, body, spirit look like? Yeah. Because you have to get your mind, body, spirit in check in order to be successful. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not in the gym, if you're not reading, you're not reading the Bible, you're not developing yourself, you're not meditating, and you're in a negative state of being and a negative mindset – Dude, that's going to directly correlate to your business and that's Mm going to affect your business and that's going to affect your performance. Right. And no wonder you're struggling. Of course. Because you have to, you have to get your mind, body, spirit in check in order to be successful in any other realm of your life. Of course. So getting in the gym was just the number one thing for me. Getting in the gym and starting to eat cleaner, eat healthier and take care of my body was where it all started. And then you started, you know, reading my Bible, started reading self-development books, developing myself. And it was an ongoing journey. And you asked about, how how long it took me to find insurance where mm-hmm. yeah i mean i was working on myself and developing myself for a solid i mean shoot seven eight months nine months what were you doing financially at that point i was working a couple jobs mm-hmm. i was assistant manager at paxson in the mall <laughs> oh, wow. working a cooling store yeah um i was also working a delivery job okay delivering so doors and windows to new construction sites just making end meet, ends meet you know yeah mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. just hanging out and i was mm-hmm. pretty much I was honestly hoping and praying for an opportunity mm-hmm. because I knew I wanted to start a business. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I looked into I, look, I dude I've looked into every entrepreneur path there is. Really? I looked into drop shipping. Oh wow! Um, you know Amazon FBA, um, different crypto opportunities, day trading, stocks, etc. And insurance really fell into my lap. And a buddy of mine started doing it. He's like, "Yo, I just made twelve hundred bucks this week. <laughs> and that was more than I was making a week at." That was more than I was making a week at the time. So I'm like, well, what do you have to do? He's like, just got to get your insurance license and we're hiring. And I was like, done. Is that a friend you still are in touch with? No, he actually, he's not in the industry, industry anymore. Mm. He quit shortly after I got started. <laughs> but hey, hey. It, uh, it worked out. It got me into the insurance industry. And thank God I did. How did those, the right. Amazon and the drop shipping, did you, how much of that did you actually do? <sighs> not a whole lot, honestly. Like, were, I was just kind of to- just dabbling my feet like looking into different things okay so you don't actually start a product or build up some kind of no actually website. at the time what i was really going hard with was my photography oh yeah and videography business and clothing brand oh yeah yeah that's we, what i was really going hard we did with. talk about that at one point you said you're also a photographer at one point yes that's cool 100 percent. yeah really. was good. a lot of people probably don't even know that he, he has like photography you have a, you have a photography account or anything it's you know, been a it's couple, been long it's time. It's been about five years since I posted. <laughs> a long but time, yeah. The Instagrams are out can there. We, in the can we check so. out your photos? Are they on there? 
Uh, the clothing brand was Creators Compass. Uh-huh. So you look up Creators Compass on Instagram. Okay, it's still on there. Definitely um, check that out. I don't even know what my photography IG account handle is. <laughs> I'd have to check. But it's been it's been five six years since I posted, but it's right. out there. So if you look it up and find it, you'll, you'll find. You'll uh-huh. see. So you know, stay tuned. We're gonna get into you know like the insurance education and like what his like act some actual you know giving us some tips. Uh, but we were in a training when we first started this lock in here and he mentioned, he's like, don't even get me started on the school system. I would rant about that. And I just took a note. I'm like, I want to hear your thoughts on the school system. It's kind of random, but I kind of want to hear what your thoughts were. Yeah. The school system (laughs) basically programs us to be slaves. I agree. Ever since they created the Dale Carnegie, Mm -hmm. um, and different, um, different guys, they created us where you sit in rows, Mm -hmm. sit in a row. And you're at a desk hmm. and you have to raise your hand to ask a question. And the bell, you know, the bell rings, wow. sit down, bell rings, you're dismissed, et cetera. Like all of that is subconscious subliminal programming to make us slaves and make us complacent and obey. Wow, I never thought of that. <laughs> and ever since, and that included with, you know, you're graded uh-huh. and mistakes are bad. Don't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. If you make mistakes, you're not, you suck. Mm-hmm. You're not a good person. You should be ashamed. If you mess up and all of these different things are, is it's subliminal consciousness to make us cause they want slaves. They mm-hmm. want slaves and they want workers and they want people that are complacent. Yeah. And, um, so all of those things where to be successful, we were talking about this in the sales training mm-hmm. on one Wednesday morning mm-hmm. where do you like, I don't know anybody that's successful that hasn't messed up a hundred times. I mess up all mm-hmm. the time. You can't be afraid of me. You're never going to be successful if you don't mess stuff up. Mm-hmm. You have to you, you have to fail, and you, but the biggest thing is you know we talk about learning from your mistakes. It's the definition of insanity is making the same mistake over and over again and expecting a different result. So don't be afraid to mess up, but when you mess up, you sure as heck better learn from it. Of but course. you know don't mess up, and also you have to think on a creative level. You have to think outside the box, mm-hmm. and you to be an entrepreneur and to be in business, and they don't teach that. They don't want you to be creative. They want they don't want you to think outside of the box. So from the education they're teaching to the subliminal subconscious programming, um, it's again, it's all created to be a slave. Because dude, I could care less. I could genuinely care less about how many cells are in a leaf. I don't need to know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and all you know, in the different history and everything. If they actually wanted you to be successful, they would teach you how to manage finances. Mm-hmm. You know how to be you know, how to start a business, how to be an entrepreneur, how to do these different things, things that are actually important. Yeah, and they don't teach you how to do your taxes in school. They don't. <laughs> there's there's so many other things. There's so many other things, but I'll leave it at that. Where mm-hmm. you know if you if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, mm-hmm. like you need school. Yeah, and that's that's fair. But you take that a step further in college, bro. College is the College is a scam. Yeah. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> College is a scam and it is the only investment you can make that has double diminishing returns. And what I mean by that is every single year, the cost of college increases mm-hmm. and every single year, the tactical applicable value of a degree decreases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So it simply gets to a certain point where it's like, at what point does this not make sense? Like, why am I going, why am I spending six figures in debt right. to make to get out of college and make 60 grand a year rather spend six figures in debt learning how to sell insurance <laughs> yeah yes and thank god we actually our training's free training's free we don't charge you for training right so. but i meant like <laughs> i mean like if i had to if i had to spend 100k on leads and i i didn't sell a single one you're still gonna learn more from that experience than, yeah. than going to college, and you can make more money. But you're not. Too. You're going to have all this training. Once you're not going to spend a hundred thousand leads and not make any sales. That's for sure. But yeah. um, let's see here. Um, yes. Okay. Everyone wants to know how you keep the hair so pristine all the time. It's like everyone's on their mind all the time. So we got to we got to get that that question answered, man. What's the secret? Yes. Yeah, so what's the hair care products? <laughs> you want me to break down the thirty minute hair care routine? Is it thirty minutes? That's 30, why. It's, thirty minutes. That's why it's all perfect. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it's not. It's not a thirty minute hair. Okay, routine. okay, okay. So I genuinely. So uh, what I do is just the putty. The putty. Putty in my hands, and yep. then slick it through my hair. Okay. Just get it. Get it all slicked back. Make sure it's all even. Yeah. 
push it back with a comb and it's gooch. It takes me less than two minutes. Probably takes me. Okay, so it's the barber doing probably the takes hard me work. about fifty nine seconds to really do it. It's okay. the barber. You have to have a good barber. Yeah, there are certain things in life you cannot skimp out on, <laughs> and having a good barber is one of them. Actually, yeah. my hair's growing. I need to. I need to get a cut. It's yeah, been, it's been too long since I've gotten a cut. Yeah, I was getting a haircut this week, but I'd cancel it because of the lock in. But mm-hmm. yeah, having it's, a good barber is essential. It is. And yeah, I, I recently found a barber this year. I was doing my own haircuts. It's a huge difference. Yes, bro. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a wild man for that, doing your own cuts. <laughs> I was doing just like, you know, nothing on the side and just long stuff on the top for a while. It was, it was a look. Well, shoot, dude. You're better than I would have because I would <laughs> F my hair up. I was <laughs> doing my own cuts. <laughs> uh, I even went bald for a little bit. You know, it was, it was like I didn't care. It's just, it grows back. Dude, I saw that. You yeah. actually, you can actually pull off the bald look. You <laughs> grew you. the beard out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. That's Terrorist a look. look. <laughs> That's a look. Um, so let's see here. What, what do you think is like – what would you say is your goal now five years from now, ten years from now? Where do you see yourself going? What do you mm. want to do? Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. question. My goals have definitely changed a lot. When I first came into this business, I was just did, I was just trying to pay my bills and figure out how to make it hundred grand a year. Yeah, and then hundred grand turned into half a million, mm. and then half a million turned into a million. Mm-hmm. Um, and there comes a point where money is just money, right? And now you're like, what do we do? Yeah, if you mm-hmm. if you're motivated by finances, you're gonna get complacent pretty quickly. Yep. So now it's, dude, I just love what we're doing this week. Mm-hmm. Helping where people. I, it sounds so cliche. Everybody says it. Yeah, I just, I just like helping people. My goals are to help people. Boy, it's like because I feel like everyone says that, so it gets to the point certain people roll their eyes. But it genuinely, it I genuinely, yes, I mm-hmm. genuinely love and enjoy helping people. I've heard that get helping someone else get their first sale is better feeling than getting your first sale. One thousand percent, one thousand percent. Yeah, and I can fully attest to that. Mm-hmm. Where not trying to sound cliche, but my goal is to help hundreds and hundreds of individuals, you know, reach the success that I've been blessed to yeah. now mm-hmm. achieve and. You know, help a lot of families, write a lot of life insurance policies, build a business because, dude, that's what gets me fired up every day. Yeah. Like if I, I'm not – I don't roll out of bed fired up like, oh, I want, I'm want, i excited to make, you know, X amount today or this week <laughs> You're past or this month that. or whatever. Like, yeah. you know, I'm excited. I'm fired up to just roll into the office and work with you guys. Yeah. And help you guys and, you know, see the spark in your eyes when you guys make your first sale. Yeah. Or, you know, helping you build your business or, you know, talking – and I'll, talking about the challenges, talking about the adversity, um, walking through it, navigating that. And um, trying to figure out how we can be better every day, scale the organization, scale the business. And, dude, it's just I love this. I really I love, love it. That. It gets me fired up. It doesn't even feel like work. I love that about this industry that it has that hierarchy that if you like to teach people, you can you know grow your own team. And if you don't want to, you can still make plenty of money on your own, which is so cool. And I, I like both. I really like teaching people. And when I found out that this is an industry where you can teach people, I mean, I, I have a YouTube channel where I, I love posting like educational videos. I was doing it for solar for a while. And then I was like, wait, I can't really build a team. Like, there's no structure to build a team here in solar. You have to actually go start your own solar company and like contract yes. with installers. This yes. is built for you, ready to go. Yes. Come in here, you know, start selling some insurance. Hey, the structure is here if you want to start recruiting people and teaching people and so it's it's so laid out so well. It's fantastic. No, it really is mm-hmm. because think about you and me can be in business together. Yeah. But whenever there's a business partnership with two individuals, mm-hmm. somebody always feels like they're getting the round of the stick. Yeah. Because one person's more committed to the business than the other person. Yeah. And one person's working harder. Super fair. Or mm-hmm. committing more money or whatever the case may be than the other person is. Mm-hmm. Where what I love – and also like you you hear horror stories about people getting effed over in business. Mm-hmm. Where I love the fact that – we're all in business together. Mm-hmm. But if somebody stops showing up or somebody's putting in more work or they're more committed, mm-hmm. it's we're all in business. We all collaborate and we're all here to help each other. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you have full control and full leverage of your actual business. Yeah. The way it's structured. I love that. So you never have to worry about anybody hurting you mm-hmm. and you still get 100% of the upside. Exactly. But we're all in collaboration together. And because I came from, you know, I mean, I was in corporate America before this. Oh, really? And it's, uh, I mean, well, well, retail. Retail, retail, okay. and mm-hmm. you know, I was man- management working my way up the chain. Like nothing crazy. Like it wasn't a career. Yeah, like the pack sign. But I, yeah, yeah, but I saw what mm-hmm. that looked like, mm-hmm. and it was people being fake. You know, oh, you yeah. know, all oh, this person's coming for my job. All oh, this person, I'm not gonna tell it, <laughs> and just people just being selfish. Mm-hmm. And it's corporate America, and I also have friends that work in corporate America, and they tell me stories, and they mm-hmm. downtown Chicago, you finance or whatever it is, where they they're just people are fake. And there's this charade and there's BS and 
nobody wants to help each other or if they do help each other and people backstabbing each other or talking crap about their hunt and there's drama it's just i'm blessed that we don't have any of that mm-hmm. to be like to be frank and we genuinely don't yeah where just like what i was saying before like at the lock-in just going around and you know every and in the office just a normal day everybody's you know going around helping each other yeah. everybody wants to see each other ach- achieve success um be there for people and and i'm thankful about our group and nobody comes in with an ego thinking mm-hmm. hey i'm better than this person yeah we're just here to work hard we're here to achieve and we're here to become successful and build a business yeah and that's what it's all about and you mentioned like how it's the right end of the stick the business partnerships aren't fair i came from that first pers- uh firsthand i had a my own marketing company I had a 50 50 partnership and I, I i saw that firsthand how hard it is to balance 50 50 ownership in a business yes and this is super cool how you can come in and have a mentor and eventually you know work your way up to you know they um you owning your entire business and it's your business it's a hundred percent your business because that's yeah. that's the most demotivating thing mm. it's not when forever you're, you're you you have 50 mm-hmm. percent of the upside mm-hmm. and you're the person feeling that you're the person feeling like you're putting in all the work yeah i can't think of anything more demotivating than that right so for anyone watching that doesn't understand how it works you start off at a certain percentage and you work your way up to the point where your mentor uh, as you get more and more skilled uh, their percentage becomes less and less, and yours becomes more and more. And eventually, it's like, what is it, zero percent? So eventually, I'll own all of my business. Correct. Is that how it works? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then for everybody thinking, oh, well, that sounds like an MLM. Are you guys an MLM? Oh, that's weird. So first of all, dude, I don't know anything that's not an MLM. Like if I own a gas station to hire employees, mm-hmm. yes, I'm making money off those people because it's a business. Mm-hmm. But the way I would define, everyone has their own definition, but the way I would define an MLM mm-hmm. is when I'm required to make money off of other individuals to pay my bills. Mm-hmm. Also, that should never, I hope that's never anybody we work with. We never, I know for a fact right now, that's nobody, but I hope we never get to the point where we're MLM structured because there are certain insurance companies that are MLM structured, we are not. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is do, it's all of our producers like, dude, mm. they're producing a lot of life insurance. They're making a lot of money regardless right. if they have zero agents or they have 100 agents. Yeah, dude, they're paying their bills money. and they're making money because they're producing on their own pen. And the starting comp is so high. So. And the starting comp is so high. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't start agents at, you know, like other insurance companies start them at 30 40% and just ripping them. Right. We don't do that to agents. And also on top of that, we're starting them at a high comp, mm-hmm. but all of our agents, they're personally producing themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how I've always recruited as well. Like I'm like, hey, dude, like, mm-hmm. listen, I'm making great money. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. I'm helping a lot of families with life insurance, and I am acquiring a large book of business. Mm-hmm. And I'm selling a lot of policies. Yeah, you are. Like, you're a, I see you're a hard worker. You're disciplined. I think you'd be really good at this. Mm-hmm. But either way, no worries. Like, if you want to do this, great. If not, great. I'm yeah. still going to make money regardless. That's one of the reasons I would decide to work with you because I see a lot of people in this industry just recruiting and not doing their own business. Yeah. And I respect a lot about you. Yeah, dude. It's, mm-hmm. You should ne- never, mm-hmm. never re- try to recruit someone with the goal of, like, I'm just going to make money rec- just to pay my bills. Mm-hmm. You, you should never rely on another person's efforts or another man's effort to pay your own bills because, I mean, to me, that's weird. And that would be considered an MLM. Right. Where there's two ways to make money here. A, you can make a lot of money personally producing. Mm-hmm. Or B, you can make a lot of money recruiting and building a business. Yeah. But, you know, what we encourage and what we do, what all of our agents do here is we lead from the front by personally producing a lot mm-hmm. and then simply teaching others how to do that. Leading from the front is essential. And also another thing about, I've never been in an MLM, but I'm assuming whatever your hierarchy is, it stays that way. It, you, they're locked above you forever. You yes. can never get out of that. Correct. So this is a, a, a sliding scale where eventually they're out of it. So that's not MLM because it's your own. And we anyway. also have leads. Mm-hmm. And we have leads. Like we're not going to make you go sell to your friends. I've never yeah. sold to a single friend or family member. Everything that's MLM is – That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, there are a couple of insurance companies. So we have that do a that. lot of people that act, literally filled out a form and literally either filled out online or mailed it in, requ- raised right. their hand and requesting life insurance. Yeah. I, and give I them a call. I don't want to sell my fa- family or friends. I would not want to be that guy for sure. So let's, now that we're you know on the topic of insurance, let's you know talk more about insurance. Walk us through like your script and let's like role play an appointment. Does that sound good? Dope. Let's rip it. All right, cool. Um, so. Let's do, do you usually do appointments or one call closes? I do one call closes now. Okay. All right. So let's role play a, a one call close. Cool. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Ben. Yeah, this is him. Hey, Ben. It's Jonah. Give me a quick call here. I work with the brokerage 
and we handled the mortgage protection for Chase. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, your file that's associated with your property over there on 123 Main Street um, just came across my desk here and it's showing up as incomplete. Now, the only reason for that, Ben, is it looks like sometime around when you closed with Chase. We know we sent you several things in the mail about the mortgage protection, right? You know, pays off the home if you're sick or pass away. Mm-hmm. Ben, it looks like here you actually did the right thing. I mean, you fill out the card, uh, you mailed it back to us. But for whatever reason here on our end is we haven't got that completed. Mm-hmm. So I'm the manager here in the area. I just want to make sure we took care of you. Now, is it just you in the home or do you have a spouse or a significant other present? Yeah, she's right here. Okay, great. Well, you should take about 10 minutes or so. Do you have a pen and paper? Yep, got it. Right here. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, and then am I on speakerphone? One second. Yep, now you're on speakerphone. Yep. All righty. And this is your spouse, Jennifer? Yep, she's here. Hey, Jennifer, how are we doing? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> All right, perfect. So let me, is this your guys' first time going through the mortgage protection process? Or have you guys been through this process before? Oh, no, we just saw the flyer. This is our first time. First, first time. house. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Well, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, it's simply my job as the underwriter. I'm going to spend about two minutes asking you guys some health, uh, some financial questions. And based on that, it's my job as the underwriter to run it through the carriers here available in the state of Illinois mm-hmm. that offer the mortgage protection. And then once we figure out a few options that you'll hopefully qualify for, I'll present those options to you. And basically, you guys just let me know what's comfortable, you know, what's practical, and what's affordable for you guys. And then from there, we'll go and submit a request for coverage. Okay. That Make sounds sense? good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and how this process works, just so you're aware, Ben, so mortgage protection isn't something you can just sign up for oh. at any time like life insurance. Okay. It is something you do actually have to qualify for. Oh, okay. So what that means is once we figure out an option that makes sense, mm-hmm. you know, based on your budget and goals, mm-hmm. um, what we're going to do, like I said, is submit a request for coverage. Um, now the, on the application, there's three pieces of information required, just like any other insurance application. Mm-hmm. So number one is going to be your guys' driver's license to confirm your identity. Do you have that on hand? I do. Mm-hmm. Great. And secondly, it's going to be your social because that's how they're going to check your prescriptions and your medical history. Okay. The main factor on if you are approved or declined. And third and finally, either a bank statement or a voided check to confirm essentially there's no prior you know, insurance fraud, money laundering, or anything else illegal linked to your account, as well as, of course, that's how you're going to be paying for the policy. Okay. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Great. And then boom. Just fill out the financial inventory sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, that sheet, you know, you can probably we'll put a link to it in the in, down in the podcast description. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to use it, mm-hmm. and then once you fully fill out the sheet, mm-hmm. that's your ammunition. Like that is your ammunition to how to properly help and serve a client. Okay. Because let me give you an example. Like let's say Ben, I get you on the phone, and you're like, "Yeah, I don't need it." Mm-hmm. I'd be like, great. I just need to run through your options with you because mm-hmm. I don't know your situation. Right. I don't know why you need it. Right. But bro, once that financial inventory sheet's figured it, filled out, yeah. dude, you have all the ammunition you need. Mm-hmm. So if they give you a rebuttal like, oh, I don't need it. It's this, this, and this is why you need it because this, 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 and this, and boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, they've done studies on this and the uh, what they found was the best salespeople in the world does not matter the industry. You could be selling steel, Life insurance, solar, whatever the case may be, the best salespeople all have one thing in common. You know what that is? No. What is it? They all ask intentional questions. Mm. And they spend about between 8 to 15, 20 minutes, whatever the situation may be, asking intentional questions and painting that picture. So by the end, they know ex- the, the client's exact situation. So their pitch is very minimal. I mean, dude, it's... 20, 30 seconds, a minute max, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, because they know exactly their pain points and how they can solve their problem. Question-based selling. Yes, mm-hmm. because they've also done, they did a, they did another case study where they, we were talking about this in the sales training the other day, mm-hmm. where servers, and they had two groups of servers. Mm-hmm. And the, the first server was after the, the client placed their order, after the customer placed the order, they was like, oh, great choice. That's our best item. You know, maybe tap them on the shoulder like, you know, you look really great. I really like that shirt. Whatever it is, gave them compliments and buttered them up. Compliments, okay. The second case study of servers, all they did was repeat the order back to them. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Nothing special. Didn't butter them up. Nothing. The servers that simply repeated the order back to them, huh. 
and case study B of the other half of servers, they actually received on average 30% more tips <laughs> than the servers that were complimenting the customers. Uh-huh. Because people simply just want to feel heard and they want to feel understood. And that's why, and that's why that's become standard, mm-hmm. standard in, in training across restaurants now. Be with that, with that being the case. So how do you, yeah, when it comes to mm-hmm. sales, because people think good salespeople are, you know, they have the most elaborate pitch or mm-hmm. you know, they have all these fancy, they set up all these fancy charts and graphs and this, and that, et cetera. Mm-hmm. When really all being good at sales is, is asking intentional questions and painting, painting that picture and mm-hmm. hitting on the pain points to cause the client to make the decision. So how do you apply that waiter waitress model to insurance? Maybe like repeating it back to you, like repeating their medications and the financial. Inventory? Well, first of all, asking intentional asking intentional questions. Of course, yeah. people want to feel heard and understood. Filling out the financial inventory, and then after that, you're just basically repeating back oh, exactly reading, what they told. Just you. read their financial inventory out to them. Oh, so basically, you told me this, this and this? also mm-hmm. just reading between the lines and being an underwriter. Where mm-hmm. you know, let's say Ben, you're. You're the primary breadwinner mm-hmm. and marriage a stay at home mom. After I've figured out that you're working full time, mm-hmm. your income's four thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. and Mary's stay at home mom with the three kids and her her income is zero, mm-hmm. I would simply be like, All right, Ben, so looking at the situation here, it looks like God forbid, you know, something were to were to happen to you, that would put Mary and the kids in a you know pretty tough spot financially. Mm-hmm. Would that be correct? Yeah. You just so just repeating back just exactly repeating. what they told you anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And and granted, I don't say what I see. Yes. Or what it look it looks like to me. Right. Because then that's creating sales resistance, and that's me versus you. Yeah. Versus your third party, and you're like, all right, Ben. So what it's looking like here is this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. And you're repeating back what, exactly what they had told you. Fire. You're phrasing it a little bit differently and reading between the lines and painting that picture of why they need it. Because do you know why the number one cause? You know what the number one cause of people to buy? And make decisions is in sales. Um, I'll make a guess. Uh, is it like pain? Pain. Okay. Pain or fear of loss. Okay. And it doesn't matter what you're selling, people will buy and make decisions when you hit on those pain points and make them feel that they need and, they, and make them paint that picture of what that looks like if they don't have the product. Right. So um, <clears throat> I didn't interrupt you because I wanted to see like a full role play, but let's do like an actual like a rebuttal. Yes. situation where I'm Still, like really grilling you but of course you don't want to you don't you want the easy sales you don't want to be with the combative people they're going to cancel anyway but let's just still go through some of them you know because sometimes one or two objections 100%. you can overcome them and still they'll be good clients yes whoever overcomes mm-hmm. the most objections helps the most families yeah but at the day if you're getting someone that's giving you five ten objections like it gets to a certain <laughs> point where it's not a good use of your time but yeah you yeah. get a few rebuttals you definitely want to rebuttal yeah of course um actually we didn't. We should finish up with the close. You didn't really. We just did the financial inventory. Do you want to go yep. over the close real quick? Cool. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. So basically, after the financial inventory, I mean, it's pretty mm-hmm. simple. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, Ben. So I got three options laid out here for you. Um, you still have that pen and paper handy? Yep. All right. Great. I'm gonna have you write down these three options. Okay. Like I said before, basically, let me know what's practical, what's affordable. You know what makes the most sense for you guys, and we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. So I have them write down option A, option B, option C, boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. And then after they write down all the three options, you explain the benefits. You're like, all right, all right, Ben and Jennifer, out of these three options, if you guys were to get approved, what makes the most sense to you guys? And then just shut up. Out of these three options. Are you giving them the most expensive one first or the cheapest one first? Always the most expensive one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I like giving them three options. Mm-hmm. And the highest option, mm-hmm. what I like to do is make it, a big number mm-hmm. that I know is out of their budget, <laughs> that I know they can't afford yeah. to stabilize the other two. Yeah, yeah. And, and you start off expensive affordable. and then they start bringing out, oh, these are better, you know. And you, mm-hmm. dude, you also want to give them something to say no to. Yeah. Especially if, you know, if, let's say you're an alpha A type of personality. Yes. And you want to feel like the head honcho. You like saying no. You like saying no. So give them something to say, give them something to say no to. Yeah. And they okay. end up going with either the middle. It's always, it's typically always either the middle option or the lowest option. Almost every time. Okay, and you say what's most comfortable? And then occasionally, but occasionally you'll have that person that picks the highest option, which is great. Just cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna complain. Um, so you just say what's most most comfortable and affordable for you. And just shut up. Yes. And then, uh, the first person to talk after you show the client options loses. Okay, gotcha. And so, all right, I'm gonna pick the middle option. Great. Grab your driver's license. We'll see if we can get you approved. Okay. Here, here's my driver's license. Boom. 
and then just fill out the e-application. Okay. Fully fill out the e-application. And you take about five minutes or so. Any tie downs, you know, at the end to keep yes. them sticky? Tying down the sale is huge. Mm-hmm. It's critical. Okay. So after we get to the end, we're tying mm-hmm. it down. I'd be like, all right, Ben. So we're just wrapping up here. I appreciate your patience. And you still have that pen and paper handy? Yep. All right, perfect. So I'm going to have you write down a few details of coverage just to make sure there's no confusion. Okay. So, Ben. So that's going to be Mutual of Omaha, mm-hmm. the company we applied for. Okay. Um, the option we went with was the full mortgage okay. plus one year salary of coverage. Ah, okay. Okay. The reason we went with Mutual of Omaha mm-hmm. is this is a permanent coverage option. It's a whole okay. life policy. It's right on a whole life permanent coverage. Mm-hmm. So you never have to worry about this policy expiring or going up or running out on you. Mm-hmm. Um, second thing I want you to write down is build cash value. Okay. Build cash value mm-hmm. and you're collecting interest on that cash value as well. Ah, uh, Okay. And the third thing, thirdly and most importantly, is this is 80% access to living benefits. Mm. So if anything happens, Ben, whether you become sick, disabled, you have any sort of critical terminal or chronic illness, Mm -hmm. such as cancer, heart attack, stroke, et cetera, you're you're able to access up to $220,000 of this policy. Mm. That's big. Because like we talked about, 90% of home foreclosures is actually not a death. It's actually either unforeseen medical bills or being disabled for a period of time and not being able to work. Right. So having a policy that pays out on the living side, in addition to the death side, in my opinion, the living benefits are just as important, if not more important than the death benefit. Totally. Um, so great, Ben. Mm-hmm. And then I, I had texted you my business card at the beginning of this. Obviously, you already got my number saved in your phone, um, but I'm going to write down my, my contact as well, just in case, write down my number, just okay. in case you lose it. So, Ben, so my name, again, is Jonah. Mm-hmm. You got me saved in there. There's Jonah Insurance Guy. Yep. Whatever works best. Uh, my number is 605-400-1234. Mm-hmm. You got that? Got it. Yep. Perfect, Ben. All righty. And then I'm also going to give you a security code. Oh, uh, okay. And that security code is J2345. Okay. Did you get that? Got it. Yeah. Perfect. So... The reason for that code, Ben, mm-hmm. is you're going to be getting a lot of calls. And if anybody calls you, either claiming to be from the insurance company or from my office, ask them for this code. Okay. Because they will have it if they're with our organization. If they don't have the code, they're either trying to scam you or mm-hmm. get information. So if that happens, all you have to do is simply hang up, send me their number, and I'll deal with it. Okay. Cool. We'll do. Mm-hmm. All righty, Ben. And then God willing, you're approved. It looks like that's going to be drafted mm-hmm. in the next day or so. So, Ben, when you see that $183 in your account, that's a good thing. That means you were approved and coverage is in force. Okay. And unlike a lot of life insurance policies, this is actually day one coverage. Mm-hmm. So what that means is anything happens the next day, bam, this policy is paying out in full. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, Ben, um, you should be getting the policy in the mail uh, the next week or so. So if you don't get the policy, make sure to give me a shout. Let me know. Okay. And we'll get another one mailed out to you. Um, and then in addition to that, Ben, Mm -hmm. you know, we had, uh, you know, like we had talked about, this is what protects you and your wife. God forbid something happens to you to make sure the home's taken care of. But I do want to let you know is I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. And typically what I see with families is when the bills get tight, Mm. you know, finances get tight, Mm -hmm. something happens, something comes up. The first thing to go is the life insurance. Right. And I want you to make me a promise, Ben. Okay. And I want that promise is that every month when this $183 gets deducted from your account, mm-hmm. I want you to think of your wife, Jennifer, and the kids. Mm-hmm. And this is one, This is the protection for them. Okay. And this is one of the most important things you can have in place for your family. Mm-hmm. Um, but in addition to that, you know, of course, we want to make sure we're not taking food off the table. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's got to be affordable. Mm-hmm. So, Ben, uh, with that promise I want you to make me mm-hmm. is that if this ever becomes too expensive, mm-hmm. simply give me a call, mm-hmm. and we can always drop this as low as we need to go. Okay. Because I think we can both agree mm-hmm. having something in place for your family, God forbid something happens to you, is better than having nothing. Absolutely. I understood. All righty, Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, you know, you got my number saved. Mm-hmm. So I work 8 to 7. Monday through Saturday. Um, I am available on Sundays if, it, if it's an emergency. Okay. Um, but Sundays I go to church, the Lord's Day, I spend time with the family. Um, but if you need anything, you know, simply they give me a call, shoot me a text. This is my direct number. 
Okay. Okay. Other than that, Ben, um, I'll be giving you a call in about a year or so to re-explain your benefits, um, go over your coverage, coverage options. Perfect. But like I said, if you need anything in the meantime, just give me a shout. You know, I'm one call away. Okay. Awesome. So this part's going to be pretty fun. I'm going to be like your big, your absolute hell client now. Okay. And we're going to get through every possible objection. Just try to get through the full script. I'm going to give you every objection I could possibly think of and just go back on course like you always do. Perfect. All right, let's Sounds do it. Let's good. start over. I'm going to be the worst. I went from the best client to the worst. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, let's do it. All righty. Ring, ring. Hello? Ben? Yeah, this is Ben. Hey, Ben. It's Jonah. Give yeah. me a quick call here. Busy right now. Yep, perfect. I'm busy as well. Mm. Ben, you don't even know what I'm calling for. Okay, what are you calling about? Ben, I'm getting back to you. Uh, we're doing an audit here in the office. Your file over there on 123 Main Street was just flagged for review. Mm-hmm. Um, came up as pending. Ben, it looks like here at my desk, this would be in regards to that mortgage you know, protection request. Uh-huh. Uh, looks like you had filled out, mailed into our office a while back. Do you remember mailing that in? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, Ben. So, like I said... Um, showing up here is incomplete and it looks like nobody's been able to help you with coverage yet. Uh-huh. So I'm the manager here in the area. So I simply just wanted to make sure that we took care of you. Okay. Now, Ben, this should take about 10 minutes or so. Grab a pen and paper and we'll get this knocked out for you. I'm uh, driving right now. I can't. You're driving. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. If, I don't want you to get into a car accident. Uh-huh. So if you're actually able to pull over briefly and we can get this knocked out for you. Okay. All right. I'll pull over. Okay. Perfect. You ready? Yeah. Awesome, Ben. So is this your first, let me ask you, is this your first time going through the mortgage protection process or, you know, have you been through this process before? Um, I had a bunch of guys call me. It was like just way too Correct. expensive. Yeah. Correct. Yep. I see that on your file. You're reached out by a few of one, some of our junior underwriters, okay. which are also sales reps. Oh. Um, so like I said, I'm the manager and that's the reason for my call. I've been assigned to figure out some more practical, uh, more affordable options for your situation. So it's not free? No. Oh. No, protecting your family. Unfortunately, nobody's going to pay your home I just want the free people. coverage. That's why all these guys are making me buy stuff. You want somebody to pay your home off for free? I thought it was like they saying it's federal government. I'm like trying to find that plan, you know? You're looking for a plan by the government yeah. to pay your home off for free? Huh. I guess you're right. Maybe it, it sounds a little... Um, Kind of like a dream, huh? So these are state regulated. Okay, it's probably what you're thinking of. Okay, but yes, protection for your, protecting your family, uh-huh. and paying off your home. God forbid something happens to you. Uh-huh. It is going to cost money. Oh, uh, okay. This is this this is what you're looking for, right? Yeah. What just how much is it going to cost? Yep. Yep. So we'll figure that out here in a second. Um, I got to ask you a few health questions and some financial questions, and we'll break down numbers. Okay. So Ben, basically similar as before. Um, like I said. I don't worry. I am not going to run you through an hour-long fancy pitch. Okay. Yeah. I'm simply just going to spend two minutes on some health, some financial questions. Then we'll be able to figure out options. Okay. Okay. Boom. And All then right. go through the financial inventory. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. If he's already sat down with multiple people, I typically won't run through the whole thing. And then if he's already been through it multiple times mm. and been through multiple presentations, I simply ask him, and be like, all right, Ben, so, you know, so – what what didn't make sense the last time you looked for coverage? Mm, okay, um, I just wasn't sure my my family needs this. Okay, mm. gotcha. So, you know, looking at the situation here, Ben, it looks like you're uh, you're the primary breadwinner. Mm-hmm. Um, you're working full time and you're doing construction. Mm-hmm. And since Mary's not working, she's taking care of the full kid, the four kids. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, you know, God forbid, let's say something happened to you yesterday. Mm-hmm. And what would that look like for your family today? Right, yeah, I just have a lot of savings. Home. So I think she'd be fine. Yep. So you got $100,000 in your savings account here, Ben, which uh, is great. Yeah. You've done a great job of setting yourself up, setting yourselves up well financially. Uh-huh. I mean, better than most of my clients, to be honest with you. Okay. But, Ben, your bills are $10,000 a month. Mm-hmm. How long is that hundred grand going to last you? Family? Yeah. yeah, not too long. Yeah. Okay, so I'm assuming you're just simply just looking for some sort of practical, affordable coverage to protect the home and protect your family. Yeah. If anything were to happen. Right. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. So we're going to look at three different options here. Um, Like I said, let me know what makes the most sense and we'll go from there. Because typically when they said, like, oh, we saw somebody else was too expensive, a lot of times what I found was 
it's an older client, maybe in their 60s or 70s, mm-hmm. that can't qualify for term. Mm-hmm. So somebody showed them a whole life option mm-hmm. for covering the entire mortgage that was eight, nine hundred bucks a month. Right. I've rented that so many times. <laughs> I love those clients. Okay. Because I'll explain equity protection to them. Uh-huh. And either A, they've never been explained equity protection before, or B, the last agent that talked to them, if they're not in our group, dude, our group is the only one that's actually good at pitching equity, equity protection genuinely. Yeah. <laughs> like, got, I've never seen and... anybody outside of our group like, at, like pitch it the way we pitch it. Yeah. So if really any good. other agent called them those outside of our group, I love it because typically most agents suck at equity, <laughs> equity protection. Are you going to give away the sauce for the yeah. equity protection? We'll do another training on that. Okay. I would love to. But All it's right. on my YouTube channel. So oh, anybody's like, yeah, it's out there. It's good. free. Yeah, go check out go. his YouTube channel, man. Anybody <laughs> anybody can go watch my entire equity protection script, okay. whether you're with her group or not. It's All right, free. so the sauce is out. Go check it's it out. It's out there. I mean, there's nothing to hide. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you one more objection. Okay. Back. Yeah, I don't want to give you my bank account. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is this, your first, this must be your first time going through the process? Yeah. Okay, have you signed up for insurance in the past? Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha, Ben. So basically, like I told you before, uh, number one, they do need to confirm there's no prior, you know, insurance fraud, money laundering, or anything else illegal linked to your account, mm. as well as, of course, is how you're going to be paying for the policy. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. I just don't like doing it over the phone, you know? It's just, you called me, and I, like, I can't confirm. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's why we're not asking for your debit okay. or credit card information, uh-huh. because if anybody asks for that over the phone, Definitely do not give that to them. Right. That's why we simply just require the routing and account numbers. Like I said, just this, it's those digits on the bottom of a check every time you write a check. True. Okay. All right. Yep. Here you cool. go. Money. Cool. Um, I think that's that's pretty good. I think we did a, a great episode here. Definitely do it again. Let me know if you guys have any other questions for John in the future, and we'll we'll definitely uh, do another episode. Cool. All Appreciate right. you having me on, bro. Thank you, brother. You know, right now I'm doing. Sun run. I'm sure you've heard of them, but I'm okay. going door to door. You know, I have, I have my son, so oh, I'm a wow. single dad. You know, I, I don't mind taking the risk and taking the leap. I've mm-hmm. gotten mm-hmm. offers before. It's just, I really haven't gotten into it, but seeing you go into it, like, right. you know, it's definitely mm-hmm. opened my eyes. Like this guy's doing it. There must be a reason, you know, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> but yeah. Tell me but, like, Tell me a little bit about you. Like, why should I hire you? Why should I, you know, work with you? Let me tell me about yourself, bro. Yeah. So, did my wife pass like what May fifth, twenty twenty one? So God. ever since that, yeah, she Sorry passed away. Like, and... No, that's oh okay, man. She fought for like three years. So like, now like I want to do the things like I always want to do. One of the things where it's like you know become a sales guy. I thought I was gonna be a car sales guy, but I know oh. doing solar, you know. But I love pushing my sh- I I love pushing myself outside the like comfort zones, you know. And I have That's a little cool. five year old, so. Oh, you have a big um, why. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely have a big why. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I guess I love learning new things, and you know, I love taking a leap here and there. Especially when I did solar, man, it's changed my life. Like, you know, I got my dream yeah. car now. Yeah. I live in a nice spot, like. But I don't oh, mind taking okay. a leap. Of, yeah, I don't mind taking a leap oh, yeah. again to learn something new, and you know, maybe even become that's better than cool. what I do now. That shows a lot. I mean, if you've already been successful on other thing, man, and you're gonna be successful again. Like you've already proven yourself that you can do stuff once. So it only makes sense. I mean, that's that goes to show a lot if you've done well, and you're oh, kind man. of in the life you want to live now, right? Yeah, but I definitely see like there's always improvement. We're like room for improvement. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Do you feel like you're locked to one location because of solar? Like you can't. You want to like be able to go where you want. Like what is kind of like what you or what's holding you back with solar right now that you kind of want that you kind of see you as better with insurance? So I think it's mainly like yeah, part of that because like I came from Arizona, so I came over here to Illinois just to be with family. So that's part mm-hmm. of the reason. And also, like, the guy who taught me everything I know, he's down south in Peoria. And I'm up here in Orland. So it's, like, two hours. So, like, I'm pretty much, like, you know, there's no team environment. And I also feel like uh, I, I want to grow, too, you know. So me yeah. being over here on my own, having no team at all, just me, like, is great mm-hmm. and all. 
But I don't know. I definitely miss that team environment and, you know, being able to learn from other people, you know. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's been so great being part of a team again because now, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen who Jonah Lewis is. He's he's kind of like who my mentor. He's like my Carlos now for insurance. He's freaking awesome. What do you know about how everything works? What kind of questions do you have? So I I forgot what the company name, but there's like a huge company out here um, that I went into and they were trying to get me to sign it. Like America, get that with crappy them. ass freaking pyramid scheme. There you go. That's the one. Yeah, good thing you dodged that shit. Yeah, oh, but I didn't. That's all I pretty much know about it, you know. Yeah, basically they they I, I don't from what I've heard is they start you at like a twenty or thirty percent comp. They don't give you any leads and they make you just sell your friends and family. And then when you run out of friends and family, they dump you on the side of the road. Basically, that's what I've heard. No, um, it sounds about it because I see a lot of friends over with them. Like yeah, even my. My friend's the one that introduced me to them, and it was mm-hmm. so weird. Like they do a whole like chant and singing, and Ew. it was it was just something, you know. I don't know. It was kind of weird. That is really freaking cringy. I'm with I'm with the chants, you know, but it just didn't make <laughs> sense, especially with a bunch yeah. of new people. I was like, what the hell? Okay. <laughs> uh, so do you know how um, commission works insurance? How you get Not paid? really. Not insurance. So, um, so it's called annual premium. So, um, what that means is you know, what a premium is right. Like on insurance, insurance payment is a, a premium every month. It, you get it, you pay a premium. You know that, right? Mhm. That so, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So the annual premium is how much premium you pay in a year. So, your client. If they pay a hundred dollars a month, the annual premium is twelve hundred dollars, and commission is based off of annual premium. You get a percentage of annual premium, so the percentage goes all the way up to one hundred and forty-five percent. That's like the most you can make. And in our um, in our IMO, there's a bunch of IMOs. It's kind of like like solar installers. There's IMOs, which are mm-hmm. insurance marketing organizations. All IMOs, they I mean, the ones that I've seen, they all go up to 145%. Maybe, actually, I'm not even sure. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. I know ours is the goes up the highest because <laughs> I did a lot of research on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, a lot of the, uh, the there's, IMOs are mostly uh, like uh, 1099, like you're your own business. And then mm-hmm. there's like the captive, you know, companies, like just going and working directly for for an insurance company, like, uh, working for Allstate or working for, you know, if you go and sell insurance directly through them, you're going to be getting salary and you're going to get like 20, 10, 20% commission. Um, but when you work in a in a brokerage that has access to all the carriers like ours, um, you have access to all 30 of the carriers and you get to choose what's best for the client. You're not stuck selling one product. Um, so you start off in our agency at 70% and then you can work your way up to 145%. Um, your mentor, so depending on who you choose as your mentor, that's, that's the most important thing when you get into insurance. You want to choose who you think is going to help you succeed, you know, because um, it doesn't really matter what mentor you choose. You're still going to be able to, you're still starting at 70%. You're still working your way up to 145% where at that point, you don't, your mentor doesn't make any money off of you anymore. Because um, okay. the way it works is, uh, for example, I, I'm at 90% now. I worked my way up to 90 already in a month because I, I did uh, over 30K my first month. You need to get 25K in a month once, and then you're at 90%. Okay. I'm going to make it as simple to explain as possible. Um, mm-hmm. So Jonah's up there at 145%. He's like uh, your your main mentor, when if you if you work with us, um, mm-hmm. I'm at 90 percent, and when you first start, you're at 70. Now, if you come in here and just out of the gate, you make 25,000 a month. I'm already you're already cutting me out of the deal. I don't make any money off of you anymore, um, and it's just Jonah. So it's kind of you know where it the way it's not an MLM is because 
whoever is in your hierarchy above you in an MLM, they're above you forever. They like locked in and they get to make money off you forever. This one, you just, mm-hmm. once you earn your way up, you're, you own your, all of your business, you own all your commissions. You just, and then you can recruit people below you and same thing. They, they can build their agency below you and build their own thing. But while they're building, you're making some commission off of them because you're, you know, you're mentoring them, you're teaching them, you're getting, so you're getting your, your cut for, you know, being their mentor. Exactly. So, no, that makes that sense. Sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's super fair. I mean, what other industry where you, can you come in and, you know, learn from people that have done millions of dollars in their own sale that are willing to take the time to teach you this stuff, you know? Yeah. This is a cool guess, where you can No, it's not bad of a it's not mm-hmm. bad at all, but how do you go about getting your leads? Like I know we go door to door for yeah. solar. Like how do you yeah, get leads. go about getting them? Great question. Great question. So the way leads works uh, we have tons of vendors, so probably 10 to 30 different vendors where you can um, go and buy your leads from. I I only really use two. It's uh, one's called the other one's called, and and I have their emails and I just email them. Hey, send me 300 from Idaho. Oh, today I want I want some Florida leads. Send me 300 Florida leads, and um, I pay about like two dollars for like one to two year old leads. Because what we do is we dial aged leads. We don't uh, do fresh. Okay. Um, some people do fresh. Some people do aged. We just prefer aged because we like more at bats. We like having the quantity um, in the beginning. When you're first getting started, you want to have tons of experience. You don't want to be buying like 20 leads and you know dialing through them in in half an hour. And now you have no. You, you're like you don't have. You, yeah. This is how you get the experience. You know. Definitely. Yeah. So in the beginning, you're going to have like 15, 20 appointments a day. If you spend a day dialing and setting appointments and then the next day you have 15 appointments, that's what mm-hmm. you want to shoot for 15 to 20 appointments on a, on an appointment day. I like to do one call closes. Jonah likes to do appointments. So you'll just come in and you figure out what you like to do. I like to call and try to close them right on the spot if they have time. Um, but yeah, the way the leads work, does that kind of answer your question or do you have any other? Yeah, no, that, that answered my question. That's not mm-hmm. right. And, and what's so, the difference? Yeah. Oh, I was just going to oh, ask like, what? One thing I didn't let yeah, go. Uh, oh yeah. Um, the way the lead looks, it's a, let me find one here. It's a, it's a mailer. So someone gets a letter in the mail, they fill it out. Do you know what mortgage protection is? Have you looked into insurance at all? Do you understand the product? Yeah, I kind of like life insurance or mortgage yeah, protection. So it's, no, it's it's life insurance tied to the amount they owe on the mortgage. So you know, typical life insurance, mm-hmm. it would just be like a year of income. If you're paid, you get paid a hundred grand, which is what you make a year. Yeah, okay. Um, mm-hmm. This is a way of selling higher face amount um, life insurance because we're tying it to a you know a more the amount of the mortgage. So when they pass away, it pays off the entire mortgage. So the later, the letter I sent you, two hundred eleven thousand dollar life insurance policy. So you're going to be making more money off of it versus just selling a normal life insurance policy. Makes mm-hmm. sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So hmm. it's super cool because these leads are super high intent. You know, these people filled out a form and mailed it back in. You know, like <laughs> these people want it. And when I call people, I mean. Still, I have to filter through a lot of people. There's a lot of non-interested. But when I get a non-interested, I just yell at them. I'm like, you fill out the form. <laughs> I'm like, like, what's wrong with you? Why did you fill out the form? <laughs> like, I'll really freaking go ham on them because it's not door-to-door. Like, you don't have to be, like, too polite because you don't have to worry about getting shot. You don't have to be worrying about getting in a fight. You just hang You're up right. on them, you know? <laughs> so I like it. Because I'm I'm really confrontational. I got into a lot of trouble door to door. Because I would I would mess with people. But um, here can be my true self. You know. No, I love that. That's great. It's fun. It's fun. But yeah, this is what the leads look like. It's freaking awesome. It's super high intent. I mean, there's tons of different lead types. You can buy, you know, Facebook uh, leads. There's vendors that just sell um, people that fill out a form on Facebook. I don't like those because it's like just auto fill it. it took them 10 seconds it's just they don't even remember doing it they were drunk on a 
on a Saturday night, we filled it out. It's just like, <laughs> I like these leads. So. They were thinking about life, and like, I need life insurance, something. <laughs> I'm, I need life insurance. I'm drunk, and I'm, I'm irresponsible. Or, you know, it's like mm-hmm. stupid. So yeah, what would you say but, the difference is from, like, a door pitch, like, solar to this, like, on the phone? Like, what are you doing differently? Ooh, that's a great question. So on the door, I had to figure this out. Someone told me, and I, it, had, it was like a big light bulb for me when I was figuring out insurance. I was mm-hmm. selling insurance like I saw on the door. So, you know, you have to talk quick. You have to get their attention quick. They're going to slam the door on your face. Solar is the complete uh, – I mean, insurance is the complete opposite. You want to talk – um, you know, not too quiet, but you want to talk quieter than on the door. You want to talk way more calm, slow, and pause, and, you know, not go too fast, you know, because they're not going to hang up on you. They want to hear what you're, you're saying, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, people have more patience on the phone than, you know, a stranger at their door because they, they feel unsafe. You know, on the phone, it's just like, okay, like I'll listen to what you're saying. It's not that crazy to get a front class. It's more crazy to have a stranger at your door. So yeah, you want to be more calm. Um, there's a script. So in in solar, I always had trouble memorizing Carlos's freaking script because it's so long and my memory is horrible. So I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the first two or three months in solar, I was just like struggling to make like you know tweaking, making my own winging it all the time with my script. And here you can just jump in and you just read the script verbatim and you're going to make your first sale guaranteed within the first 48 hours. For mm-hmm. sure. Everyone, everyone I've seen, they're making their first sale within the first 48 hours, especially if you come from sales already. Definitely. Does that answer your question? Yeah, a hundred percent. But I'm interested, man. And like, I know you probably got things to do too. I love everything mm-hmm. you're saying, and like I'm just, mm-hmm. I feel bad because I called you kind of randomly. But <laughs> okay. send me what, send me whatever's next, man. Like I'm interested. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's schedule another call. Let's talk maybe on a Tuesday. I'll send you some more videos. Maybe you want to look at, um, mm-hmm. and then just get you a couple more questions together. Um, and then on, you know, we'll we talk then on Tuesday, and then I'll tell you what the next steps are. All right. So, um, tell me what, like, what makes you like interested in, you know, like coming over to insurance? What, what's like important to you? What do you value? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to learn more about it. I, I honestly have been thinking about making the transition to another industry for a bit now. I haven't Mm -hmm. been in solar for that long. I've only been in solar for like a year. Um, but right now I'm like the number one guy at this company I'm at in St. Pete and they do provide mm-hmm. company leads. So I'm kind of, it's like, mm-hmm. do I really want, you know, it's, it's hard to make that jump when they're, they're giving me all the really good leads, but it's still mm-hmm. just not enough because most of them are company leads. Like I, I do mm-hmm. some door knocking myself and I've gotten some good sales that way for sure. And those obviously are bigger commissions because they're, they're more exclusive. Although mm-hmm. usually there's like five knockers coming after me. So sometimes mm-hmm. they've, this install they've talked to like six or seven people. <laughs> mm. hmm. Um but I don't know how I don't know what you're if you had a similar experience in solar, but yeah. Yeah, last like six months especially and then I go mm. into these appointments and these people have met with like five other companies. <laughs> and so if I don't if I don't start at like the highest mm. two fifty a lot, if I'm mm. starting even at like two seventy a lot and mm. then I have to drop because they've met with other companies that are giving a way lower quote. Then they're just looking at me like I'm a scammer. So wow. in order to make sales, I've got to start at like 250 a lot, which right. basically means I'm making like a thousand dollars a deal. So oh you know I can sell 10, 15 a month, but I'm making a thousand bucks on each one. So it's kind of it's like all right. Wow. So, so. It's, the whole industry is just kind of, especially in Florida, I feel like it's become kind of a race to the bottom. Yeah, it it is. I was just about to say that exact those exact words, race to the bottom. That's literally what solar is all about right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's really annoying. Um, so the way insurance works, it's not credit. It's based on health. So like I said earlier, that guy had hospitalizations. He hadn't told me about that's his credit score basically. And mm-hmm. there's no competition. There's no race to the bottom because the way insurance agents get paid is on the back end of whatever the insurance company makes. They don't, you they can't, you know, can't go to a different agent and get a different price. Same yep. for every agent. That makes sense yep. to you, right? So, yeah. um, you, they just have to like you. 
whoever they like the most is who's going to get the business. And yeah, but yeah, tell me, tell me more. Like, um, what what's important to you? Like, what are you looking um, for? Yeah. So, well, my my background's a little unique. I'm I'm actually 37, so I'm a bit older okay. than you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I actually started out. I went to to college and and law school back in Baltimore, hmm. and then wow. became a a prosecutor, so I was a criminal prosecutor in Baltimore <laughs> County, Maryland, for three years, wow. uh, which is a busy ass place to be a prosecutor. It's kind of like <laughs> Chicago, where you're going next week, as far as crime mm-hmm. levels go. Uh, um, yep. That's and good background uh, for sales. Yeah, so I, so I did that for a couple of years, and then I did uh, went into private practice and did personal injury plaintiff law for another couple wow. of years. So wow. like representing accident victims, all mostly car accidents, truck accidents, medical malpractice, nursing huh. home neglect all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah, so yeah biggest, biggest, good. biggest case ever settled was $21 million for a birth injury. Whoa. So is that, yeah. how does that work? You get a percentage of that? It wasn't my, I wish it was my case. I brought in, I'm the <laughs> one who freaking did all the legwork on it. But no uh, way. Partners took, I got a nice little bonus on it, but yeah, what? they made, they made highway of that. Yeah. That is insane that you only yeah. get a little bonus for that. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, but are you? Do you have a law degree? Yeah, yeah, I still have a law degree. Okay. I'm gonna have a law so you're, degree. I still have a law lawyer? license in Maryland. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you're... I'm still a licensed attorney in Maryland. I'm not wow. anywhere else, and I don't, I don't practice anymore. But I'm, I'm, I'm honestly at this point, I'm, you know, I, I kind of burned out on it to be honest. Mm. And that's a, that's a long story. We can, we can, mm. I can share with you another time probably. But mm. um, yeah, just burned down on it for a whole bunch of reasons, but I'm, I'm pretty familiar with hmm. at least some parts of insurance because I used to sue insurance companies all the time. Hmm. So I've, okay. I've deposed quite a few insurance agents and, uh, and, and adjusters. <laughs> so you burned out. What do you think causes you to burn out? So for me, like, you know, as a lawyer, there's really, um, you know, First of all, it's kind of like everything else in life. It's very multifaceted. There's kind of a mm-hmm. bunch of reasons that all kind of came together. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it was, like I said, it was a bunch of things. First of all, it's, it's long hours. It's high stress. Um, I mean, being a, being a prosecutor was actually a lot of fun once I got to a point right. where, and it was kind of funny, like when I started that, it's a government job, so you're not making much money. Like I made like 72000 I think, mm-hmm. uh, during that job for the first couple of years. Wow. So, you know, you're not making much and um, it's kind of a thankless job. Like everyone's mad at you all the time, right? Like no (laughs) criminals want to be prosecuted and usually victims want the outcome to be way more serious Mm -hmm. than it actually ends up being. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you're dealing with domestic violence cases where the victim doesn't want you to prosecute the guy either. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's it's very much, that's very much a thankless job, which I actually came to... I came around to enjoy it once I finally got to a place where like in my own mind, I was kind of like, all right, look, like basically most lawyers have to have to, or most lawyers get paid to do whatever their client wants them to do mm-hmm. within so the you realm have to of own the practice to get the, like a cut of whatever. Otherwise you're all salary. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I got, I got a cut of cases I brought in. So it's kind of like, like a uh, company lead versus a self chain, mm, right? Gotcha. Like company lead, I would, I would just get my salary. Mm, and then okay. if I brought something in, I would get a third of whatever our fee was. So usually our fees were like a third of whatever the total was. I see. Well, I'm assuming you weren't bringing in a lot of leads. There's no door knocking. There's no like, unless you were running ads, it's kind of hard to get leads, right? Um, Yeah. I mean, I wasn't bringing them in on like a really consistent basis. I, mm. I From being a, from having been a prosecutor, I had a lot of connections and friendships with cops and people who worked in the courthouse. Mm-hmm. And so I got a bunch of referrals that way. Um, but to be honest, it's like every single person you're interacting with is is usually interacting with you because of the worst things that's ever happened to them. Yeah, that's so true. And so that's all you're doing all day, every day, is dealing with <laughs> the worst things that have ever happened to someone. <laughs> wow. So it's a little mixture yeah. of just the depressing depressiveness and you wanting to be more in control of your income, and that's why you got into sales and solar. 
Um, to be honest, it really wasn't so much of the income thing. Cause I think if I had mm. stayed doing that, I couldn't have made buku mm-hmm. money. Um, you, it was more just like, I practice. realized that. Yeah, I, I eventually mm-hmm. would have done that. And I kind of like, when I left it, I was at the point where I was bringing in enough business that it didn't make sense to keep giving them two thirds of the business I was bringing in. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. I was kind of at that like precipice where it's like, either I got to go start my own thing or mm-hmm. do something else. Wow. So and, what, um, what made you decide? So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of things. Like I, I've been through my own, I, I grew up playing lacrosse in college, so mm-hmm. I've played lacrosse at the division one level and have had a bunch of injuries from that. And I've had, uh-huh. I've had surgeries on my foot, both of my hips, my lower back, my hand. Wow. Um, so yeah. part of it was like dealing with, you know, having my, having gone through my own health struggles and, and struggles with just like chronic being in pain all the time. Oh, yeah. And then dealing with clients all day who were in pain <laughs> all the time. And so that's uh, all you're thinking about all day. It just, it, I feel like it made my health uh, worse. Yeah. And then yeah. on top of that, realizing that it like it, it, it kind of was like, it happened over the course of time. And then it really hit me with that big birth injury case where you know, you, you can, you can conceptually understand that health is wealth and that without your health, yep. you really don't have anything. But then when yeah, you right. see example after example, after example of people who you're handing big ass checks to, hmm. and they're basically like, thanks, this doesn't really change the fact that I can't get off my couch because my back hurts so fucking bad every day, uh, you know, that's so- or like, here's $15 million. And they're like, Thanks. I'd rather just have a healthy baby. Oh, yeah. Money can't change everything or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, it can change some yeah. things, but yeah, it's some things you can't change with money. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's definitely a necessary part of the equation, but it's not the whole yeah. equation. Yeah, and I I see what you're saying there, man. Like health is not just you know working out; it's also having a healthy mind. If you don't have a healthy mind, your mind will convince you you're unhealthy and you'll become unhealthy just from a convincing. It's all 100%. mindset. It's crazy. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have you read The oh, Secret yeah. and like The Law of Attraction? Yeah, totally. I'm reading that right now and it's totally on topic yeah. with that. So, the Secret, Joe Dispenza, um, mm-hmm. uh, Bruce Lipton. Yeah, I love it. Yep, all of that for sure. Okay. So, Tell me more about like your day to day. What does that look like? Uh, man, it really depends. With solar, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like what uh, is your current just, schedule looking like? Because the schedule for this depends. is. Mm-hmm. It's just. I've depends, had to you know. make a 360 on my schedule compared to solar. Yeah. Yeah. In what way? Um, this job. I, I mean, it's not a job, but it's it, it's your own business. But solar, my schedule used to be. I had my whole morning. I would. I don't start work till one or two. You go knock when everyone's up and around uh, and you have mm-hmm. the whole morning to go do whatever the hell you want. This is the complete opposite. Um, I've found everyone in this industry, they basically all have the same schedule. Everyone wakes up at 5 a.m. Everyone's in the gym, meditating, reading, you know, self-improvement books, you know, just really having their routine locked in and we're all dialing by 7.30 or 8 a.m. And then you're getting, you're helping through your two or three or four families by 11. And at that point, that's the majority of your business is done before noon. Uh, Cause that's just when people want to get this type of stuff out of the way. They don't want to be bothered with their life insurance in the afternoon or at night when they're tired of work, you want to catch them. So, so this is what we're doing. I'm, I'm in licensed in all, all the States all across the U S you know, um, like Eastern time, central time, mountain time, Pacific time, and even Hawaii. So yep. I focus on that time period be- before work, 8 to 9 a.m. Um, so I'm dialing at 8 a.m. Florida. Then once I hit 9 a.m. in Florida, I start dialing central time. And then I start dialing mountain time. And I get that 8 to 9 a.m. window all across the country. Nice. And and then when Hawaii time, you know, when it's, you know, 2 p.m. here, then I'll go hit Hawaii too. Um and that's when I have the most luck is when pe- people are fresh in the morning and they want to get something checked off on their way to work, you know, feel good about, you know, starting the day off right. Hey, I got my insurance policy set up today. I'm um, protecting yeah. my family for my future. And um, I've had to learn that the hard way. I mean, I tried getting into this industry, setting my own schedule. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to dial from like 2 to 4 p.m. Or 
I mean, I wasn't <laughs> like that, but I I have tried it a couple of these days, and you know, I first I first started like dialing from 8 a.m. to freaking 12 a.m. because I was addicted in the beginning. I wanted to just get you know get results immediately. So, but yeah. as I'm been trying to dial the schedule, like trying different times, I I have found the same thing that everyone else in this industry recommends is that 8 a.m. to 12. And um, it's it's true. Are you a morning person? So well, how does that sound for I, you? I am. No, that okay. sounds fantastic because <laughs> I okay. hate the late night. I mean, uh, okay. I do the freaking late night solar performance all the time, but I hate Yeah. It. Yeah, you'll find yourself in a home um, at like I was 10 up p.m., at, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, up at, I was up at 6 this morning. I, I prefer uh-huh. to be a morning person. Like if that okay. could be my schedule and I could get to bed consistently mm-hmm. at a time that would allow me to wake up at consistently oh, yeah. at 5, I'd totally mm-hmm. be down for that. Yeah, it's a very good yeah. it's a very good schedule, and I mean, ideally, you know, you're, you're healthier uh, if you have a set schedule like that. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so, plenty of times where I just like I don't get to eat till 10 p.m. <laughs> and you're driving all over the place too, because this is telesales, oh, so all over the place. And that's that's yeah. the other thing I'm interested in is the telesales, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what mm-hmm. has me. Because originally, to be honest, I was looking at uh, like merchant services, like selling like candy processes yeah. and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Which is is awesome because I don't know if you've looked into that at all, but there's yeah, really income with it. Yeah, so, so does this. So I can tell you about that. Yeah, please do. Yeah, but yeah, so, I was say, I'm I'm totally interested in in telephone sales because mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. um, I've done a bit of it with solar. Like I've gotten the company to give me your old lead list and stuff like that, mm. and and I'll just dial. I've actually used your uh your reverse psychology tactic on people, and it's it's actually worked that? pretty well. So I'll what call is and that? be like, hey, um. Just, just oh. checking in to see how your solar project went. <laughs> you're like, oh, I didn't get it. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. really? What, 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 was, like, what was like the, the reason for that? Yeah, it's so good, right? And then yeah, they usually so tell funny. me. They're like, oh, well, it was the money. I'm like, oh, well, actually, we're running the special program right now. Yeah, I love that. I love that script. <laughs> okay, so great. let me let me explain to you two things here about residuals. There's two different ways you can go about it. Um, the first way, um, some policies, some certain carriers, they'll give you like a bigger commission, have no residual. Some carriers, they have a res- like a small 5 6% residual. Now, here's another aspect of it is that, you know, once you sell someone solar, you're, they're never going to be a client again. They have solar now for 25 years. That roof is taken mm-hmm. up. That's it, right? So in this business, you can call them up in a year and get them a different policy with a different carrier and switch them around. It, you know, that's what I do. The second I sign up a client, I put them in my calendar for a year from now. I have a separate candle uh, calendar called annual review. And I'm looking forward to it. Once I start hitting my year in insurance industry here, I'm going to start, you know, having recurring business here. I call up my old clients and, you know, get another sale out of them. Super mm-hmm. cool. Right. Awesome. Um, so that's cool. I like that part about this business. Now, um, there's a couple things uh, to know about this industry though. I mean, it's it's cool because you can build a team, but there are risks involved when you build a team. Now, okay. if I hire some random guy off the street who's just not really good with his finances, he comes into insurance and he writes a few policies and they all cancel. Um, and the way this works, I don't know if you've seen, they have an annual premium. So you're paid up front for the first full year premium. Now, if that person cancels before the full year, you have to you have to pay that carrier back for that amount of money. So you don't want to be writing bad business, and I don't want my yep. team people that I hire under me to be writing bad business because then if they don't pay back the carrier, like if they don't write additional business to make up for that clawback, I have to pay their entire thing back myself. So yep. there's a lot of risks to building a team, but there's also huge rewards for building a team because um, I'll explain to you how the uh, the whole hierarchy works. It's super cool. Um, it's not like a like an MLM where you like join in and then that person's above you for life and you can never out go above them you know what i mean it's different mm-hmm. so you start off at a 70 percent of the annual commission uh so whatever you sell if you say a sell a, a twelve hundred dollar annual premium like a hundred dollar hundred dollars per month you get 70 percent of that now as soon as you sell twenty five thousand a month which i already did my first month you're up to 90 percent and then that's uh that's yeah that's the highest you can go without recruiting anyone so you have 90 percent. that's tons of commission if you never plan on building a team a lot of people just do that. Now, if you build a team, you can go all the way up to 145%, which is the first year plus a couple of months. Uh, the the insurance company pretty much, you know, they see that as a wash. They don't really 
um, start making profit until years two, five, ten, twenty years into the policy. That's when they see their profit. So okay. does that make make it all making sense? Yeah. So eventually, um, like if I were to take you on uh, my team, uh, in the beginning, I'm at ninety percent. My mentor is a he's he's done millions and millions of dollars of sales. He's already worked his way up all the way up to one hundred forty five percent. He's getting, you know, fifty uh, percent of that commission. I'm getting twenty percent, and you're getting the rest of that seventy. So that making sense. Now, how do you work your way up? You just you you put in the hard work, and eventually you're cutting him and I out of the deal. Eventually, you have that full one hundred forty five cent percent, and you know, a matter of years, we've built a team. We're not earning anything off of you or your team because you have that. You've worked your way up to that full one hundred forty five percent. Is that making sense? Yeah. So it's super cool because, you know, what other industry are you going to get help from someone that's done millions of dollars in this industry already that they have a vested interest in actually helping you? You know, mm -hmm. like real estate, you get in, you get into a real estate, you become a real estate agent. No one really wants to help you. They're not going to get commission off of, you know, teaching you anything. If you close yeah. a deal, it's yours. So I think it's the most brilliant hierarchy structure of all time because, you know, I'm already getting 25K here my first month. Thanks to, you know, having incredible mentorship from a guy who's done it for years now. And um, it just works. It's great. Um, how did, how did how you get, uh, mm -hmm. get hooked up with him? Oh, right. Yeah, you asked that. Um, so one of my friends that I did solar with, and I was telling, I didn't get a chance to tell you, but yeah, I did. I was number one in my company as well. I was here for, I did solar for years as well. And um, the guy who was number two, he was just a little bit fed up with, you know, he wanted more in life. He had a daughter. And he wanted to, you know, be around her. He didn't want to be stuck in Florida. And he left uh, after Jonah, who is my mentor, uh, mentioned, uh, DM'd him on Instagram. And I saw him doing well already. He did 30 k for his month. And I was like, okay, all right, I got to come and join. And I'm really glad I did. That's how I found him. And it's just a bunch of guys from solar and pest control, this whole team. It's just like everyone realizing how amazing this industry is. Nice. Yeah, it's an awesome team. And when yeah, you say so like when I, you say twenty five k your first month, you mean twenty five k that you've written in business or twenty five k in commission? Twenty five k, yeah, in annual premium so far, because okay. I'm just finishing up my first um, uh, month, and I'm yeah, at ninety percent. Mm -hmm. So I would be making ninety so, percent of that. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Okay. Which is pretty cool. And then of course there's there's more to it. I mean Jonah, who's who's mentoring me, he's getting that. 55% that's on top of it. That's in the deal. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's cool. Marco is at, already at so, 95% because he's been doing this for, he's the one that you know recruited me. So he's getting that little 5% off of what I did because he's mm -hmm. up a little bit higher than me. You had a question? Nice. Um, so starting out, it would be 70%. And then what mm -hmm. was the number you have to hit to get to 90? 25. And there's 75 25. and 80. Oh, no. You just have to do like 10,000, 15,000. But like, you're already a beast. You're going to get past that. Like once you hit, you know, the milestone one month, you never go back down. It's just, you're yeah. there. Um, yeah. So no, yeah. I'm, I'm stoked mm -hmm. for that. I, I like phone sales. I like to travel. Mm -hmm. I actually have one mm -hmm. of those, uh, sprinter vans, like an RV thing. Oh, sick. Like all, it's you got to take me with drive. you. We'll it's fucking drive around yeah, the country man. and sell yeah. together. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got, it's like my, uh, it's like my full on, like, um, what do you call it? Bug out mobile. Mm -hmm. It's got four wheel drive, big tires. I put a <laughs> air locker on the rear differential, which basically oh, like locks the two rear tires together and turns them into like a tank. You drift around. <laughs> I've I've taken it in like way out in the middle of nowhere on Jeep trails out in like Moab, Utah, and, and Arizona. Wow. People come up wow. in Jeeps and like ATVs and like, dude, how the frick did you get this thing up here? Because <laughs> I locked my differential. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, yeah, no, that would be sick to be able to to sell from wherever. Right. That would be really, yeah. really nice. And not have to go door knock when it's 110 degrees with 100% humidity. For sure. For sure. So, yeah, but with all that being said, I mean, I did, it is a risk to take on each person. But also, I mean, I'm looking for killers. You sound like you're a total killer. Um, what else should I know about you? You know, like, why, why else should I hire you? What else is cool about you? Anything else I should uh, know? I don't know, man. I don't think I'm that cool. <laughs> I think you're pretty cool, though. But if you wanted to tell, I don't tell me anything I don't, else, I don't think I'm that yet. cool. I, I feel like I'm, I'm like a, uh, you know, I don't know. 
Oh, you're um, humble. No, I feel like I'll take that. I feel like we that should. Was, uh, that was I you saying like I'm should... humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, uh, I am. I mean, uh, I feel like I've done a, I've done a lot in my life that's given me a yeah. lot of, uh, a lot of life experience talking to people mm-hmm. from all walks of life, which is something mm-hmm. that I've always prided myself on. Uh, is just treating people, no matter you know, no matter what creed or color, or where they're from, or what their background is, or what they believe. Like, obviously, I've got my own beliefs, I've got my own background, but. Mm-hmm. I try to treat everyone the same, no matter what. And mm-hmm. um, I feel like that's, well, I'm, that's, that's actually not true. I don't treat everyone the same. I try to figure out mm-hmm. how people want to be treated and then treat them that way, which mm-hmm. I think is a good skill Love to have that. for sales because you kind of have to be a bit of a chameleon. You know, you're, mm-hmm. sometimes you're going into a home where it smells like cat piss and you want to get the <laughs> hell out of there, but you can't let them oh, know yeah. that. <laughs> and then oh, sometimes yeah. you're going into, a, you know, a huge you know, like I've, I've, I've sold deals to people who, you know, with the cat piss and I've mm-hmm. sold, uh, I sold a $1.4 million commercial deal to a guy who's got a Ooh. $25 million a business. So, wow. Wow. Okay. So, okay. So this is how it works. I'll just be straight up with you. I'll tell you how it works. So are you, are you pretty good? At, I mean, yeah, you're a lawyer. I'm assuming you're pretty good at studying. So the way this yeah. works is I will, uh, have you, I'm going to send you. My, my only through. other question would be, is this something, cause I don't, I don't want to fully give up solar yet, especially cause I'm still waiting oh, yeah. for that big commercial deal to go through. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm going to make like bro. six figures on that one deal. Yeah. Um, but is it something that I can kind of like study on my own time mm-hmm. and then maybe start working like doing, cause I do have some appointments in the morning with the company leads. Um, mm-hmm. But mostly, like, they do schedule some at 10 a.m., um, but mm-hmm. I would totally be down to wake up before then and, and dial, you know, for the yeah. couple hours before then. Yeah, rip some deals between 8 and 10 a.m., get to your solar, you yeah. know. Totally. I That was my initial plan coming into this was to do both, but I completely ditched solar at this point. I just don't see myself going back. Yeah. But you'll you'll be able to work your way into it and decide that for yourself. Sending you a text right now, just fill this out. This is going to, I'm going to be able to submit this to Jonah here and you'll get a text from his assistant and you just hop on a Zoom call with, you, with her and she'll give you access to the course uh, that you can Sweet. study on to get your license. Um, basically, uh, I would say just skip through all the modules. You don't even need to read them. You just need to get to the practice test at the end and just take the okay. practice test as many times as you can until you can get a 90%. Uh, you only need a 70% on the actual test to pass it. So, yeah, yeah that's just the best way to go about it because the modules are so boring, and you'll just memorize <laughs> the questions. You'll do much better. So are you from uh, Tampa originally? No, I moved here for USF to go to, uh, for, to study computer engineering. I wanted to be oh, AI nice. and be all that stuff, but I coded. it was just not for me. I immediately realized, and then I just... I finished up with economics and I never used my degree and stayed in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from originally? But, oh yeah. Originally I'm from the East coast of Florida, like near West Palm beach. How about you? Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, Baltimore originally. Oh, okay. And when I left, when I left law and moved to San Diego and, um, bought a couple franchise smoothie and juice bars there hmm. right before COVID. <laughs> Obviously that was not intentional far as the timing um so yeah i bought those literally like right as covid was about to start and then uh ran those for a couple of years until i decided that i'd had enough of california and mm-hmm. had enough of being a small business owner in california hmm. and uh sold them and that's when a, a friend recruited me to sunrun in dallas and so that's mm. how i got into solar and then met my wife in dallas she oh. wanted to move to Florida. So I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I'm down. I like Florida. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so moved here and then um, found this solar company. So you've lived in California, Texas, and Florida? Yep. Wow. I, I, I love, I've been like thinking of, you know, Texas and California. You think Florida's the best? Uh, I mean, there's, it's like everything else in life. There's goods and bads to everything. You know, I really mm-hmm. like, I like warm weather. Um, mm-hmm. I like the people here, especially in, in St. Pete and we live in Gulfport. 
uh, which mm-hmm. is really nice. And, you know, people are nice. It's, it's just nice weather year round. We can go and like walk to the park and, you know, that whole thing. The one thing I miss about being out West is mm-hmm. being able to go on like long hikes and have, mm. having like mountains and places where you yeah. can like actually get out into nature and not be scared that a skater is going to eat you. <laughs> yeah. I love hiking too. Whenever I go to California, like San Diego, they have some amazing and LA too. They have amazing hikes. Yeah. Yeah, where were you? Where in California were you? Uh, San Diego. So the first yeah. first year I lived there, I was like right in Pacific Beach, like a block from the beach. I and love. So like, um, have you been to Torrey Pines? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I I went hiking there once and it was a blast. Oh, my yeah. God. So then I moved to a town called Poway, which is like, mm. it's a little bit east. Uh, but honestly, if you're going to move to California living right on the coast unless you're like living you know in a huge mansion right on the beach obviously that's sick but mm-hmm. um living by the beach the people don't really think about this but they're have you ever heard of the marine layer mm, no what's that so it's this huge thick layer of clouds that comes right over the coast and it's huh. it it makes it gray and cloudy by the coast i'd say probably I don't know, 85% of the year at least. Wow. But if you go like 10 minutes east, just 10 minutes inland, you get beyond that marine layer and it'll be beautifully sunny and, and, and like blue skies. Wow. So the first that day I lived there, I had a buddy crazy. who lived out in Poway and I would go out to his house because there's tons of hiking trails around there. Uh-huh. And, um, and I would go out and we'd go for hikes and I'm like, dude, it's like, 50 degrees and completely gray where I live at the beach. And then I drive 20 minutes and it's like 70 degrees and blue skies. Wow. That is the weirdest. We don't have anything like that here. Uh, I just sent you a link. Did you get the text from Ellen yet? Yep. Welcome to okay. the team. Use this to schedule your Zoom. Cool. Yeah. So click on that schedule time. Let me know what time you schedule. So I'll I'll reach out to you after that. Okay. Let's see how you're doing. Um, did you uh, did you find a time on there that works for you? Let's see. I should be able to do Monday. Okay. Yeah. So that's the Slack. You got that one. Mm-hmm. But once you are, okay. did you join the Slack? Because what I'll do here is I'll um, announce you here. I'll be like, hey, this is John, and uh, I'll like announce you to the team so they know you're here. Are you oh, in? Oh, cool. I'll be your I'll be your mentor, man. So I'm excited to you know help you through this whole thing. And uh, you can call me anytime you need help. Whenever you get you know on a sales call and you need you need me to help you with carrier you need or what medication they're taking, what carrier to go with, I got you. Also, awesome. you ever want to get on some calls with Jonah? Jonah, anybody who I'm who is my agent is his agent. So if you want help from him, the you know the legend, he's totally down to help. Everybody. He's so nice. Such a great awesome. dude. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I'll let you go. And, yeah, look out for that welcome message. And um, everyone's going to be super happy to see you in there. All right, brother? Yeah, nice. yeah appreciate it. All right. We'll You're welcome. Soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Later.